Uh, I had a brutal flight. All right. I flew out of LAX, Los Angeles, International Airport, that for some reason, if you go beyond Colorado, you just can't get a fucking direct flight anywhere. I don't, I don't get it. When I was in New York City, I could fly to all these places directly. Maybe it's because I was in New York and it was only an hour and a half away. I don't, I don't fucking know. It just doesn't seem like you can fly anywhere. So anyways, I got to fly L.A. to Phoenix, Phoenix to Columbus. All right? On U.S. Air. So I get on the plane, and there's two empty seats next to me. And it's getting close to the point where they're going to close the door to the plane. And I'm excited, like, holy shit. I'm going to have this whole fucking row to myself. It's be nice. I can stretch out a little bit, take my carry-on, stick it under the other chair. This is going to be great. Right before they close the door, lo and behold, this fat tub of shit gets on the fucking plane. All right? And I'm thinking, oh, God, not me. Please, for the love of God, don't pick my row. You know when you do that shit, you're just fucking willing the guy to sit down as he waddles his fat ass down the fucking aisle. It's him and his fucking lady, right? So he fucking comes all the way up, comes to my row, and he's just standing there. And I'm hoping he's just standing there because he's putting his stuff in the overhead compartment. I can literally feel the fucking heat radiating off of his body from the 22 years of mistakes that he's put in his goddamn stomach. All right? And what does he do? He, oh, yeah, I'm in that row. I'm in your row, so I got to get up. And what does he do? His, he lets his fucking girl sit by the window, and then he sits in the middle seat. And this fat fucking tub of fucking shit. This dude was so fat, I was sitting behind his back fat. You know what I mean? He was like fat and round. It was like sitting next to a planet with a head. You know, it was like you could the roundness of this guy. Okay, so he's trying to be less fat. God bless him. So he crosses his arms when all it does is just cause his fat lat to fucking bulge out even more into my airspace that I fucking paid for. And it's not real. All I'm thinking is why the fuck didn't he take the window seat and then post up against his girlfriend? My shoulder was getting hot from his arm. It was he was on me. This fucking guy was on me. If I was claustrophobic, they would have had to turn the plane around. This is how much this guy was in my chair. And I'm thinking, why the hell, why didn't you just take the fucking window seat, you fat fuck? Have a little bit of fucking consideration, you tub of shit. You know, with your basketball shorts, like you actually never played a goddamn day in your life. His fucking legs spread out like he was going to give birth to a baby calf. You know? Why don't you sit near the window? You know what I realized after a while? He didn't sit near the window because he's so fucking fat, he can't. He can't. If he sat by the window, his other fat lat would have blown out the window. We all would have got sucked out. Unless his tub of shit body fucking somehow got stuck in the fuselage. Which, if you saw him, wouldn't, wouldn't be beyond you. a possibility. Unfucking believable. And he's sitting there. This is what kills me. He's sitting there and he's he's biting his nails. And I just want to be like, dude, do you ever stop eating? Is there a moment and you're you're literally consuming yourself right now? I know, I know, I know what you guys are thinking. Well, hey Bill, why don't you fly first class? Oh yeah? Well, hey, why don't you go fuck yourself, hypothetical person who said that? Okay, I understand I bought a coach seat. I know what that means. That means my fucking knees are going to be in my chest. That means if I'm even slightly leaned forward and the guy in front of me reclines, he's going to hit me in the head. I understand that. Okay? I get it. But that doesn't mean that this tub of shit... I shouldn't have to pay an extra couple of fucking grand uh, or whatever, 1500 bucks, so somebody else's lard isn't in my lap. I am... Full on, 100% behind you having to buy two seats when you're on an airplane, okay? I'm sorry, you fat, okay? But you made your choices. This is one of the things. This is a good thing. You got to buy two seats. You got less money for cookies. Maybe that, that'll be a goal. Maybe that'll be your bottoming out. But it, it's it's absolutely 
ridiculous that I have to say, I'm literally leaning out into the fucking aisle. My giant microwave oven head is out there, and then I got to deal with the stewardess going, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir, can you not share in the sir, please, sir? All right, I got to watch him. I can't start yelling here. I'm in a hotel room again. I already got one strike against me. They probably build a fucking file on me. Um, yeah, I'm leaning out there. That was This is the best part. The food cart comes. Okay? They asked me what I You know, they asked the dude what he wants to drink. He goes, can I have a Coke? Can I have a Coke? I just want to be like, dude, how about a water? How about a salad? Are you trying to make yourself even fatter during the flight? Do you know what that soda's going to do to your already distended fucking belly? You already can't even put the fucking tray down. This dude couldn't put the tray down. He tried. He tried to put the tray down. Oh, my God, this fucking guy. I swear to God. The thoughts I was thinking, it was embarrassing. I was sitting there thinking, like, you know, I'm so glad this dude's going to die young. Can you believe that? I'm not happy in real life that that's going to happen. But that's how fucking uncomfortable I was, and that's how fucking mad I was at this guy. Absolutely. You got to buy two seats, people. You got to do it. I love when they try to leave the fucking arm up, too. I don't play that. I fucking shave that ham right down. I bring the fucking thing right the fuck down. Fucking sit here making me uncomfortable, and you, you want to relax? If I could, I'd put my foot in your chest to make your belt even tighter. That's what I do to you. Cut off your circulation to your legs. Maybe you'd get up and take a walk. There's no excuse for it. You know, and I know this is probably coming off insensitive, but you know something? I've been a redhead my whole life. Nobody gives a shit. We don't get, we don't, we're not considered handicapped. Capped. We're not considered handicapped. This always happens when I scream all weekend. We're not considered handicapped. We don't get our own parking spaces. These tubs of shit, they're getting their own parking spaces now. Making a shorter walk to the store, making them even fatter. The only positive thing I can say about this guy was he only went to Phoenix and he didn't smell. I got to give him that. He didn't smell. I don't know if he fucking jumped in a goddamn pond, you know, killed 200 fish before he got onto the flight. I don't know what he did, but he, he didn't smell. But I swear to God, you know, what, you know what kills me is I ranted about this on the radio here in Columbus. And somebody called up the radio station, said, I'm 5'8", 300 pounds, and I love to fly. I'm never listening to this radio station again. Can you believe that? This dude actually felt like he was the victim. You know, that'd be like if some wife who got the shit kicked out of her ranted about her piece of shit husband for slapping the shit out of her, and then some guy calls up, Hey, I got issues with women, and I slapped the shit out of my wife, and I'm never listening to this radio station again. You know? Give me a fucking break. You know, you know what you need to do. Eat a salad. Go for a walk. You don't have to put money down for for the gym. Just go for a walk. It's actually easier to do cardio when you're not at the gym. Because when you're at the gym, at any point, you can just get off and walk 100 yards to your car. Your car is always 100 yards away. When you walk out your front door and you walk a mile away, what, are you going to just quit and lay down on the ground? you got to walk back. There's two miles. Easiest two miles you'll ever fucking do. Or, or, or be a tub of shit. Be fat. That, that's your right. Okay? But buy two seats. That's all I'm going to say. All right? <laughs> do I wear short shorts showing off my milk white legs offending everybody's eyeballs? No, I don't. I'm considerate. I wear the Jordan ones. They come down right over my little white knees. Um, you're listening to the Monday Morning Podcast, and yes, it is insensitive. Doesn't mean it's wrong. I'm right. I'm right on this one. I'll fucking, hey, fatties who listen to this podcast, God bless you. Have yourself a Sunday on a Monday, right? <laughs> I understand it. You're emotional leaders. Something fucking bad happened to you, so food is your friend, and then you go in there. I, I get it. I get it. I want you to lose weight. I want you to feel good about yourself, but until you're at that weight where you're not, you know, 
spill it into my seat. You got to buy two seats. I shouldn't have to suffer because you ate all the cookies in the house. That's not my fucking fault. Oh, Jesus, Bill, we got it. I actually tweeted this week that fat people are the new secondhand smoke. <laughs> Hey, you want to be fat? Go outside. <laughs> All right, let's 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 get on to fat guy feng shui. All right, Bill, I wanted to let you know, fat people hate fat people too. I wanted to send you some thoughts, not too many, from a considerate citizen of fat America. Yeah, I've noticed this since I went off on the fat guy on the, on the airplane. Uh, I've, I've had fat people and just tall people in general go, I try to be real considerate of how big I am. I try to make sure I get an aisle seat. I lean out in the aisle. You shouldn't have to deal with that. And then actually, you know what's great about this? Now I can't really make fun of fatties anymore, knowing that so many of them are, 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 they seem like decent people. How fucking, what kind of a backhanded compliment was that? You know, I thought they were all pieces of shit, but it turns out uh, most of them, uh, most of them are all right. All right, here we go. He says, I'm a big fat guy. I'm usually the fattest guy in the room no matter where I go. Uh, do you get intimidated when, when you're not the fattest guy? You know, sort of like the toughest guy in town all of a sudden goes to another town, realizes that somebody can kick his ass and his whole world crumbles. Um, anyways, he says, my whole family's fat, and I've been fat since I've been born. Uh, not to make any excuses, I'm just naturally predisposed to it. And I eat like a typical middle American uh, middle American, not vegetarian, but not 24-7 beer and brats either. Anyway, I'm fat, and I just wanted to let you know that not, not all of us fatties are inconsiderate assholes. The stereotype of the jolly fat man has been replaced by the selfish asshole who's fat. Uh, when I fly, which isn't frequently, I buy two seats. Nice! If my sister is with me, we buy a row of three. And always bring along our own seatbelt extenders. Yes, they sell them. Okay, this is uh, this is hilarious and fucking sad all at the same time. Uh, the plane only carries two to three extenders, and you never want to be the guy who holds up the plane because you can't buckle or worse, get kicked off. Ah, Jesus, that's got to be embarrassing. Oh my God! Oh, this is this guy's killing me right here. This guy is this is a brilliant email. He's going to make me never make fun of fatties again. I'm actually, he's now, I, I'm, I'm, he's bringing me into their world. He goes, those things cost $80, but it's worth $80 to avoid public embarrassment, right? Absolutely. If they told me to tone down the color of my hair, I would buy a fucking swimming cap rather than have them stop the flight. Um, just so you know, fat people like me, don't get to buy clothes in the same stores as normal people. Yes, I did know that. The selection slash styles suck, and they cost more. We pay more for bigger cars, extra plane tickets, and bigger clothes, among other things. I haven't done the math, but I figure we burn through, through furniture faster, too. <laughs> it's the price we pay for the life we lead, even if it's not a conscious choice. Believe me, no one wants to be fat. But that's the cost of doing business. This guy's fucking hilarious. Just like how they are added, there are added costs to being a woman, bras, makeup, pills, etc., or gay, or being gay. He writes question mark, chaps, lube, I don't know, or a parent, or a paraplegic, or whatever. Not that it's a disability. Uh, it's just our lot in life. But you know what? I've accepted it. I live my life accordingly. I'm not an asshole who imposes on others. I stay to the back of any pack make sure no one will ever have to walk or sit behind me when I can help it it's the fat guy feng shui how do you how do you dislike this guy when I enter a room or a situation I always ask where do I fit in literally and figuratively <laughs> whenever I have to eat lunch with my work group about 20 people and we're seated at a long table I never sit between the table and the wall and I usually sit at the end. Know why? I don't want. I want to make as few people uncomfortable as possible. Uh, I don't want anyone to have to squeeze behind me to get out. And sitting between two people just pisses them both off, or so I assume. Jesus Christ, this guy's like a fat Gandhi. Um, 
when I have to carpool with a group, it helps to drive or have shotgun because then I'm not squeezing the other people in the back seat. The thing that makes me hate fat people, capital letters, hate fat people, is that they don't seem to realize that they're fat. They are impulsive and selfish and don't seem to consider that what a normal guy eats, that when a normal guy eats a giant turkey leg at Disneyland, it's a, it's a lame and kind of funny. Oh, it's lame and kind of funny. But when a fat guy does it, it's disgusting. Or maybe they just got fat and haven't figured it out. Hey, fatty, don't sit there because now everyone has to squeeze past you. I like this guy. He's trashing fat people now. Or, hey, don't act like you're entitled to that, to put your arm around your airplane seatmate because it makes you more comfortable for you. Makes it more comfortable for you, you asshole. He just keeps going here. Or, hey, if you got to eat in public, don't smear barbecue sauce all over your face at the church picnic or eat more than two donuts in a sitting, parentheses, airport. And you know what? When I swim in public, rarely, I keep my shirt on until the second before I get in the pool. I don't ride the elevator from my hotel room and walk down the hall to the Hampton Inn pool shirtless because I'm a fat fuck and no one wants to see that. I used to swim with my shirt on, but somehow that's even worse. Uh, anyways, for what it's worth, have a good week. Thanks for the hilarity. Uh, you know what? That guy's all right. You know what? I bet there's more fat people like that than, than there's not. So maybe I ought to lay off the fatties for half a second. I'm just doing this just to fucking, you know, this is what this podcast is. It's like a smoker. And every once in a while, you just, you got to, you got to, I don't even know what you got to do. You got to throw a little wet wood in there. That's what that was. I think I'm going to leave the fatties alone. I think they're actually really considerate people. I think I was wrong about it the entire time. See that? Now I'm going to wait for the backlash. This is what this is the problem I have I have with people who are defending the oil companies here is basically when you go back to the 70s okay and you prove to me that cars did they weigh more now okay so you're right on that one but your logic though is still based in that the oil companies were telling the truth in 1976 that whatever 35 miles per gallon was the best that we could do so you use that as a jump off point to then prove your point now that that's why cars get the gas mileage that, 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 that they get today is basically I have to make the leap with you that oil companies are telling the truth. That this $350 billion industry, okay, that, that is on, on numerous occasions openly got in the way of any sort of progress. I remember here out in California, I think it was the late 90s, it might have been 20 years ago. I can't remember if it was before I moved out here the first time or right after I left. The, the air quality out here was so fucking horrific. It's like I, I know a lot of people still think it's real smoggy out here. It definitely gets smoggy, but usually just in the summertime. And it's definitely oh, hazy out here, but haze is not fucking smog. Smog is brown. You go hiking and you feel a burning in your fucking chest back in the day in the late 90s, okay? You could see this shit. So anyway, so they, they, they put this, uh, they put it to the vote for a people, to the people who actually would vote on this shit. And they passed this bill that said by the year 2000, whatever, whatever, 25% or 30% of cars had to run on something other than, you know, the gas oil, basically the gas combustion engine. They basically paved the way for the big three to then basically start making electric cars. The fucking thing passed. And oil companies got together with their lobbyists and they went and they just totally dismantled the whole thing and the whole thing fucking went away. Okay? Which, for all you people out there who are going to explain capitalism, capitalism to me, I get it. That is their prerogative to do that. Why wouldn't they get in the way of that? So let me ask you this. You're telling me that they would get in the way of that, but they wouldn't get in the way of any sort of progress? Just with the gas combustion engine, they wouldn't get in the way of any of that type of progress. They seem to not get in the way of anything else. Safety, they don't give a shit about. They won't get in the way of that type of stuff. Burning it cleaner, they don't give a fuck about. But miles per gallon, which is their bottom line. Like, do you guys honestly think, like today, like, 
what your car gets like that's honestly the best that science can do that is we are right up against the fucking wall is that what you're telling me you know considering if they just even increased it by five ten miles a gallon per every new car that they would immediately lose hundreds of millions of dollars why would they do it why would they do why would they allow that to happen why wouldn't they get in the way of that that's all I'm asking here. And you know something? For all you fucking assholes out there who call me this whack job conspiracy theorist, these are my conspiracies. Bankers are fucking evil. Oil companies lie to you. And insurance companies are pieces of shit. That's basically my three. And that they have enough money to basically buy elections. That's basically it, okay? Th- those really aren't groundbreaking conspiracies, are they? I'm not saying the, the, some guy living in the fucking moon. I'm not saying I saw a fucking flying saucer come out of the goddamn ocean and fucking take a piss on somebody sunbathing and then, you know, I, I saw Ronald Reagan waving out the side of it and then it took off. I'm not saying that shit. I, I just, I don't buy it, okay? And I actually got emails from people... Um, they sent me these uh, these these links. They sent me that this link of this this fucking kid, fourteen year old kid with one of his classmates, built this futuristic looking Jetsons car, and they got close to two thousand miles per gallon. I'll, I'll I'll send you the link to this. You can go on the MM podcast and look at this thing. MM the mmpodcast.com. Look at the picture of this thing. Okay, and once you're done saying, well, it's not a practical car, it's not as heavy as the other ones, it would never meet the safety standards, and yada, 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 all that fucking shit. Do you honestly think that airbags, navigation systems, <laughs> crumple zones, and all that, you're honestly going to tell me that that basically knocks off 1,900 miles per gallon? Are you really going to fucking sit there and tell me that you honestly think that they're not why wouldn't they get in the way of it? They have the money to get in the, way, in the way of it. And not only that, they're not even part of this country in a way. They're borderless. They're, they're worldwide. I, I, don't, I don't know. <clears throat> so I, dis- I, I, I respectfully apologize for not fucking uh, looking up the way to the car. I was 100% wrong in that. But I still do not think that I'm wrong or I'm fucking paranoid. About here. Oh, by the way, uh, I want to thank the 43,000 people who sent me that story about how the world's largest sperm bank has been turning away the jizz of redheads. Okay. Uh, bank, uh, biggest sperm, world's biggest sperm bank tells redheads, we don't need your semen. <laughs> You know how fucking degrading that is? You're showing up to jerk off into a Dixie cup and they turn you away like, nah, nah, that's all right. That's that's like telling a stripper to put her clothes back on. It's fucking horrific. You know, but for some reason, like, people think that that affects my life. It doesn't. All right? They turn away a lot of fucking people. Okay? If you've got different shit in your family, they turn you away. And not to mention, I got to tell you, as a guy... That story has no effect on you, okay, as far as your jizz. I guess, yeah, I can't sell my jizz to a sperm bank. I mean, how? what sort of financial fucking crisis am I going to be in where I'm going down to a Dwayne Reed stealing lube and then limping into a sperm bank to fucking shoot something into a goddamn graduated cylinder? You know, really, I can't fucking do that? You think I give a fuck? Let me tell you something. This is what I've learned. This is what I learned in life, okay? If you're making money, the ladies want your fucking jizz. I don't give a fuck what you look like. You could be a one-eyed, bald midget troll. They want it in them. All right? Trust me. So any redhead who took that in a bad fucking way, just go out and make something of yourself. I'm telling you. You'll get a fucking 10, and you'll dump a fucking nice unwanted spooge right in her. That was disgusting, yet pro-redhead. How do you like that, everybody? Um, (laughs) Pro-fucking-redhead. I just loved... I just love how many people sent me that story. Like, I swear to God, I said 40,000, but it had to at least be 100. And that's one of the things that I I love about the Internet 
and I hate it at the same time because the internet, I swear to God, allows adults to act the same way you acted when you were in like kindergarten or first grade on the playground where you were just completely uninhibited and you were mean. Remember that shit? You just walk up to somebody and be like, I don't like your face, right? You could just be that. And then when you get older, you still think that. You start, you're sitting there in the boardroom going, look at this guy with his fucking face, his stupid fucking tie, right? You think childish shit, but because you're older and mature, you don't say it, you know? Because, you know, you got debt and you don't want to get fired. Oh, he's doing a great job. And they told the boss uh, he didn't like his face. That'd be hilarious. Why did you get fired from your last job? You know, and you have to tell him some childish shit like that. Well, the great thing is about the Internet is it allows you to tap back into that part of you. You know? And, and, and actually, and then debunk the fucking myth that when you become an adult, you still don't think those thoughts that you, th you did when you were in first grade because you're now you're older and mature. You still think them. You're just programmed not to fucking say them. So, uh, I don't know. At, at first, I was like, what the fuck? And then by the time I, the 11th person sent it to me, and then actually this, this story broke like, like two weeks ago. And like two weeks in, as people are still sending me this story, that's what made me find the internet fucking hilarious. The fact that somebody's going to listen to this podcast and then send it to me on Twitter after it, that's like that. That's literally that. I don't like your face, na 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 shit. That's just, I don't, it's fucking childish and 99.9. .9, it's just fucking hilarious. Can anybody explain? I think that's why, or maybe it's because guys are childish. Why I think guys are so funny is because we have the fucking maturity level. I don't give a fuck what we're doing in our lives, how much responsibility we have, how much money we're making, how good a husband or a father or anything like that we are. Um, we're still immature as hell. Unless you're just a fucking boring douche anyways. What the fuck do I know, huh? What do I know? The world doesn't want my sperm. Why would you listen to me? <laughs> Oh, this just in. The world says, fuck you, Bill. Fuck you and your red nuts. We don't want them. Oh, my God. How much of an egomaniac am I that that doesn't even bug me, that I actually find it funny? The world just said no to me, and I still feel good about myself. What kind of a man has an ego to that level? I'll tell you, the kind of man who has the balls to do a podcast by himself, who actually thinks he's fucking interesting for an hour. Oh, geez, yeah. You know what? I think I was a little too mean on the fatties. I did. I did what everybody does. I judge fatties the way the world judged my sperm. <laughs> you know, see, people, this is why. This is why my podcast is so mean. This is why I don't give a shit about other people's feelings. This is why I say, cry me a fucking river. I don't give a f The world just said no to my jizz. The fucking world. There's people out there, okay? They're, they're shitting on the side of the road after they fucking, you know, skip out of a bamboo hut. Okay? I come up with my jizz. Hey, I'm all set. I'm going to wait for something better. <laughs> There's people in fucking Colombia, Venezuela. Who are those people that, uh, what's his face? Help helped out. Escobar. They were living at the dump. They were living in a junkyard. He went out and, and built them a small city. Uh, those people also said no to my jizz. This just in. The world says no. <laughs> so I I just don't I don't have any fucking uh, I I just don't have any sympathy. Yet I do. I understand people don't want to be fat fucks. You know, the same way you understand that you'd like the world to welcome your jizz as opposed <laughs> to saying no to it. Hey, Bill, I am a listener who is not only from Hong Kong. Nice! Look at me going international. Sir, you are the first one to call in. Are you uh, SG Man on YouTube? Are you that guy? Have anybody seen that guy? Underrated. SG Man on YouTube. Look up that kid's page. 
Um, I don't, actually, I, I shouldn't have said he was from China. I don't know if he's Japanese or whatever, but he's from Asia. And this fucking kid absolutely kills it. His ACDC covers are the shit. And sometimes he, he, impro he improvises solos and he's, uh, that totally fit the song, but it's not what Angus played. Like, he's a real fucking musician. So anyways, let's plow ahead here. I'm a listener who's not only from Hong Kong, China, but also an Indian from Hong Kong, China. Okay, I am not an expatriate. I have never lived in the States or, or an English-speaking country. I am from here, yet I listen to your stuff. Small world, huh? I don't know if I'm buying this. You speak English so well that you can go small world, huh? H-U-H. -H. What sort of level Rosetta Stone do you have over there, sir? Uh, although his name, Rohit, I usually don't out people's names, but I think you're okay on the other side of the world. R-O-H-I-T, Rohit. Uh, assuming perfect surgery has been done, would you rather get a hand job from a woman who has had her hands surgically replaced with a man's hands? <laughs> oh, my God. Or would you rather get a hand job from a man with hands of a woman? Which is less gay? This is not a dilemma I face, just a question I randomly thought of and asked a coworker. Peace from the Far East. Dude, are you fucking kidding? I'm not buying that you're from over there. That you can be this fluent and this funny in a second language? You know what? If you are, dude, that, that's amazing to me. Because I'm about ready to tr give Spanish another fucking try. You know? Un pero es gris y blanco. Ocho, nueve, uno. El niño bebe leche. I'm a Rio. Right? And I'm going to speak it when I speak Spanish. <laughs> I'm speaking just like that. Like I hear on those Spanish speaking stations. Because that's what the Rosetta Stone told me to do. Just immerse yourself in the language. So I started walking around listening to the Spanish-speaking stations. You actually got to watch the news so you can see a picture and figure out what the fuck they're talking about. But I, all I would uh, recognize is when they would just say the fucking phone number. Uno, tres, dos, tres, ocho, cero, cero, uno, siete, cinco, cuatro. Um, all right. Sorry. So what would I rather have? I would rather have a woman with man hands. Oh, but this is the thing, though. They're not man hands. They are literally hands from a man. So they're fucking hairy. Oh, boy. Jesus, dude. This is a fucking phenomenal question. All right, there's no fucking way I could get jerked off with some guy with, like, 5 o'clock shadow just sitting there. Um, it would have to be the most effeminate guy ever dressed in drag. That's what I would do. I would go with that because I think hairy Bigfoot hands on my dick would freak me out. And I don't think there's any way to get around that. If they were like the, you know, you know, you live in the high life. Remember that Miller high life commercial where that greasy hand grabs for that last deviled egg. If that was wrapped around my dick, uh, there's just no way it would happen. So what I, I would actually go. If you had an eff really effeminate, bitchy dude and I could dress him up like a woman, one of those trannies where you really got to look uh, and had the female hands, I would go with that. And I would have the, the fucking dude reach through a glory hole. <laughs> <laughs> ah, see, that's why those questions are fucking great. Because I, when would I would I have ever said what the fuck I just said right there? That's what I would do. Um, was I... Have I ever had that thought before in my life? No, I haven't. I'm going to give that guy. That's question of the week. Maybe that's a new section here, sir, from the Far East. I think you, you created a new one. I know we've touched on this in the past, but you brought it back. Uh, we're going to go with uh, dilemmas. If you guys would like to create uh, a new segment on this podcast, if you respond to it, uh, with it, just put them under the heading dilemmas and come up with some tough ones and I will try to answer them as honestly and funny as I can please send all um, all emails to bill at the mmpodcast.com bill at the mmpodcast.com do not forget the 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 like the Ohio State University who got fucked in the ass by the NCAA this year you're guilty of doing what every other program is doing yet only you will suffer and two other programs. Um, and the official website 
of the Monday Morning Podcast is www.themmpodcast.com. Uh, we got a donation button there. It's the first of the month. Ah, your rent's due. Wait till next week. But uh, please click on the donation button. Um, I have uh, the, the guy who runs the... Uh, uh, themmpodcast.com. If you haven't gone to it, please go to it. He's doing a fucking bang up job, and um, I'm giving him money, and I want to give him more money. So the more you guys donate, the more I can pay him. It's the donation button. Um, also, we have the Monday Morning Podcast Select. Um, trying to nail down another guest. We got one. It's 99 cents. If you want to get something for your money rather than just throwing it into the wind, uh, that's also on the mmpodcast.com. We also have the ringtone which a lot of people can't find, so I'll have my guy uh, explain where it is or maybe put it in a more prominent area, the old Jesus ringtone, all right, which is a, it's a great ringtone, people, all right? It's a great ringtone for your girlfriend. She's always nagging you. Then you know, you know not to, or whoever nags you in your life, you know not to pick it up because it goes, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. You know, you're not going to answer that, right? All right, dilemmas for the week. Go to the bathroom like a cat. Number one and number two in a dresser drawer sized cat box and have a butler empty it every day or go to the bathroom like a dog outside in the bushes and have a butler follow you around to pick it up and tell you that you're a good boy. Oh, that's no fun. It's no fun. I had that second one. I do it outside. I squat right down in the fucking bushes. I'm not shitting inside my house. That's why I hate cats. Aside from the fact that they act like stuck-up cunts at a club, you know, who've never done, accomplished anything other than looking good in life, you know, and they only come around when they fucking need something. The only the other reason why I don't like cats is they shit in the fucking house. Then I got to pick it up. I don't like that. They're not happy when I come home. There's just no, there's no give and take. You know what it is? When you have a cat, you're basically Robert De Niro's character in Casino. <laughs> That's what you are. You know, and your cat is Sharon Stone. She's fucking, she's just there for the amenities. You fucking cunt. Go OD in a goddamn red roof in. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, I would definitely be outside. Who doesn't like being told they're a good boy? I get praise. When was the last time anybody out there got praise after they took a dump? Wouldn't that be awesome? You know? I don't know. All right, let's plow ahead. Was that unfunny, sir? Did you not like that one? Was that not up to your comedy standards? Did you feel the rest of this podcast was funnier than that? When I blew my nose before I went off on Jesus? Oh. All right. Let's just plow ahead here. Number two. Uh, would you rather marry a stripper or have your daughter become one? Uh, I'd rather marry one. I'd rather marry one. You know, if my daughter becomes one, that's just complete failure as a parent. And in fact, that's what I think all those videos should be called that you see, you know, when you see on YouTube and you got those girls doing those booty dances, you know, with the goddamn shorts up their ass. Like, it's always like so-and-so booty dancing. What it should be called is so-and-so complete failure <laughs> as a parent. Oh, re results of a complete failure. As a parent, absolutely. I would rather, that's not fair to the kid. I would marry a stripper and, uh, you know, I would just I would just have fun with the stripper. I would just do whatever I could, you know, fuck her if she had one leg pointed west and one leg pointed east, you know, or north and south if she's standing up drinking coffee, you know, doing like one of those little ballet moves. I'd just bang her like that and then, uh, yeah, then I have a kid. And be like, listen, this is the secret in life, sweetheart. Don't do anything that your mother did. Wouldn't she just become a stripper? Is that like a reality show that they haven't come up with yet? Daughters of strippers? Like, what's her face? I think uh, Kurt Cobain's daughter is going to be all right. Because her mother is such a fuck up that I think she, I probably just jinxed her. I probably just jinxed her. Um, all right, number three. Uh, choose between attack by a bear or a lion on land and between attack by a shark or crocodile in the water. No fucking contest, dude. I would take a bear, and, bear or a lion. That's a quick death. That's a quick one. That bear comes up with that bionic bitch slap. That's it. 
It fucking breaks your neck. You ever see a lion kill something? That's it. It's over. Like, and, and that's going after, like, major prey, and it just crushes your fucking windpipe. You're out in two seconds. Did you ever, yo, the footage of what's-his-face? Look, the, the gay lion tamer out there. The one who looked like, uh, uh, what's-his-face from Night at the Roxbury. The, ah, Jesus Christ, this fucking cold medicine. What the fuck is the guy's name there? Come on. What was, what's the name of that guy? Chris Kattan. That one, the gay Chris Kattan. You ever see when that fucking, that lion grabbed that dude and it was over. In two seconds, it he just went limp. I take that in a second. As opposed to a fucking shark, you're sitting out there, a shark comes up, first thing it does is it bites into your leg to see if you're edible. Right? Just takes a nice chunk out. And kind of, you know, like he's doing some sort of wine testing with your fucking thigh meat. <laughs> you know what else kills me? Is the fact you can't fucking see it. You know, your head's above the water and all the evil is just below it. And you're sitting there, you know, and I think that you had still you got that caveman DNA that would that would just be going off that there was something in the area, despite the fact that you couldn't see it. You'd be trying to lift your fucking legs up. I, I think uh, I think the real dilemma here is is between shark or crocodile and uh I, I would have to go I would have to go shark. I just feel like they're it's a cleaner death, you know? They got those Ginsu knife teeth. They just come in like a tiger shark. It's just fucking over. You know? Just a perfect fucking killing machine, as they said in Jaws. But like uh Alligators and crocodiles, those fucking things. Those are like those guys who aren't talent talented enough to be in the NFL or the NHL. So they just go out there and they try to blow out guys' knees, you know? <laughs> Alligators and crocodiles are like the Bill Romanowskis of fucking predators, you know? Just that thing where they grab onto you. You know, what I like about a shark, it, it, you could just bite your leg off. A fucking alligator, they always seem to grab it and then they go into that roll and they just so slowly twist it off, you know, like you're some cooked chicken and they're trying to take the leg. All right, this is getting fucking morbid. That's what I would choose. All right, what else we got here? Uh, have a beautiful lady who stinks, smelly breath, smelly ass, pussy, pits, hair, the works, all stinking, or an ugly fat bitch who smells great. Uh, I'd go with the ugly fat girl who smells great. Absolutely. Because I could, I could love her. Where well, the other one, who just smelled like shit but was beautiful, was probably carrying herself like a beautiful lady, would annoy me after a while, and I'd probably kill her. You know? Why did you kill her? Because her fucking pussy stunk, and she walked around like she was Giselle. Am I being charged with anything? Because if I am, I want a lawyer. Go fuck yourselves. Well, Mr. Burr, you really just already incriminated yourself. I don't care. You know? <clears throat> the prison will not smell as bad as her ass. Oh, is there anything worse than fucking cold tea? All right, here we go. Uh, chimp first linebacker. Bill, my friends and I frequently get in an argument over whether a world's a world's man competitor or NFL lineman could handle a chimp in a fight. I know chimps can rip faces off and are ten times the strength of a normal man, but a normal man is a tub of shit. I bet a linebacker could rip some faces off too. What do you think? Uh, yeah, no contest. The chimp would fuck the dude up. Dude, chimps don't fight. I was gonna, I almost said fairly. Chimps don't fight like people. They're not gonna, you know, you gotta come, all right, come out and touch gloves, and they're gonna fuck it. Sorry, right, he's got a great jab. Watch out for its right, you know? That fucking thing is just gonna jump on you. Did I ever tell you that time that monkey stole my hotel keys? I was in Costa Rica. Um,. The fuck was I? Down in Costa Rica, way out in the bush. You know, army ants took over my fucking little cabana and that type of shit. So they had this pet monkey there. I was a monkey. I fucking hate monkeys. I never had a problem with chimps, but now that they rip people's faces off and their nuts and their feet off, I have a problem with them. Uh, I like gorillas, and I like orangutans. Orangutans. I always thought it was tang, T-A-N-G, but it's orangutan. I like those ones. They seem like they've seen it all. They got that vibe. They could just sit down and teach you about life.
but those little monkey motherfuckers, I can't stand it, right? So for some dumb reason, because I'm white, I have to walk up to it. Hey, there's a fucking wild animal. Let me put myself in danger. And I walk up to this thing, and it fucking jumps on me. Uh, you know, and it's one of those, you know, remember that that, that video, uh, Shock the Monkey? Remember the little monkey in that thing? It was one of those monkeys. Or in the Faces of Death, when they were fucking banging that monkey's head till it died, then they ate its brains. Remember that one? Yeah, it was one of those monkeys, right? This fucking thing jumped on me. And within half a second, it turned itself upside down, was hanging by its tail from my neck, reached in my pockets, grabbed my keys, and ran back up a fucking tree. This all happened, like, within, like, 1.8 seconds. And my body reaction was like, what, wait, what, what? Oh, fuck. So if this thing actually wanted to fuck you up, the thing's not going to come out fucking bobbing and weaving. It's going to be running around the room, jumping up off of shit. You're going to try to figure out where it is, and it's just going to fucking land on your face. And that's going to be it. It's going to tear your face off, twist your foot off, and rip your balls off. And no linebacker stands a fucking chance. Unless, you know what? What if they had on the equipment? Even then, they tear your fingers off. This is the amazing thing about how human beings survive. Is everything out there, as far as I can tell, is faster than us, for the most part. It is stronger than us. Faster and stronger. But for the simple fact that we were smarter, we were able to do all the horrific things that we've done with this nature. You know? With this nature. With this planet. You ever think about that shit? Football players beat the fuck out of the nerds all through grade school and high school. Then what happens? When the real deal goes down, at the end of the day, those nerds become bankers. And those football players get enslaved. And there you sit in your house like a caged animal at the fucking zoo. And where's that banker? You don't even know what the fuck he looks like. All those Facebook cunts. That goddamn Steve Jobs, one of the most overrated human beings on the fucking planet, they win in the end. Let me tell you about my little Vegas trip here. Came in a day early, and uh, Jim Norton is a huge UFC fan, and I didn't even realize that there was a fight this weekend. So, uh, you know, Joe Rogan, a fellow comedian, he actually hooked us up with these awesome tickets. And uh, I went down and I watched the, uh, watched the was it, UFC 32? 132, I'm sorry. With Uriah Faber fighting uh, some guy, Cruz. I don't know the fucking names. There's only so many sports I can pay attention to. But I got to tell you something. Uh, you got to go to one of these UFC things. And just especially if you're actually in the performing arts on any level. You know? And as much as you think it's badass to be in a band. Or it's badass to be a comedian. Or maybe to be a fucking, uh, I don't know, a fucking professional football player. There is nothing more badass then when Bruce Buffer does your goddamn intro and you come in not wearing a shirt to just fucking throw down with another fucking human being. It's, it was just, I never felt like such a bitch in my life. I just remember just going like, I, do I really think that I'm some sort of badass doing stand-up comedy? And not to mention, if you're a fan of the UFC, this is another reason why you have to come out and see one of the live events. Is As badass as Bruce Buffer sounds... For those of you who don't watch, uh, he does all the announce, uh, all the uh, intros for the fighters. Um, as badass as that guy sounds on TV, it, there's nothing like seeing that guy live. He is unfucking believable. He was so good. I was sitting there, Doug Benson. He was actually there, not to name drop a bunch of comics, but we just started laughing. The, he was so good, and we were just laughing at like the intros. Like the average intro that you get at like a college gig. You comedian, he's been on Comedy Central and David Letterman. His name is Bill Burr and here he is. That's what you'll get at like a college. Or you go to a comedy club, it's a little more professional. They'll be like, hey, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to the Punchline in Atlanta. How's everybody doing tonight? Oh, come on. You guys can do better than that. It's Friday night. I said, how's everybody? Yeah. That's, that's the best we get. Dude, Bruce Buffer. I, I, I don't even want to try and imitate. I'm going to embarrass myself, but he's just like, he just comes out. He has a sound, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. And everybody's just like, what the? F you're just fucking looking at the ring. 
fighting! And he just fucking re he just goes right through their credits. He's fucking pointing at him in every fucking thing that they've done in his career. He's like enunciating. He's getting his body into it. The fucking fighters are bouncing fo on either foot. I got amped up. I'm not even fighting. I'm sitting out in the fucking crowd. For half a second, I thought I knew how to fight. It was unbelievable. I thought I had a belt in something. It was fucking... It was the shit. And then, like, every fight I saw was great. The second I walked in, I saw, like... Uh, I think I saw six fights... Five of them either ended in knockout or TKO, and uh, I'm so bad with the names. What's his face? Uh, was it Vanderlei Silva? He got knocked out by this dude with red hair in and, and 20, 27 fucking seconds. And after the dude with the red hair knocked him out, or dyed red hair, you know, uh, he's a spy um, in my world. Uh <laughs> He fucking knocks this guy out. And if you see the look on his face when he was flexing after he did it, it was one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen in my life. Once again, you just look at the guy. And as every guy always thinks, every guy has a, has a, has a nightmare of could I survive in prison. That guy does not have that nightmare. That dude, unrapeable. That's the highest level belt <laughs> that you can get in martial arts. Oh, speaking of which, somebody knocked out somebody. I don't know what the... F I can't remember. They started to blend together. And at the end of the fight, after he won, he got his blue belt. He said, yeah, I just got my blue belt in whatever discipline. And I was laughing, going like, you know, something like... That's legitimately earning a blue belt, as opposed to the blue belt that you get as a fucking accountant rolling around on some mat in a goddamn strip mall. This guy fucking just fought on pay-per-view and got a blue belt. Not even a black belt. I don't know. It was unbelievable. It was, it was just an amazing thing. And I want to thank Joe Rogan once again for totally hooking, uh, hooking me up. I'll thank him from Jim Norton, uh, Club Soda Kenny, and everybody else who came out. It, just, it was awesome, man. It was awesome. And then seeing Rogan come in, he's so fucking ridiculously good at it. Ask all the questions. You know, you want to you want to hear the answers to, and it was uh, it was great. The only other fight I had ever been to, I went to a Miguel Cotto fight at uh, Madison Square Garden, and it was you know it was a non-title thing, and I didn't know a lot of the guys underneath. And Michael Buffer wasn't doing the announcements, so you know they just had one of those old guys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to world famous Madison Square Garden. Back in the day, amazing fights used to happen here, but tonight you will not see those. Um. A non-titled event. It was awesome, man. It was uh, so I highly recommend it. If you haven't rent, uh, if you haven't gotten the pay-per-view, definitely check it out. Even though I kind of ruined what a couple I told you know, I guess I gave the results of a few of them. I really am a dope. Well, fuck you. The air conditioning is not on here. So, anyways, how far into this podcast am I? Me that in, and uh, with that, let's get on with the. Uh, the Monday morning podcast. I've already talked about disease. Let's get on with some uh, some advice. Uh, okay, Bill, I need some backup on this. Okay, so I recently got into an argument with a bunch of girls about how diamonds are pointless and have no value. All right, sir, before I go any further, you are a man of my own heart. That's exactly what I would be doing. Yeah, why stand there and try to hit on them and get laid when you can actually piss them off by attacking something that you know they love. What a fucking great guy. You know, if you were a comedian, you wouldn't pander to the audience. You wouldn't be going, ah, back me up, ladies. You'd be like, what are you whores doing? Huh? You're all dressed up. Um, anyways. <laughs> anyways. So he gets in this big argument with these girls that diamonds are pointless and have no value. He goes on to say, obviously, I was bombarded with disagreement. I tried to explain to them how almost every other item purchased has some sort of purpose and value except for diamonds. A TV decodes a signal and projects it on a screen for hours of entertainment. Cars get you to work so you can make a living. Food keeps you alive. Clothes keep you warm. Even 90% of non-essential items do something to prove their value except diamonds. But of course they in no way agreed with me. I was told that it didn't matter how much they cost. It was the fact that they make a girl happy. I tried to explain that society forces the idea down guys' throats uh, that, the must buy, that they must buy a girl jewelry in order to show their girl they love her. Complete bullshit. I think that if a girl needs something bought 
for her to prove her man loves her, she's in a shitty relationship. I also tried to explain that guys feel like they need to buy an expensive engagement ring in order to make sure the girl says yes. Also, if it isn't good enough, um, all the girlfriends will basically think he's a cheap piece of shit. Again, I was missed with, met with total disagreement. They just disagree with you on that one? Well, maybe you know what they're actually doing is, is the, the reason why they would roll your eyes and call you a cheap piece of shit, not because they feel that, is because they're actually jealous that they didn't get a fucking ring and they, they want to make their girlfriend, even though she's a friend, feel like she's settling for less. And if they can just somehow disrupt it, it will actually fill up that hole between their fucking legs. God, that was mean. All right, also... If it isn't good enough for all the girlfriends, a uh, piece of shit, sorry. Again, I was met with total disagreement. I leave you with this. If you found a rock on the beach, what would you think, um, what would you think it was worth? Nothing. Unless someone puts a price on it and then, uh, oh, Jesus. I was doing so well reading out loud. Let me, let me start again. I leave you with this. I like this. Like I climbed up his mountain and asked him for advice. I leave you with this, my son. And I want you to meditate on this before you go forth and live the rest of your day. I leave you with this. If you found a rock on the beach, what would you think it was worth? Nothing. Unless someone puts a price on it. And then another someone is stupid enough to pay for it. Other than that, it's just a fucking rock. Please give me your input on this and let me know I'm not the only one who feels like this. Um, I, yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Of course. Of course I do. And you know something? You left out another major thing about that is you don't walk down the beach and find a rock, okay? What you do is you have some fucking eight-year-old child in Africa and his whole family digging for them, half, like, with the, wearing a thong so they won't steal any of them, you know? Those blood diamonds, and if you steal one, they fucking machete one of your arms off, sew you up and make you go back into the fucking mine. That's what you're supporting, that's the greatest argument ever. If your girl's pushing for a ring, what you do is you go out and you rent that movie Blood Diamond starring Leonardo DiCaprio. And when she starts pushing you for a ring, just be like, you know what? I love you to death, but I just cannot support. <laughs> I just cannot support that industry. The, the children that are forced to go into the mines, the senseless violence to... I mean, if I might as well be the guy holding the machete if I go. I just can't in good conscience buy you that ring. Just go like that. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. You know what I mean? And I think it really goes back to that shit where, um, yeah, women want you to suffer. You know what I mean? They want you to go four to eight grand in debt. They want you to do that and go to work every fucking day know, knowing that you're working for their fucking love and the use of their fucking vagina. All right? I know that's very cynical, but you know, what the fuck? And I'm not saying all broads are like that, okay? But a good goddamn majority of them are. And uh, I got a good mind to walk up to each and every one of them and slap the shit out of them. What do you think about that, huh? That's one of my reoccurring dreams that I have, other than cleaner oxygen. Just slap the shit out of them, right? Just get that great open hand, cheek sound, you know? <laughs> You know, I, normally I would be thinking, ah, oh, fuck, oh, what if this gets out? Nobody's listening to this fucking podcast. You can't even find it. And by the time anybody posts this shit up on YouTube, I'm going to be like, ah, fuck, that was months ago. I'm an entirely different person. I went to church. Um, yeah, I think it is. Um, I think it's a really selfish thing, um, especially if your guy is not making a lot of money, to make him go out and blow money on a shiny fucking rock that was dug out of the ground by a fucking eight-year-old. You know, just because you're not mature enough as an adult to walk up to all your other girlfriends with your engagement ring and making it be something other than a diamond, or at the very least, making it be a diamond that your future husband can afford. You know, it, I, mean, I think most of it goes beyond half of it is they want you to suffer, you know, kiss their fucking feet, you know, and go to fucking work. And have to work off this shiny fucking stone. And the other half of it is they want to fucking pull it out in front of all their friends. And you better believe that they want to make all their fucking friends jealous, okay? And the greatest thing that could ever happen is if one of their friends is already married, is if you go a couple carats bigger and they can fucking pull that out. That's like their biggest dick competition, is whoever has the shiniest fucking rock. You know what I mean? It really is fucking stupid. 
But uh, oh, I remember what I was going to do. I was going to tell you guys. The story this week, I did uh, this awesome, unbelievable fucking gig. Um, it was uh, the Bob Woodruff Fund, whatever they call it. Uh, ah, Jesus Christ. I really thought that this story was going to get the podcast going again. What the fuck was it called? The Bob Woodruff uh, Charity Fund Auction thing. Bob Woodruff is a reporter. Uh, he was in Iraq. He got hit by a roadside bomb, made a miraculous recovery, and this is the fourth annual one where they raise money for his foundation. That's the word I was looking for, his fucking foundation, to raise money for it, for, uh, you know, for troops who've been injured in battle and that type of thing. Just one of those, those, those charities you just cannot say no to. You have to do it. And uh, it was all the way back in New York City at the Beacon Theater. Uh, for music fans out there, they know that the Allman Brothers have been doing the Beacon Run for like the last 30 fucking years. So already I'm thrilled to be there just because I'm going to be standing on the same stage as Dwayne Allman. And uh, and I showed up, and, and the lineup that I went on was the most insane lineup I have ever been on um, in my career. This was the lineup. All right, Max Weinberg was there, and he put together this big band. So they're out there fucking killing it. John Stewart was the host. He goes out, and he kills it, talking about politics in a very funny way, unlike the horse shit that I did on my podcast. Uh, he fucking kills it. Then he brings out Tony Bennett. Tony fucking Bennett, who sings two songs, absolutely kills it, sounds as good as he did 40, 50 years ago. Just kills it. Then they bring out, John Stewart comes back out, does some more jokes, kills again. Then he brings out Bruce Springsteen. Fucking Bruce Springsteen goes out there and just fucking owns the stage, sliding around, jumping up on the piano, tells and telling jokes, just, just fucking kills it. Uh, then they had an auction. All these fucking rich peoples paid like 150 grand for one of Bruce Springsteen's guitars, raised all this money. Then the second half of the show, they bring out Joel McHale, who had to go on after Tony Bennett and fucking Bruce Springsteen, and he still somehow killed it. Then I went up, and then the final act of the evening was Jerry Seinfeld. What's the deal? Jerry fucking Seinfeld, the king, the master, right? And I'm on stage when I went out there, and my whole nervousness of the night was not going on after those people. Was My nervousness was the fact that nobody had said fuck yet. And it was a benefit, you know, and people talking about tragedy, and I was going to go out there, and my opening bit was talking about, you know, hitting women. So I'm backstage just like mind-fucking myself, going, ah, oh, God, it's going to be too harsh. I shouldn't curse. Jerry's going to get mad at me. The second I curse, he's going to look at me like I'm not even a comedian, you know, and I so badly want his fucking approval, you know. So I'm sitting there freaking out. Finally, my agent just goes, dude, you see what Springsteen just did? He went out. He just does what he does. Jumps on pianos. Just go out there. Do what the fuck you do. I was like, you know what? You're right. You're right. So I went out there. and I, I definitely I didn't say fuck as much as I usually did. But I went out there. I did my get, you know, hit by women, uh, hitting women, all that type of shit. It fucking killed. And when I get off stage, I'm walking and Jerry's going on. Next, so I'm walking off the stage, and there he is, fucking Seinfeld, who at this point, it's, it's, like, it's like looking at Elvis, goddamn icon. He's standing there in his suit, just ready to go to work, and I walk by him. I'm just, I'm just wincing. I'm waiting for him to just completely blow me off or just be like, why did you say fuck so much? You know, and I walk by him. And he fucking sticks his hand out, and he just goes, really funny stuff. Really, really funny stuff. And I was just like, oh, thanks a lot. You know, I, I try not to curse so much out of respect for you going on, going on next. And he goes, well, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> then I felt like an idiot. I'm sitting and being all nervous like a little school girl, and I just realized, like, wait a minute. Jerry has always worked totally fucking clean. He came up in the late 70s, right through the 80s. With all these, these barroom hack comics doing blow. I mean, the amount of shit that that guy had to go on after. Working squeaky fucking clean. He can't follow me. Uh, well, what the hell was I thinking? No, I was thinking he couldn't follow me. I was thinking that he would be annoyed. 
And uh, then I stood there, you know, f- like feeling like I was 90 miles in the air because he said that he thought that I was funny or that I had good stuff. And then I watched him go out there and it just absolute uh, – not to bring up sports again, but I guess I have to, you know, any port in a fucking storm here. It was like watching, uh, you know, when somebody is just, just has the, the just the perfect swing, perfect jump shot, their form or whatever. That, that's what it was like. There was just everything that he did. There wasn't one wasted word, one wasted movement, every, everything. Okay, you want to talk movies? It's like Toy Story. You go to see Toy Story. It's like every line in the movie just propels the thing forward. There's not a line of fat in that fucking script, and it's just just like his act. And he goes out there and just just absolutely fucking destroyed. And uh, it was awesome. The other, other night that I had that ever compared to that was one night I was down at the Comedy Cellar in the, uh, in, in the village in New York City. And um, that's the club where if, if you want to see, if, go out and see great c- comedy, or if you want to see uh, possibly somebody super famous that's a comedian just drop in and do a set that's where i would go and it used to happen all the time and one night i was down the cellar and uh give me naming a lot of names here but i i never named names of the podcast but there's nothing bad about this story so godfrey was hosting the show and um you know i was supposed to i think i, was, I think it was me i was going on next but uh all of a sudden, you know, I, well, I can't really tell the story without saying the names. This is basically just imagine you're sitting in the fucking crowd, all right? You're just seeing no-name hacks like me going up. And all of a sudden, the host goes, uh, hey, everybody, we got a very special guest that just dropped by, wanted to do like five minutes. You might recognize this guy from the hit TV show, Everybody Loves Raymond. Please welcome Ray Romano. And Ray walks on stage, and the crowd goes fucking nuts. Holy fuck, Ray Romano, right? And um, as he's on stage, Seinfeld and Chris Rock show up, and they also want to go on. All right? This has happened once in 20 years of me doing stand-up. This was the most unbelievable night, right? So they go downstairs. Ray Romano finishes. So Godfrey goes back up, and he kept doing these great intros that was making the crowd lose their shit. He goes, keep going for Ray Romano. He goes, all right, we got another special guest just dropped in. You might recognize this guy from the Chris Rock show. Please welcome Chris Rock. And then the fucking place, standing ovation. Holy fuck. We got to see fucking Ray Romano and Chris Rock. And now at this point, every comic knows that Seinfeld is waiting in the wings. So we're all standing there, huddled down in the little hallway, waiting to watch this crowd lose its fucking shit like those soccer moms on fucking Oprah, right? Chris Rock kills it. Godfrey goes up. Chris Rock, everybody. Crowd is like out of breath from fucking laughing. And then he goes, uh, we had another guest drop by. At this point, people are just like, what the fuck, right? He goes, you might recognize this next guy from the hit TV show Seinfeld. And I hear this guy go, no fucking way <laughs> in the crowd. And he goes, please welcome Jerry Seinfeld. And that, like half the crowd almost fainted. He goes up and just fucking destroys and, like, people are, like, elated. They have, like, like when he's done, they, everybody's face is just, like, in pain from grilling, uh, from, from, from grinning. I swear to God, this is a true story, right? So Seinfeld ends, and he goes, all right, keep it going for Jerry Seinfeld. He goes, all right, you guys ready for more show? And the crowd's, like, flipping out, and they go, okay, this next comedian, and the crowd at this point is so goddamn spoiled. I'm standing there in the doorway waiting to go on, and everybody is trying to look around my head for somebody famous to come on, and he's bringing up me. He goes, please, you know, you might have seen him on uh, VH1's I Love the 80s, <laughs> MTV's Apartment 2F. Please welcome Bill Burr. And I went on stage, and there was just, there was a, 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 a noticeable sense of disappointment at that point when I walked up to the mic. And uh, the only way I got out of it was I just addressed it. I was like, that's right. Welcome back to reality. This is what the fuck you paid for. And then everybody laughed. and like, all right, he addressed it. He addressed the fact that we're disappointed to see him. And at that point, they kind of went along for the ride. And I swear to God, an hour later, Dave Chappelle went up and he went up. And that was, uh, 
Though, so that night and the night I just did were the two two most unreal nights that I've ever seen in uh, in stand up comedy. I swear to God, that seller story. I know it sounds like some bullshit. I swear to God, it's fucking true. Um, and I don't know why I'm thinking that you're doubting it. So if you ever go to New York City and you just want to go out and check out some fucking comics, go to the Comedy Cellar right down on uh, West Third and McDougal. All right, I've said that like nine million times in my life. Flagging down a cab back in the day when you could do eight sets on the weekend every night. Flagging down the cab with your spot money. Take me to West Third and McDougal. Do you want me to take the, the, the highway? No, you fucking asshole. It's going to cost me an extra $7. Okay, there's a lot of traffic. All right, you dick. Fucking take the other one, you son of a bitch. What do I care? What do I care? Someday I'll have my own podcast, and I'll be selling ringtones at 99 cents a whack, just raking in the fucking money. That was one of those times where I was just like, you know what? There's not enough lightning in the world. You know, just as far as the odds of being struck by lightning, we need to bring that average up because the amount of fucking morons out there versus actually intelligent people, you're going to hit a fucking moron, you know? You're basically going to hit a moron or you're going to hit the ocean. Those are going to be the top two in that order. Even though the fucking world is three-quarters fucking water, you still got a higher chance as lightning to fucking hit a moron. That's, that, that's, I'm telling you, that's my goddamn theory. And that's what I want the new stat to be. Rather than being like, you know, the, the odds of getting hit by lightning are higher than blah, blah, blah. I want it to turn into, I want so much lightning that, that, that the new stat is the odds of an intelligent person actually being hit by lightning are X, Y, and Z. Do you like how in my own little Stalin-esque world that I'm actually intelligent and everybody else is just a sea of morons? Huh? You don't have thoughts like that? murderous thoughts i was actually uh talking to this broad up in uh san francisco and um i got this whole chunk about hitting women that i've been doing on stage and uh it's actually something embarrassing i have to admit about myself as much as i do the the comedy thing for a living i'm really bad at picking up on sarcasm I'm, i don't know why I use sarcasm. I'm sarcastic, right? But for some reason, when someone uses it against me, I, I just like, like like that old guy downstairs. Remember, I told you that shit last year when I was dragging my Christmas tree down the stairs. And he stuck his head out the window and he just goes, "Beautiful morning, isn't it?" And he had this fucked up look on his face, but he said, "Beautiful morning, isn't it?" So I was confused, and I just went, yeah, yeah, it is a beautiful morning. And I'm thinking, why is he yelling with that twisted-up look on his face? And then I walked around the corner. I was like, oh, he didn't mean it. He, what he really meant was, you're making a lot of fucking noise ruining this beautiful morning. So he got me. Then I always end up feeling stupid. So, you know, I'm doing this whole chunk on hitting the broads over there, right? And I'm standing afterwards, whoring myself out, right? Selling my DVD, showing a little bit of leg, doing what I got to do. And this fucking woman is walking out, and her husband is sort of shuffling her out. And she starts going, uh, oh, yeah, she, she has this, once again, the twisted up look on her face. She goes, thanks for the domestic violence jokes. I really appreciated it. I really appreciated the domestic violence jokes. Thanks a lot for the domestic violence jokes. That's what she was doing. And because she was saying thanks, it just it went totally past my head. I was more just confused by her facial expression. So she said, yeah, I really appreciated it. Thanks a lot. I'm literally just waving, going, all right, glad you enjoyed the show. <laughs> Which is funny because it probably pissed her off more, but I was sincerely thanking her, completely missing her sarcasm. What she was really saying was, I've either dealt with that personally or that's happening to somebody right now or has happened to someone or I grew up with it or whatever. And you brought up bad memories and you ruined my fucking evening. That's what she was really saying. But, of course, I took it at face value, which actually, when I look back on it, I think makes it even funnier. Because who's kidding who? She already thinks I'm a fucking moron at that point. You know? So it would actually would have made her a little bit happier if I tried to appear intelligent. 
if like actually uh, you missed the point of that joke. What I was really trying to do is expose the hypocrisy of uh, some of the relationships between the male and female sexes. If I went that route, you know, then she could have gotten this whole. But the fact that I, I literally was the moron that she thought I was, and then that there was this whole line of people. You know what I just realized? I should be struck by lightning. What the fuck is wrong with me? I'm one of those fucking morons. Well, so you stopped drinking, and then... I had to let... It's just, uh, you know, I'm a road dog. I go out every two weeks. People don't understand that about comedy, that it is... Uh, even if you're not, like, a drinker in the traditional sense of, like, being an alcoholic, booze is unavoidable. It's free. It's free, and it's... Every, and they, it's After every gig, it's free. I always ask my uh, people like that. I just say, like, if you had a job yeah. where when you were done, it was open bar, and... In a you lot of places on the, job. on the job. Yeah, they'd bring you. You'd yes. bring, Would you like a beer at your desk, yes. sir? Would you and like the, a booze? And the in people your you work with will send a shot up if, yeah. if you just <laughs> even hint about it. Yeah, like I'm you thirsty. know, I was drinking Jameson the other night, and then all of a sudden somebody sends you <laughs> up bu- one, like a kettle of Jameson yeah. comes up. And to then the stage. then a crowd of peer pressure. Do it. Do the What's shot wrong with you. Yeah, like that's first of all. There's so much pressure. I don't even know where it comes from because. I haven't stopped drinking, but I am trying to cut back. And Last time I remember, you were a, you were a bourbon, bourbon I, I girl. I still love bourbon. I'll always yeah. love bur- bourbon. I would have sex with bourbon if it was a dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm getting drunk and late at the same time. What's happening? Uh, but I, I'm trying to be more of a – I'm just trying to be more judicious – you know what I mean? Because you just, you feel it. You just start, first yeah. of all, you start to feel like, fuck the weight or your discipline or height. You just feel it so much more. You, when you wake up in the, like, you have that thing where you wake yeah. up at four in the morning, like, oh, shouldn't I shouldn't have had that second glass of wine. No, I, I, <laughs> I had, my bottoming, bottoming out thing was, I think I was somewhere in Texas and me and uh, DeRosa were riding oh, in, DeRosa. The, yeah, we're riding in this waitress's car. And classic. What car? Of course you were. And, 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 and waitress's car. We're just no. We're, we're riding to some house party, and she's doing the whole. Again, why wouldn't you be yeah, riding to a house exactly. party? Exactly. Waitress's car. That's this is the glamorous <laughs> stand-up, folks. I don't think you knew. I got picked up in a bitch's 1986 Honda yeah. to go to a dude's house. I don't know and drink keg beer out of a plastic cup because I roll like that. that. I'm it. a headliner. That was <laughs> it. And she was she was saying shit like you know I have uh, I'm, I'm sorry I have a cat. So, like, you know, the covered in hair. And I show up, and at one point, I'm hammered playing with a bulldog. That's all I remember going, this thing is awesome. Oh, God. And somebody finally. <laughs> That's always the last resort of the wasted, start talking to house pets. <laughs> yeah, somebody said to me, going like, because they weren't at the show, you're like, you're like that, you're that comedian guy. <laughs> right, I'm like, like yeah. yeah. And they go, well, you, you did a couple of sketches on Chappelle's show. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, it's like, dude, I can't believe you're here. Why are you here? Yeah, and then I, I actually thought I was like, you know, totally, you know, stroke my ego. Then I thought for half a second, like, yeah, why am why I am here? Why am I here? My dad had five kids by the time he was my age. Okay, I'm a fucking yeah. loser. And I'm drinking in the backyard of a stranger's house and talking to his dog. Yeah. yeah Joe, on the other hand, of course, was having a great time. So anyways, these guys are fucking jabbing this dude in the ribcage harder and harder. And then all of a sudden, three, four fans jump out of the stands and they start running at the cops. And then the cops literally look up. They look like, you ever see like those, those when the fucking couple of lions take down a zebra or some shit and they begin to feed and then all of a sudden 40 hyenas show up and then they got to give up the kill? That's basically what happened. They looked up and they're like, oh shit, four on four. So they stood up and they try to have a where cops, are you out of your mind? I made you kind of vibe, and then all of a sudden, those four showing up made another 20 people come out of the stands, and next thing you know, the cops are on the run, and then they get fucking beaten down. One guy in particular gets stomped even worse, way worse, actually, than the other fucking guy. It actually goes from from shocking to amazing to hilarious to fucking disgusting very quickly. You know, because, you know, you're always watching these guys getting beaten. This is a fellow sports fan. I don't know. It's one of those things that I always wanted to ask a cop, like, why do you guys, you got a guy down, he's face fucking down. I'm not being a dick. I'm not judging what you do. I don't have your job. I'm just asking. You got a guy face down. Somebody's got their knee on the guy, back of the guy's neck. Somebody else is sitting on his fucking legs. The most he can do is squirm like half an inch. All right? And the guy won't let you cuff him. You know, why not? Why rather than just taking an extra 30 seconds 
to let this guy tire out and then just cuff him? Why do you start booting him in the head or, or, or you know, doing atomic knee drops to his spine? Why is that done? I do have a theory. There's 60,000 fucking fans there, and you have like 100 cops. You know? And when I really think about it, the amount of times I've been drunk when I'm at a game, and I think about running out on the field, the sobering thought is is taking that atomic knee drop to my fucking spine. And, you know, I got busted for drinking and driving back in the late fucking 80s, you know? Back when they were actually considering making it possibly an Olympic sport, you know? It was right on that, that you know, but then the mad mothers against drink, drinking and driving, they, they won. It's very close. It's like when Quebec wanted to secede from Canada. Like, it almost fucking happened. Um, Summer Olympics, by the way. Let's not get crazy. It wasn't going to be in the winter. Um, too much degree of difficulty. But anyways, the, the, all those memories of the beatdown that people take, plus the nightmare of the one time I was in the court system and somebody had my driver's license and there, were, there was fines. In classes and meetings and, and community service, it just all just I don't care how many drinks I've had. I'm just I'm like, I'm not fucking doing it. Is that why you guys do it? Sorry, I had the hiccups. Bacon, egg and cheese here, people. I'm off my oatmeal diet on the road here. Um, is that why is that why it happens? I've always wondered that shit. I kind of actually I understand why you come up to the window of a car and because at any point I get if, if I if any point I could get shot in the head and die on my job, I guess I would be on edge too. But I would just love to hear it from a cop because right, all I'm doing is speculating. So we have a couple of, we have a video like that this week. We have another hilarious video of a cop pulls over this uh, minivan. And I swear to God, the amount of immigrants that run out of this fucking van, it is unbelievable. Every time you think the last wave of eight people runs out of this fucking van, another door opens and another seven people come flying out. And they got Benny Hill music playing, and it's the funniest thing ever. This cop gets so overwhelmed, he doesn't catch anybody. It's like a fat kid if it was raining candy. he'd be Every time he gets some in his hand, he'd want to go catch some more, and he'd drop whatever's in his fucking hand. That's basically what happened. Fucking hilarious video. I want to thank people who uh, sent both of those videos in. Um, we kind of we kind of have all cop videos this week because I'm trying I'm trying to draw them out of the weeds here because I want to do a Monday morning podcast select with a uh, a retired police officer and I want to hear all these these stories. We did interview a, a cop on Uninformed, but uh, I want to do it again because I, I have even more questions now. Um, there's another one where a guy. <laughs> He's getting arrested. I don't know what for. It's one of those videos that starts after the altercation starts. As far as I can tell, he changed his name and didn't do it in a legal way. But he's being like a rebel. I'm not your property. But the funny thing is, is this guy knows his rights. And one of the funniest things, one of my favorite police videos to watch is when the person getting arrested, like, knows their rights. You know? Like this cop one time said to this little skater going, give me that skateboard. And he goes, no. And it's just one of those things as, as a citizen, you don't realize, yeah, like, wait a minute. No, you don't have the right to just take my, you so like do everything the cop says so he doesn't uh, arrest you or, uh, or beat the shit out of you. You know, you just feel like if you just say no to a cop, you're automatically going to get arrested. Well, this guy is fucking hilarious. They're going, you're under arrest. And he goes, what's the charge? What is the charge? And the guy goes, it doesn't matter. And he's like, yes, it does. I have a right to know as a citizen. I am not your property. I am the property of Yahweh. <laughs> this guy, I absolutely fucking love this guy. This guy, he has passion. He's informed. He's a little fucking crazy. Uh, he, is a, he is a true fucking patriot. Without a doubt, every the amount of people who would watch this guy and because he yells Yahweh would just say that he's a fucking, he's a nut job is actually a travesty. Okay, here we go. Bill, uh, want to bang lesbian friend who is in lesbian remission? Jesus. Okay, this is outside my realm, but I'll, I'll try and answer it. Hey, Bill, 
I want your opinion on this problem I have. I'm a 19-year-old college freshman, and I'm in a bit of an ethical dilemma. I have this friend who is a lesbian, and recently she has been she hasn't been having any luck with the ladies. So now she's feeling vulnerable to the point that she's acti actually contemplating about fucking this guy she knows. After she tells me this, I start getting jealous because I've always had sexual feelings for her, but never acted on them because she's a lesbian and I respected her. Dude, what kind of a fucking asshole are you? You know, why are you hanging out with her? You just waiting for daylight? What, what are you doing? She's a lesbian. She doesn't want to fuck you. you, you you're sitting at a, at a, it's a dried up well. It's over. Walk away. What else is there? Well, I guess she's a lesbian. Maybe she's into some, uh, I don't know. Does she fix cars like you? I have no idea what the... <laughs> uh, is there anything worse than a guy just hovering around? You know, rather than going out and just like... I don't know what you're waiting for. Just plenty of fish in the sea. You're 19. Well, well, you know what? I'm being too hard on you. You're 19 years old. You have no idea. Hello, Cleo. Hey, Nia, can you help me out with this one? Oh, you got to go? Real quick? You got to go? This guy's trying to bang this uh, lesbian girl who's in lesbian remission. It means she hasn't, she's wanted to like hook up with uh, some other ladies, but they're not giving it to her. So she's actually been contemplating fucking this other guy. So now this dude's jealous because he's always been hanging around her. Remember that conversation we had earlier? That's why guy, guys hang around women. Either they're the gay guy or they're trying to fuck you. There's really no other. There's really <laughs> All right. Well, I wish you could hang here. All right. Go have fun. Oh, I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry. All right. That's nice, though. Your fans thought that you were coming on, and now you're not. You're leaving them oh, wanting more. Wait. You're, you're leaving them wanting more. Can we do this real quick? I, ugh, it has to be very quickly. Okay, so I told you what's going on. Yeah. Cleo, get out of here. Um, anyways, but now that she's in the mood to, go, to going back to fucking dudes, some other douche is feeling her up even before I knew what was happening. So this other guy got in there. He goes, I don't want to make her my girlfriend. We both made it very clear, neither of us are good at being in relationships because we're both selfish people. I do not want, however, I do want to fuck her once, and I tried asking my cousin for his point of view on the situation, but he recently found Jesus. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. So the only answer to give, he gives me is read the Bible or premarital sex is a sin. What do you think? Should I sleep with her before she fucks this guy and realize she doesn't like men and ruin any chance I have? Uh, wait, should I try... Oh, should I try to sleep with her before this guy fucks her and she realizes she doesn't like men and ruin any chance I have? Or should I just go, just be the friend and do nothing? Thanks. Are there no other women around for you to fuck that you're just completely singularly focused on and obsessed with this girl who's a lesbian? That's exactly what I said. Why are you hovering around her? That's what I want. Is it because you can't have her or like it's, it's, a, it's a chase thing or it's a struggle that he's like, I gotta have You know what it is? Her. I bet I they're the same, the same height and they can borrow each other's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> just leave I was alone. wondering, were you going to wear that flannel tonight? Cause, uh... I feel like getting involved sexually with anyone who's having like going back and forth with their sexuality and figuring it out is probably not a good idea. Just because there's probably a lot of emotional shit going on along with that that she may not talk about and you may not be aware of. I would just leave it alone. Yeah, why don't you just go talk to a girl that wants to bang a guy? Why don't yeah, you make it a lot easier? Make it a lot easier on yourself. Hey, how do I turn this bus into a bicycle? <laughs> I've always wanted this bus to be a bicycle, and uh, now it's... But, wait, uh, but, but men like the chase, though, right? You no, like, you like we like a, a layup. Hard? We like a layup. What? I thought men are all about the chase and make it difficult and all that. I thought no, that that's what the... you guys are into. You guys are into just no. making it difficult. We want you guys just to fucking just <laughs> lie down, yeah, <laughs> recline. <laughs> Stop acting like it doesn't feel good for you too. You know. No, you know what it is. There, there is as far as like. Uh, a good feeling is when a woman is making it difficult and you tear through all that bullshit and you're able to make her uh, succumb. Mm. You're rolling your eyes, Nia, right? You've yeah, experienced that, haven't is, you? Well, yeah, this is the speech that you give before you tell people, like... Oh, you, you, you were making it difficult. And that yeah, dude was cock-blocking is... me and I fucking... T I, that, 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 that right there is like... Uh, remember that year when, when Tom Hanks won back-to-back -back Oscars? Yeah. He's still a great actor, but, you know, is that ever going to happen again? Right. 
that's that's my that's my uh, sexual conquest. Oh, I the see. night I brought you down. You did bring I brought me you down. down like a fucking wildebeest on I the Serengeti. Liked you from before, <laughs> you didn't have to. Look at see what they do. They just take it away. Oh, Cleo. Cleo, come on. Come on. Uh, well, all right. Well, that's my that's my two cents. Okay. So I'm gonna go now. Okay. All right. I'll see you. Have fun. <laughs> all right, the fucking female RoboCop. <laughs> fucking working out like a maniac. I'm over here becoming a tub of shit. Right. That's right. All right. I'll see you later. So there you go, sir. This is what I think you should do. I, we basically both of us. You got to stop hanging out with these girls. That uh, why are you doing that? You know. I know why you're doing it. I know why you're doing it. Because you can be like, dude, my dick is so intoxicating. Even chicks who don't like dick can't say no to my dick. Oh. Um. All right. Depressed dude. A Billy cunt. Exclamation point. I've been listening. To, I've been listening to your podcast for years. Your deranged psychopathic perspective reminds me I'm not the only one. Shaking ladders. I don't know what that means. Is this guy from Boston? I've been listening to the podcast for years. Your deranged psychopathic perspective reminds me I'm not the only one shaking ladders, kid. Nah, it still doesn't sound, even if in the accent. Shaking ladders. I don't know what that means. Anyways, I got a problem. You know, I was in Boston all last week, so the Boston accent kind of came back. The old, uh, you know, I got a problem. Instead of saying, uh, get a job, get a job. Dude, it needs to get a job. And for those of you working on your Boston accents, J-O-B, just say like jaw, like I'm going to punch you in the jaw, and then B, job. Got to get a fucking job. You know what kills me right now? There's like fucking 200 of you right now just muttering to yourself, get a fucking job in your cubicle. Um, <laughs> freaking out your coworkers, just mumbling. Get a fucking job. You fucking cocksucker. Um, I got a problem. For years now, I've been trapped in my KFC and wet wipes. Okay, that's disgusting. I used to be a bodybuilder, an actor, and a comedian with fucking prospects right in front of me. But then adulthood raped me in the eyes. Oh, Jesus. Could you be more dramatic? This sounds like that fucking chick from uh, Sex in the City. Uh, crazy broad broke my hat. I had, this is the guy again, crazy broad, broke my heart. I had to cut away old friends and family shutting me out of their smiles. All right, dude, this is like getting creepier with each sentence. If you don't bring this around in like two sentences, I'm going to abandon this. I had to cut away from old friends and family shutting me out of their smiles. Dude, what did you do that your friends and family decided they didn't want to be around you? Uh, anyways, I don't feel sorry for myself or want any pity. Uh, I just You're not going to get any. So good. I'm glad you don't. He goes, I just want to know how to get out of this never-ending routine of demise. Well, first of all, I would stop using those goth death metal words. You know, demise. What else you got in here? Adult rape me in the eyes. Are you, these are like song lyrics. You know? Depressed dude, what would be the name of this? Trapped in my KFC and wet wipes. Right? That sounds like I can't sing like that. <coughs> Rape me in the eyes. This routine of demise. All these fucking kids getting like whip, fucking whiplash. Um, I worked too much in a job that was supposed to pay for co my comedy career when I don't work. I, uh, I was supposed to pay for my comedy career when I, when I don't work. Uh, I sleep or... Oh, when I don't work, I sleep or watch endless DVDs. I'm 24 years old. Oh, what the fuck? This reads like you're 56, dude. He goes, I'm tired all the time from all the hating of the world, and my body just won't listen to the screaming frustration in my soul. Dude, you listen to, like, you listen to progressive metal, I'm guessing, by the words you use here. Uh, either that you play Dungeons and Dragons. I'm really not helping your depression by shitting on you through all of this. Um... Don't worry. I'm going to give you some sunshine here in the end here. So I, I sometimes get a spark of motivation to get back in shape and, to, and start writing script, but it only lasts for a day or two at the most. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then the work comes, and you have to keep going. And that's what separates the people in life who fucking work and, and make it and those who don't. You know, 
Everything's fun for a couple of fucking days. I'm going to get shredded. I'm going to join a boxing gym. I'm going to look like I'm going to fight in a title fight. And you go down there, you skip rope. I'm going to get abs. You're doing all the fucking shit. And two days in, you know, after two days, you, you, you get tired. All right? And that's where you need the discipline to get up and go over there even though you don't want to. You know? People who've written Oscar-winning scripts, I bet they don't like fucking doing it on, on a certain level. But they keep going. So... I would just tell you to keep fucking going. Anyways, let me read the rest of this dr overly dramatic shit. I've lost all faith in the world, have nothing to fight for anymore. I respect your go-fuck-yourself attitude and want and want to know what you did to finally pick yourself up from your dark inflicted depression. Uh, sorry it's not the funniest emails, but I could really do with you guys. I know, dude. I'm fucking with you. I know you're going through some shit. So uh, here we go. I'm going to help you out here. Uh, first thing I would do, get rid of the KFC and wet wipes. All right? If you're already kind of a depressed dude, if you eat bad food, that's just going to add. Because I'm just speaking personally. Once again, not a licensed guy here in case you throw yourself off the fucking roof. All right? Um, yeah, number one, this is what I do. Go, go out and get something healthy to eat. You know, drink some water. Okay? Get eight hours sleep. Wake up and eat something healthy. Then go to the grocery store when you're full and go buy a bunch of healthy shit. Okay, chop up the veggies, chop up the lettuce, get a fucking salad already made in there so you don't have to think about it. All right, cook up some fucking chicken, chop that shit up, make some chicken salad. You got that in there too. Get yourself some fucking lunch meat and get yourself some real bread from a fucking bakery. Start with that bullshit. You start eating right and then just start working out. You're automatically going to feel good about yourself and fucking stick with that. As far as that other shit goes, dude, you're 24 years old. All right. I started comedy when I was 24. You sound like you've already been doing it and quit. So you're ahead of where where I was at at your age. So there's no reason to be depressed. All right. Um, this is how I got beyond my depression was I just started observing it. I looked at it as a spectator rather than feeling a thought and just accepting it and then being dragged to the bottom of the fucking ocean with it. I just started to pay attention. I just sat there and listened to what my brain was telling me. And it was a bunch of negative, oh, my God, I'm going to fail. I'm going to have to go back moving with my parents, and they're going to die. I'm not going to be able to afford to pay for the house, and then I'm going to be homeless, and then I'm just going to die, and, uh, you know, nothing's ever going to work out for me. You know, those were the thoughts I was having. So I just sat back and observed them, and I just started going, I, I don't want to think that. I want to think that. And I would just... As I felt them coming, I would just replace it with like a positive thought. I know this is really corny and simple, but I kind of started doing that. And the more I did that, because it didn't quite work. It actually didn't work in the beginning at all. But like I just kept doing it more and more. And then I just became conscious of when my brain was going in that direction. And um, working out helps me. Eating right helps me. Going down to a comedy club telling jokes helps me out. Playing drums. Wrestling with my dog. You know, taking Nia out to dinner, just go do something like it's just a choice. You know, July 30th, it's only going to happen once. Am I going to fucking be a miserable cunt on this? Or like I said, July 30th, 2012 is only going to happen once. It's just it's just a fucking choice, dude. So, you know, if, if what you're dealing with is clinical, then it's obviously way beyond me. So I don't need, you know, and then I don't have to fucking apologize like Fred Willard. Um, I'm sorry that you didn't go to a psychiatrist and you went to a hacky comedian instead. Evidently, that's my fault. The pests are like the the most loyal and active but radio all, fans, I think, of any show. And they also turn on us as well. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, dude. They keep us on our toes. It's like, fuck. Yeah, they uh, they They're definitely brutal. used to at the comedy shows. I know you guys had some... We, I went to one of your shows. I did one of your shows in Vegas, and it was great. The yeah. audience was great. But no, I've our seen... audience, uh, has, uh, it has to be said, they are a great comedy crowd. They will sit down and fucking listen, man. But, but that and show they, in Philly, the infamous show. Where that one they, they didn't. Were, they were, so yeah, Philly, that they one were they a little did. hostile. Yeah, well, they, they were drinking all day. We did these uh, comedy shows across America, and the Philly one is legendary now. And I feel bad because I know you're close with Don Marrero, but he, yeah. he ate his balls that day. But, <laughs> but I've thought about it many times since that went on. He never had a chance. He never had a chance, and Jimmy Schubert never had a chance. And Jimmy Schubert actually bombed in front of his fucking family that were basically sitting in the front row. Uh, they had to deal with that shit. Did Jimmy go on first? Uh, no, Jimmy came close. I think he... No, I think he went... Who didn't bomb? Um, Norton. Bill Burr was next. 
Bill Burr saw what was happening with Jimmy Schubert and then Don Marrera. And then went on and shit all and over. And he goes, you know what? They're fucking not doing this to me. And at that point, uh, our audience didn't really know Bill Burr yet. You know, they didn't embrace him yet like other guys that came before Bill. He was sort of on the cusp of being accepted by our big fucking, you know, lunatic uh, audience. And he said, I, they ain't doing that shit to me. So, you know, it's legendary. That, that, that clip is out there, too. Yeah. Where he took on the entire fucking place. Fuck you fucking and fuck place. the Liberty Bell. <laughs> right. Yeah. He and went after Philadelphia in did. a way that nobody's ever done no. before. And, and he, uh, he, they started booing him. By the end of it, he got a standing ovation. Yeah. It was one of the most amazing th things I've ever seen. I, I know I'm saying that a lot, but we're bringing up a lot of benchmarks today. But that was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen a guy turn a fucking room like that yeah that was legit but you don't stop talking do you like ah fuck it I'll just cook this side for a while just don't, you know what's funny I'm cooking my brain talking about nothing I know. I'm just walking around like yeah I just got a cheeseburger oh fuck all you people you know what you fucking losers I hope you all fucking die and I hope the fucking Eagles never win the Super Bowl. Go fuck yourselves. Fuck all you motherfuckers. And fuck the Flyers. Fuck all of you. Fucking goddamn fucking losers. Boo and Don Myrera. Suck a dick. All of you. Suck a fucking dick. How's that? No, I'm segueing into my next joke. You can all lick my fucking red nuts. All of you. You can line up in your Harold Carmichael fucking jerseys and one at a time you can all suck my dick city of brotherly love you bunch of fucking cocks fucking goddamn losers 52 fucking hours into a show the fuck am I gonna do at this point you people are on a goddamn acid you fucking be up here talking about Hitler that ain't gonna work what do you want me to talk about Wait, throw some topics. Let's talk about heart disease. Something you're all gonna fucking die of and I'm gonna laugh at your fucking funerals. It's gonna be great. You're all gonna get fucking cancer, which is fantastic because all your fucking heads are shaved anyways. No one's even gonna notice. You're gonna get fired for coming to work too late because they're not gonna notice that you have fucking bone marrow cancer. The only thing that's gonna give it away is me laughing at you in the fucking background. You fucking bunch of losers with your fucking cell phone pictures. You fucking suck a dick. You fucking asshole. Eleven more minutes of this. I hope you all get in your Ford Focuses. You fucking drive off the side of that faggot ass Ben Franklin Bridge. You fucking one bridge having piece of shit city that no one gives a fuck about. The terrorists, the terrorists will never bomb you people because you're fucking worthless and no one cares about you. You are this high above New Orleans. No one gives a shit. FEMA will never show up for you fucking assholes. I hope your mother has herpes and the center of her asshole and you go home tonight, you lick it, you get it on your tongue and some other horrific shit happens that involves cancer. So all of you, 11 minutes left. 11 minutes. I hope somebody takes a fucking beer stein and just slaps you on the back of your zit infested fucking shoulders and your awful man tit tank tops. I hope that happens to you. I hope the glass fucking digs into your fucking shoulder blade and then I see you afterwards. Hey, how's it going? Enjoy the fucking show, that's great. And I grab you by the fucking hair, but you don't have any. <laughs> they really have to come to this, people. They really have to come to it. I really hope all of you run into all those black people that you love so much here in Camden. I really hope that happens. I hope there's a line of all of you guys getting fucking carjacked and they take out their big black dicks and they just shove them right in your fucking mouths, each and every one of you. And somehow they just keep repeatedly coming right in your fucking eyeballs. Until it builds up so much that your eyes they fucking crust over. You can't see shit. And somehow there's another dick in there for you to suck. Ten minutes left. Is this what you want? It's a fucking... Bunch of 
fucking losers. <laughs> fucking Rocky is your hero. The whole pride of your city is built around a fucking guy who doesn't even exist. You got fucking Joe Frazier is from there, but he's black, so you can't fucking deal with him. So you make a fucking statue for some three-foot fucking Italian, you stupid Philly cheesy fucking jackasses. I hope that cheese melts your fucking faces off. All of you collectively suck. Donovan McNabb shirt. I hope he snaps both his fucking ankles in the first goddamn game. I hope you go all in fucking 16. I said suck a dick. Eight minutes left. Eight fucking minutes left. The Flyers, do they even fucking exist anymore? A bunch of goddamn pansies. Haven't won shit since fucking Gerald Ford was in office. Why don't you just have the fucking ice capades down there, you assholes? You probably wouldn't even notice the difference. That fucking pussy team. Remember they had that whole season where they wore the slacks? You bunch of faggots. What else? What else? I text your mothers. It's eight minutes. I'm doing it all. I'm fucking standing here. Look, I broke the mic stand. I got a little fucking cane now. I'm going to be the little observational comedian up here. What's that, sir? What do you have to say, sir? Never passed the fucking eighth grade. What brilliant shit are you going to fucking tell me, huh? Go back to the dock and go unload some shit. You fucking warehouse working, weed smoking fucking disappointment for your mother. Seven minutes left. Seven motherfucking minutes left. Fucking stupid ass piece of shit fucking crowd. Bunch of fucking losers. I hope your fucking radios fall on your head tomorrow. The fucking antenna goes right in your fucking ears. In my hand already. You fall out of one of those piece of shit buildings. Fuck all of you and fuck the Liberty Bell. And shove it up Ben Franklin's ass. What do you think about that? All of you motherfuckers, I hope that bridge collapses under your pathetic lives. Go fuck yourselves. Six minutes left and I will be selling my CD after this shit, you motherfuckers. And the only way you get one is if I throw one at your fucking stupid heads. You bunch of racist fucking morons. Look at this. What are you taking a picture of, E-Rock, huh? This is the most, I'm saying all the shit I wanted to say for 14 minutes. This right here is the theme of my set, a broken mic stand. Three motherfucking minutes left. Three fucking minutes left. What's left? The Phillies, that faggot ass team named after a female horse. You bunch of pussies. You won one fucking World Series since 1880s. Suck a dick. Bring Tom McGraw back from the dead, you fucking jackasses. Maybe you'll win another one. It ain't ever happening. It ain't ever fucking happening with your red candy striped faggot fucking uniforms. Your team should be selling cotton candy in the fucking instructional leagues. The other soccer team? That's all I got left, huh? You got a fucking ping pong team? Some other shit ass fucking team that's never gonna win a championship? You guys haven't won a Super Bowl since they had face masks, you fucking jackass. Roman Gabriel running around a fucking leather helmet. Ah, suck a dick. What was he, a dad or something? You don't know who the fuck he is. I have my fucking shirt for this shit. Went to the Banana Republic, picked a $20 shirt off the rack. Fucking ridiculous. Getting booed by people sitting in the fucking grass. Goddamn launch seats. Yay! It's fun, isn't it? It's great. I'm actually getting, I'm actually getting fucking paid right now, people. Yay! I'm getting paid to shit all over you guys and your stupid fucking rock t-shirts of bands that no one gives a fuck about. Four minutes left. Yay! You with your rush fucking t-shirts. I beat the shit out of my girlfriend. 
That felt great. That really felt great. I want to thank you guys for having me. You guys were phenomenal. Each and every. Oh no, I got four minutes left. I got four fucking minutes left to fucking talk about you cunts. That's not bad. That's not bad. Twelve minute rant. That was the first time I said cunt. That's a fucking record. I'm gonna finish my set by taking this mic stand bass like a fucking disc. I hope I hit a baby in the fucking head. The one fucking kid who would actually go to chat college in this fucking crowd. What's that, sir? Dave Chappelle, yes, he's not here. I wish I was on his fucking tour right now. Maybe I wouldn't have a bunch of cunts not fucking paying attention four hours into a goddamn show. Three fucking minutes left. Three minutes left in this motherfucking tirade. Boring. What's that? Sir, why are you screaming? You're in the front row, you dumb fuck. <laughs> God, I hope this whole crowd, I hope this whole mass AIDS full blown, like fucking you get weak as you walk to your fucking cars, you just pass out, and they just find you, and next to your 83 fucking Monte Carlo with gravel embedded into the side of your fucking bald ass fucking heads. Bill. Yes. What about Vincent Papalio? What about what? Vincent Papalio. What about not fucking interrupting me, you jackass? Play a fucking that was record, you son idea. of a bitch. Sorry. I'm fucking trying to deal with this bullshit. Jesus Christ, the goddamn people on the show are giving me shit. So anyways, back to the jokes. I got a computer recently, people. <laughs> Fucking motherfuckers. I put in two minutes left. The last two minutes is gonna be my rider for the rest of this fucking tour. I go on first, I do three minutes. That's it. I come out here with a fucking gun, right? That's what I do. I come out with a fucking gun, hollow tip bullets, and I just start fucking shooting people, okay? And everybody's chained to their fucking chairs. I just blow all your fucking brains out, like just just one after another. Just fucking one. It's two to the back of the head, never ending. Coming out like a fucking Mexican with those two fucking crosses of bullets. I just blow all your fucking brains out. I would really enjoy blowing everybody's brains out. Just fucking, just, just the next day, somebody mopping up the three pounds of fucking brains that are actually in this goddamn crowd. One minute left in the period. Alright, listen. This doesn't change anything, this set. I still fucking hate you people. And I hate this fucking city. I hate the way you eat your little shitty ass fucking subway. And uh, why don't you fucking build something for Joe Frazier and get that fucking idiot. You guys all gonna go see Rocky 19? Yeah, dude, I think you can win! Alright, <laughs> uh, listen, I'm out of time. You guys, you guys were here, man. Thank you very much. All of you go fuck yourselves. Bill Burr started out in Boston, and you deal with so many crowds like that. Yeah. Drunk, angry, crazy fucks, that you develop that style, that, that right. you know, that uh, attack style. That was such a Boston set. Is Boston a, set. tough for you guys? Boston's a great place. It's but a I great mean, place to do stand-up. Well, as long as you got your, your shit together. But, I mean, when you're coming up, I would imagine it was hard. Well, when, when Bill and I came up, I was a couple of years before him, but um, when we came up... There was so many good comics around that, yeah. like the the rules of the land had been pretty much established, and there was a lot of like really good places to do stand up. Right. But there was also like a lot of like really fucked up little shitholes that you get sent to. Those right. are like so important though. Of course. You know you can't have like only easy crowds when you're starting out. Right. To really learn how to do comedy, you got to be able to do some hostile places. Right. So I see like a guy like Bill. In that video, it's like that's right up Bill's alley. You get you, it. You do stand up in Boston. You you're gonna have to deal with some fuckheads. <laughs> you, you get it. I miss those shows. We're we're thinking about bringing them back. We'll Bring say. them back, man. Yeah, It'd be maybe, fun. Maybe this coming summer we'll do one or two. You were the guy. Advice: exotic pets. 
Uh, Bill, last week I was laid off from my office cubicle job of four years. I am now a 25-year-old unemployed college student struggling to make rent. Ah, Jesus. My heart goes out to you, brother. But at least you're 25. You're not fucking married. You don't have any kids. That's the bright side. And I know you don't need to hear that. All right? All right, here we go. Can't go back to my parents as they are halfway across the planet in Taiwan. Now my question is, do I continue to... do I continue trying to get back in the rat race or do I follow my dream of becoming an exotic pet reptile breeder? Jesus Christ. How the fuck do I? Are you just fucking with me? This is your dream? Well, you know what? You are from Taiwan. I imagine everything that's considered exotic over here is like nothing. You know? I bet over in Taiwan, instead of getting like a bicycle as a four year old, they give you like a defanged cobra or some shit. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to stop and laugh at the ignorance of that statement. Um, <clears throat> anyways, I have no experience in the field. Fantastic. You're going to be on Spike TV's A Thousand Ways to Die. Except, okay, except that, okay, I have no experience in the field, except for that I have a snake and four hamsters as pets. All right, dude, I don't want to burst your bubble, but there's nothing exotic about hamsters, even if you have four or cuatro. Sorry, I started the new fucking Rosetta Stone Spanish again. Hmm? Yo tengo un pero es gris e blanco. Pero es bueno es loco. Hey, loco. How the fuck you say it? My dog's out of its mind. Um, La mujer... A manzana verde. Um, I've been... Let's get back to this shit. I think I just said the woman and then green apple. There's really nothing that connected either one of those. Oh, go fuck yourself. I'm going to do it. At some point in my life, I'm going to become bilingual. So anyways, this dude wants to start raising exotic pets, breeding them. He has no experience. Now, what kind of fucking snake do you have? You know, if you have a garden sna- gardener snake, I guess you got to start somewhere. You do have a reptile and uh, four little rat things. This is cool, dude. You know what you're doing? You're doing like the open mics of this. I get it. You've got to start slow. You can't start right with the black mamba. You're going to get yourself killed. Anyways, he said, I've been to the reptile expo a couple of times and saw that vendors there just breed and sell snakes for a living and thought to myself, holy shit, I want to do that. Encourage animals to bang and sell the offspring. All from my own apartment, living the dream. What to do? Any advice? Uh, What gave you the balls to start stand-up? Understanding the opportunity cost of the income of a full-time job. Uh, Any advice would help. Thanks, Mr. Burr. All right. All right, what do you do here? Well, dude, you're you're doing the right thing. You basically, like you you go into one of those uh, reptile expos and looking at the douchebags doing it. And being like, I could fucking do that was like me when I used to watch some of those stand-up shows and be like, I'm funnier than this guy. All right? And you have the luxury of not having a job right now, so you don't have to worry about, you know, well, what if this interferes with my job? You don't have a fucking job. Um, Your biggest thing right now, dude, is you need income. All right? So I would continue looking for a job that is flexible. All right, while you start building your stockpile of uh, reptiles. First thing I would do is I would go on the Internet and I would read as much as humanly possible. I would go to howtomaketwosnakesfuck.com. I would start. (laughs) I don't know what to tell you, dude. I would just keep going to those expos like they're open mics. I would keep reading up on it. I would try and find uh, this is what you do. This is what you do. Act like you want to buy a fucking snake and go to some fucking dude and ask them how they got into the business as you pretend like, you know, like you're browsing. And maybe you can get a job working for one of those guys. You figure out what the fuck he's doing, right? You you pull a Joe Kennedy that I've learned reading in the wonderful book, The Sins of the Father. Um, Yeah, that guy used to work every place. He'd work at a place for like seven months to two years. He'd rifle through all the files get all this insider information, make a boatload of cash, and leave the fucking company in the shitter. 
Okay? Now, I'm not saying to do that, but fucking work with for these other guys. Figure out what they're doing. Do what they're doing. Become better at it. That's what I would do. If you really want to do this shit, I would. But uh, I got to tell you this, man. Um, I don't know how you make two pit vipers fuck each other. But uh, I would definitely get a... Uh, I don't know. i get a thick pair of gloves. How do reptiles even get turned on? They just have that fucking look on their face like you don't know what they're thinking. You know, I tell you, if snakes had fucking hands, like they would win World Series of Poker every year. There'd, there'd be no fucking way to tell what it had. Is it holding shit? Is it got a full house? I can't fucking just sit there sticking his tongue out of me. Um, I go, I go to the airport. And I'm taking the red eye, taking this 1055 flight, non-fucking stop, because that's how I do it. All right? I'm on a good plane. Why would I want to get off it and switch and roll the dice and get on another one? You know, let's just fucking get there. When, it, when I drive up to San Francisco, I don't pull over and fucking uh, Burbank and then get, get into another car. We get it, Bill. All right. So I get on the fucking plane, right? I use my miles, bump myself up like a fancy person. You know, maybe maybe I invented the Cheesecake Factory, people are thinking. And then they see how I'm dressed and they go, oh, no, he didn't invent the Cheesecake Factory. Um, and I go to go to sit down in my seat and I go to set my bag down. I was going to set it down right in front of me. And the nice fella sitting next to me goes, why don't you stick it in the middle? There's room. And he moved his bag out of the way. I'm like, all right, this guy's a solid dude or whatever. And then all of a sudden the waitress comes by. A stewardess, whatever, she comes by, um, flight attendant, whatever the fuck you're supposed to call them. She comes up and she, uh, can I get you a little drink? And I was like, yeah, can I get a, let me get a water, please. Ice or no ice? What, however you make it. Stop acting like it's a fucking martini. It's all right. Just give me a water with ice. Thank you. Um, and the, the guy next to me, he orders a doers, neat. No ice, no nothing. Just put it in there. So they bring our drinks, all right? And I'm really thirsty. So I start sucking mine down, and he just throws his back like it's nothing. Like fucking John Wayne, right before he's going to turn around and beat up three guys, three mustachioed guys in the 1930s, right? So um, I'm just sitting there, and everybody's getting on the flight, you know, and I'm looking around at the passengers, you know, I'm fucking doing whatever I'm doing, and all of a sudden the guy next to me, Mr. Dewars, goes to me, uh, he goes, excuse me, he goes, are you afraid to fly? And I looked at him, I was like, what? He goes, are you afraid to fly? And I go, no. No, I'm not. And he goes, he goes, all right, but you know, it's, <clears throat> he goes, it's okay, you know, it, it's okay to tell me if you're afraid to fly. And it's immediately getting weird. And I'm like, no, I'm not afraid to fly. And then I'm thinking in my head, wait, is he afraid to fly? And that's why he's drinking the way he just drank. And now he's hoping that I'm going to be afraid to fly. So he, you know, he just wants to open up. That's what I'm thinking. And I, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not afraid to fly. And he won't leave it alone. He goes, all right, because, you know, you're, you're, you're fidgeting. You're looking around at other passengers. And I'm sitting there looking at it like, is this guy fucking serious? And I go, no. I go, I'm not afraid to fly. So now I'm like, fuck this guy. I'm not talking to this guy for the rest of the flight. This guy's weird, man. It's like a 30, just get paint the picture. He's like 32 year old, wiry, <clears throat> in shape, but like wiry white dude. He's got a scully cap on with fucking glasses. Um, <clears throat> you know. And, uh, he goes, uh, like, there's like a minute of silence and people are still getting on the plane. And then he goes, hey, sorry about that. Sorry, we, we just we just got off on the uh, wrong foot. He's like, my name's so-and-so. He goes, what's your name? And then I'm thinking in my head, like, what's my name? My name's Frank. I wanted to give him like a, but I just, for some reason I just went, it's, it's Bill. And he goes, oh, hey, Bill. And he goes, nice to meet you. So we shake hands. And I'm just looking at, I don't have any poker face. I'm looking at the guy like, what the fuck is your problem? I'm not even trying to not, I'm not trying to be pleasant. I'm already done with this guy. So then the guy goes, oh, hey, Bill. He goes, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? Right? Like he's fucking interrogating me. And I, 
I'm like, is this guy fucking serious? And I start doing the math in my head going, wait, is this guy like an air marshal or something? And I'm like, no, he's not. He's fucking slamming booze over here. Fuck this guy. So I just go, I go, look, I don't, I don't have to answer your questions. <laughs> That's it. And I just look straight forward. <clears throat> he goes, okay, now I'm concerned. Okay. I am concerned. And I'm looking at him like concerned about what? He goes, you're fidgeting, you're, you, you have issues with other passengers, and blah, 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 blah. He starts painting like, like this, like he's been, I don't know what the fuck, like psychologically breaking me down. All right, so now at this, by this point, they've closed the fucking, the door to the fuselage, and we're starting to taxi. And I just finally look at the guy, and I, and I go, I go, you know, I came up with the fight. At one point, I literally stick my hand out because he kept saying I was nervous. And I stick my hand right in front of his face and I hold it level. Oh, that's what I did the first time. Yeah, I, I hold it level. I go, I'm not nervous. And he goes, well, anybody can do that. And that's when I was like, fuck this guy. I'm not talking to the guy. Sorry, I fucked the story up. Then, then, he, then he came back, got my name. Now he's going, why are you going to Indianapolis? And I finally look at him. I say, listen, pal, I'm drinking waters. You're drinking doers. Okay. There's no issue over here. And then he goes, it wasn't doers. What she gave me wasn't doers. Really? What was it? Some sort of spy juice? You fucking jerk off. This point, I want to punch him right through his fucking stupid wiry glasses. Right? So he's going like, you look around hostels. And I said something that just ticked him off. I was just, yeah, dude, I go, I don't have to answer your questions. All right, leave me alone. And then he goes, uh, he goes, to, he goes, he starts going like, okay, now I am really concerned right now. He goes, why are you going to Indianapolis? And I just look at him. You know what I start doing? I start doing like this Ryan Gosling. You know that little smirk, that fucking Mona Lisa smile he has as he smirks his way through all his fucking movies? I, do, I go full on Ryan Gosling. Now I'm not talking to this guy. And I just keep looking at him. And I give him that little half a smirk. And I just shake my head. That's my game now. That's, this is my game. It's like if you're going to be a dick right now with your fucking delusional authority. Right? That you're going to, like, we're in fucking Guantanamo and you're going to waterboard me. Huh? There's no water. There's no board. Go fuck yourself. Here's my smirk. And I'm just going to shake my head at you like you're a fucking pathetic human being. This is what I'm doing. All right? And this is the funny thing. I'm such a dick. All I have to say to the guy is I'm a comedian. I'm going to do a sold out show there. And that would make him back off. But I'm a dick. I'm like, fuck this guy. I want to see where this is going. So now he's all fucking amped up. And he starts dropping... F, you know, he's saying the F word. He's sitting there going, if you don't, he goes, if you don't fucking answer my question right fucking now, I am going to hit that call button. We're sitting there taxiing down the fucking, getting in the line. I'm going to fucking hit this fucking button if you blah, 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 blah. And I'm just fucking Mona Lisa smile, smirking, just shaking my head like you are a fucking retard, right? So now he's, he's saying the F word so much. The lady who's sitting in front of me, diagonally in front, right in front of him, turns around and looks at us. And now my heart's racing. I'm like, where's this going? This is going to be great. I am 100% fucking innocent. This guy's drunk. And I think he's going to hit that button. Oh, I got a feeling he's going to hit that button. What's going to happen, right? I want to see what the pilot looks like. Let's see where the fuck this is going, right? So he goes, if you don't fuck, you he starts, he starts bringing his hand up to the button going, I'm going to hit that button. You don't think I'll fucking do it? I'll hit that button. And I'm sitting there smirking at him, thinking in my head, go ahead, hit the fucking button. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens, right? So finally, now he wants to hit the button, and he can't fucking find it. And it's in, in defense of him, I couldn't find it either. I was looking up there. I half wanted to hit it myself. Then he finally, he finally finds it, and he hits it. Boom! Right? And now I'm just like, holy shit, what's going to happen? And he's sitting there going, yeah, huh? You want to fucking play this game? You want to fucking play this game? And it, I'm surprised. I mean, it took like fucking like 30 seconds before a flight attendant the one who gave him the booze, which evidently wasn't booze, comes over. And at this point, we're like doing that shit where we're behind a plane. We're almost ready to take off. Like we're pulling up and then stopping, pulling up and then stopping as planes are taking off. So she goes, yeah, what's the problem over here? And he goes, uh, I'm not comfortable to fly with this guy. This guy, he's fidgeting. He's looking around at other fucking people, blah, 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 blah. He's doing all this thing, right? And then the stewardess looks at me, and I'm just sitting there fucking, my little smirk, just shaking my head. And I'm just looking at the dude, just shaking my head like this guy's out of his fucking mind. I don't say a word. And this guy goes on and on and on about his fucking psycho babble about how I'm this security risk. 
So she goes to, the, so she goes, okay, um, any other passengers? Have you noticed anything? She's talking to everybody first class at this point. <laughs> Has anybody noticed anything odd about this guy? And the lady who was sitting right in front of the dude diagonally from me turns around. She goes, yeah, I've been listening to this guy ber berating this other passenger. She's on my side. And I haven't said a fucking word. This is great. And I'm just sitting there smirking. Then the stewardess looks at me and I shrug my shoulders like, I don't know what to tell you. So finally she said, sir, do, do you have anything to add to this? And I just said, I, look... I'm just a guy trying to go to Indianapolis. This guy over here, he starts slamming his doors. I kind of felt like a rat when I said that. I go, he's slamming his doors. Next thing you know, he's dropping the F-bomb to me. Then I'm thinking, oh, fuck. I just said bomb, right? Fortunately, nothing happens. So now another fucking, the male stewardess comes over, right? Now he's going like, what's going on? And the captain of the fucking, now at this point, we pulled over and the plane has stopped. 250 people trying to get to Indianapolis and jerk off over here who can't hold this fucking alcohol who just watched a uh, person of interest every, every, I guess, evidently. I have no fucking idea. Now the plane is stopped. This fucking jerk off has stopped the plane. Interrogating a goddamn comedian like I'm in the fucking Taliban and like he works for the CIA, right? So now we're just sitting there. <laughs> And the captain is up front in the plane, like, saying to the stewardess, is going, basically relaying, do I really have to fucking come back there? This is the last flight of the night. Is there really a goddamn problem? And that was the vibe. And they finally said to the douche sitting next to me, are you going to be okay to fly with him? And at that point, it appeased his fucking ego that he was somehow in control. And he goes like, you know what? Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So they go, okay. So now the plane's going again. And now, we're, now we fucking come around, and he's sitting there fucking, he's in my ear. And at this point, I am laughing. Like, the fucking laugh you hear me do on the podcast, that's what I'm doing. And he's sitting there going, oh, I, I, he goes, you know what, I'm glad. I'm glad you, I, I hope you fucking do. I hope you fucking try something. I hope you fucking try something when we're up there. I really hope you fucking try something. And I'm just fucking, like, gut busting, laughing, shaking. Like, what are you going to fucking do to me? What are you going to do to me? Huh? Are you going to punch me in the face, you fucking wiry jackass? With your fucking glasses on? You know? That's a federal offense. You're going to go to jail if you do that or something. I don't know what, right? So I'm just sitting there fucking laughing at the guy going, I actually, at one point, I put my fucking little eye pillow thing on. You know, like I'm going to sleep. Oh, I had that out too when the stewardess was talking to me. I was like putting it on as this total mind fuck. Like, I, I don't know what this guy is. I'm just trying to go to Indianapolis. I'm going to sleep. And um, so I got, I got my fucking eye thing on, right? As he's sitting there threatening me. Just I was going with total passive aggressive. It's like, dude, I'm so not concerned with you. I'm literally putting a blindfold on. All right? So this fucking guy, he starts going. He goes, yeah. He goes, you think you fucking won this? You think you fucking won this? He goes, my, you know who my dad is? My dad, he started saying his dad's some major CEO in Indianapolis. Doesn't sound like a fucking made-up story. I swear to God, this is all true. He goes, my, my dad is some a major CEO in Indianapolis, and I will have you fucking arrested. And the lady turns around again. I will have you fucking arrested the second we get on the ground. I'm thinking, like, for what? For what? Sitting here, you fucking loser. Learn how to hold your alcohol. Right? And he starts describing the view that I'm going to have when I go to jail, like some fucking Law and Order episode. Oh, you're going to love it. You'll be able to see Lucas Oilfield and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just sitting there cracking up laughing. And then there's this pause, right? And I'm thinking, finally, he finally shut the fuck up. It's like a three, four minute pause. He finally just gave up because I wasn't giving him anything. I was just laughing and shaking my head. I was being a dick to him. I was because I was enjoying it. And then there was like a three-minute pause, and then all of a sudden he just goes, Why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> so we're like 20 minutes into the flight. And i got to be honest with you, my adrenaline was so going during all of that because I knew I didn't do anything wrong, but I thought we were literally going to go back and there was going to be fucking cops there. And like if... if, if if the fucking stewardess 
or the pilot asks me who I am and where I'm going, I'm going to tell them. I respect your authority. You're just some... Je I don't, you don't have any fucking authority. I don't have to answer your questions. It was, pro it was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had with another human being. Like when somebody thinks that they have power and you know they don't, and all they can do is try just keep bluffing and raising their voice and start cursing at you. And if you just start laughing at them, the look on their face is fucking priceless. So the last thing he said, he said, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? Right? And I fucking started howling, just fucking holding my stomach, shaking my head. And with my fucking eye pillow thing on, right? And... I know I'm going to get a ton of shit that I wear one of those. I, they're fucking underrated. Get the one at Brookstone where it's literally a pillow. I'm telling you, you could fall asleep 12 noon facing the sun. It's awesome. So anyways, like after he, he asked me, what, what, you know, where are you going, Bill? It was like, it was like a 10 minute, like probably 10 minutes had gone by. And I can't fucking sleep because it's so funny to me. And I can't wait to tell the story to every comic I know. I can't wait to try it on stage to see if it's funny or whatever. Uh, so finally, I just like, ah, oh, fuck it. Maybe I'll just get on my computer. And I bring up my eye pillow. And I like, I got to look at the guy because I know he's fucking staring at me, waiting for me to do something, right? So I lift it up. I get my fucking Mona Lisa smile going. And I look over at the guy. And dude, he is fucking passed out. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like he got shot. He was sitting there like his head was just hanging straight down. And any time the plane moved, like his head was like, I mean, he looked like he got knocked out. And for the rest of the fucking flight, old fucking, uh, oh, what's Matt Damon's character? Jack Ryan. Old fucking Jack Ryan over here is just, you know, the sky marshal. The fucking booze bag and God knows what else he was on. He was just completely out, passed out. For the rest of the fucking flight. And this is how much a dick I am. I was having so much fun with this guy. I start, I can't sleep. So I start slamming waters. Because I want to have to get up and take a piss just to see if this guy's going to freak out. Because this security risk is getting up. And this, the joke was on me. He never regained consciousness. And then I really had to take a piss. But I'm such a stubborn fuck. I was holding it because I wanted to make sure he was awake when I got up. Because I was going to give him a little smirk, and then I was going to get up to <laughs> see if he hit the call button again. Um, but he didn't. He didn't wake up till we, we hit the ground. And um, and then it's funny. Then he woke up, and it was like four hours later. So now he had kind of slept off whatever the fuck this guy was on. And I'm sitting there smirking, waiting for the guy to start talking. I mean, he won't look at me. And I, I, and I think at that point he kind of fucking realized that maybe he got a little... Uh, a little extra, a little too patriotic. So we stop. We stop at the gate and everything, and we're going to get up. So I grab my shit, I get up, and I'm just kind of looking at him, and he won't look at me. And then the lady who was sitting in front of me had this big smile on her face. She goes, "How you?" She goes, "How you doing?" And I went, "Good." I go, "That." I go, "That was an interesting one." And I said it really loud so the guy heard, and he didn't say anything. And t this is what he did to try to save face. His pillow was kind of stuck behind was kind of stuck behind his shoulder in like a weird place, so he was frustrated with it. So he he ripped it out from behind him and kind of threw it down on the floor and went Ugh. like <laughs> try to do some caveman grunt to try to still have some sort of uh, I don't know what. So so that was my flight to Indianapolis, people. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for a very special episode of the Monday Morning Podcast, our little offshoot, our little spinoff, like back in the day, you know, when somebody would guest star like Mork on Happy Days, and they would just be like, who is that fucking guy? The studio audience loved him. We should give that person their own show. Well, you know what? Dreams really do happen in Hollywood, and they also happen <laughs> in the podcasting world. Because our own Nia... <laughs> Our own beautiful, lovely Nia. We're doing a Nia log because because your your fucking podcast room is still gutted because oh, we're waiting gosh. for the mortgage company, right? 
because yes. they, they took our money away because they, 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 they didn't trust that we were going to. We well, got the money from the insurance, and then the mortgage company had to take the money. That's right, because they want to make sure that we were actually going to put it into the house so right. we didn't go down to the fucking And distribute it IHOP. as they see fit. Cock yeah. suckers. Yeah. All right. Well, this is um, – <laughs> but it's been a good night. And I, Nia, I know you don't watch sports, but the uh, – I, I, I mentioned not, but... I mentioned on the podcast mm -hmm. that the Celtics have fucking hot. <laughs> We're old. We're an old-ass team. Last year, what the Celtics did last year, taking the heat to seven games, uh -huh. was, was incredible, man. I was just like, these guys are winning, like, games they should not be winning. Just fucking desire. All right? Mm -hmm. And now this year, I'm like, all right, we lost uh, old Twinkle Toes there, whatever the fuck his name is. I'm not a big basketball guy. We, lo <laughs> we lost them down in Miami. I'm like, now we're really fucking old. And we get Jason Terry in replacement, and then fucking Rondo goes down. I'm like, we're finished. We're going to get pounded by the Knicks. And the Knicks go up three games to none. And you have to win four out of seven. So if you mm -hmm. win four in a row, you get swept. Mm -hmm. And if you get swept, that means one, t one thing. Your team is a bunch of bitches. <laughs> it's not true, but that's what people say. So, like, right now, there's a lot of, like, Laker fans right now that are probably feeling that. And I feel sorry for them. That, you know, people are probably saying that about their team. And it's not true. Do you feel sorry for them? Do They're probably really? being called a bunch of swept bitches. And, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of love was shown to Boston over the last few weeks. So I'm going to show a little love to the Laker fans and say, uh, you know, I, I feel bad for you. Okay? And if I could somehow get you a coupon to go get you some Botox. Oh, you're so patronizing. So nobody could see your brow furrowing. I would fucking do it. I do it in a second. So the Celtics win one game. Because mm -hmm. we're the fucking Celtics, and you don't sweep us. Love when somebody talks shit after the victory who doesn't even watch the sport. It's been, yeah, now, I say, it's I'm standing up now. This is supposed to be the basketball. neologue, but I got to get this shit in. Now we fucking beat the Knicks again. <laughs> it's three games to two. We beat them in the fucking alleged Mecca, whatever the fuck that means. Well, I remember, it's a gathering place for people to come and beat the fucking <laughs> Knicks. We beat the Knicks. We beat them again. Now You're it's so three passionate. to two. You're three standing. to two. We're going back to fucking Boston. Your big forehead is sweaty. You're no, it's because really, I was just because really, uh... I just worked out. Because <laughs> I just worked out. That's what I did. I work out. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think. I I just don't think we got enough to beat those guys. But like, just the fact that you know we're making them nervous, because we fucking came back against those goddamn Yankees. Oh yes, we did. They were up three games to none. That's when we first met. Remember that? Came back four games. Straight? Yes, I remember. We do that to their base, baseball team and then their basketball team. It's fucking tremendous. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a neolog, everybody. Yeah. You, you'd never fucking know it. <laughs> that three minutes of shit talking. Oh, there's Standing a bunch of women. Around. Bunch of women right now going, oh, my God, just shut up and let her talk. Including me. Oh, gee. oh ooh. <laughs> Wasn't that a little touche fucking tone? <laughs> Including me. Hmm. All right, let's get right down to it. Now, let, uh, on Monday's podcast... Um, I was talking about the, uh, which is really a fucking old story at this point, maybe, is the uh, first uh, uh, basketball player, athlete, whatever, to come out and say that, that, that he was gay. Mm -hmm. And actually, Martina Navratilova said, uh, just a goddamn minute, <laughs> just a goddamn minute. I came out in the 80s. When yeah. they could yell homophobic stuff at me and uh, while they sold Cheerios. There's been a couple others, uh, mostly women. There was a woman on the NBA who came out as well, but this women is Women don't play in the NBA. This was is she the grabbing way. towels for the men that play in that league? The WNBA. Oh, the WNBA. Excuse me. Oh, that doesn't count. Oh, shut up. Really? So anyway. Wait a minute. Was, wait a minute. Was, wait a minute. Lane, first... Name one team in the WNBA. Okay. Uh... Name... <laughs> That doesn't mean that it's not valid just because I can't name it. The I'm Colorado not a person. Cleavage. They, not... they, <laughs> they've won You're the first dick. six years. Such a dick. Um, that's not true. No, but just because I can't name it doesn't mean anything. But I'm the not a Memphis. Person. Anyway, menstruators. There's been other the Memphis menstruators. <laughs> I can't name this. There's the L.A. Sparks. There's the anyway. Uh, there's been other professional athletes who have come out. So he's not necessarily the first, but he's the first because it's the NBA. And so it's, what do you it's think? It's a wider audience. What do you What do you think about it? Should he have Should he have kept his uh, his little uh, dilly dallyings dallyings alone? <laughs> I'm trying to say it without cursing. No, I think it's great that he came out. It's a It's a big deal for for the sports world. No, 
especially the NBA. Now so, the, someone in the NFL will follow suit. Maybe not uh, right away, but soon. Well, I, I've always I'm said predicting. that I, I wanted it to be the most manly, the dude that all the homophobic guys, not all, not everybody in the sports bar is homophobic, but there's a lot of them. Right. Right. Just the ones who already have his jersey. So who? And so I want them to be, be wearing it. Who Who would that be though? What the most manliest dude in the yeah. NFL? And, well, or NFL or NBA. I was talking NFL. Well, who's the most manliest? Aren't they all pretty manly? Well, if I had Supposedly. my choice, mm-hmm. if I, I've <laughs> always like been a Tom fan Brady. of beards. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Tom Brady's not considered the most manliest guy. Everybody calls him a pretty boy. Who would it be? I don't know. Just one of, one of those. Sexual, yeah. Just one of those fucking. You know what I mean? One of those fucking guys. And I'm just trying to get to the joke here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The that guy they, that's they, like... They're going to be standing there in the fucking sports bar with sure. their jersey on, right. and now they're going to look like his girlfriend. Because well, they're that's... wearing his jersey. Why would they look like his girlfriend? Little boyfriend. You know what I mean. <laughs> because in high school when you date, all the ladies, when they were banging the quarterback, whoever was banging it, got, wore his jersey. got to walk around wearing his jacket. And they pulled the sleeves up like an 80s comic. And that's what I was trying to fucking get to. I see. But this isn't about me, although it has been for fucking seven minutes. I mean. Here's my thing. I don't think it's any big deal, but what, what, what about the showers? What about Should the he showers? be allowed... <laughs> To go into the showers, I said. Because what? I, Why wouldn't he be know, allowed to? I'll, allowed to? If he didn't try to make any sort of moves, he's not going to now. That's such a like. That's such a knee jerk, fucking homophobic, ridiculous reaction. Oh God! Now that I know that you're gay, you're going to be looking at me and you're going to want to try to rape me. It's like if I didn't try to fucking. Rape I'm not talking before, about that. Now. I'm talking. So that's bullshit. No, that's not. That's no. nonsense. It isn't nonsense. It is. It's like this knee jerk ridiculous reaction feeling like i'm not saying that he can't fucking shout first of all so why did you all i did was i asked a fucking question why are you and all you fucking jerk offs immediately just you're you're such a fucking homophobic he should have to pay a cover charge oh jesus a cover charge all those shredded dudes fucking abs and all that dicks down to the floor this is what the fuck he's into we just look at that for free that'd be like me for free that would be like me fucking i get to shower like, I come out and just say that, oh, what, just, what if I came out and said I was gay? Can I then go fucking shower with a bunch of Victoria's Secret? Fucking, that doesn't make sense. You wouldn't have been to able to mob. before. So, yeah. That's, no, but I'm just you... saying. You don't get to shower with the thing you want to fuck oh, without God. paying. You got to take somebody to a dinner. <laughs> oh, is that what you're getting at? <laughs> I'm fucking around. For Christ's sake, I'm funny. You know what? Somebody's going to chop that up, and I'm going to have to make an apology. But I don't have are. to. Who am I going to apologize to? Fucking... Fruitloops.com. Who the hell do I have on this? I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. You know what it was? I was trying not to say stamps.com. Jesus. Oh, I'm going to have to erase this fucking podcast. Mm-hmm. You know what it is? Fruit... I told you to watch that. Fruit Loops. I told you to watch that. <laughs> no, Fruit Loops is my go to product. I already said Cheerios. No, I always go with no. cereal. You don't but think now so? Now it's different. Now it's different. <laughs> oh, go fuck yourself. I've said a long time ago how I feel about the gays in the community that they live in. Which is what? Would I you think, like to reiterate, reiterate I think, I think years from now they're going to look back on this and see the, see the way gays were treated. and They're going to look at it the same way as like when you used to stone somebody because they were a witch. Yes. I'm just having fun with this shit. Right. Give me a break. You don't think he's fucking psyched standing next to Kobe? <laughs> oh, my God. Stop! Please. <laughs> He's the best basketball player. He's standing next to me. You are ridiculous. Why wouldn't he look? He's been looking. He's been looking. All right. Well, here's he's the been thing. gay this entire right. wait, wait. time. Well, what so about, okay, okay, now, like... now we're getting somewhere. So he's been looking. Hypothetically, he's uh, been I mean, looking. I'm just saying. I mean, maybe he hasn't, but. No, no, no. Let me back into this corner for a second so we can have a little fun. Why am I here? So he's been looking, <laughs> right? Now let me ask you this. Yes. If, if I'm standing around, mm-hmm. all right? bunch of naked women and i've been looking i'm called a creep get out of this locker room <laughs> you creep you creep and it's like what do you think i'm gonna rape you i'm just looking at your little bush over there that's all i'm doing it's really how it's come really i can't do same. that how come i can't do that it's not the same why can't i go shower with the lady <laughs> how come i can't do that this is this is reverse uh fucking <laughs> whatever it is if he gets to shower with the fellas Huh? Well, he probably won't now. He knows how people feel. Yeah, I'm he'll probably around. he'll probably purposefully separate himself because he doesn't want people to feel uncomfortable. He'll no, I think I think I think what he do is great. I'm just having fun. I'm just having fun. Yes. For all you cunts out there who are actually taking this shit seriously, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, <laughs> I don't. 
I gotta no, be honest it's, with you. It's I a thought thing that he did. It was great. It's great. Took a lot of balls. It did. It took a lot of fucking balls to do to do what he did, especially when it seems like that's a sport where. Oh, his... I don't know because you got all those guys, you know, random tweets and other kind of bullshit. You know, it's such a you know masculine. All the the world of sports anyway, when it comes to men's sports, is seen as a very masculine. You've got to be a certain kind of guy, a tough guy, a strong guy, a guy that's not afraid of pain. Who's gonna go out there and just you know right. like get Chris, brutalized? And when, when, when Chris Bosch cried after they lost the the, <laughs> the championship, he got a ton oh, of shit for it. He collapsed to the ground and cried it out. And when then, they won? When they lost? Oh, when they lost? Well, yeah, it's fucking. He, he had a lot. No, into no. it, right? You know, he just said, "Well, yeah." He put yeah. a lot of emotion into it. Why wouldn't you? But yeah, but, but because you, but you cry, you're seen as weak. Because we're guys. Yeah, yeah. What you're exactly. supposed to do. Is take that ball of sadness and stick it next, add it to the big ball of sadness in your uh -huh, chest. Right. And then and one, do the, what with it? one day you're out there with the hedge clippers <laughs> when you're like 55 and you just drop and that's it. Mm. You guys cry it out. Right. I heard you keep your memories in your chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's a um, wonderful thing that he did, but it's one of those things where. Now that he's done it, it's amazing. I need to read that Sports Illustrated article. That's when he officially came out because supposedly it's a great article. But I guess what people feel, even though it's amazing, and I don't think anyone is discounting him from it unless they are, you know, feel weird about an NBA player coming out, is that while it's amazing and great, they feel like it's going to take a quote-unquote bigger star to really affect I thought the that masses. was annoying. I thought that that was annoying, they and feel. they stole that guy's fucking thunder. Well, I he had the fucking balls you know what? to come out. And I, and, and absolutely, but the thing is, it's kind of like with AIDS, right? So everyone had a certain Jesus. feeling about, well, this is. I'm, I'm going to make this parallel because it makes I sense. I hope so. When, when people were talking about AIDS in the 80s and 90s, there was a certain conception of who got AIDS. It was a gay man who was sleeping around or whatever it is. But when Magic Johnson, a huge, respected, revered, loved athlete not straight in not in boston it doesn't matter I'm joking. I'm joking jesus when he came out <laughs> that for a lot of people maybe not normalize it but put a face on it was sort of like wow this is the kind of person who could be susceptible so maybe it's not something outside of me and i don't know about this and that's those people that do those things that's somebody like me a straight person who has a family blah blah, blah who was careless this is there how was, you get the, AIDS. But, and that's what changed for a lot of people that that face of AIDS. So it wasn't just gay guys sneaking around in the alley. It became truckers a straight shooting guy. up at a truck stop. Well, yeah, but it also became I a straight, very masculine, like I said, revered hero I disagree to with a lot that. of people. And so it's sort of like, oh, wow, we're all vulnerable I if we're not I, careful. So what people are saying is, I disagree even though with it's, that. I, I, I get it, I'm listening to you. <laughs> so even though Jason Collins coming out is a huge thing and no one should discount it, there are people who think, while that's amazing, they need a straight guy to if come If there out. was a huger, that would maybe affect. If it was a Kobe, it's Kobe Bryant is clearly not getting it. Let the guy have his fucking moment. It was his moment. Absolutely. He fucking had the balls to do it. And then fucking uh, TwinkleToes.net has to come out and be like, well, actually, look, that was good. But we want somebody more high profile. There's fucking but assholes. That's not, but that's they're the assholes. You're, but that's not what they're saying. They're not taking it away from him. But they're just, yeah, they are. But no, but they're, they're taking saying, their own like, selfish fucking agenda that they want something more. No, they're looking at it as, while this is wonderful, I wonder, though, if this is really going to have the impact on the sports Okay, can I get can I, can I get a word in for a that second? That something like a Magic Johnson would have. That's 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 all they're saying. Can I get a word in? No one's taking anything away from them. They just don't know if that's going to erase quote unquote homophobia from the sports it. world because it's not somebody like a a Shaq or a you oh know Kevin God, Garnett or a, you know whatever. Now let me okay. Now let's say you win an Oscar. Okay, you win an Oscar, and then some women's group comes up right as you're handing you that fucking trophy. They go, you know, this is all well and good, but now do you feel like you got your moment? Well, no, I wouldn't feel that. Well, way. thank you. Defense rest. But I, I'm not. I'm. 
I'm saying it was. But let, it's, let it's, the, it's, it's a valid perspective, but it's not taking it's not taking anything away from him. But I mean, I, I you know what though? Can I you do, give the I guy a week? Saying. Can he have no, a week? I know what you're saying because anytime anyone makes a big announcement like this, there's the people who feel that he's a hero, and then there's the naysayers. He's not so a person always, to them. You know, he's this thing. He's this thing to throw against the wall to continue. Fuck. Give the guy his fucking week. He had the balls to come out. Yeah. This is his fucking week. And he ought to be, you know, he finally gets the shit off his chest. He can finally just, you know, relax, be who the fuck he is, not have to worry about somebody saying something and, and whatever, whatever the fuck it is mm -hmm. that you have to go through, that horrific fucking life that you shouldn't have to go through. You ought to be able to just be who the fuck you are. And to just, after he fucking, the second he comes out, they have these douchebags be like, you know, that's all well and good. He should have taken his big fucking hand and mushed their faces back behind no, the curtain for a second. I don't think they mean anything bad by it. I think they're just, they're being very realistic about the world that we live in. And the reality of it is, while you've got somebody who's done a very brave, awesome thing, sometimes it takes a, a bigger celebrity <laughs> or whatever to make, taking a, to make away a bigger from his, can, can he have his fucking week? That's all I'm saying. I know, I know. I get what you're saying. But they also have a, a valid point. I mean, do you think Jason Collins coming out is really going to affect I don't the know way why, but see. you are driving me up the fucking wall right now. Because I you're have... not listening to me. No, because I said like five minutes ago, I said if you won an Oscar and as you won it, some woman's group went up. You know, this is all well and good, but blah, 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 and stole your thunder. You would be pissed. I would be. And, you, and you... you believe that women should continue to be advanced, but can you have your fucking moment? I think that they robbed the guy. I'm not, it didn't happen, but I think by them saying shit like that, it, I, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's what, what's it the takes, word? It not not crass. It's, his, it's it's yeah. It's, I know. I understand what you're saying. But it's not you, a classy fucking thing. But do give you, the guy a couple of but days. But do you huh? think this man, Jason Collins, coming out at the time he's coming out at this point in his career with his, his standing in the NBA, do you think that it's going to seriously impact the way people see gays in professional sports like basketball or football, etc.? Do you really I, think it's going to make be honest, people be like, oh, wow. I, I, well, can't, gay, I, can't, speak, no I can't speak do for you, other people. But, do you, but, that's, but that's the question. Can I, can I answer the question? Here's the, here's the thing. You said all that shit about Magic Johnson and this put a face on it and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. that, is the, that is the legend now that it's happened. The same way like when Nirvana's Nevermind came out, everybody's like, you just knew the second you heard it, there was a change in the air. That's all fucking, that's the legend. Okay. And I've always said that I heard it, I didn't get it, and I was waiting for the next Skid Row album. I didn't get, I didn't get fucking Nirvana. I, I wasn't old. I was, I was starting to become old. Like my, like my generation was being passed on. Like I was not grunge. I was fucking metal. Right. So, I didn't get them and how great the musicians they were until they did their Unplugged. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, these guys, and they did all these covers and shit. And then I worked my way back. And as I worked my way back, the whole thing was over when Kurt killed himself. But that whole Magic Johnson thing was, first thing people said was, he's gay. Right. He's gay. And all this shit came out. Oh, look at him kissing Isaiah on the cheek before the finals. Right. Oh, right there. There you go. That mm -hmm. They said that shit. Mm -hmm. And then when they, if people who, like, we're saying, no, no, Magic is still straight. Then what they just said was, well, I'm not Magic Johnson. I'm not fucking six women at a time. I'm fine. So, and I think that's what most people do because it's scary that you're looking at something that could kill you and you're thinking in the back of your head, all these skanks you banged without a condom, you know, laying there in bed going, this could happen to me too. I'm, there's, that takes a, a certain level of fucking maturity that most people don't have, especially so you think, when you're younger. Okay, so you think the, this, the appreciation for Jason Collins, even though he's getting so many accolades, the, the real appreciation is not going to come until later? No, 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 no. What I was saying is what that, what, whatever that fucking website was, I thought it was uncool that they said, this is great. But, you know, this is all well and good. But I think I thought they were around the moment. I think it's fucking phenomenal that he did it. And I hope more people do it and everybody just fucking relaxes and it's no big deal. Right. Well, I think that's that's absolutely 100 percent true. But I think they were just sort of. Has any of this been funny? Realistic. This sounds like a fucking town meeting. <laughs> but but they're, they're just being realistic about what the impact could be. And no one can really know until, I don't know, a month, a year, three years from now. How come they won't so, interview anybody who doesn't give a fuck like me? I could give a flying... Because that's not interesting. 
I could give a flying you don't care. That's not interesting. fuck about what you do off do the court. Do you want me to read the comment unless, that which, which, which started and, this whole thing? Unless, unless you're killing people. Do you want me to read this No, nah, I don't comment? care. I don't care. Oh, now you don't care. No, no. I'd you like you to... want me to find it and read it, huh? now you don't care. Well, we already discussed it, didn't we? Oh, I guess so. Okay. But let's actually bring some sort of comedy to this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got really mad at me last night. Yes. Before we went to bed. I'm not going to say who I was looking at either. All right? <laughs> yeah, Out of not. protection. <laughs> this is what happened to me. <laughs> Nia's fucking on her side trying to go to sleep, and I got the laptop, and I start doing the IMDB thing, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't believe this. So I find, I find some stylet, right? And it says that, you know, she did a spread in Playboy. So I'm like, oh, really? Wow, I want to see her naked. So I go to click on images. I swear to God, I'm on Google Images. And some, the second I clicked on one of the naked pictures, this other window came up with somebody talking. Who I don't remember what they were saying. But you know. immediately assumed that I was watching porn because when you click on a porn, that window that opens up behind those the window. Those webcams, those girls on the webcams, they pop up and they're like, hey, daddy. No, they don't. Da, they da, usually da, pop up and they go, ah, oh, yeah, I fuck it. And you try to sit go, what is that? First time you hear it, you're like, where's that voice coming from? Has somebody hacked into my computer and they're mocking the porn that I'm watching? And then you go and it's just, oh, there's some fucking housewife sitting there yeah. with a pickle. Um, a couple of kids running around in the background. It's a tough economy. God. So she immediately assumed that I was watching porno, and I was like, I wasn't. And I literally backtracked through the fucking thing. I backtraced it, and I showed you what I was watching. And, and you I just, called you a fucking scumbag. Fucking scumbag, <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> and then here it is. It's like, you're watching porn, too, if you know that that happens. Well, so? Well, not right then. But I'm not watching it fucking lying next to you in bed, you dirtbag. Which you were. And well, if I, if, no, if you were going if, to look at naked ladies on a computer next naked to what? me in bed, ladies, <laughs> <laughs> while lying in bed. So whether you were watching porn or not, I still stand by those harsh it's words. Playboy, I you. it's artistic. Oh, please. They don't show the clam there. <laughs> 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 they just show a nice little, uh, you know. Yeah, and I heard that nice pop up muff. and that breathy little, oh, my God, this and that. And, hey, hey, hey. and I knew what you were doing, and I fucking screamed at you. Do you honestly you think? It. You fucking deserved right, wait a minute, it. Wait a minute. To lie next to me and be looking at porno <laughs> while in bed with your future wife, you fucking scumbag. I don't take any of it back. Wait a minute. You're a dirtbag, and you deserve <laughs> To be yelled at. Do you honestly think? In life and on the podcast. You know what's funny is we got such a great mattress here that I think I could actually rub one out without you noticing. That's, that's nice. That's what they that's should nice. do. That's what they should that's do in that commercial. Nice. You know that commercial where they have the wine on one side and the guy's jumping up and down? They should have some guy with his hand inside his I'm fucking sure jam jams, fucking jerking like this and looking at the camera, giving the thumbs up. Um, yeah, as well. Under the, you, just, you just see the bedspread fucking. Yeah, yeah, we get it. So yeah, you so that's what you think I was doing. That. That's that is what you were doing. Maybe you weren't looking at actual pornography I was, videos. It wasn't pornography. It was a nude. <laughs> <laughs> it was naked pictures of another fucking woman. You got caught, oh, yeah. and I screamed at you, and you fucking deserved it. All right. You called me a lot of harsh words. Well, you deserved it. To do it while you're lying in bed next to me. What kind of man are you? <laughs> Would you take over to that level? <laughs> That might be the quote of the podcast. Oh, I just wanted to look at this naked girl, and then and, and what happens? I was tempted. You got found out. I was on IMDb and then this oh, temptress please. With, with her photos. IMDb, and what IMDb had a link to her right. fucking naked videos, and there's right. some other fucking pop-ups that come up. You were caught, and Here's a move for you guys. and you're trying to make it funny. For all the guys listening right now, oh, here's the move in this moment. Yeah. Hey, if I want to look at a naked broad on my goddamn computer... All right, I'm going to do it. You absolutely can. But well, to do right it then. while you're sharing our fucking would-be marital bed, I'm not going to stand for that. I'm going to call you names. I'm going to shame you. And that's how it is. It's impossible to shame me after my childhood. <laughs> you're shamed. That's why we're talking about it right now. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to bring up something fucking funny. Mm -hmm. Sacrificing me. Don't anyway, give me that fucking look. Give me a so break. So that's how it is. Yes, I looked at a fucking naked actress. All right? Uh-huh. There you go. And I enjoyed it. <laughs> And I'll do it again. No, you didn't, because I screamed at you, and it well, took that part all I didn't the joy enjoy. away from 
from you. There was a lot of shame. <laughs> no, I, I was so like so. You know what it was? I wasn't prepared. And then that lady's voice, ah, oh, yeah, fuck it, yeah. <laughs> and then you fucking rolled over, and you were just fucking in my grill. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there just stuttering, trying to shut it off. <laughs> I couldn't find the mute button. It's unreal. Yeah, well, you don't do that. That's rude. Hey, it, I didn't set out to do it. It's the Internet. Eventually, you're going to end up at a fucking naked picture. You didn't set out to do it. You lied here with the specific intent of looking at a woman naked no, I on the Internet. Yes, you did. No, you I said, didn't. oh, I want to see those pictures, and you clicked on it. No, that's not what I and did. And what you didn't uh, expect. You start in the middle of story. What you didn't expect uh, was there to be a pop-up to appeal to the kind of perverts over the air that you are money. and to rat home, you I out. I buy stuff. I put food that's in the fridge. That's what happened. I can't look at one fucking broad. Let me tell you, you something. You absolutely can look at you yeah, on the road. I swear to God, you can I'm going to take one of these pillows and I'm going to put it over your face but until you shut it. to lie next to me in bed and be looking at some naked women and get found out like that, yeah, you're going to get called on it. What do you expect? I'm going to snuggle up tonight. Ooh, let's look at it together. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might have been one of the greatest fuck yous I've ever had. Fuck you. <laughs> Oh, that was beautiful. I was thinking, you guys got to admit, when it comes to fucking just laying somebody out and laughing them. <laughs> All right, Nia, I have to tell you this. What? I didn't go, I didn't open my computer and be like, Mwahaha, I'm going to look at this naked girl while you're laying next to me. Mm -hmm. I went on ID, IMDB, mm -hmm. and I'm such a weak, pathetic person mm -hmm. that within three you seconds, are. I ended up on that. But that's not, I'm like one of those guys who's fucking did the crime. This is second degree. This isn't premeditated. I didn't fucking walk in there like, I'm going to look at this girl, okay? okay? I walked in, okay? I saw the gumballs <laughs> sitting there. Stomach was growling. I said, fuck it, I'm grabbing them, and I got caught. So, yes, I did rob the fucking store, but I wasn't sitting at home going, you know what I'm going to do today? All right? This I just throw a naked woman in there, and you have the fucking explanation. Woman that you were looking at, you knew who she was. You knew that she posed naked. You knew, because you know who this person is, all right, without going any further. So for you to sit here and try to act like, oh, my gosh, I was just investigating someone's, like, acting history. Justin and Timberlake and showed Wiki, his fucking you know, blah, blah. wiener on the goddamn inter Internet. You'd look at it. What does that have to do with anything that we're talking about right now? Because you know what? You were right. You know what? You were right. You know Can I what? finish? You know Can what? I finish? Is that you're Can trying I finish? To you're trying to do Can that I classic, finish? you know, sort of. Can I finish? Three, you were right up until three minutes ago. Throwing other subjects in there to try to throw me off base, but you're not going to do that, Playboy, because I'm smarter than you. All yeah. right. All right. I'm let's not, let's not be quoting that. dialogue from a bad cop show. Yeah, you do that, Playboy. When you I put like your, Playboy. your little gumball fucking siren on top of your non-existent car. Listen to me. You were right up until three minutes ago. Which, which was now? Wrong. You know what you're doing? Now you're hamming it up. Oh, you're hamming, am I it, hamming up. it up. Yeah. In the podcast? You know what? That's Here we so go. Different Here we from what go. usually <laughs> happens on the podcast. Right. You should have ended with, fuck you. Can you please do that again? Fuck no. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, there you go, people. That is the podcast. That's the Neolog. That's the Neolog. All right, listen, I'm sorry that I looked at a uh, talented actress naked. You know, what do you want me to do? Talented actress? Huh? Will you shut up and stop outing the person? You already fucking left like 90 clues. What is wrong with you? I didn't. Be mad at me. Don't be mad at her. I'm not mad at her. Okay. Well, then wrong. quit fucking doing that. All right. See, keep, you're doing it, it again. Keep I'm it at me. No, is, I'm not. This isn't no, about I'm not. her. Oh, this is about you. God. This is about you. And you know what? This is what happens. You know what? This this is what happens every night around eight o'clock and nine o'clock, and then she fucking drives me out of the house, and I go out and do stand up. Speaking okay. Of which are you going out? Yes, I am. And you can watch all your stupid. What was that? What was that fucking show you were watching? Which one? The show about the swimmer who doesn't get anything but swimming. What would Ryan Lochte do? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's, yes. ha he's hamming it up. He's is hamming. he? Yes. I don't know that he is. He's traveled the fucking world. He's won gold medals. No, Nia, no. Yeah, no. You, th you, you say like he's traveled the world and met with diplomats. He's traveled the world and jumped from pool to pool. He has met with diplomats. When he won a fucking gold medal, all of a sudden he get the key to the city. This guy's cut ribbons. He, okay, and he shakes yeah, hands. Yeah, he's, he's opened he zoos. <laughs> this guy's opened zoos. Okay, you, you, you're not that. D he's not that dumb. Uh, oh boy. <laughs>
don't know about that. But uh, it's hot, and that's really all that matters. Okay, and now, now do I get upset that I'm sitting on a couch and you're sitting there looking at fucking... Oh, that's what you said the other night. You see this mm-hmm. look on your face, and I'm like, are you not enjoying this show? And you're like, no, I'm looking at those abs. Yeah, and if I was lying next to you looking at naked pictures or whatever of Ryan Lochte, then you would absolutely have something to say about it. So wait a but minute. But that's not what happened. No, no, no. I was watching a show. Well, okay, eat. okay. So the bed bedroom is, is, is not cool. Yeah, the okay? bedroom is our fucking bedroom. It's where we... I know you what know, you do in a bedroom. It's a bedroom. It's a you sacred space. Christ. Do you believe this shit, guys? It's a this? fucking would, would sacred space. Would you believe space? that okay? a swell guy Can like me would have, have to swell. put up with this shit? Can we not have the bedroom at least? Okay, but if, but if I did it in the living room, if I did it in the living room, that would have been okay? If I'm not in the bed with you, yeah, you're outside. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no bed in the living room. If I'm in the fucking living room. I can look at a picture of a naked woman on the computer. I, I want no problem with that. I just want, okay. And then if I hit on the thing and all of a sudden it goes, ah, yeah, fucking right there. Oh, my God. You're not going <laughs> to have a problem with that? Not in the living room, no. But while lying in bed next to me, that's a problem. I can live with that. So we're so we're Absolutely. So I apologize. I didn't know that that was the rule. And once again, Nia, I was just looking at a fucking picture. All right? I'm a fucking guy. She's a naked woman. Mm-hmm. What am I supposed to do? Go. It's you free. It's do? free. One click away. How do I resist? Do? As if you had no choice. I really don't. The way I'm wired, I don't. All right? Oh, please. I don't accept that. Oh, the fuck you. Wired. You want to, Nia, what the if there was. I'm what? wired, please. No, I don't accept really? that. Nia, what if there was a store you could just walk into and it was a bunch of free shoes? Are we in a store right now? Or Wait are we a in minute. the fucking bedroom? It's a fucking metaphor. It doesn't matter. We're not talking about metaphors. We're talking about what actually happened. I'm talking about how you're wired versus how I'm wired. Okay. We're you're wired, wired to get you like stuff. You guys, <laughs> you're into shit. You like hats. You like fucking shoes. If, if a free hat or a free pair hats. of shoes <laughs> was a click away, you'd fucking do that right in front of me in the bed. You would. And then I'd hear, and I'd hear somebody, oh, it's a tiny toosie too, and a fucking. A free hat is not the same as what you were doing. It's just not. The end. Yeah, but and you start not, to you're, apologize you're not, you're not. for it, and now you're trying to backtrack. Because I was trying to fucking apologize, and you keep coming at me like a goddamn meerkat. I don't try to keep coming at you. You keep trying to, like, excuse yourself for what you did, and you know that it's wrong. Listen, you know what? I know you think that you're doing some amazing shit here where you're just not back in doubt, okay? Oh, God. First of all, what are you going to do to me, Nini? Huh? What are you going to do? Huh? You're gonna body slam me? I'm bigger than you. I already said I'll I have no problem with you. I'll push you right off this fucking bed. Looking at porn or whatever it is that you do, I have no problem with that. But if you're lying in bed next to me, well, and we're then I going and I to and, bed, I, and I said and okay, that, and I that's said a problem. I fucking I'm said okay. I said you okay. And I said okay. So then we have nothing left to discuss. End of podcast. Why do women always take the ball and go home? <laughs> How old are you? There, I'm on that point. It's over. End end of game. I won. I'm going home. Huh? All right, whatever. All right, that was the podcast for this fucking... <laughs> Look at me, that self-satisfied laugh. All right, that's the that's the uh, neolog this week. It's you, therapeutic. As you can see why uh, I don't have her on that much anymore. <laughs> I know, I'm never on anymore. It's because you're busy. Yeah, busy doing stuff. What are you doing? <laughs> Not doing shit. Chastising you. <laughs> All right. See ya. So, anyways, I went up to uh, see some family over the 4th of July to celebrate the birthday of this country. And um, as I'm driving up, I'm listening on the radio. And evidently, I looked up the song on, uh, on the internet. It's a uh, Carrie Underwood song. Who I don't I don't know what she is. I'm I'm guessing she's white because it sounded country, and she had a little twang in her voice. But I don't want to piss off any Koreans out there. She might have been Korean. <laughs> um, is a song called "Before He Cheats." So I'm driving along, and you know I'm driving my buddy's car. This is how I'm gonna fucking defend myself that I was on a radio station that was actually playing this, and I was just sort of clicking the. Uh, the pre-programmed radios, fucking whatever. You know what I'm saying. I'm, hu- I'm feel like shit. Cut me some slack this week. So, anyways, this song comes on, and this this 
Carrie Underwood chick is sitting there singing this song going, right now, he's probably slow dancing, blah, 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 right now. And she's singing about her boyfriend. I got the lyrics right here. Right now, he's probably buying her some fruity little drink because she can't shoot whiskey. Right now, he's probably up behind her with the pool stick showing her how to shoot a combo. And then they go into the, the chorus, and she goes, and he don't know um, that I dug my keys into the side of his pretty little souped-up four-wheel drive, carved my name into his leather seats. I took a Louisville slugger to both headlights, slashed a hole in all four tires. And all I could think was, why don't you just break up with them, you dumb cunt? You know what I mean? What are you going to do? You're going to do all this shit, then he's going to get mad, and then what? You're going to make up after five days, and then you're going to blow him again? I hate this fucking song, and I'm going to tell you why, because it's I, I'm pretty sure it's a hit. It's on the radio, right? Uh, I don't know. And you, you know what I love about this is people will listen to this song and they won't even question the rationale of what the fuck someone's doing in there because so many people in life, myself included, you you you, you play you you like powerless in life. You just play the powerless card. You know, just get out of the fucking relationship. I I fucking hate this song. And this is one of these songs, too, where fucking women all get together and they start singing, I got to cut my teeth to the side of this car. You're all a bunch of dumb cunts, okay? You're fucking stupid. Just break up with the guy. Just break up with him. Not even to mention the fact that now you're going out there and you're, you're, you're doing damage. You, you, I don't know. Is that a felony? That's not a felony. I don't know what it is, but it's just a classic thing where a woman would listen to that song and at no point would she ever think, hey, maybe I could get arrested for this. I am damaging somebody's property. No, you got a fucking vagina. You can just go out in broad daylight. You don't even have to wear a fucking mask. Do you know what I would have to do if I wanted to go out and go fuck up somebody's car? I would have to wait. for. First of all, I'd have to make sure I had an alibi. It'd be like I was killing somebody. I had to make sure somebody could cover for me and say that I was fucking somewhere, right? I had to put on some goddamn cat suit and a fucking a mask, right? Like I'm in that Dead Presidents movie. And all I would be able to get, I'd be able to get off one quick hit, right? One quick hit, unless I want to start carving it up like a pussy, right? But if I, if I really was going to go out there and smash somebody's headlights, I could hit one, and the second the car alarm goes off, I have to fucking take off and then run home, get out of my little fucking, fucking, uh, <laughs> little cat suit, and then try to put on my pajamas so when the cops show up, because you know they're going to find some sort of fucking fingerprint, I got to act like I'm not out of breath, like I actually have been sitting there for fucking eight hours watching TV. I don't know, I just, I can't stand, you know, it just reminds me of when that movie uh, Fatal Attraction came out, right? And the amount of women who would just sit there and you see that movie, huh? Yeah, that's what you get. That's what you get. You know, there's no thought of like, this bitch put a rabbit in, in, in boiling water. There's none of that. Women, they're, they're out of their fucking minds. But that's not even the point of this. My point of the Carrie Underwood song, it actually made me feel like a loser. Because the amount of fucking times, I mean, I'm going out and fucked up somebody's car, but the amount of times. You know what is that song is? That song, it's a powerless song. That's what the fuck it is. And I went through the whole lyrics to see if she breaks up with them in the end. And there's sort of an ambiguous line in the end where she goes, because uh, the next time he cheats, oh, you know, it won't be on me. So that's sort of ambiguous, because it could mean because I broke up with him, or it could be because he doesn't want to get his truck fucked up. So I don't know. You know, I, I just... It just fucking annoys me. That song just annoyed the shit out of me. On on, on both levels, where you, you got somebody... It's like, just break up with the guy. And y your solution is... You know something? If a girl ever fucking cheated on me, that that I would break up with them. I'm not saying I wouldn't flip out and uh, give them a good fucking trashing verbally, but I would never go in like 
uh, what, you know, throw all their clothes out in the front lawn and burn them. You know? Why wouldn't I do that? I don't, I don't know why. I think a lot of it has to do because I'd be fucking worried I'd get arrested for damaging property. Why do women have an exemption from damaging property? I don't understand it. If a woman sat there smashing up somebody's car in broad daylight because the guy cheated on him, people would be laughing. I would be laughing. Everyone, it would, it's, it's a comedy. It's just hilarious. But if the exact same scenario was going down and a guy did it, it, he, it'd be the classic, you know, the cops come and they put you in that little, you get tasered and they mush your face into the fucking pavement. I don't know. I get it. Women have to carry a kid around in their goddamn stomach for nine months. But I don't think that gives you the right to go out and attack somebody's Fiero. I really don't. You know? So why don't you guys just fucking relax? All right? You bunch of goddamn psychos. You know, with your I'm on my period excuse, so three weeks a month you're out of your fucking mind. I think if a girl goes, even if you were cheating on a girl or on a woman, right, and she fucks up your car, I really think you ought to be able to go up to her and give her a nice fucking two-piece combination to the goddamn fucking cabbage. What do you think about that, right? Just fucking just hook off on that fucking hair-teased head of lettuce on the top of her fucking shoulders, right? What would you go with? I'm really going to alienate a lot of my fans on this one. <laughs> And I want you to know that most of this is not me advocating punching a woman in the face. Most of this is I can't fucking sit in this stupid hotel room anymore. I can't fucking do it. I've had the goddamn do not disturb light on for like four days. They probably think I overdosed in here. I'm really big on that. Don't clean up the room. Beat it. You know, you got to come in every three days and change the sheets like I'm royalty. I change the sheets like fucking once every three weeks. Maybe. That's only if that's only if they're white and I can tell how filthy they are. That's right, wrinkle your nose up, you fucking pompous broads. That's how I live my life. Um Jesus, why am I attacking women? I don't know why. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, if you if you could punch a woman in the face, if you allowed two punches, what would you go with, okay? Would you go classic? Would you set up the overhand right with the jab? Would you actually waste a jab you know, waste a jab? Would you go? <laughs> this is just evil. All right, I gotta get off this fucking subject. I don't know. That song just annoyed me. Um, I hate those fucking songs when women just just openly talk about how they're gonna go out and destroy a guy's fucking property rather than break up with them. You know, and it's considered some sort of justification. You know, rather than looking inward, going, you know, maybe I'm a bad judge of character. What sort of qualities am, am I looking for? in somebody and I'll date that I mean didn't the fact that the guy had a souped up four wheel drive truck didn't that give it a, didn't that give it away on any fucking level huh in his I mean a souped up four wheel drive truck Carrie Underwood you dumb fucking what else did he have huh a, 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 a fucking earring hanging down with a lightning bolt on the side of it ah this fucking song stinks this is one of the, you know why I hate this song? This is, and I'm going to do my whole podcast on this fucking song. This is going to be one of those fucking songs when I'm the, on the road and I'm hating my life, you know, and I just don't want to go back to the hotel room and be lonely and I'm going to go out to a bar and that song's going to come on and f fucking four fucking twats with their ear piercing, I'm singing and I'm drunk, high pitched voices are going to start singing every fucking word of that song. Like that, they're, they're like these fucking cunt badasses. Okay, and I'm done. All right, I'm done with that. I'm done with that fucking. Oh Jesus Christ, that fucking song annoyed me. Oh, by the fucking way. Not by the way, people. This is by the fucking way. Which you know that I'm about ready to tell you some shit that I believe in, baby. Uh, I'm at I'm at Logan Airport. Edward Lawrence Logan Airport. I finally learned that, that Logan Airport is, is named after Eddie Lawrence Logan, who was some sort of fucking uh, military person who fought in the Spanish-American War, and that they used to have a statue of him before they had to make the airport even bigger because people out-fucked it, you know? So I go there, okay, and I go through security, 
and they got the giant fucking microwave they want me to stand in with my legs spread doing the Jay-Z symbol, right? Well, the Sammy Hagar from the 5150 tour, depending on what generation you are, depending what what side of the track you're from. All right? This podcast is for everybody. Um, I'm sure someone in the village people did it. There, you see that? Reached out to the gay community. Swell guy. Pat myself on the back here. <laughs> so anyways, I say I'm not fucking, you know, I'm opting out. All right, sir, can you go stand over there? I didn't even like standing over there. I used to work in a fucking dental office when I would take an x-ray of somebody's tooth. One little fucking thing, and we put that camera right up to the side of their jaw. We put a lead vest over all their vitals right down to their dick or hoo-ha. And then I left the fucking room. Stood behind a wall that had lead in it, and I pressed the fucking button. Now I'm supposed to stand there, you know, like I'm just going into prison. They do everything, but you have you bend over and spread your fucking ass cheeks. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing it. And I know what people are saying. Well, Bill, you talk on a cell phone, right? That's fucking radiation. You fly in an airplane, right? That's fucking radiation. I understand that I am getting radiated throughout the course of the day and the way I live my life. I understand that, okay? But I don't need to get extra radiated. So if there's a way to opt out, believe me, if there was a way to opt out of flying on a fucking airplane, a, a, a viable way, aside from just saying, fuck this business, I'm going to buy an old bus and just drive around, and that'll be my miserable life, I would do it. But the fact that I can just stand there for an extra 5, 10, 15 fucking minutes, you know, and rather than stand in that microwave, I could just go over and just have some, you know, sort of cute male person pat down my ass with the back of his hands. <laughs> do you have any sensitive areas? Um, I would much rather do that, okay? And then, you know, people have given me shit about it, saying it's stupid, it's fucking pointless, and blah, 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 blah. Well, so anyway, anyways, I'm at Eddie Lawrence Logan Airport, Edward Lawrence, and um, I'm standing there, I'm waiting, you know, and whenever you want to get fucking patted down, they wait for fucking ever. They make it take extra long. I'm convinced that they do it just so you just say, fuck it, I'm going to go into the toaster, all right? But I don't give a shit. I always get to the airport early. Because I know the game that they're running over there. Oh, the lovely Nia, everybody. How are you? I'm good. Come over here, talking to the microphone. How you been? We couldn't hear you last week. Oh, I've been great. Thanks for asking. Great to be back. Are you reading from a script? I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who just woke up? I am great. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Where's the real Nia? Who is this sexy robot that was replaced? Listen to this shit. I'm telling this story about, you know, I always opt out of doing the Jay-Z thing where they radiate everything but your fucking taint at the airport. Jay-Z? Yeah, you know where you fucking, you have your hands like the Hova sign? Oh, God, isn't, isn't that yeah. what it is? Yeah. So um, I'm standing there waiting, right? And I'm staring down some bald-headed douche who knows. First of all, they always have some chick there, and she just goes, you know, what do they, what do they, what do they say? Uh, male, oh, what is what they say? Male pat-down or whatever they say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Male yeah. support. Mm-hmm. Aisle five, whatever the fuck they say, and it's typical chick voice where it it can, it can only carry. What, like, what is what is that? You guys aren't good at yelling. Yes, we are. I yell at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like no one hears it. No. no one hears it. All right, go ahead. You know, I got the microphone away. Yell, male support, aisle four. Yell it. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. So. Male support, aisle four. That's good. That has a sense of fucking urgency. <laughs> All right, then you know what? They don't put their fucking heart in it. They just go, mail packed out. Oh, well, because you can't be screaming like there's something going down or whatever. Yeah, but you got to communicate. You got to communicate to those bald fatties guys down there who are going to put the back of their hands on my ass there. Well, they, they, don't, they don't get it. They have a whole little system that they're talking to each other. That you, you hey, Whose fucking to... side do you want here? Not yours, obviously. All right, well, listen to this shit. Listen to this shit. Wait a second. Let me, let so me get they, to the point. Go hey, go get, go, time out. Time that. out. Get another microphone. Get another microphone. Hang on a second. We're actually going to pause the podcast. Pause the podcast. All right. Through the magic of hitting pause. That's <laughs> well, something I never do on this thing. I actually hit pause there. Uh, so anyways, this is the deal. So I'm, I'm going through security. Yeah. After all these people ridicule me like, oh, you're already getting radiation anyways, man. 
So why not stand there and have literally have your entire body, but your taint, lit up, right? So I'm fucking standing there, and this lady is going, Hey, fucking yeah, male support out for You know? And I'm like, they're not hearing you. They're not hearing And then she goes, Sir, could you stand over there? I go, I'm going to stand right. I need to watch my wallet. Okay, you can stand right there. All right. So anyways, this fucking this Asian kid comes up. Fat Asian kid, one of the rare ones. Why? Why like, is like, that relevant? Like, 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 like a white elephant. Why is that relevant? It's because not Asian that people rare. are in great shape. They eat great. I don't know what it is. They're in fucking awesome shape. There and every certain... once in a while, you see one. You see a fat Asian. You're like, holy shit! Right? I don't mean like he's a fucking did it on purpose to sumo wrestle. This is just a fat kid. Sumo. <laughs> sumo. Sumo. Samoan. Whatever the fuck it is. This fat Asian kid comes up. Not and relevant to the story. But it is. On. For the comedy, it is. Oh, I see. All right. Sorry. Come on. <laughs> Listen, I trashed waspy fucking white people on this thing. Oh, you did? Did you talk about Nantucket? Yes, I did. Oh. Ahoy. Ahoy. <laughs> yeah, see, you just hate him. And it's, and it's wrong. I don't hate anybody. I don't have hate in my heart. All right, shut up. Listen. So this 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 person, this fat kid, comes up. Yeah. All right. And the lady and the lady just goes, uh, hi. He couldn't even hear. Her. He goes, he's like, what? She goes, hey. He's like, what? And I, I want to be like, how old are you? That's what the fuck she's trying to say. Mm -hmm. And he goes, thirteen. And she goes, all right, come over here. And she had him go through the old school one. Yeah. So basically, you want me to stand in something that could kill a 13-year-old. <laughs> That's what the fuck I'm supposed to do. You know what? On the way, wait, on the way out, on the way back, twi two, time, two times that, four times a month, I'm going to stand in this thing that can kill a 13-year-old. It can't. I'm sure it can't kill it. Maybe it like, can affect his like, um, puberty or his growth or something. Yeah. I think Maybe women... it can affect his dick. I have a dick, too. What, because my dick's old now? Yeah, your it dick does... is old. It's already, <laughs> it's already grown. Your what balls are, some... are, like, down between your knees. The pubes No protected. one cares about it anymore. Like, it's just kind of, like, out of commission. I think women can avoid that full body thing by saying that they're pregnant. And they won't let you go. They won't make you go in there if you say that you're pregnant. Oh, exactly. You I can, think you can always. You, women always have the "I'm just a girl" excuse That's to not get out I'm of just a girl. horrific it's things I'm that guys pregnant. have to do. But stick with the thing here. If that fucking thing, how old are you? Thirteen. Get might over here. Prevent if, him from getting like chest hair or something. But you, yeah, you're old. Like they don't care about you. It's the youth of tomorrow that we're concerned about. Oh, there you go. I sat there and I, I you're almost. You're out of the game, I, old man. I almost, I'm not even, I, this isn't about me whether I, I feel like I'm old or not. I know I'm old. I'm talking about suburban. <laughs> um, I almost high-fived myself. I actually, I bursted out laughing, extra laughed, because I wanted fucking Mary Mumbles to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mary Mumbles. Yeah, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing because I'm doing the right thing. If that fucking thing isn't safe for a goddamn 13, I could see if it was a bit, ah, ah, making some little baby crawl through there. <laughs> it's a fucking kid who probably knows more about computers than I do. And they're, they're like, yeah, no, don't think so. Come over here. To listen on Spotify, click the link below. All right. There's a lot of question out there about, you know, things that happen within society, especially, you know, this, this is something that I think a lot of white people need because not because we're more racist than anybody else. We just get just the, the consequences of us fucking up is so much harsher than other people because, uh, you know, we, we are the gold standard when it comes to racist. <laughs> we are in the driver's seat right now. We have been in the driver's seat for a while Basically meaning that if we are ignorant assholes, it, it has way more effect than when other people are. You know, back in the day when other people were running shit, that's the thing. Whoever's on top, if you're thinking ignorant, uh, that's, that's why, you know, if you're on top and you're thinking ignorant shit, you have to be called on it because uh, just because the, cause the effect that you can have. You know what I mean? Like, if somebody from Bangladesh fucking hates me, that's such a stupid example, okay? That, that's not a race of people. I don't even know where Bangladesh is, and i got to be honest with you, I don't even know if that's a city or a country. Bangladesh. Have you ever seen that on uh, The Price is Right? You know, in Showcase Showdown, we're selling you to Bangladesh. And some white trash person like myself sits there with a the confused look on their face, like, I don't know where that is. 
Is that where the terrorists are? I don't want to go there. Whatever. Like if Filipino people fucking hate me, that doesn't affect my life. It doesn't. I'm not going to go into a job interview at, 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 you know, Walmart is not run by Filipinos. You know what I mean? You know, not saying there's anything wrong with Filipinos. All right? See, see what I have to do right there as a white person? Not saying I'm saying anything bad about Filipinos. Just to be clear here, I have never had issues. I've never had a blah, 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 blah. Fucking all that shit. You got to go to the Jerry Lewis voice there. Lady. Um, so, yeah, people have questions. So here we go. And I think all races should chime in. The questions that you have, if you have feelings about a different race of people and you just think you're thinking something funny, there's nothing malicious, but is this offensive? Is it racist? This is, this is the new topic, okay? And if you feel that I answer these questions like the ignorant white man that I am, uh, call me out on it. Um, here, so here we go. This first one. Uh, Bill, is it racist to call Indians dibu dabus? <laughs> And I'm talking about the Asian ones, not Native Americans. I'm, I'm guessing by dibba dabbas, you mean dibba dabu. Dibba dabu, dibba dabu. You're saying like that? Dibba dabu. Um, is it racist? Probably. But it's fucking funny. So that knocks it down a little bit. This is what I feel that makes something like racist. It's like, like the reason why. Uh, that one isn't as offensive is because we haven't – we never enslaved them. That's the reason why white and black shit is so sensitive is because of the shit that we did to them. But we haven't really fucked with those people, you know? So if the black version of that was is – it, is it offensive to call black people, hey, man, motherfucker, or whatever? Yes, that would be offensive. If you did some sort of mocking of the way they spoke, yes, that would be that would be offensive. If some CEO was giving a speech and I was driving, uh, actually, I was having someone else drive my town car. <laughs> and we drove by a group of, uh, yo, motherfuckers. And uh, they proceeded to walk towards, yeah, you'd have to apologize. So I guess, yeah, I guess technically, like that would be, <laughs> that would be offensive. Is it racist? Um, this is what I, I really, I really, it's hard for me to say because it, it had, it's what's in your heart, you know, cause I make fuck, I really, I make fun of, of everybody, you know, I mean, I play a game out here, uh, when someone is making, uh, let me ask you, I got a question for you. Is this racist? I have a game out here when I ride around with Nia and she does not approve of this to keep her in the clear. She does not approve of this. When somebody makes a moronic move in front of me, you know, driving, you know, just makes a fucking horrific move, I play a game called Old or Asian. <laughs> and you have to guess when, because I'm going to pass the person because I got to see what they look like. You know, whenever somebody does something fucked up, some comedians do a great joke about that. You just want to see what the fuck they look like, right? Uh, that's the game, Old or Asian. So as I speed up my little hybrid to try to pull parallel to them, I always say, what do you say, Nia? What are you going with? Old Eurasian. What do you got? Old Eurasian. She goes, I'm not playing this game. That's mean. And then I was going, I'm going to go with old. And then I pull up. Oh, it's fucking Asian. You know, or, oh, I nailed it. It was an old guy. So um, is that racist? I'm sure it's offensive, but within the context of my own car, you know, I'm not yelling it at anybody. And I got to admit, you know, there's a lot of truth in the fucking game. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to have to apologize next week on the podcast. So I would say that uh, Indian people, why don't you chime in? I would say that, yeah, that they would find that they would find that uh, offensive. Um, is it racist? Let me see if I can use it in a sentence here. Hey, uh, you know, I, I called up customer service and, uh, you know, one of those dibba-dabbas answered and tried to tell me that his name was Steve and act like he was in uh, Kentucky. But I, I, I know that he was actually in India because when he talked, he was going, dibba-dabba, what? How could I help you? Um, is it racist? Probably. You know what? Something bad has to happen between white culture and uh, or, or Western culture and uh, Indians. So you know what I mean? It's like uh, it's like you're playing a team and there's no rivalry. 
like Patriots versus Jets this year was like uh, whites and blacks. It was bad. It was a lot of hate, you know. But like Patriots versus like the fucking Lions, you know. Yeah, there's gonna be some shit talk. It's it's knocked out. But it still hurts if somebody says something mean. <laughs> I don't. I really don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. All right, let's move to the next one. The next one on the new controversial topic on the Monday morning podcast. Is it racist? All right, here we go. Um, Bill, I had an interesting experience today, apparently involving me as a racist. I was walking with two of my coworkers who are both black. Oh, Jesus, here we go. Um, we were going to go get some lunch. One of my coworkers, who I'm also friends with, uh, uh, did a little high five fist bump shuffle with one of the female sec- security guards at the front desk. Knowing both of them and how they interact with one another, I kind of made a in passing comment to the tune of, man, you guys in your handshakes, while obviously laughing, <clears throat> laughing, while obviously laughing at just how choreographed it was and more or less picturing them in a studio or something, working out the logistics to get the fucking handshake perfect. Anyways, we all laughed and moved on, and we got our lunch. All right, so nothing wrong yet. So you're cool with these people. You made a joke, and everybody laughed. No problems. No problems so far. Um, However, after coming back uh, back through security, I noticed a security guard stopped me and kind of had a scowl on her face. I thought she was mad at me for something, but it turned out she was mad at this other lady who was black because she overheard my comment and was telling uh, that security guard that she couldn't believe I had the nerve to say something like that and I should be ashamed. Also to the point where she could, um, almost to the point where she could actually go complain to the human resource people because she was offended, um, et cetera, without even considering that maybe, just maybe, I was talking about the security guard and my coworker and not all black people. Now, it being corporate America and all, I'm sure rather than even face the possibility of any bad press, they'd rather just sweep me out the door and completely ruin my re- any reputation that I may or may not hold at the company just to save their own asses. I feel I did nothing wrong and had no intentions of ever doing anything wrong, anything wrong. I'm not going to go on and on about how I kiss black babies and try to rehabilitate inner city schools because I don't. But I'm certainly not some corn-fed, rebel flag-waving, ignorant product of what might be incest. I guess my question is, do we really have to walk on eggshells when we are just making casual conversation that just any that just any cunt can pick apart, select the context that they might think it is in, and then start crying foul. Basically, I would have liked to call that woman a cunt and told her to go fuck herself, but let's just say I was already kind of worried about my job. All right. See? Um, yeah, I think this is, this is the classic one where you were fucking around The other two people knew you were fucking around, but then one person decides to get offended, and then you have to go on TV and apologize, which personally I think is the wrong move because when you apologize, now it's like you're you're admitting that you meant it in a bad way. I mean, the apology I would do there is say, look, you know, I'm sorry that you didn't understand that I was joking, but I'm not going to sit here and apologize like I have any, any sort of ill will coming your way. You know, but I but just to avoid the problem in the future, uh, white people do not use the expression "you guys" or "you people" <laughs> when talking about black people. That's just it, it's just not going to you're you're setting yourself up for someone to get offended, and um, there's a weird sort of uh, push pull going on with that whole uh, "you guys" and "you people" thing, where um, when somebody white says that, there becomes this concern of um, <clears throat> that you're separating. You're separating, like yeah, you know, you people over there with how you live your lives, and we're over here, 
black people have that weird relationship with white people where they're like, you know, can you stop stealing our fucking music and our culture? And, but then, like, if something, you know, hey, let's pave the streets, you know? Well, make sure you do it in our neighborhood. We're all in this together, right? All of us together. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's that weird sort of fucking push-pull thing going on. So, yeah, just avoid uh, avoid the whole fucking um, – yeah, you fucked up. You didn't fuck up, but you, you left yourself open for a sucker punch by saying you guys. You know, uh, that's – I guess that that's what it is. I don't know. That's, that's, that's my – I'm basically a white guy telling a white guy how he fucked up. So black people, if you're listening to this thing, uh, please please help me out here. Did I basically get it right? Is that essentially it? And I know most people wouldn't get offended. All right, so there you go. That's the new, that's the new topic. Is it racist? And I would love to hear um, some honest comments from uh, non-white people about their thoughts. You know? The fucked up ones, too. Okay? Because I've watched enough Spike Lee movies to think that evidently it's just us, but I've hung around enough people from different races to realize, oh, yeah, everybody's like this. Wrote in to ask me if they thought that this, if, if this was like a racist game. They said, Bill, I'd like to play a little game similar to your Asian or old person driving game, except my game involves the, the evening news. It's called Beaner, Black Guy, or Crazy Ass Cracker. Just to clarify, I am Hispanic, parentheses, Latino, Mexican, or whatever other dumbass term someone has come up with. So saying Beaner is okay. See, now this is why I wanted to do this segment. This is the exact fucking reason. Okay, he says Beaner, Black Guy, and Cracker. All right? And he goes, I can say beaner because I'm Mexican. Well, then why can you say cracker-ass cracker? Right? It's because I'm white and no one gives a fuck about that one. See what I'm saying? This is something that I learned from doing stand-up in front of all different kinds of people. That's what I learned. I learned that everybody basically, it's not that they're selfish. They, they just they look out of their own head. You can't help but do that. So you just see shit from your own perspective. Like one night I was doing this gig, right? down at the old Boston Comedy Club in New York City. And one of the acts that was going up was this, uh, was this, I think I told this story before. It was, a, it was a comedy team. It was this Asian guy and girl. And they went up there and they did this fucking rap. Okay? And they went up there and they stuck their teeth out like they had buck teeth. And then they put, you know those glasses that you can put on those joke ones that make your eyes look Asian? They had though they're Asian and yet they still put those on. And then the other guy had on a, a a fake gold chain with a fucking fortune cookie hanging off the thing. So I'm sitting there looking at him before they're going up, going, "Oh man, this isn't gonna fly. This isn't gonna fly with this fucking crowd. This is basically, uh, what do you call that shit? What what was that shit back in the day in old time Hollywood?" It was almost like Asian blackface. Like what they were doing was fucking was ridiculous. So I was thinking that black people watching it were going to be like, just all the shit that they've been through would look at it and be like, what the, why are they these fucking, why are they selling out their own fucking race? This is horrific. This is fucking horrific. And they didn't. That act went up there and they fucking destroyed and everybody laughed their balls off. They thought the fortune cookie thing was fucking hilarious. And I was just like, yeah, people, I don't know. Maybe it's because they're shitting on their own race. What the fuck are you supposed to do? I don't know. I just found that shit fascinating. So uh, does that pertain to what the fuck I just said? I don't know. This cold medicine's kicking in. Let me finish this. So anyways, this is basically what this guy does. He says, uh, uh, just to clarify. Okay, now this game started because I hate watching the news. And no matter what I'm watching, Sports Center usually, my wife will want to change it. Um, so naturally, being the asshole that I am, I had to figure out a way to ruin it for her. Um, so what I do is turn away from the news whenever they begin, begin explaining the crimes or events of the day. Based on the description of the crime or event and how it was committed or performed, I yell either beaner, black guy, or crazy-ass cracker. Dude, that actually sounds like a fun fucking game. Well, I wouldn't say crazy-ass cracker. I would just say fucking white dude. Um, example, news report says, would I say Beaner? No, I wouldn't. That's one of the worst ones ever. Beaner. It's got no ring. It's got no flow. That must have been a bad day with white people. You know, usually we're a lot more creative than that. 
you know, name you after a fucking vegetable. Is it a vegetable? Is it a fruit? What the fuck is it? I don't fucking know. Anyways, <clears throat> it's a plow ahead. Example, news reporter says a man was stabbed, and I yell out, Beaner! I know it's a beaner because we Mexicans can't afford guns and still pay for our illegal extended family members we have living with us in our two-bedroom house. If the news report says a drive-by shooting, I yell, black guy. Come on, do I really have to explain the reason behind that one? And, of course, if I hear the suspect had body parts of his victims in the refrigerator, fucking crazy-ass cracker. It's because of this game that my wife has stopped watching the news altogether, and I now have peace and quiet to enjoy my top plays of the day fix on Sports Center. Well, good for you. Good for you. Now, see, that's something I don't. I don't think that that's racist, because what you you don't have any hatred towards any of those groups. What you're doing is you're actually. You don't want to watch the news. It's fucking depressing. You want to watch sports, and then she puts on a d- bunch of depressing shit, and. What are you going to do? Sit there and get depressed? Or are you going to fucking entertain yourself? So you turn it into a fucking game. It's actually a, uh, you know, I'm not offended by it. I think that's fucking funny. And there's a lot of truth to it. Um, oh, here's a guy responding to the dibba Um Is that racist? Um, anyway, so yeah, Indians aren't big white people fans because the British controlled their country for hundreds of years. See that once again. See, we all can make ignorant statements. So then you should hate the English. Why do you hate all white people? See that? We're all just as dumb. Oh, God damn it. This, this, is, this is enjoyable. All right, let's plow ahead here. Something I, I, I remember reading about this. I'm going to give you a vague description of what I remember. This is classic for my podcast because nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about. See this? This is how we're all coming together. Um. Yeah, the British were fucking over the Indian people, and Indian people did something. They finally fucking snapped, and they went off, and they did something really violent to uh, some of the British people who were over there, including women and children, I believe. And uh, they went, say, you know, we'll say one to ten evil. They went about five and then England said, oh, yeah, we'll fucking show you what evil is. And then they came back and they went 15. And they were like fucking burning people alive. They just went around just, just shooting everybody. Um, which is what you have to do when you fucking occupy a country. You have to commit fucking genocide. That's the only way, which is why you shouldn't do it. You know? It's why you shouldn't fucking invade another country. Because they ain't fucking leaving. They ain't fucking leaving. So uh, I don't know. You know what? This is like, that's part of a whole nother big dis- uh, discussion. I shouldn't even have fucking brought it up. But the only occupation I've ever seen that ever fucking worked was in this country. And the reason why it worked was because we weren't leaving and we fucking committed genocide. That's the re- And I'm not for that on any fucking level, which is why when I look around the world and I see certain people in certain areas, I'm not surprised with what the fuck's going down because that's what always goes down. So it always fucking goes down. It's fucking, uh, I don't know. It's fucking, it's evil. It's pure fucking evil. Um, it's been right there. Right there. Okay, here's a couple of re- revenge stories. Um, all right, Bill, saw you at the Stress Factory. You're the only white guy I've paid to see there. Great. Uh, thank you. I think. I love when black guys say that. You know, you're the funniest white boy I've seen. Uh, thanks. Usually, I think you guys suck. Yeah, just openly. Oh, shit. Somebody dropped the fucking N-word. First time. First time this year, somebody dropped the N-word to me after one of my shows. You guys ever see that bit I did about being in Nashville? And that guy dropped the, the N-word out of fucking nowhere. And he didn't even look around. He said it like he was saying the word like chair or something. And I got all fucking panicked and I didn't know what to do. Every once in a while, that happened to me in Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee, Raleigh, North Carolina, and now uh, Tampa. This is all over the last, like, four years. So this time, uh, it was after one of my shows, this dumb broad who wouldn't shut the fuck up the whole show, and she kept standing up, and she had blonde hair that was sort of like a short haircut, and so she ended up looking like Glenn Close in The Natural. She kept standing up. And uh, so at the end of the show, she had to come out to me. No, oh, you're not there. You're not there. I think you're funny. She's all fucking drunk. I'm like, okay, sweetheart. 
Okay. And like, you know, I'm selling my DVDs. And as she would go to the left of the table, I would go around to the right, you know, and then she'd go to the right, I'd go to the left. I'm basically keeping a piece of furniture in between us because, you know, those fucking girls, when they get drunk and they come up with that red wine breath, it's fucking horrific, you know? So she comes up to me, and I'm like, okay, 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 I'm glad, I, I get it. You had a good time. You weren't trying to disrupt the show, even though I told you to shut the fuck up 15 times. I get it. She goes, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. You, you're one of my favorite comedians. I like you, and I like Cat Williams, even though he's a N-word. <laughs> I just looked at her. I go, did you just say... And then she looked at me. I go, all right, you have a good night. And I just walked away. That's my new thing I do. The first time, when it first used to happen, I used to kind of stare at the floor with my eyebrows up, not looking at them like, okay, what the fuck? This is really happening. And then I went through this middle phase of trying to uh, change the person's views, trying to tell them why they shouldn't say it. And I realized that's a fucking waste of time. You know what I mean? Like, I, like, you have to, like, fuck, I mean, this, it's like the person was, like, 14 or 15 saying it, and they had hope. This person was, like, pushing 40. It's over, you know? That's like the uh, fucking America right now. We think we're going to go into Iraq and drop some fucking Starbucks and cheesecake factories over there, and those people are going to stop. It's over. They're not, they, they're, they're doing what the fuck they're doing. They don't like each other, and we should let them just fucking work it out. So I just look at those, I just, now I just go, like, I, I just clarify what they say. Did you just say this? And they either say yes or just look at me, and I just walk away from them. Uh, so I walk away, and then I'm talking to somebody else, and then all of a sudden she comes staggering up again. No, wait, wait. You don't understand. You, you don't understand. And I said, ma'am, I'm done talking to you. Seriously, I'm done talking to you. Walk away. So um, I don't know. I know she's going to wake up this morning, and I'm going to be the asshole. I had a couple of those. I have a lot of problems with women down here in Tampa. I had another girl. Uh, she was just drunk and pissed. She comes walking up to the table. Wait, wait, you fucking selling a fucking DVD? I got to fucking buy one. You already fucking have it. And I'm just like, ma'am, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. What the fuck? My fucking husband wants me to fucking buy a fucking DVD. So, and then she was doing that whole thing, coming around to the back. One thing, if I can just establish one thing. I would love to establish after my shows is if somehow I could get people to respect the other side of the table. You know, I don't mind people come around. They want to take a picture. But the people who come around, people who, who you don't mind coming up to you, never come up to you. They all walk out the door. And then they send you a text. I was going to say hi, but I was shy. Sorry. But the fucking drunks who come up with spittle coming out of their mouth. They just, they got to walk right up to your face. What's that Seinfeld? The close talkers? That's what they end up doing. I don't even remember what to, I'm, you know, I'm not even drinking. I can't even remember what the fuck happened last night because it's high voltage tower. I don't know. She just kept coming up to me and she kept cursing. I'm like, all right, lady, all right. And she goes, no, no, I'm sorry. You come over here and hug me. It's like, no, get away from me. And then she starts putting her fucking hands on me, you know, and it's just like, you know something, you fucking twat. I don't want you fucking touching me right now, okay? But you don't give a shit because you're a woman and I'm a guy, and this and it's okay for you to do that. It's not considered anything. If I do it to you, it's fucking some sort of harassment, right? It's your fucking, it's your fucking drunk ass hands off of me. You're you're you're, you're a sloppy mess. Get away from me. You know what I'm doing? I want to put my hand right on her fucking forehead, you know. And right as she reached up to fucking remove my hand, I gave her that little. Uh, to her head, make that head snap back a little bit. And as right as it was registering that I made her head snap back, I would then, like like Chuck Norris, swiftly move to the exact opposite side of the tables. Cause then I know I know she'd get mad and then start flailing. Oh my god, you just fucking slapped me in the fucking head. Yes, I did, you drunk cunt. Buy a DVD or don't buy a DVD. But don't fucking you know come up and start fucking cursing me out. I'm not telling you you gotta buy the thing. You fucking twat. Beat it. All right, so I got one more show here in Tampa. <laughs> uh, that didn't even make sense. All right, Bill. Hey, Bill, I'm 24 and have four kids. Jesus Christ. What is that, the fucking 1800s? What do, you, what do you got? What do you got? Some fucking, do you need some farmhand, sir? Somebody go clean out the silo or fill it up? Oh, good Lord. You guys make your own clothes? 
I'm 24 and I have four kids. I'm married. I feel bad for this guy. I should make fun of him. I work for public utilities doing very hard manual labor. And I work hard for my money, which goes straight to my wife and four kids. Basically, when politicians run for office and they try to stand on the shoulders of hardworking Americans, this is the guy right here. This is the guy that, like Sam Elliott talks about. Speaking of that, I recently saw one of those Coors commercials. Have you seen that? The Rocky Mountains go down this country like a backbone. And we make our beer the way the fuck we want to, and that's what's having a backbone is all about. you got to have a backbone to make a light beer that looks and tastes like piss. A watered-down, shitty beer that comes from the backbone, Rocky Mountains. You know something? I think whenever you have a pussy product, you know, one of the red flags is you get Sam Elliott to do the voiceover, you know? Because you're like, oh, my God, people are going to see right through the fact that, I mean, come on, people, Coors. It's one of those beers when, like, you're hungover that you actually drink. That's like vitamin water for an alcoholic. <laughs> They're trying to tie it into the fucking Rocky Mountains. I mean, I know, I know they, they get their fucking water from the Rocky Mountains. Go down this country like a backbone. Her, uh, uh, tough guy shit. Uh, give me some of that skull bandit. Uh, Coors Light. Yeah, oh, Jesus. Um, anyways, where the fuck am I? How the fuck did I even start talking about that? The other day I got a call from work. Uh, the other day I, I got a call from her. Okay, let, let's 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 reset this up again. The guy's 24 years old. He has 17 kids. No, he has four kids. He's married. Works for public utilities. Does very hard manual labor. He works his fucking ass off, and all his money goes straight to his fucking wife and his kids. All right. The other day I got a call from her at work, and she told me to meet her at the doctor's office because she doesn't like taking the kids to the doctor alone. When I get there, she starts yelling at me as usual, red flag, and they and then said, then she said, all you know how to do is work. So why don't you just go back to work and saying all I do is pick up after you and the kids and basically calling me a loser for working and making money. I'm doing my best to provide for my kids. She takes my money. She spends my money on stupid shit. We've been married for a year. And four months now, but you got four kids. Did you have quadruplets, sir? What happened? I don't know, Bill. I'd just like to hear your take on the situation and give me some advice. All right. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. All right. All right. First things first. I don't know what you said before she said, all you know how to do is work, so why don't you go back to work? That could have been anything from her actually being a jerk to her saying, yeah, Philip has a cold, and you said, uh, yeah, uh, which one's Philip? We got so many fucking kids. Which one, which one is he? Is he, is he the little uh, rusty-haired one? And then she, ah, well, you know how to do his work. Why don't you go back to work? You know, if she said it like that, then what can you do? Um, but it doesn't seem, I don't know, the fact that she's saying all I do is pick up after you and the kids, uh, this, this is what you need to do. The worst thing that you can do um, when you want somebody to hear your point is to be a fucking asshole like me. It's like when I, when I approach that lady at the bank, you know, I, I, she didn't hear what I was saying because, A, she's, you know, a, she's a cunt. All right, who's kidding who? But beyond that was I was a dick to her. So no one's going to listen to you if you're a dick. So if you really, if you want to stay with this woman, Right? You're going through a rough period in your relationship. What you have to do is you got to walk away from that situation. You know, go scream into a pillow all the shit that you want to say to her or go yell at your windshield as you drive around the block 15 fucking times. A couple of drinks, whatever you got to do. Unwind. And this is how I do it because I have a brutal temper. And just write down on a piece of paper what you want to fucking convey. All right? And then practice it. I know this sounds crazy to, to people who don't have this problem, but that's what I have to do because I, I'll sit there. And like that bank thing, I, 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 if I, I tried to practice it. My first attempt at practicing, I would start off slow and eventually get pissed <coughs> all over again. I'd be like, hey, listen, I noticed that when you went in, 
you know, you opened your car door into my car, and then you came out, and then you did it again, and it's like, what the fuck? You know, okay, wait a minute, I can't do that. All right, start over, Bill, and each time I would get further and further to the end. So that's what you have to do with this person. You, you, you have to sit down, hour and 12 minutes, how fucking long is this podcast? You have to sit down with her and just be like, look, I mean, I don't know what you, you're, just say, listen, we have four kids, that's the situation. You know, the place is going to be a mess, and I am working. Okay, obviously, I'm not giving you what you need. What what more do you need from me? Okay? Let her – that's a, probably a good way. All right, we need to talk. You seem really upset with me, blah, 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 blah. What more do you need from me than what I'm doing? All right? Since she sees that you're relaxed, you're going to hear what the hell she wants to say. Then when she says what she has to say, you know, fair enough. All right. Here's, here's what I need from you, all right? And then in a nice way, you got to tell her to stop spending all your money on stupid shit, all right? That's what you got to do. And I'm telling you, the key when you're fucking trying to make some headway in your relationship is with the woman is you can't lose your fucking cool, all right? And they will, if, if you back them into a corner sometimes, when they're doing something wrong, because they're humans, they're going to do something wrong. When you back them into the corner and they did something wrong, watch out if they start attacking you, all right, with shit that has nothing to do with what you're arguing about. Like you're arguing about, you know, you know whatever. Like you, you fucking, um, she keeps leaving the TV on and going to bed and it's on all night. She's fucking whatever, whatever the fuck that that causes, the, the electric bill to go up. If all of a sudden she starts going, well, you know, you're just mad because you're, you know, you're just short or she attacks you for that or some other bullshit or just you're just a fucking asshole right there. She just abandoned her argument. And what she's doing now is she's just trying to make you mad so that she can steer the argument into some other bullshit or just ho hopefully get you to say something so fucked up that it uh, it just totally camouflages, you know, the bullshit that she did to start the fucking argument, basically. So. Just keep it cool. You got to sit down. You got to, dude. You got four girl. You got four kids with this with this girl. You, you, you're you're attached at the hip with this woman. Okay. So what you want to do is try to have a good time. You're a good guy. You're working your fucking ass off. Okay. She needs to appreciate that, and uh, she has to appreciate that. You know. Uh, you know. What do you want to do? You want to fucking whatever the fuck you're doing. You do want to walk around picking up uh, SpongeBob SquarePants stuffed animals all day. You know. You got to be like, sweetheart, you had four fucking kids. See, this is why I'm not good at it. Sweetheart, you had four fucking kids. The fuck do you think was going to happen? You know, get your tubes tied. Quit bitching at me. See, that's the first pass. That's the first way I would say it. <laughs> and by you get to the end, you just say, listen, you know, I love you. You love me. We have four beautiful kids. We have to work together. It's definitely a trying time being this young with all these kids, but blah, 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 blah. And I'm telling you, your, your, your life will be like, it'll be better. It'll be better if you work it out. But the worst thing you want to do is come and hurt after you've had a few pops and said, listen, let me tell you something, you dumb cunt. All right? I'm the backbone of this fucking country. You don't want to come at her that way. All right? You stupid bitch. I'm fucking working my balls off. Why don't you go out there on that goddamn fucking oil rig all day? You know? Why don't you go down to the pharmacy and get on the fucking pill? Maybe you wouldn't have to be picking up so much shit. All right? Or they'll let me know to pull out. You'd say dumb shit like that, you know, and then you're going to have a fucking horrific relationship. You don't want to do that. So that's it. That's the podcast for this week, everybody. And My grandmother's going to be 99 in October, and she still drives. That's good. She still Why? Drives. Why? Does she still fuck? I think when she was like <laughs> 75. Yeah, then that would be impressive. <laughs> you know, you know, 99, you know that's not impressive. You know what that's like? No, it that's isn't. That's like handing a child a loaded gun and going, he's had it for four days and hasn't shot himself yet. No, it's not. See, the kid scenario is that's funnier. That, <laughs> hold on. We got it. That's not true, though. She has over 75 years of driving experience. That doesn't chalk up to experience. Jimmy's Are on, you joking? I don't ride with her. Jimmy's on to something here, though. Ooh. We all have an old relative that we brag about. Mine was a great aunt. She finally passed at 101, and I used to say, and she lives alone. She still lives alone, and she goes shopping right. at the corner. And you're like, you're... that was the second half of my story. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, we all do she it. She still does ball. I think it's because she plays bridge. That but, keeps her mind so Yeah, good. but we all do that. We have that relative we brag about. Right. Jimmy I'm, hit it right on the head.
really impress us. Does she still fuck? Does she still, like, skydive? Does she still do real shit? I'll bet you she still gives rides to, like, like she's probably a nice lady. And she'll <laughs> oh, probably no, still no. pick up a hitchhiker occasionally and pull over and suck his cock. <laughs> I mean, I'm oh, not trying Jimmy, to be disrespectful. Jimmy, that's, that's, that's oh, my grandma. No, no, no disrespect. That's my grandma. She's, no disrespect. She's a woman. More importantly. <laughs> well, how would she get that done, though, Jimmy? Like, if, you know, we're just talking about someone's grandma. She'd probably be driving along and, oh, look at the young man. Looks like my grandson. <laughs> he probably that's shouldn't radio be the walking. radio in <laughs> it's going to Jimmy, rain. Jimmy, don't do that to me. I don't want to picture my grandmother blowing me. But she pulls over, oh, and God. the young guy gets in, and she talks, and my grandson looks like you. He's He tells jokes. He's on TV. Oh, oh, He's very funny. <laughs> young man, why are you looking at me and rubbing your crotch? What can I do for you? Let me tickle your bippy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Fast forward five with minutes bone, later. With their bony old hand. The, the car big is, knuckles coming at the you. The car is pulled over. The <laughs> Teeth are on the fucking the dashboard. The baker is pulled over. <laughs> teeth are on the dashboard, and the, the the two fingers are working the balls and asshole. And this is the noise you hear as the hitchhiker's head pushes that head onto the car. <laughs> you have to let me up to breathe. My sinuses aren't what they used to be. <laughs> My grandson's on television. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> That's horrible. He's right. It here. really isn't. It's funny, and I don't give a fuck. I don't mean Holy bills. Shit. I'm just saying in general. Because yeah. we're all sick of hearing how great your old relative. <laughs> I never said she was great. You're I like, was going to start you were like, her. And she still drives. No, but I didn't. We all do it. I never did. I didn't go. And she still drives. I go. And she still drives. She still drives. We all do it. You know why? Line of the day. But does she clogged with fuck. mucus? <laughs> <laughs> not only does she fuck, but she looks back over the shoulder and taunts you if it's not hard enough. Ninety-nine years young. Fuck me harder. She wants a hard cock. Comes out just covered with baby powder paste. <laughs> look at look at this ass. That's right. I'm 99 years old. <laughs> she can't oh. get wet anymore. She has to rub her armpit to get. Sweat and rub it on a pussy. Oh my god! I mean, I'm just, I know disrespect. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just want to make it official. Uh, I'm out! Oh, is that I'm disgusting? <laughs> rub a little armpit sweat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know all the fucking games. Right, as the hitchhiker receives his cock sucking. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> I can't look at Bill. Why don't no. we do this break on CBS? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wanted to fly. Oh, wow. You alright, Bill? Uh, no, I'm good at blocking out my emotion. <laughs> I know. Six years from now, Bill's just going to walk up and knock my teeth out. Well, he should. Hey, Bill. Funk. Funk. Yes. <laughs> That's the sound it makes when Bill's fist hits my teeth. <laughs> it's a new sound. Brunkus. Brunkus. And your head has to come up. If your head doesn't come up, you've done it wrong. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, there's a lot of questions coming in about Billy's grandma. I just read them. Is there? Mike from Vancouver uh, wants to know if uh, Billy's grandma uh, is a size queen. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, I just is read a what? Them. A size queen, you know. What is that? It means that she prefers a bigger, girthier big, cock. fat one. <laughs> like a small, like she only they gets all two. Just, just goes after big ones. But though. she like, a size queen means like when when she sees a, like a cock, it's fine. But if it's a two-fister, <laughs> if she can get two hands around it and get the, the fucking mushroom head in her mouth, she appreciates a bigger cock. I think they all do. Scarecrow from Jersey, can you imagine how the dentures of an 80-year-old cocksucker smells when it's roasting on the dashboard? <laughs> Not as bad as the dentures of one who's 99. That's almost 20 years more of cocksucking. And she still drives. <laughs> how about that? She still, you guys, you know, sucking a dick at 99 is not nearly as impressive as still driving. <laughs> no? No, it isn't. Gotta give that a little thought. Uh, what she, all she got to do is fall forward. <laughs> the armpit line made me drool on myself. That's coming in from Whack Bag. Uh, I'm going to do the same to her. Oh, my God. No. That is hilarious. Uh, no. no. All right. I'm not trying to My grandmother is not a whore. I'm not trying to say no. that. She doesn't, no, 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 she doesn't pick up hitchhikers. Well, let's, you know, Hump X writes, uh, my 80... Oh, God, is it updating fast today? That's good. That means uh, people are listening. My 82-year-old mom drove just fine until she plowed into a parked car, which she, which she swore moved out in front of her. Say, she should have just stayed home and sucked a cock that day. 
Hmm. <laughs> Does Bill's grandmother enjoy scat? <laughs> <laughs> Bill from Waterford. She asked for it because she thought it was like when you sing a shooby doo a doo wop a doo wop. She <laughs> said, "I scat man." <laughs> yeah. She's like, "I want some scat," and then the meter man shit in her mouth. <laughs> wow. yeah. Do you like scat? Yeah, I, I love Louis Armstrong. <laughs> Great. This is going to be the color <laughs> of it. Bow. So he laid her back and put something that looked like Louis Armstrong's <laughs> leg on her face. <laughs> this is all fun, but we're all going to have to be outside oh. in the bright sunlight. That's when it gets to us. Yeah. This isn't even that How bad. awful we the really walk. are. It's not that bad. It's just walk a very thing. simple. We got their urgent communique. All those Christmas hugs. No, no. Just trying to figure out what to do next. We, we should take a break. comedy premises in the, in the business. <laughs> old people <sighs> fucking. We've latched on to it. But it's not yeah. old people fucking. It's, it's, it's an old person being my fucked hard by the young. It's my grandmother, Jim. <laughs> by the young. Not even fucked, being deep-dicked. <laughs> That's what a size queen wants. She wants to be deep-dicked. Well, it gets it gets worse. Ass wipe. <laughs> hey, guys, I got to tell you about this time I fucked a lady that's 69 years old. Uh, I'm a truck driver. And, uh, of course you are. Of course you are, exactly. <laughs> Wait, how old were you at the time? <laughs> His blow-up doll is 30. <laughs> so about 30. About 30, so 39 years oh, older. <laughs> and she, uh, we can't fire anybody because that's age discrimination. And so they put her with me. And I'm laying in my bunk, and I feel her pull over. She comes back there, and she starts laying down with me. Next thing you know, she's rubbing my cock, and it's been a while. And so, so uh, I gave in and let her rub my cock, and I ended Horrible. up fucking her. Oh, God, I can't believe I just told you this. Oh. Anyway, see ya. 69 years old. Uh, I could see going with the hand job and kind of looking the other way and thinking about someone. Oh, uh, that gnarly no, that old awful boy. charm bracelet noise. <laughs> <laughs> a grandchildren charm. <laughs> I have it's eight grandchildren. It's actually a rosary. Shinka, 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 shinka. She's trying to spit in her. She's trying to spit in her hand. Like particles of food are coming out. Oh, oh God! Hurry up! Just jerk me off. Used to be relevant. <laughs> she spit out a chunk of denture grip, and it sticks to your cock. <laughs> She's wearing I like Ike panties. <laughs> oh. Uh, when, when she sucks your dick, she leans up and asks you if you could reach around and finger her bippy. <laughs> she likes the, that. The bippy. Give the old bippy a fingering. Oh. oh. There's nothing sexy about fucking the old. No. Nothing. Not at all. Uh, this conversation is really not hot. Yeah, good deep fuck. <laughs> good womb buster. Give her a good womb busting. A womb busting? <laughs> I think it's long uh, gone. Well, the listeners are loving it because we just crashed in some feedback. They all have questions oh, about done. Bill's grandma. They want to know if she's snowballing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not right. Oh, oh, they're just vicious. I can't oh, read them. I one time sucked the cum out of Agnes's pussy <laughs> and then kissed her. <laughs> oh, we we had a foursome with oh. Gus and Elmer. <laughs> Elmer. <laughs> Uh, uh. Oh, God. Did he 69, the 69-year-old? I'm so glad no, none of my relatives on that side of the family have an XM. What, what, what are you laughing at? Jimmy from Wagbag, her asshole must look like a brown scrunchie. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, is that horrible? Oh. Uh, wow. Oh, God. All right. Damn Never it. thought such an innocent comment could just... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> she's hey, she's uh, 99 uh, and she uh, can still drive. And turns into... Yeah, I was going to make fun of because she drove the car through the garage. The next thing you know, I'm picturing what her asshole looks like. <laughs> yeah. You know. She'll be celebrating her 100th birthday with a pair of non-white balls on her face. <laughs> <laughs> Not black, yet a, some type of a brownish hue. <laughs> I'd imagine that would be much better than blowing out a cake with a hundred candles. Perhaps Ecuadorian. The Ecuadorian landscaper. Oh, shit. Fucking awful onion balls. Go ahead. Put them in your mouth. Isn't she fucking Carlos Mencia? I work in the TV industry. I know famous. what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, God damn. You finally gave a beaner a load. <clears throat> 
Uh, now, let's say hi to Eric in Colorado uh, as we try to move on here. Eric. Yes, uh, I, I believe for anyone interested that uh, with a wow sticker, Bill's grandmother will be flashing at his show at the Comedy Works in Denver, July 27th, 28th, Ooh. and 29th. For ticket point. information, contact www.comedyworks.com or myspace.com slash Bill Burr. Yeah, all his dates are up on his MySpace account. Comedy Connection this weekend. That's a biggie for Bill. Nah, I'll be, I'll be well, you're from Boston. It's first time you're headlining. That's huge for Bill Burr. Mm. I'm taking the weekend off after this segment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Not going out. I don't have to have that men in black thing flashed in front of my eyes. <laughs> so you forget? Yes. Uh, flash it in front of your eyes so next time you see your grandma, it's not the first thing that pops in your head? Yeah. It's all the awful things that are being said. You're not going to look for body language signals when she's hugging you? <laughs> does she press a little too close? Does she Instead of like giving you the grandma the hug, does she wrap her arms around your waist, pull you in? Jimmy, for the love of God. <laughs> well, Humpax... Just stop. Humpax uh, wants to know... Would Bill's grandma consider a DP session? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like her motto. If you're going to have one in the pussy, you might as well have one in the asshole. And then she puts her fingers over her mouth and goes, Did I say that, Dolores? See? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, for the love of God, Jimmy. <laughs> Two yellow fingernails over the mouth. <laughs> Frank the trucker. Frank. <laughs> Fucking under an Afghan. <laughs> I had to fuck my landlord because I couldn't pay the rent. I was too much behind. This shit like 89, 90 years old, man. I had to do it. Hey, Frank, <laughs> Frank's oh. laughing through his story, but basically he had to fuck his landlord, and she was real oh. old. Oh, Wasn't the, that in Kingpin? Yeah. Yeah, I think, that's, I think he stole that. All the young guys like to fuck the old 99-year-old because she's a cheap date. After you fuck her, you just got to give her some Alpo and tell her something else. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing in there, dear? Making you a steak. And you hear the can opener. <laughs> 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 it's meatloaf. It's nine Grandma. lives. This will help you live longer, oh. you old whore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she doesn't finger the asshole, oh. she gets hit. <laughs> oh, shit. Ah, this is a new low. It really is. Sorry. Uh, Nobody's laughing. making eye contact with me. <laughs> no. You know, it's very hard now to, uh... We're, <laughs> we're using you for really good radio, I gotta be oh. honest. I feel bad, I don't mean that. It's a horrible subject. My friend. It isn't, though. At the end of the day. It's true. Let's go to Dave in Tennessee. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> Dave, what's up? Hey, Jim good morning, guys. Extra evil today. Hey, Anthony, it's going to be a long walk of shame with Bill today. Yeah, Bill, walk with Bill. No, no, he, he, this fucker, he won't even come near me. When there's 15 minutes left in the show, he starts crawling under the desk. Hmm. Our last walk out, when that, that was, uh, what was it, uh... Not suicide. Schizo Bill. Yeah, Schizo Bill. That was the last walk. You, I, you, non-verbally said, "Fuck this guy." I said, "Enough." The second the show's over, you're I dead to me. I can't fucking deal with the walk, where where Bill then starts commiserating or trying to commiserate with me about how awful, awful what we talked about yeah. was. Uh, no, 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 not not what we talked about. It was only a couple times I did it. I did it when uh, that woman was naked, crawling over mouse traps. Yeah. I'm a very normal fucking person. Yeah, that's very normal to so fucking we, to to, to what feel are you that. To say? Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. We're normal. Y you're not though. <laughs> we're normal. No, we're not. Y you're not. You gotta be able to just like throw that shit out after the show. It's it. It's done. There was a show. You leave. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, ah, when she was crawling around in mouse traps. I don't know. You feel like your humanity has just gone down the shitter. And st All right, Bill. Yeah, I'm at my car. Let's take it easy. Let's, let's go to... Uh... I just want to ruin your ride home. <laughs> Is that it? It doesn't See, work. It does, though. A little bit. It does, because you avoid me now. If it didn't, I don't avoid... I, I, I really avoidance. wouldn't avoid you. There's definitely avoidance. I'll walk with you today. You know what I do every me day? Me and you. Every day. Just, holding hands. Every day I just go, well, that was Sandy. fun. Sandy. I'm just be holding my life. hands. Oh, not affected at all. Well, that was. I fun. only feel bad if, if we're not mean enough. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Ryan in Chicago. Howdy, guys. How you hey. doing? Welcome aboard. What's up hey, there, Chicago. We're trying to take a break here, Ryan. What do you got? I would like to ask Jimmy what it would sound like if he was going down on Bill's grandma. Um, I don't know. Do you remember, uh, Jimmy? Yeah. 
Probably I would just what I would do is I would I would um I would slide the When did he become Michael Winslow? Pans I would slide the pantyhose down. Yeah. And you know that sound they make when you like like she'd probably lay there like a child and I'd pull the pantyhose and her little legs as I pulled no. them would lift up in the air like when you pull a baby's fucking like snowsuit off. How do you know? That's what her little legs would look like as I pulled them off with her shoes still on. I, I wouldn't even take her shoes off. The news would the shoes would flop off when I pulled the fucking stockings off. Did you suck oh. on her hammer toes? Oh. <laughs> and I would fuck it. I'd hold her legs back, and I'd I'd fuck it. I'd open the lips. Easy, Jim. Well, I know. No, no, God bless her. I'd put my uh, ninety-nine years young, and I'd put. I'd Still open, driving too, by the way. Of course she is. This is what started this. Who, whole who do you think picked me up and took me to the motel? Oh. <laughs> and she paid for it. Fucking the, <laughs> a threat of a good slap. <laughs> like her paying for the hotel is going to make the story worse. Yeah. I know, right? Well, for everything that's been said. Well, she's an old Ecuadorian's <laughs> ball bag on her face, but she paid for the hotel. You know what what a is? fucking whore. She's not only fragile, but she's of meager means. <laughs> <laughs> but she'll do anything for a good deep dicking. <laughs> so then I open up those fucking pussy lips. It's like the aristocrats all of a sudden. And I put my tongue by it and I go, <laughs> Ow. That's how I eat a pussy. Uh, let's say hi to Mike. But you know what the funny part is, Ope? Oh. Huh. She prefers it while she's on her stomach. She likes to, cause she likes the little nose tickle in the asshole while the lips <laughs> the are being, bippy. while the lips are being <laughs> no slathered. tickle in the bippy. She wants the lips to be slathered. Phil Bilber, what's going on in the glamorous confines <laughs> of a wonderful uh, New York City cab? Isn't it? Hey, remember when we voted on these, saying we didn't want them? Remember that? So they gave you a headache? No. I resent the fact that I have to touch that filthy screen <laughs> and shut it off. Because I don't want to watch it. Cause yeah, here we go. Here we go. Watch this. Off. There we go. Oh, but we're going to miss our our news updates and our AccuWeather forecasts. And... I don't know. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> That's, you know, <laughs> this is what today's economy, this is what it's brought Right here. This is what kind of economy we're living in. I'm literally getting interviewed in the back of a cab with a guy holding a Viewmaster like this. Am I even in camera? Have you looking to see if I'm in focus? Um, That's the thing about you. You've always been in focus in your comedy. Nice segue. Thank you. All right. Charlie Rose here. All right. Well, let's go. On with the questions. Is this all going to be up to me to just riff? It's broad daylight. I'm a comedian. I'm half vampire. I'm not funny. I feel like with, these hours. I feel like with your weekly podcast, that is what you do now. Is you just riff, and somehow the material is yeah, I do. Is yeah, but, I, but I make sure I have the curtains drawn and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So you're not just one take, I, one take burr. You, no. You prep it out. You. Sometimes I am, but sometimes they suck, and I have to start over again. For those of you wondering, I do a uh, podcast every Monday on my website, BillBurr.com. B-U-R-R. And uh, it's also available on iTunes for free. I always say it's for free because some listeners said they found it annoying that I always mention it's for free. And I find it annoying that he brings that up. So it's my own little fuck you to one of my listeners. <laughs> I'm up to 17 at this point. And you've just automatically made this video not safe for work. Thank you. Oh, I can't, I can't say no, that. No, you can. Oh, okay. I just need to tell people when they click on it. Oh, Be all right. Because if, if they're at work. Where, and where can they see this? They can see this on the comicscomic.com. There you go. Well, and, actually, if they're and, watching this, they're, they're already there. But you can put it up on YouTube. Or you? they're on YouTube, yeah. Oh. They'll probably see it on YouTube first and then not click over because they're cheap. Which bastards. means no one's watching this right now. They're just scrolling no. down, looking at everybody, writing what a fucking douchebag I am. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you ever get material that makes it from the podcast to stage? Um, yeah, occasionally. But a lot of it is it's just me riffing on people's questions and stuff, so it's not... Uh, not really stand-up kind of thing, you know what I mean? Uh, no, you shouldn't, because I just explained that terribly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me just want to speak vaguely and then look at you and just be like, you know what I mean? Usually you can get away with that. Most people just go, yeah, yeah, I do I do know what you mean. But you didn't, you left, you left me in that lull. It's just more like they're talking about, you know, hey, I got a fucking house plan and a sofa, and then what do I do? But the, the people ask me really random stuff that doesn't fit into my act. Or they send me lists of things that they feel are overrated or underrated. And I don't really go off on, on uh, any of that. I don't do like, I don't make fun of celebrities 
like that, like them being overrated. I just make fun of certain things, like shit that they do. Mm. It just doesn't fit in, dude. I don't know how many different ways I have to explain this. To you. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I'm just gonna let you dig a hole. That's not hard for me to do, man. I'm, I'm a moron, so. <laughs> you you mentioned uh, you mentioned over lunch that uh, you don't want to get caught up in Twitter and all the latest. Oh, Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, yeah, fuck all that. I'm on, it's the same group of people that were on MySpace, right? And I jumped up and down, waved at them, tried to add as many as I can, and now they all go over to Facebook, and then what, I'm supposed to run over there? That's what the cool kids do. It's the same guys. It's the same. I'm not adding the same 30,000 douchebags. <laughs> I'm staying where I'm at. If you like what I do, come. You know where I'm at. I'm on the old school MySpace. I'm not fucking chasing you all over the internet, <laughs> twittering you every five seconds. Maybe you should get off MySpace also and then just just be at BillBurr.com. No, I like MySpace. I like it. I like MySpace. You know what? And eventually, it's all going to come back around again to MySpace. And I'll be like, I never left. Like that old hippie still working the farm on Woodstock. <laughs> no, truth is, I'm lazy. And, uh, and then the other aspect of it is I don't like... Uh, I just saw a thing at my gym where they were saying that uh, when you get on Facebook... Even if you decide to get off Facebook, there's a whole bunch of your information that they don't erase. They keep it just in case you ever want to come back. So I figure that just means more junk mail. So I've already done that with MySpace. Why do I want to get in bed with another one of these fucking whores? So that's how all my points go there, Sean. Now I know they start off with a little bit of momentum and then they gradually peter out. Now I know I know laziness plays no part in in the speed in which. You're working on the next special because... Once again, he does it again. You <laughs> See, you take my shit, you weave it into gold. Because you, you were telling me over lunch. We had lunch together, by the way. It was magnificent. Yes, that um, you don't really have to do a special every year. Even though it seems every like... Every year, no. It seems, like, it seems like everybody's trying to rush to do the next thing. Yeah, well, I think people work on their own pace. And, and you shouldn't get caught up on how fast someone else is doing it. I think you should put it out there when you're ready to put it out there but you should try to make sure it's memorable I think if you just have one memorable special you know what I mean um, that you, you can ride that for a while like people will keep coming back as long as you have like new material and um, it's weird like George Carlin did one every two years and somehow he just kept having one memorable one after another but you know a lot of the greats will have like you know one two three they just have that one killer one, you know, which I, I've obviously yet to have. <laughs> That's or I wouldn't true. be doing an interview on a handheld, whatever, well, disposable I, camera in the back of a fucking cab. But that, but that's the thing about all this technology. I get the sense that some comedians feel pressured because of the way fans have access to everything on the Internet that they have to come up with new material all the time. I don't think you do. I think uh, I, I don't think you do. I'm holding on to that. Half of it is because I'm lazy, and then the other half is like, you know, I don't think you you want to get to that point like where uh, I don't know if you. I don't understand that Twitter thing. If every five seconds I'm finding out what Ashton Kutcher's doing, I don't know at some point gonna not give a fuck about him. Then when he finally has a movie coming out, like ah oh, Jesus, this guy. Every five seconds with the, I'm tying my sneaker shit, you know. Left side, please. And yet you do know enough about it to know that Ashton Kutcher is on Twitter every five seconds. Well, why wouldn't he be? <laughs> I mean, there's certain guys you just know they're on there. I mean, I thought you were going to give me shit because that's sort of a hacky reference at this point. No, it's spot on. He's my, uh, he's my updated Ben Affleck. Remember when Ben Affleck was everywhere? That's why I don't buy these celebrities when they bitch about the paparazzi. Because it seems like when they want to be in front of them, they're in front of them, and then all of a sudden, when they don't want to be, they're not. It's nice to be back here down in the South, man. I had a real weird experience last time I came down here. I was in Nashville, right? Sort of an awkward social situation, right? I'm sitting at this bar. There's this white dude sitting like two stools away. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. And that Terrell Owens story was in like sports news. So I try to make conversation. I'm like, man, look at this guy. This guy just signed a $40 million contract. He's already bitching, man. How much money do you need to make? And the dude looks at me, he's like, you know what I say? And then he looked over his shoulder, which I now know is the telltale sign that the N-word is coming, and it's coming hard. 
oh yeah, it's not going to be pronounced with the A, it's going to be with the R. And he hit the R, he like stuck the landing. It was like a dismount, clan members high-fiving in the background, like doing the wave. Just out of nowhere. So now immediately I'm looking over my shoulder like, what the hell are you doing? You know what I mean? I'm waiting for like this hail of black fists to come raining down on top of me. I hate when people do stuff like that. That dude made me part of like a potential ass kicking that I had nothing to do with. You don't do shit like that. He just had that word hot potato, just threw it in my lap. Like, hey. Trying to pass it down to the next white dude. I hate when people do that, man. You know, it's like, dude, feel me out first. Ask some questions. Do you like to fish? Have you ever fucked your sister, right? I start rattling off answers, then you go old school. You give me a pamphlet, you tell me about your militia. You don't just dive into it. That dude was one of the angriest people I ever met. I should have known that word was coming because he was just watching Terrell, right? Anytime I would bring up, look at man, that guy's talking trash, he would just like flip out. He won't shut up! <laughs> You know those people get like so mad they're not even looking at you? Their eyes are up, you just shut up and play the game! <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't even like Terrell, but now I love the guy. Because every time I see him talking trash, I know this idiot in Nashville is just losing his mind, like kicking over his kitchen TV. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> violence man I am I, not, not like when it happens to me or if I see it live I like watching it on TV you know watching people you know get attacked by animals <laughs> just get blasted in the face or something you know like I'm a huge sports fan you know what my favorite like moment of the, like the last year was in sports that Detroit Piston Indiana Pacer bench clearing brawl wasn't that great that was one of the greatest things I've ever seen I was so confused when I watched ESPN that day. They were like, that hey, was absolutely disgraceful. Basketball fans, they, they, they just must be a mess. I'm sitting there looking like, I'm a basketball fan, I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed watching out of shape civilians get the shit kicked out of them <laughs> by professional athletes. It was fascinating. And I think as sports fans, we kind of had it coming, right? Because how many times you go into a game, right? You got a little too drunk, you started screaming at some dude on the field who could clearly kick the shit out of you, right? If you saw him in the parking lot, you'd be like, hey, can you sign my stamp collection? I think you're awesome. You get in the game, you're all drunk. You're like, you suck, buddy. You're a piece of shit. And they're always calling him up. Come on up here. No, come on up here. Well, they came up there. They didn't. They kicked the shit out of everybody. It was great. It was like a cartoon. You're like beating up whole rows of people at once. Like, <laughs> I loved every second. I love how Ron Artest punched the wrong guy. Wasn't that great? He taught that dude a valuable lesson in life. When shit goes down, you don't just stand there like you're watching a movie like, wow, it's coming right at me. Must be in 3D or something. That was a five foot six inch, 110 pound white dude had an angry six foot 10 inch black dude running right at him. That had to have been in his top three nightmares all time. Right behind getting his dick cut off and being lit on fire. And he just stood there. He's like trying to explain himself. Well, I still have the liquid in my cup, so there's, there's no way I could have... He's an idiot. So I've heard a lot of shit about Connecticut. That, you know, there's, uh, you know, all that J.P. Morgan money, the Blue Bloods. The guys, you know, who, who like, they, their kids haven't worked for fucking generations. Haven't worked since, like, their, their, their initial, uh, since that meeting on Devil's Island, they haven't fucking worked. There's some clan members, higher level, no southern accents, you know, pushing the pawns around. I've heard about that. I've heard that there's a mix of Patriots and Giants fans. And then I heard that there was uh, some rough areas of Hartford. I definitely am just like, yeah, but I want to go look at it. So I looked it up on Wikipedia and said the Yale Bowl, they're claiming is actually the original bowl in this country. Fucking full of fiber. I'll go take a walk down to the Yale Bowl. Go check this motherfucker out.
It's a mile and a half away. I'm in an Ivy League. I'm on an Ivy League campus. This, this. How can I go wrong, right? <clears throat> I got about two blocks in. There's an amazing thing where you suddenly, as a white person, realize that you're walking into the hood. There's those subtle signs, you know, that make you nervous. First thing you see is a probably a check cashing place. You know what I mean? A funeral home, Baptist church. You know, less white people, and you start going fuck. I'm thinking, well, it's only a mile and a half away. How bad can it fucking get? Plus, it's during the day. So I never had a problem during the day. During the day, it's the regular people. It's at night, right around 7 o'clock. I've always said when that second shift comes out, the hustlers, the zombies, and all that fucking shit, that's when you don't want to be there. But, uh, you know, you might catch a couple of those guys coming home late. You know what I mean? So I'm fucking walking through there, and uh, i got to admit, I got about six blocks in, and I was waiting. I felt like I was in an episode of The Wire. Like I was waiting for Omar Ayo, to come walking by with his fucking gun. It was crazy. I also figured out why black people walk so slow when they're walking down the street. I get it. Because when you walk slow, you look like you're not nervous. Okay? If you're walking fast like I was, you look like either a, a, a narc or a fucking victim. You look like you're scared. People just were staring. I don't know, because my fucking red face. I think I'm, I, I really freaked out a lot of people because there was not, nobody down there that looked like me. So I finally got through all this fucking shit. And I get down to the Yale Bowl because I want to look at this thing, thinking it's going to look like the one at Harvard. Right? That's basically a ripoff of, uh, what is that place over there in, in Italy? What? Yeah, the, the place where they threw all the Christians to the lions. And that fat guy who was balding. And he'd do the thumbs up, thumbs down. It wasn't Pontius Pilate. He took out the hippie. Julius Caesar? Who the fuck was it? The Roman Colosseum. So I thought it was going to look like that. So I show up to this thing. It's dug into the fucking ground. All I can see is these entrances and that have gates in front of them. And above them is just grass. I couldn't see a fucking thing. So then I had to turn around and I had to walk right back through the hood. And I was way less nervous the second time. Because I knew with each step... I was getting closer to my hotel. It's weird how that works. Then I started looking around and people looked a lot more friendlier because I was a lot less nervous. And you know what? I think that's one to grow on. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny is uh, I actually want to go to a, a, a Harvard-Yale game in, uh, at the Yale Bowl. I want to do that because uh, I started thinking about how many future presidents sat in the Yale Bowl, or at least candidates. You know what I mean? George W. Bush was in there, as was that other fucking guy that ran against him in 2004, John Kerry. You know what I mean? They might have done keg stands together. So I just want to look at drunk kids out there and be like, maybe someday that's going to be my guy who's allegedly my leader. You know? And maybe in the Harvard-Yale game when they're not giving each other shit and throwing their hankies at each other, I can actually hear, you know, about the next Illuminati meeting. Hey, you know, I'm always bitching about the population problem and how they never fucking bring it up in the presidential campaigns. You know what I think they bring it up? I think they bring it up when that, that Bilderberg group gets together. I think they talk about the real problems, you know, when they all get together and be like, all right, what is the most, what is the easiest way to get 7 billion down to 500 million? You know what I mean? As they sit there eating like fucking lobsters and shit. <clears throat> Then who fucking serves them? I bet, they, I bet when, you, when you're a waiter for them, when you come walking into that, that group, when you bring in whatever, their fucking escargot and all that shit, I bet they all just shut the fuck up the second you come in or they pull down some different map. And if you accidentally see something like uh, that you're never heard from again. Am I slowly losing my mind? I don't fucking know. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. But oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I got. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The year of our Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, gee. Oh, Jesus. Jesus is flying by. It's destroying her relationship with Christ. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus.
G G O G G O G and Zuz O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G G O G Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! And all of a sudden, I heard my uh, my old juice sauce going. Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh, <juice. laughs> yeah, I'm bubbling over there. I was like, ooh, 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 ah, and then I fuck it up. This might be my favorite name of anything I've ever advertised here, uh, other than one white Charlie's, uh, Sherry's Berries. It says, insert story. When you've given or received uh, the gifts. Well, I, I've been out of town. I haven't gotten Sherry's Berries yet. Ever. All right. Sherry's Berries. Since the end of the, the year is all about delicious holiday food, why not send an extra special holiday treat to friends, family, business associates, associates, everyone you know. I've never met a person who didn't love Sherry's Berries. Send giant dip strawberries from Sherry's Berries for only nineteen ninety nine. That's over a forty percent savings. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and type in Burr B U R R for my listeners. Double the berries for just ten dollars more. Berries are terrific and a sweet holiday gift. They also have delicious products such as Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Here's the only way to get. This special 1999 Sherry's Berries offer. <laughs> Call 866 Fruit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck am I selling? <laughs> Did I approve this? This is fucking ridiculous. Who the fuck is going to buy this shit? This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Call 866 Fruit, everybody. <laughs> Eight, I'm sorry, 866 Fruit 0 2. Or even better, <laughs> visit berries.com. <laughs> oh, punch truck. Oh, please spell out the words. Oh, by all means, berries. B E R R I E S. Berries. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and type in burr. <laughs> you got to see these enormous berries for yourself. <laughs> Go, I swear to God, this is the copy. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and tip in burr. Type in burr. Dip your balls and dip your berries in that. Don't wait now. Order. Order some chocolate berries for the fucking person in your life. Oh, shit. I needed that. That was wonderful. I'm sure I'll get some complaints on that one. We need a conference call. Can't do it. I'm in Helsinki. Hey, you cunts better buy some Sherry's Berries because I'm going to get in trouble with that fucking read, and I'm not changing it because that was hilarious. Um, oh, wiping tears away here. Um, <laughs> and I, my apologies to berries.com. I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the copy before I read that. This is, I'm too fucking immature to read shit like that. I'm sure you have wonderful chocolate-covered berries. All right? <laughs> <laughs> this might be my favorite name of anything I've ever advertised here, uh, other than one white Charlie's. Uh, Sherry's Berries. It says, insert story when you've given or received uh, the gifts well, I, I've been out of town. I haven't gotten Sherry's Berries yet. Ever. All right, Sherry's Berries. Since the end of the, the year is all about delicious holiday food, why not send an extra special holiday treat to friends, family, business associates, 
associates, everyone you know. I've never met a person who didn't love Sherry's Berries. Send giant dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries for only $19.99. That's over a 40% savings. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. For my listeners, double the berries for just $10 more. Berries are terrific and a sweet holiday gift. They also have delicious products such as Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Here's the only way to get this special 1999 Sherry's Berries offer. <laughs> Call 866-FRUIT. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck am I selling? <laughs> Did I approve this? This is fucking ridiculous. Who the fuck is going to buy this shit? This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Call 866-FRUIT, everybody. <laughs> Eight, I'm sorry, 866-FRUIT-0-2. Or even better, <laughs> visit berries.com. Oh, punch truck. Oh, please spell out the words. Oh, by all means, berries, B-E-R-R-I-E-S, berries. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and type in burr. <laughs> you got to see these enormous berries for yourself. <laughs> Go. I swear to God, this is the copy. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and tip in burr. Type in burr. Dip your balls and dip your berries in that. Don't wait now. Order. Order some chocolate berries for the fucking person in your life. Oh, shit. I needed that. That was wonderful. I'm sure I'll get some complaints on that one. We need a conference call. Can't do it. I'm in Helsinki. Hey, you cunts better buy some Sherry's berries because I'm going to get in trouble with that fucking read. And I'm not changing it because that was hilarious. Um, oh, wiping tears away here. Um... <laughs> And I, my apologies to berries.com. I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the copy before I read that. This, I'm too fucking immature to read shit like that. I'm sure you have wonderful chocolate-covered berries. All right? <laughs> <laughs> to listen on Spotify, click the link below. Um, all right, so let's get on with the podcast. Last week, ladies and gentlemen, I had the pleasure of performing on the David Letterman Show. And uh, most of you went out, you watched it, and you all sent me wonderful emails about it. And I would read you the wonderful emails, but they're not funny. But you are in luck. You know what ones are funny? The ones where people did not like my performance. So let's read a couple of those, shall we? Um, all right, let's read the hate mail here. So what, what happens with all of, all of my hate mail is um, when people don't like my act is – you can't just write me, evidently, and just say that you don't like my act. You don't appreciate what it is that I do on the stage. What you have to do first is you have to establish what an incredible sense of fucking humor you have and how open you are to all different forms of humor. You know? It's that classic thing like those douchebags on YouTube. Obama's a fucking idiot, and I'm a Democrat. Right? So then we can be like, wow, this guy is left, and even he doesn't like this lefty guy. So this is what they do. All right, so here, so these, uh, both these emails follow to a goddamn fucking T to the motherfucking U and V. Um, they follow it. Here, it, They follow that pattern. Bill, just read the fucking thing. Okay, here we go. All right. Hi there. <laughs> That's how this one starts. Starts off nice enough. Hi there. I've been a fan for a while. You seem to have a unique take on things. Look at this, huh? Pat me on the head. Let me sniff her hand, making me nice and fucking relax. I loved your bit about the muffins and the mass vehicular murder. <laughs> so there you go. She just showed how it just, her sense of humor spans the globe. Whether I'm attacking food or actually running over human beings on the sidewalk, she finds it all funny. Though, and here's the rub, though, as a stay-at-home mom, I now completely despise you. 
I did this bit about being a, a stay-at-home mom. Um, so anyway, she says, the hardest part about being a stay-at-home mom is being, respect, is being disrespected by everyone. I now hope the worst for you. Despite what funny acts you may think up in the future, you are a jerk and deserve the worst that life has to offer. <laughs> I don't fucking, I don't, I don't understand, like, these. this is the classic fucking person where everything is funny until it comes around to some shit in her life, and I make some fun of some shit that she's doing, being a stay-at-home mom, and now all of a sudden, she goes from being a fan of mine to now I am a jerk and deserve the worst that life has to offer. That's that's a fucking hard course that you deserve the worst that life has to offer. So what, I'm going to get leprosy and uh, be constipated all at the same time and fucking uh, survive a plane crash, but not in a good way, you know? Anyways, I don't fucking know. Really? You're going to take it to that level? So I wrote her back. I said, uh, sweetheart, Oprah Winfrey called your job the toughest job on the planet on national television and got an applause break of approval. How much more respect do you need? I think that's a great point, if I can step outside the email, break the fucking fourth wall. Is that what it is? The third wall? I never knew what the fuck it was. Huh? Oprah Winfrey's on TV saying you have the toughest job on the planet, and everybody claps. All right? Did she say being a stand-up comedian is the toughest job on the planet? You think you know what it's like to be fucking disrespected, you apron-wearing, sheltered son of a bitch? Huh? You want to talk about being disrespected? Look at fucking comedians. Anytime they show a comedian in a movie, is it a Chris Rock-level comic? It never is. It's the fucking hack with the lampshade on his head going, waka waka. Right? Didn't the fucking comedian get shot in his gut during Scarface? Huh? Did a fucking stay-at-home mom get shot in the fucking stomach with that Mr. Potato Head mask on her face during that show? No. You know why? Because she was at home taking care of the fucking kids. Ah, Jesus Christ. I'm just going to read the rest of this email. That didn't even fucking make sense. It started off funny, and then it just went right off the rails. Like a Prius that you can't fucking stop. Um, anyways, uh, she says, so I wrote, I wrote, uh, how much more respect do you need? And then I said, meanwhile, there are children working in sweatshops. Would you rather be a stay at home mom or an eight year old sewing Adidas together for 16 hours a day? I came up with another great example that I, I wish I had used on TV. How about, how about you work on one of those fucking oil rigs? Like those poor bastards who work for BP. Then all of a sudden out of nowhere, the fucking thing explodes. You're standing on a metal structure in the middle of the goddamn ocean, and next thing you know, it blows up. Probably blew out both of your eardrums. You're deaf now, and you're on fire. All right? And your only option is either burning to death or jumping off of basically the equivalent of the top of a brownstone, trying to enter the water without doing the world's biggest flaming belly flop. <laughs> right? You land in the water, second and third degree burns in salt water. All right? Pus and blood is oozing into the water, and now all you can do is pray to God that the Coast Guard gets there before a sea of sharks eats you alive. All right? You want to do that, or you want to watch Bob the Builder for the 800th time? Lighten up. And then I wrote, oh, and don't despise or hope the worst for me. That causes premature aging. Hugs. I know, that was kind of mean to say, but you know what? Go fuck yourself. All right, here's another one. <clears throat> Once again, we have to establish credibility at the top of the email. Are you guys ready for the credibility to be established? Jesus Christ, I know I am. Here we go. Uh, Bill, I am never appalled or, capital letters, offended by comedy that I see and hear. All capitals, this sentence. I have a great sense of humor. Wow, this is unbelievable. Isn't that amazing, podcast listeners? This person is never appalled or offended by comedy that she sees or hears. She has a great sense of humor. She has such a great sense of humor, people, that she had to yell it at me in emails. 
All right. So there's no way she had a problem with my act, right? Let's read the rest of the email. However, oh, Jesus, your appearance on the David Letterman show that I just watched just put down women and motherhood to an extent that is just downright unbelievable, dot, dot, dot. Now she's going to yell again and tasteless. Now she yells for the rest of this email, but I'm going to spare you guys. All right. I'm going to read it in soothing tones, but she's screaming the entire time. That's what I'm guessing because it's all capital letters. Um, this is what she says. I challenge you to be a single parent and raise a child and work and attend college alone without any help. Just in case you don't know what being a single parent means. All right. Um, you have no idea how hard it really is. I am disgusted with your act and will not ever buy any of your DVDs, etc. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I am disgusted with comedy. Your comedy, that is. I like how she starts speaking like in film noir. I'm disgusted with this comedy. Your comedy, that is. See? Yeah. 23 skidoo. All right. Your act touched on many topics that you were disgraceful and very unappealing. I think she got so mad she stopped writing sentences. Um, first of all, sweetheart. I wasn't making fun of uh, single pa uh, single uh, parents. If I was making fun of single parents, nobody would laugh. I was talking about stay-at-home moms. All right? You don't remember that line? Hanging out all day, making grilled cheese sandwiches. You're giving a puppet show. You dress like a dragon. And then some other adult comes home and gives you money. You're like a big kid. That's some other adult coming home giving you money is your fucking husband. You dumb broad. Do I got to fucking spell it out to you? So I just wrote her back. I just said I wasn't talking about single moms. I was talking about stay-at-home moms. You weren't listening. Let's, let's go here. Time travel. Um, time travel. Billy Thrills. Um, if you could travel to any time period, period prior to 1900, but you were forced to live out your life there and you couldn't come back to the present, where would you go? choose to go keep in mind anything before 1900 means everyone probably smells and dies at 40 years of age that's not true not if you have money you live long ben franklin lived for a long time and he was a fucking booze bag out there flying his kite in the rain yeah, did he live long yeah yeah he lived to like be like 70 oh wow yeah and he went out there with his kite in the rain and he was fucking shit-faced so he had his house keys tied to the thing. That's the real story of how he discovered electricity. He was fucking hammered. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, he was out of his fucking mind. And if he was actually stone sober, he probably would have died because he would have tensed up yeah. when he got electrocuted. But because he was drunk, he was all relaxed. Like, hey, man. Yeah. And he just rolled down the hill, landed on his bald. That's actually how he went bald. He went down the hill. When, it, when the lightning struck, it hit the key and it blew the top of his head off. What? Yeah. New studies have shown all of this. No, I thought it was just fucking male pattern baldness. No. That's he got elected. No, like 30% of people, this is the worst thing. They never talk about it. If you get struck by lightning, like you immediately, it blows off that top part. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't come back either. Well, it wouldn't make a difference with me, but fuck it. That's why like Michael Bolton does that charity. He does that charity thing for... Uh, Don't tell me he does a charity for people that get struck by lightning. By lightning, got their hair blown off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you believe in this shit. I'm just making all of this up. No, the, yeah, the fucking top of the head, yeah. No, it doesn't. But does he have a charity? Michael Bolt? Yeah. Yeah. But not for that. No. Oh. Fuck, you committed to that. I did. All right, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here like, this fucking... <laughs> Dude, that was getting so deep, I couldn't keep a straight face. I'm like, there's no way he's believing this one. All right, this one. Skidded down the hill. I said that's how he went bald, and I go, no, no, wait. Here's a better lie. And you're still like, really? Is that what happened? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Paul. What's the world coming to? All right, Paul, if you could live any time period before 1900, anywhere, anytime. Oh, man. Where would you go? I don't know. I would go somewhere where there was a war. But wait, but in the question, can I take things from present? Uh, 
Wow, so you could time travel to any period, 1900. Dude, what the fuck would you bring here? The second you pulled anything out, they no. think you were a witch and they'd no, kill you. what I'm saying is I would go to there with, like, shit that they don't have now. That's what I'm saying. And, like, like in a war, though, and I'd fucking just lace, like, if I took a side, you know, you go with a couple Uzis or a fucking machine gun, you just fucking lay, you'd win, you'd be a fucking god forever. You'd be a hero. You know, you'd be like, you'd be a god. So what are you going to do? You're just going to walk out in the field in your Nike fucking sweatshirt? <laughs> and your Jordans? Yeah, just walk out, dress like this, and they would be like, you know, when they were packing muskets and doing the whole thing. And I'd be like, no, 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 guys, I got this. So okay. what year? What year? So i just, so, like, just fucking, and they would be like, oh, my God. I'd just be the fucking man forever. I'd be the man forever. you imagine that? Yeah, I'm trying to wrap my head around where they're not completely freaked out by you. <laughs> You're going to go, so what, wait, first of, all, first of all, first of all, what year are you going back to? Well, he said what? He said prior 1900? Yeah, so what year are you going back to? Uh, the pack and muskets, so what are we talking here? <laughs> uh, well, there was a couple of them, wasn't there? What is it, like 18, like 1870s? 1870s? Right. Well, by 1870s, they had like the Winchesters and those repeating rifles and that. They actually had their first like machine gun in the Civil War, I believe, Spanish-American anyways, where you had the, the little crank. crank. You fucking mowed him down. So I go before that time then. So you're talking like, I, I, if I was you, I would go early 1800s. Okay, so I'd go early 1800s. Yep. And I would bring some sort of... Who are you going to mow down? Um, what if you went in the French and Indian War and you actually fought on the side of the Indians? What year was... <laughs> Just mowed down a well, bunch of well, French either people. Either way, whichever side I decided to choose. Like when I got there and they saw that I showed up from a time machine, right? One group's going to be nicer to me. Right? No, they're all going to be completely freaked out by right, you. Right, but one, there's going to be the View one. you as a threat, and you'll probably have to turn your Uzi on them. <laughs> then you'd have to steal their clothes and then try to fucking do an accent. I would choose a side of the people that were the nicest, warmest to me when I got there, and then I would fucking become their savior. Nobody's going to be nice to you, Paul. Do you understand that if I did that, they would rewrite the book on me? They would re they would be a mythical. No, I would they be would like kill their, you. No, I would. Be they would like kill you, Jesus. Paul. They would kill you. They would tell stories. What happened to Jesus? No, they would tell. What happened to Jesus? He right. got crucified. Yeah, but he didn't have an Uzi. Okay, <laughs> so. Yeah, but you're gonna run out of bullets, though. No, but I'm, in the question, it doesn't specify like what I'm coming with. I'm gonna go prepared. How big is this fucking time machine? No, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go with like a bunch of clips and a couple of Uzis. Okay, and they're gonna write fucking stories about me. They're yeah, be a like, mass this guy, murdering this psycho this, no. from the fucking future. <laughs> They're gonna go some mythical wearing some lazy clothes. <laughs> <laughs> some Italian lazy dude from clothes New York. That's... Some Italian dude from New York. <laughs> They're not even know what New York is. Oh, actually, maybe yeah, they they, they want New York. Yeah, dude, you, you're not listen. You don't use you, you, Paul. This is dude, this is they, the, they the key. They wouldn't all kill me. But Paul, I would the, say I'm here to help listen. you. Listen, I got I came to this. I can't listen to what I would tell them. Okay, and then you tell them what you'd say. I say, look, I came from the future to help you. This machine brought me here to help you. I'm going to solve your problems. And then I would fucking pull out the Okay. Gun, now let me ask you this, Paul. Let's, yeah. let's do this. Let's say okay. fucking after this tour, you uh, can't sleep one night, and you look out your backyard, and you see this fucking thing appear out of nowhere. Right. And this guy gets out and starts walking towards your fucking house from a time machine. <laughs> and let's just say you have a shotgun. And this guy walks up, and he goes, no, no, hey, listen, listen, Paul. Paul, and he's wearing these weird workout clothes from 300 years in the future. Listen, I'm here to help you. I'm here to do things that you're going to like. You're going to fucking trust this guy? No, 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 because I was sleeping in my bed, and, and I'm not. I'm talking about I want to show up to a conflict. I want to show up to the moment of a conflict and fucking take a side and win it. I want to win the game for the team is what I'm saying. It's a very and, narcissistic behavior here, Paul. You know? You think, think you're just going to show up on a battlefield? They're going to be like, our brothers, our brothers. Show up and you fucking walk out of this thing with yeah, a hoodie fucking, sweatshirt and a fucking it, Uzi. Yeah, and and, the, no, the, and the, the Union Army and the Rebels are not going to, like, one yeah, of them is going to embrace one of those, them is you. Yeah, one of those groups are losing fathers and sons. And I go, I got this. Fuck the musket. And I just fucking, I just fucking lace out an army. They're going to look at me like, dude, this guy, what are they going to do? They're going to go, we've been saved. This, he was saved. They would, once they realize you are mortal... They would fucking probably, they would, they would take your weapons is what they would do. How'd they get in the Uzi from me if they're fucking packing a musket and they have knives? Because, what are you talking, Paul, because you're going to have your fucking back to them. If you're shooting at the other guy. Paul, you know what they're going to do? They're going to probably act nice to you. This would be hilarious. And then, and, and then, and then what they're going to do 
is they're going to try to figure out where the fuck you came from. They're going to immediately confiscate Look, your fucking time machine, okay. and they're going to try to see if they can duplicate they it. So wait, how so they, they can run the fucking world. Okay, how are they going to confiscate the time machine from me? When I'm the one with the ammo, I'm the one with the semi-automatic weapons. I'm the one who's just saying, what are they going to do? Here, what are they going to do, Paul? Is they're going to fucking put an all-points bulletin out on every fucking goddamn tree out there. Wanted. Sweatpant guy from the future. <laughs> this man alone <laughs> has been in this time zone, this era, for fucking 20 minutes well, listen, and has already I killed <laughs> 600 people. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. The question was, where would you go and if you couldn't come back? If I survived this, well, I'm a did legend. You, did you, did I'm you a see? Did, did, forget about. I know you didn't read anything in history. <laughs> yeah, let's I did. just let's I've just talk movies, history. okay? Yeah, World War II. Like what? That there's the... muskets in 1870? No, no, no. no. What fucking did they World pack War II the and guns? Shit? I mean, in 1870. I just laughed so hard at seeing dots. No, um, World War II. I read about. I read about shit. You literally sound like you're sitting on a stoop right now. I know stuff. <laughs> Go ahead. What was the question? What were you Paul. Saying? I was going to ask, I was going to talk about people in history, but how about, like, just, we'll go with movies, all right? All right. You saw There Will Be Blood? Yes. Okay, that's based off, like, the robber barons uh, of, of the fucking, you know, 17, 1800s, the, uh, the people who got involved in the oil, oil rig, yeah. the, the railroad guys, the Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts, the fucking people who, like... Who fucking started it all, yeah. Yeah, they came over here, right? Mm-hmm. They fucking got it. You know, they just, it was wide open. You could do whatever the fuck you want, and they, they did it. All right. All right? It's funny. I made fun of you for being stupid. I can't even explain this. These guys, <laughs> the J.P. Morgans and all these types of fucking guys, when you show up with this machine where they can fucking change the past, they can change the fucking future, these sociopath psychos are not going to let you Paul Verzi, once they fucking sit down and they talk to you, Paul, oh, get, and they, they, they see where the fuck you're at, they, they will pretend to be friends with you, and when the second you set down your, your Uzi to have a little bit of mutton with them at the, in their all, villa, first they would too, cut you ear no, to ear. No, no, no. First of all, I'm too fucking street smart to ever put my Uzi down and let them f and start fucking drinking tea and eating crumpets with these fucking I don't like people. how you think you're street smart in every fucking era. Like, you know what the signs are in 1812. You think I'm going to leave my fucking Uzi down when nobody's got one? That's gold to those people. That's, 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 ends, that's ends problems. I would never do that. So you're going to become friends with these people always having a gun trained on them. So, so how that's about what this? you're telling me? No, no, so how about this? This is what I could also do. I could get there on my time machine and I could befriend one person. And I could let them know that I'm here to help them if they need and tell them what I could do. And then maybe they can say, hey, listen, when we get into, you know, when the rebels come, I got a guy. You know what? I wasn't even listening. I was thinking about what I was going to do. <laughs> All right. Well, what would you do? I, w I would go back to, what, say, 1900. I would go back. Any keep <laughs> in mind, anything before eight, prior to 1900, I would go back to 1899. Okay? It's because I want the most up-to-date medical fucking shit available for when I come down with, you know, polio or whatever bullshit that's going to hit me. Um, I What I would do is I would try out and make a major league baseball team and i would fucking destroy them with my uh, with my knowledge of nutrition my 100 year, 120 <laughs> years in the future my knowledge of nutrition you know what i would do i would take some peds back with me before they even know how to test for it and i would fucking roid up fucking just give fucking and like i Bruce. and i would try out for the boston red sox and we would win it for every fucking year right through the 20s that's a great idea. That's what I would do. But you'd have to go back with steroids. Yeah, you'd have to go back. You'd have to convince these people that you're going to inject I them. I still don't think I could hit a curveball, though. Huh? I still don't think I could hit a fucking curveball. But I just figured if I went back to the fucking – look, I couldn't, make a, I couldn't make a major league baseball team in the 1900s. But I think I could make one in the 1890s. So just I, have me go back. When did it start? 1880? Join the fucking Phillies? I wouldn't want them to win a championship. Well, well, I, I, what, 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 whenever the, when did the fucking Red Sox come around? They were the first. The Red Sox came around in what? The nine, the Early 1900s. I'd like to play whenever they they built Fenway in 1912. I would just like to come up to bat. God damn it, I couldn't do it. So I'd have to go back. But on my age now, I'd be too fucking old by then. <laughs>
fuck. Yeah, but you'd still kill it, though. You'd All right, this is what it. I would do. I'd become totally fluent in Latin, and uh, I would fucking go back, and I'd, I'd watch a game at the Roman Coliseum. <laughs> That's fu- I, I'm telling it's all you, I would, sports related. I would just take my chances with. I would just go with all the heavy artillery. I would be. I would be a defense. I would be. You know, I'm going the Ronald Reagan route. Just spend all of the, all the money on defense. I would hope that they would utilize me that way, as an asset, military wise. You know. Dude, you're out of your mind, dude. Why? Like, just me going back thinking that I could fucking make a team. Because I looked them back in those 1890s, like they were like softball teams. They just had ringers there. Those, you know, those guys didn't stretch. Dude, but you're not they understanding just went up something. You're... Back in the Wild West days, they fucking went outside and they went back to back and then ten paces. I fucking get rid of that, man. I'm talking about. I have everything. I'm an asset. You don't have anything, Paul. What you have is a gun and bullets. You have the best gun right. with the best bullets. But you're ignoring the fact that an entire army is going to go after you. <laughs> That they're not going to allow. I'm up the hill they, and they, they, they're not going to allow you. They wouldn't allow you to take power. But the way Paul, the way that you seize power is you assimilate and you work your way up through the ranks, and then you have a you it, and you strike when the uh, time is right. Yo, That's how you do it. If you if, if you try and start your own, sh- you come in there all rogue. No, dude, like, listen, I have better shit than you guys could ever dream of having, but don't worry, I'm your friend. <laughs> these fucking paranoid assholes, these control freaks, this, they went, they, you could not live. They wow. would be smearing you in, in the, the, the paper every fucking day, this talking re- about this reminds me of that, that you were a bigger threat than the savages that need to be clear. They, 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 would, they would put you above getting rid of Native Americans at that point. You, you would have to be eliminated but not before they found out how, how and took apart the gun to figure out how it worked, tortured you for all the fucking um, knowledge that you had and, and grilled you about that time machine to right, figure so out if I you told... built it or you just fucking used it. So what if I lied to him and I said I could get more of this? I got a time machine. Nobody knows where it is, but I could go back and get more of this. Like, so if I, they knew that I could, I could, you know what I mean, if I lied to him that way. That's the, best, that's the best move you've said out of all of this scenario where maybe, you know, you, you could do a play on their greed. And, and their desire to have more. That's actually a smart fucking move. But if you just think that you're just going to show up with your fucking cigar and your Uzi and come walking out on a battlefield. Dude, this sketch. I almost want to do this. And just change the course of history depending on who was nicer to you. What if the Germans were nicer to you in World War II? I mean, you know, they had nice uniforms, Paul. You're going to sign with them? Dude, how funny would it be just watching me going there with Air Maxes on? Nike Air Max is on a cigar and a sweatshirt. I'm like, listen, sit down. I got a gun that could solve it, and I just show the guy. I would love, to, I would fucking love to see the looks on their faces. And then all of a sudden, they rebel against me. Just like, right I think if, if I think if you fuck. actually if, if you actually went out there and you mowed down the whole other side with what you had. Yeah, that was my original. That's that my. Thought. I I would think that if I was on the on my luckily side. on your side. Yeah. I would slowly be backing away as you were doing it, and then I would slip into the woods and fucking run away is what I would do. I would get the fuck away from you because I don't – Paul, you understand what the fuck I'm seeing. <laughs> okay? You're going to show up in your space clothes with your fucking ray gun. I mean, it's just like I'm out of there. I'm fucking out of there. I'm, I'm going to leave, and if you come towards me – I'm going to shoot. I mean, if a fucking alien landed and I had a gun, fuck his ray gun, fuck all that bullshit. If it starts coming towards me, I got to shoot at it. If that happened, I'd be living in the biggest house in the 18th. I'd have all the women would be. I would be the fucking Jesus there. They would fucking draw pictures. Dude, you know what it is, Paul? This is your own little narcissistic head trip. And that's the exact thing that would bring you down. You know something? I think that this is a great answer to your listener's question. First of all, you're acting. You know what I love about all of this, Paul? What? You're acting like you know how to make a fucking Uzi. No, I'm saying I would time bring machine. one. You're going to bring one. So yeah. all you did was bring it. And they're going to figure it out because the scientists back then were just as brilliant as the scientists now. They just don't have the information that the ones do today. So they would immediately break down your fucking what you are. That they you're would have a, to that take you, my gun. That, that you're a stand-up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they would do. Well, what are you going to do, Paul? What are you going to do for food? You're going to oozy a deer, okay, and then do you know how to start a fire without some wood? Yeah. Rubbing it together? You know how to do that? Yeah. How do you do it? You know how to start a fire without matches. 
Yeah, you wa- I mean, I've seen it done. I've watched it on t- TV. I've seen it on the fucking, I've seen it on YouTube. I did, I fucking seen it on YouTube when we ran out of matches at the house one time. I swear to God, I was watching a clip. Yeah, I've watched it too. Yeah, the guy Have you takes, ever sat it, down it, and the, done it? Have you done fucking, it? He gets the, the driest, whatever they call it, the grass or the dry fucking... Well, I'm going to tell you this right now. And they fucking... If you can make... If you can start a fire... And they twist the thing. They, they, right. If you can yeah. start a fire tonight... All right, we'll go to the Toronto's Central Park. If you can start a fight, a fight, a fire, I'll give you all the money I'm going to make on this tour. With, don't watch the YouTube video again. I want to see you start this fucking fire. I okay? Need and if wood, you don't... I need some wood or If you don't... Thing. If you don't, then you have to walk into the fucking... Into Lake Ontario... With no, your Jordan son. I got and shit. Well, that's the point. I, yeah, want, no, you, I no. want you to suffer. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> You're hilarious. You're like, yeah, you did see it. Wow. All right, Kegerator. First thing first. I'm over 21 years of age, so no worries about giving advice to, to a minor. Recently, my wife approached me and asked why we don't have a Kegerator. Huh? He's got a good one here. Yeah. He goes, needless to say, within minutes of that statement, we now are the proud owners of a new Kegerator. And seeing as how I've been married for eight years, and this is the first time she's ever given approval for a purchase prior to me buying it, I'm pretty excited about this. How do guys get themselves in that situation? Unless she's making all the money, and you got to go to her for cash, right? Yeah, I mean, she seems cool, unless she's got a drinking problem, but that's awesome. <laughs> I know, you know what? I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Anyways, however, I really need some advice as to what kind of beer I should keep it stocked with. Choosing the right beer is key to the process. I'm afraid if I buy something like Amstel Light, all my friends will know my wife wears the pants in the family. That's hilarious because he gets a calorie, less calories here. Um, if I buy a stronger, thicker, more manly beer like Newcastle or Guinness, I may also have to buy a wheelbarrow to wheel my friends out of the basement on weekends, and I really don't need that level of responsibility. I can't do anything like Miller Light or Coors, Coors Light because I might as well hook the tap up to the faucet. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. I said that a long time ago. That Coors Light, that's like vitamin water for alcoholics. <laughs> like all my friends. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, I'm on the wagon. I'm on the wagon. You're like, dude, you're fucking drinking. Yeah, it's Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> um, I narrowed it down to Dos Equis or Labatt Blue. The only thing with Labatt Blue would be if any French Canadians find out I'm fucked because you know <laughs> those bastards would be knocking on my door seven days a week. Uh, what do you think, Paul? If you had to get a kegerator, if, if you had to get a keg, it sounds like this guy doesn't want to go domestic, uh, but he also doesn't want to go really fattening. Sam, Killians? Sam Adams, yeah, uh, Sam, Sam maybe, maybe a nice pale ale. I would go. Uh, I would go. I would just go classic. It's a keg. It's a fucking keg. That's I would go a, Bud Riser. Isn't that such a weird thing for your wife to just purchase, like, to be like, yeah, you know what, I got it. Like, that's that's pretty fucking cool. That's beyond cool. That's weird, almost. Like, yeah. if Stacy came home, I would just be, yeah, I got this big wine rack. I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> she starts doing, like, little kegerator <laughs> headstands. You know, like, you know, like, you know, they have, they have girl push-ups. She yeah. does, like, the girl version of what a beer, fucking keg stand. What beer would you put in there? I get, a, I get Budweiser because that's, like, a classic, like, Budweiser's like, cool. who's going to come home? Dude, what are you going to come home like Norm on Cheers and you're just going to start pouring yourself a big mug of beer? You're going to be a tub of shit. So I figured the only time you're really going to be pouring like that is if you have guys over for the game. Budweiser is a nice middle of the road that everybody's going to like. You drink Bud at the game. Yeah. It's not, it's not one of the but light beers. don't you beers. feel like shit now? Like now that I'm like, you know, 33 years old and stuff, so my metabolism is obviously slowing down. But I got to be honest with you, man. When I drink three beers... I feel like a fucking fat bloated. I could yeah. feel my tits getting bigger. Yeah. I could feel You're about my... ready to enter, enter your whiskey and scotch years. Yeah, I think That's so. That's what you do. You I get... think so because beer just gives me that bloat and then you get tired. Whiskey, if I drink a whiskey on yeah. the rocks now, which is kind of dangerous. Uh, uh, I'm wi- to whiskey, good. yeah. Yeah, scotch, that's like a, uh, a vaporizer for alcoholics. Like, you know, vaporizer, you have like – vaporizer, if you're going to smoke weed, is, is the way to do it, I would think, because it, it filters out everything except the shit that gets you high. You take a hit off it. It, it you, you, there's no burning sensation. It, it, it's, oh, it's like a mist. And I swear to right. God, if you get high with, with a vaporizer versus drinking three or four beers, like just the fatty tissue you're gonna build on your liver, like I would think that a vaporizer is. I mean, well, obviously, no research here because I'm an idiot. But I, I just by looking at it, that's arguably the healthiest way to get fucked up. You know what I mean? What's the most healthy to drink? What's more healthy? I have no idea. For fat. Well, I would say for, for not being fat, look, if you, if you get like a, uh, you just drink hard stuff and you drink it on the rocks or you just drink it neat, 
And uh, what people get fucked up is, is you know, they, they drink, like, Jack and Cokes. You're drinking sodas all night. Um, See, I don't know all those fucking, like, alcoholic words, like, neat. I would just go, okay, give neat. it to me regular. Yeah, neat is uh, no no ice. That's just straight. Okay. And then rocks is obviously with some ice. But you don't want to mix it with anything, like, you know, mm. I guess, you know, twist the lime. The older you get, you just you just want to go right to the fucking, you get right to the, the point. The older you get. It's like how old, old people fight. If they're going to fight, they're not going to sit there and try and, you know, who used to do that bit? Like Richard Pryor or somebody. They're not going to look cool. <laughs> they're going to immediately try to blow out your knee and just end the shit. They'll kick you in the balls. They don't give a fuck. That's the way old people drink. Like I've heard somebody tell was a bartender and said, when somebody comes in, if they order a beer, I think, okay, this guy could be a problem. But if somebody just comes in and they order like a whiskey or whatever, and, and it's just sitting there, you know, and they know how they want to drink, all right, this guy's a pro. He can handle right. himself. This guy's a rookie. Yeah, he's yeah. Get ugly. Oh yeah, yeah, he's coming in. Let me get a, uh, you know, give me, get a shot of Zambuca. A couple. Yeah, you guys want to do shots? You want to round up uh, shots? Uh, Th those guys. Yeah, that's gonna be. Let it's me like get a, a car bomb. As soon yeah. as you start. <laughs> Dude, is a car bomb the dumbest thing? The I, Irish car bomb. It's cool because what it is makes it? You drop amaretto into a beer. Is that what, uh, it? what it's a it's it's a isn't it it's a Guinness and a, and it's a shot of no not a Guinness it's uh maybe a, there's a bunch Holy of alcohol right I'm not now. gonna lie to you, the end of this podcast get me thirsty <laughs> oh yeah dude I'm ready to drink <laughs> yeah me too like <laughs> yeah yeah no no we're, we're boozing after this um yeah so sir I would go with but okay so he says Dos Equis or Labatt Blue you know what I would do I wouldn't do Dos Equis just because the most interesting man in the world is a little overhyped I go Labatt Blue I think that's cool I have I can't remember what Labatt Blue tastes like it's Canadian right yeah. But does it have the extra alcohol? No, when it, once it comes no. in, once it comes into it's this like country, it doesn't. Triple X has the extra alcohol. Is Dos Equis good? I heard Dos Equis no, is when, good, when, though. Dude, that's another reason to fucking get into hockey. When you go up to Canada, when you drink their beer, it's, it has twice the alcohol content. You know what the funny thing tremendous. about Canadians are? Other than they're the fact they say and neutral. Hey. They're peaceful and neutral with everything, but their sport is fucking barbaric, and they drink like fucking maniacs. They do, and they're not peaceful either. They're not. That's just Michael Moore's version of what they are because it worked for his documentary dude they lost a hockey game and they burned down their city talk about an unacceptable okay? face exactly michael moore's on the head of that i got family. i got i got fucking two words for canada grow up all right here's another two act your fucking age <laughs> i'll be in edmonton at the uh no i'm kidding verzi's got me addicted to florentine's podcast and now verzi does like he does a pretty good florentine the Florentine is the funniest motherfucker ever. To listen to, to just Florentine complain about, about anything. Oh my god! That yeah, robot. That robot. Right? You are fucking kidding me? Fucking it's garbage. garbage. <laughs> fucking joke. Like <laughs> 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 a Fox News robot. Fucking. You got that right, robot? The way he goes like up. <laughs> oh, he like drags the word out. It's fucking halftime. It's fucking. That's really good, man. <laughs> Uh, dude, um, he's fucking funny, man. Listen to that guy complain. Really, really, like we never seen a beautiful woman before. Fucking guy, Bud Light commercial, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, all right, uh, what do we got here? This is uh, okay. Sunglasses. There's some really uh, some weird ones this week. People like this guy says, uh, "Hey, Bill, I need I need uh, my my listeners send in like questions and shit, and I read it just to let you know." Billiam, I need to ask you a very important question. My wife makes fun of my choice of sunglasses. She thinks they're not hip enough. Um, I told her I was wearing brown tinted sunburst aviators since college before the whole aviator hype. Is there aviator hype? I don't even remember. I mean, Top Gun like, came like, out. Yeah, I was going to say, back then, those people who... <laughs> yeah, in 1980s. Yeah, who wanted to be like Tom Cruise. You know my neighbor when I was growing up? Any movie that Tom Cruise was in, he got into that, like whatever it was. Like uh, Top Gun, he joined like the fucking... Uh, <laughs> No. He, no, he joined like the the, the the Air Force Reserves. No. He alligator armed it. He joined that and then um Days of Thunder he started racing cars. No, cocktail, he became like a bartender. His rich no. dad got him out of the fucking <laughs> the uh, fuck reserves. Out of you, are you serious? Yeah, he started getting into that. And what else did he do? There was like three things, so it kinda of became this running joke, like whatever fucking Tom Cruise movie was coming out. And then eventually he moved out to LA, finally just just well, why don't I just be a fucking actor? <laughs> you know, so I don't have to actually <laughs> Join the fucking Air Force. <laughs> That's uh, don't know what ever happened to him. So anyway, aviator glasses, which were, yeah, the Tom Cruise fan slash date rapist. Remember that fucking kid? I was talking about him. Do you remember that kid who he had the rough sex with the girl in, the, in Central Park and she died? No. You're too young for that. Yeah, this guy. What? He, yeah, this fucking psycho. No, he killed her. He tried to, he tried to, he tried to say that, they, that she wanted rough sex. It was consensual. And 
it, it, I don't know what it, it, it. He accidentally killed her or whatever. That puts I mean, a whole other meaning to the word killing it. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ, Paul. <laughs> How you Jesus. doing with the ladies? Oh, uh, yeah. Killing it. <laughs> crushed it. <laughs> Fucking crushed it. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, dude, that's fucking brutal. So anyway, but this guy, you know what? It actually made me mad when he got out of prison. Not only that, that, that he got out of, on two levels it made me mad. First of all, the guy got out of prison. But uh, the idiots on the news going off on the guy were saying, because when he got out, he wasn't on parole because he did all his time. Because he didn't get time off for good behavior. Because they were just like, you know, he had fights in prison. He was selling drugs and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. All, the, all that that says in there is he didn't get raped. He did what he had to do in there to survive. So on some level, you, you have to respect that because that's, that's the big fear as a guy. Wait, did he rape the girl or it was just rough sex? I don't know what he did. I don't know what that's happened. That's such a big difference, though. Well, I don't know if he went like Ron Artest, like it was going good and he was excited and then he fucking elbowed her. <laughs> Why are we joking about he just this? just dunked and then he fucking started <laughs> pounding his chest. Yeah, and then they didn't show the replay because it was a home game. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, he he fucking uh, so, I don't know. Okay, so how long did he do? They let him out of jail. Yeah, he did like all fifteen or sixteen years because they couldn't get him on murder because he said it was like I, I know like on on rape trials like they what they always do like the the hardest thing to get him on is when they say it was consensual. So then all DNA is out the fucking window. Then you have to like. It's 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 the worst fucking thing. If if somebody does that to a woman, they they should be honestly. They should they should just they should have like a flamethrower, and they should just have it pointed at the defendant. And Jerry, would you like to read the verdict? <laughs> On the count of uh, rape, we find him guilty in the first degree. And just <laughs> you just light him on fire right in front of the family. Yeah, yeah. Right in front, of, right in front of the family. That that's how I would run it. The same same thing with uh, child molesters. Oh, that's the worst. Child molesters. That's it. Child molesters. I would actually have them get chased by rabid dogs first, and then. <laughs> Dude, this Sandusky yeah. guy and, and, get fucking. This Sandusky guy should get fucking drawn and quartered in the courtroom. Oh, Just yeah. put his fucking body parts in a bag. He should be it. underneath an oil tanker, and then they should drive it to fucking. Uh, is that how you, do you drive the, a boat? That's drive the it most to like fucking uh, man that's walking this earth. He's a that's what I would do with that guy. Dude. What I would do with that guy, well, I would go into shark infested waters and I would give him a bunch of paper cuts and I'd tie him to the front of a boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I never heard of like that. That's, that's a good one, man. Well, just Paul, you got to understand when, when you do something like that to somebody, you didn't just, you, you ended that kid's life. And then you affected generations of people because who they're going to marry, how they're going to treat the person they marry, how they're going to treat their kids, and then the, the treatment of the kids, how they're going to act in society, society it just it, it creates. It's like that, that little Confucius thing when you drop the pebble in the still pond and the ripples just go like that. So you got a little poetic on you. It's, it's like that. No, see, that's what I say. Time to the front of a boat, paper cuts, shark infested waters, and that's it. And you know what's awesome. funny? And this is the thing about it. You, that's funny. That'd be awesome. Um, and it, it still won't stop him. It still won't stop it from happening. But you should just you should start weeding them out. That's a sick, like that's a sickness, man. From young, it's fucking crazy, man. Yeah. Like, to, to to that's just a uh, and it ruins the lives of of everybody. For, but but the kid forever. Yeah, it's over. Why are you yeah. saying what I just said, Paul? What? Oh, did you say it? I'm sorry. Yeah, you won't even listen. A typical no, comedian. Just, no, you no, were no. thinking about what you were no, going to say. That's literally about, exactly no. what I just said. No, I was thinking about the. Um, you sing one? I was thinking about him actually like hitting the thing like a buoy. Oh, that's right. You you got you got that you got that weird fucking shit where you you every once in a while you you think about doing crazy Horrible stuff, right? Sometimes, yeah. I always get nervous about admitting this type of stuff. Like someday, if you're like on trial, like you know, I'm gonna get put in contempt of court because I'd still never rat you out. But it'd be like, what are you talking about? You guys talked about this on the podcast. Wait, kid, me, it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> like <a> garbage. <laughs> Oh, we didn't ask the fucking guy's question here. We were talking about aviators. He said, what's the breakdown of douchey sunglasses versus acceptable, versus acceptable ones? What kind of sunglasses do you wear, and does Nia have any say in the matter? I imagine you wear very non-threatening, low-profile <laughs> shades. I can't tell if that's an insult or if he's con sounds like an insult, right? Um, no, I don't think it's an insult. I think this guy genuinely wants to know uh, what he could wear to make his girl stop trashing him. Well, this is what you have to do. First of all, depending on where you are in your relationship, is, is if you feel secure in your relationship, maybe she's just doing you a solid and telling you that you look like a douche. But if she's always telling you everything 
what to do, then you have to continue wearing those glasses, and you have to wear them over to her mother's house. Defiance. Yes, and, and wear them into the house, and don't take them off when her mom's talking to you. <laughs> That's like a buddy, a buddy of mine, right? Dude, women, though, women, just, I just want me to say something real quick. Oh, God, more women trashing? I was no, hoping no, you were going to be no, nice to them. Like, it's just like, could you, like, a guy's really thinking about it, and this happens all the time. This guy's got a genuine concern here. But, like, for, like I've heard of guys going, yeah, my girl just looked over at me and looked at that shirt and goes, ugh, it's such a turn off, take it off. And I want to be, it, it's in my mind, I'm just like, I want to be like, dude, shut the fuck, are you out of yeah, your mind? Yeah, those, but those guys deserve it. They fucking deserve it, Paul. If you if you let the woman in your life talk to you like that, well, that's they what I'm they, they fucking deserve it. The same way a woman deserves it. No, if if the, their guy is a fucking asshole, minus them beating the shit out of you. But I gotta yeah, minus them beating the shit out of you. But like if, the if, they, if they beat you up, then that's just complete bullshit. No, of course. But if they're walking around being a fucking asshole, disrespecting you, that that's on you. Okay. But if the guy says Break to, up with them. But what if the guy says to her, shut you shut up? You know I'm wearing the shirt. Shut up. Yeah. Is he a dick? No. Right. But then it's like, oh my God, don't That's talk. That's a total turn up to disgust me. Take that off. Just flip it around. What if you ever said that to your girl? Yeah, exactly. That's ah, disgusting. It makes you look fat. Come on. You'd never do that. <laughs> no. Even if you said that disgust me, that would be it. Listen, here's my answer. They would to pout your... through the fucking dessert that night at the meal. Well, here's my answer to your, to your, uh, your listener's question here. If you like them, dude, and you look in the mirror and you go, you know something? I like, the, I like the glare. I like if it's orange tint or whatever. You like it? Fucking wear it. Paul, you know something? That's why you and your wife are so comfortable to hang around. Because how many times you guys tell each other go fuck yourself? You say go fuck yourself, right? You do that, right? Like, no, we'll just be like, ah, oh, you know something, shut, like, yeah, yeah like, shut not, up. Not in a, but right in a loving way, like a. Yeah, but you have to, you have to keep, you got to keep them off you. The same way she has to keep you off her, you know, if she didn't keep you in check, you'd golf fucking t <laughs> nine times a week. Right, right. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. There's a fine line in what's like, you know, yes, exactly. Dude, I had a buddy of mine, right? He fucking, we went fishing, right? We were done fishing. Well, uh, you know, we drank a bunch of booze or whatever I mean, we were smoking cigars and his wife pulls up and you know they told their kid about the dangers of smoking right so the kid starts fucking crying and blah and there's all this big fucking thing and the kid the guy was literally in the doghouse and i guess maybe because the kid was crying i kind of saw her point but he's one of those fucking guys i I, I wanted to say to him like dude you know what would really help your relationship next time you drop your kid off in the car take out a big fat fucking cuban and just light it up yeah. And I got, what are you doing? I'm smoking a cigar because I enjoy it. When I come home, I'm going to watch a game. And I'm smoking this fucking cigar. And when she says why, you say, because you can go fuck yourself. And that, and I'm telling you, <laughs> it's a little blunt. You can, you can round off yeah, the you edges. Might not wanna, yeah, you yeah. might not want to say you could go fuck yourself. But I'm just but saying, can, that would help your relationship. Happy. It's like that movie. Remember the movie there with uh, Kevin Spacey when she comes home? What is that in the driveway? He's like, that is a 1969 Firebird. And you just... I went out and bought it because I wanted it. Go fuck yourself. And, like, and you saw the look on her face. There was a shift for the better in that relationship. But doesn't he die in the end? Doesn't he get killed? Oh, uh, I don't know. Was that was that? Uh... That was a weird one. He wanted to fuck that 12-year-old. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Fuck that movie. Sitting there with rose petals falling all over him. Um, so we're saying, you know what? You wear, the, you wear the goddamn sunglasses you want to, sir. That's right. Anyways, I get them into the biggest... Dumbest fucking fight last night with my girl, right? We had this great day, you know? Everything's going great. So I stay in. I take a night off from comedy. And I say, hey, why don't we watch? Why don't we watch a movie? You know what I mean? Cap off this wonderful fucking day. Everything's going great. What could go wrong? This is like the beginning of a horror movie where they just show, like, the perfect family. And everything's great. And people are wearing, like, white linen, you know? And then all of a sudden, they just start showing the camera in the bushes, like a POV of, like, Mike Myers. This is basically what happened. So 60 Minutes comes on, right? Who doesn't want to watch that show and pretend they're smart? You know? I like it. Some more, Morley Safer comes on. And you know he smells like an old person. Some old people don't smell like old people, but he looks like he smells like an old person. You know? Smells of cigars, ashtrays, you know? A couple of wars, maybe a date rape. Um, <laughs> so he's interviewing Meryl Streep, all right, the great Meryl Streep, and they're going through all her old, her old friggin' life and all the movies and all the different characters that she's played. Oh, first of all, they start, they start the report off with Morley Safer just sitting there, right, smelling a fucking Ben Gay and whiskey, right, and uh, he says how, you know, 
how uh, over in England, you know, they, you know, I don't know, they make their their actors they they award them by calling them lords and they knight them. But over here in America, all we do is just give them this shiny statue, and it's just like starts off right off the bat for some reason just shitting on America. I don't know why. Like an Oscar is somehow beneath Sir uh, Anthony Michael Hall. I mean, or or Lord what? Lord of what? Lord of what? At least you can fucking hold our statue. You're Lord of what kingdom? That phony horseshit that you have with Prince Charles and the popper or whatever the fuck is going on over there? You know? Look, if the Rothschilds knight you over there, then that fucking means something. Then you can come become part of their yacht convoy as they go around the world, figuring out how to take over another currency, right? Then you're in with them, okay? But if you're if you're fucking, you know, lord of this and your your wingman is the Duke of Elton John, I mean, it's, the whole thing is fucking stupid, right? So right off the bat, it's already bugging me. But I know Nia hates when I talk to the TV, right? So, I, you know, I keep my, my big fucking yap shut. And they start talking about Meryl Streep, ba -ba 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 -ba, going through the whole thing. And then um, the old guy there, smelling of, uh, you know, prescription meds, goes, uh, you know, whenever they talk about the roles you play, they always say, you know, you play independent-minded women, very strong women. And Meryl goes, I know, that's, yeah, that's what they say. You know, when a guy, they never say to a guy, oh, you're playing a strong-willed character, yada, yada, yada. I let that go, whatever, no biggie, I'll take that. It's probably true. What the fuck do I know? I'm not a woman, right? But then they show her after she played Margaret Thatcher, and she's given a speech to a bunch of women's, young girls, and she's trying to inspire them. And she, she takes a quote from Margaret Thatcher, and it was something along the lines of, if you want a bunch of people to talk around, talk, stand around talking about doing something, you know, something, uh, go, you, you got to talk to men. But if you want it to actually get done, you got to get a woman. And then all the chicks go, woo, You're like flipping out, right? So I laugh and I'm like, yay, reverse sexism, right? Just seeing, you know, my, my whole fucking theory, how everybody is just a piece of shit. You just don't have the power to act out what the fuck you want to do. Because that, that right there, if you flip that around... As a guy, I, if you're running for president, it's fucking over. You can't be like, let me tell you, and I'll tell you what, after I get your jobs and after I fix this economy, okay, and I'm the man to do it because I'll tell you right now, if you're looking for someone to stand around and talk about doing something, you get a woman. You want to get it done, you got to get a man. Here are my nuts right here on the podium. Vote for me November 4th. Go fuck yourself, right? You did that, your presidential campaign's over. She does it. It's fucking adorable. And it's just as fucking ignorant. You know what I mean? What the fuck do you get off saying that we stand around and do nothing, Meryl Streep? Huh? Or quoting Margaret... Th and you too, Margaret Thatcher. Let me tell you, you bitches, something. All right? We faked a fucking lunar landing. Okay? You think that's just talking? Anybody can land on the fucking moon. That's easy. But to pretend you did it, all right? And get everybody to shut the fuck up about it. That, 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 that right there, that takes skill. So whatever. So I make that little comment. And uh, did I just go, that, 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 that? I sound like fucking Porky Pig. So, so I make that comment. And, like, you know, I've been with Nia long enough that I can tell by the side of her face when she's just thinking about, like, what if I just grabbed everything I really cared about and walked out of this house right now? <laughs> she got, like, that fucking mad at me. You know? And I'm like, she's just like, right after the story was over, she just shut the fucking thing off. And uh, I know what happened. Next thing you know, I'm walking to 7-Eleven to get some ice cream. I, I don't even know what happened. It was all going great. You know, am I the asshole there? What, what am I, am I supposed to just fucking sit there with my mouth hanging open with drool coming out when I watch TV? If somebody says something douchey, I, I'm not supposed to say it. Ah, whatever. Whatever. So I just finally just said, you know what? Fuck this. I take the dog out. I go around the block. What do I do? I'm calling my guy friends, right? They're all backing me up. I'm not saying who I called. I don't name names, right? And they're all laughing their ass off, and they 100% agree with me, which is all I'm looking for at this point. I just want people to say that I'm right.
I don't want to learn anything from this experience. Just tell me I was right so I can be an ignorant ass again. I don't know. Why don't you guys weigh in on that? Am I a dick for saying that? Should I just let that one go? You know? Oh, you know what she said that fucking drove me up the wall? She goes, why are you... She didn't say intimidated. She used one of those words. Why are you threatened by what she said? It's like, I'm not th threatened. Ugh. I, oh, Jesus Christ. Then I take the bait. You know, it just sends me right over there. Like, threatened about what? Oh, my God, this person that I don't know who has never called me nor will ever call me who has no effect on my life. How do you get threatened by that? I'm just calling it for the bullshit that it is. Because you know what? This is what fucking drives me nuts. I can't stand when somebody tells me that their shit sandwich tastes worse than my shit sandwich. Okay? Go fuck yourself. At what point am I supposed to have empathy? As I'm sitting here eating a shit sandwich and you're telling me how much worse yours is. Yours is. You know, at the end of the fucking day. You know what I mean? Sure, mine might be on, you know, a better slice of bread, which I guess would make it taste a little bit better, but at the end of the fucking day, right? The end of the fucking day. All right, I'm going to end up in a FEMA camp with you. Okay, you think when the next fucking uh, psycho comes along, I'm going to make the cut? What the fuck do I, what, what do I bring to the world? Huh? Exactly. I'm going to be standing right next to you. So go fuck yourself this fucking woman, every time she sneezes, they give her another goddamn award. She's still bitching. Still fucking bitching. You know, it's ridiculous. I remember when I did this Oscar-nominated part. Oh, go fuck yourself with your wigs. The whole thing just, you know, that's what fucking pisses me off when I watch this shit. If you really want to know my perspective is from where I come from, I can't bitch about shit because everybody's like, oh, go fuck yourself. You hit the lottery, right? But I got to sit here and listen to you, bitch, even if you're fucking killing it. Even if you're killing it. You know? Yale school of drama. And he stepped on the bull. Go fuck yourself with your goddamn yachts. All right. There you go. That, that felt good. It's probably ignorant. But whatever. Moving on. What the hell am I going to talk about? Oh, you know, I went, I went into a bar last night. Oh, yesterday afternoon because the games come on early. So I'm sitting there, right? I'm with a buddy of mine, right? Watching the game. We're having a great time. We're right in like the fourth quarter. Uh, these four girls, four or five girls come in, and it's a dive bar, you know. I like the dive bars. You can get a place to sit, you know. It's just one of those deals. Somebody has one of those fucking, what, what's Nick Nolte's character in 48 hours? You know, there was, there's always one of those cars parked out front, some fucking piece of shit ragtop with some sad dog in, in the back seat, right? I like those bars, you know, the bar fly car, right? So I walk in there, we're watching the game, and like fucking... With like, uh, I don't know, five minutes to go in the game. So what's that, like two hours NBA time? These like five, six chicks come in and they're just like, they're just train wrecks. All of them wearing pants where you can just see their clams. You know, ridiculously tight pants. Another girl's got these cutoffs with this, her hat turned sideways. Looking like she's in some fucking Fresh Prince video in the late 80s. It's just, they were just absolute messes. And they start putting money into the jukebox, and they just start singing along. They start to sing along to uh, Video Killed the Radio Star, right? And then they just start, you know, and then there's all these fucking old guys, barfly fucking jack-offs like my age and a little bit older, like way too fucking old for these chicks, right? And these girls are being like really fucking loud, and they're fucking dancing with each other and they're grabbing each other's asses, doing all this shit. And you see these guys up at the bar, they're like, eh, eh, and they start like reacting to this sex fucking energy that they're putting out there. So two of the girls stand up, they start, that's what it got, dude. It was like the fucking accused, like times five was going down. The whole vibe it was fucking ridiculous. So the two girls stand up, they start like dancing grinding up against each other and then one of the guys eventually like some big fucking sex star bear starts walking over and starts pawing at the girl and then the girl's like hey knock it off get the fuck out of here right and my buddy classic looks at me and goes she facilitated that entire fucking thing and it's like exactly fuck it, it was uh, i don't know if they were strippers i don't know what their fucking deal was but um 
It was just one that thing that I've always said, where you, you got to have responsibility for your own fucking safety. Obviously, that guy shouldn't just feel that he should be able to walk over and start pawing at some girl. But, you know, when you're sitting there with your clam fucking outlined on the front of your fucking jeans and you're grinding up against her, your friend and you're pulling her jacket off and she's going, stop it, stop it. And you keep pulling it off. I mean, what the fuck do you think's going to happen? You know, I fuck, you know, there's nothing worse than when people act like the world is a perfect place. And then they act shocked when something bad happens. It isn't, okay? There's the way you wish the world was and the way it is, so fucking act accordingly. You don't go in there with your fucking hoo-ha hanging out and start grinding up on your friend in front of fucking five drunk guys who women haven't done a double take at since the fucking, I don't know, Fernando Valenzuela struck out the side, okay? I'm saying they're old people. It was just, it was a really fucking uncomfortable vibe. And I literally looked at my friend. I go, look, if we don't get out of here in three minutes, we're going to be testifying in about fucking six weeks for whatever bullshit's about ready to go down. And you know what kills me is no one at the bar stopped them from doing what they were doing. You know, I was trying to think what the fucking male version of what they were doing would be. I guess it would be like acting aggressive and almost causing like a fight vibe. All right, but, you know, then you get tossed out. But women could can create the accused vibe. And uh, I don't know, I'm probably going to get shit for this. But, like, you know, I'm not advocating what that guy did. That What that guy did was fucking wrong. But Jesus fucking Christ. What did your dad do? Did he buy, like, Fisher Price, How to Be a Whore? Did they make, like, a, remember those little fucking stereos they made? Did they make, like, a fucking, the whore version of that? I don't know. I'm at that age, people. I'm at that age where I look at women like that and I don't go like, well, there's an easy mark. I now look at them going like, ah, Jesus Christ, where the fuck was your dad? What didn't he do? Um, but anyways, but what was actually funny was for some, this is how drunk they were. As they were grinding on each other and fucking pulling up each other's dresses and doing all this shit to fucking, for whatever reason. Uh... Out of nowhere, they just started singing the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> and then the guys at the bar joined in. And I have video of it. I'm going to send it to my guy and hopefully we'll get it up on the site. I got it like halfway through. They sang the whole fucking song. And what was funny was that whole fucking is somebody going to get rape vibe went out the window. Both sides for like a good three minutes were in harmony. Um with some sort of support the troops vibe, just out of fucking nowhere. And I, this is the funniest thing about it. This was probably like 7 in the evening. This is how fucking wasted everybody was. Um, all right, plowing ahead here. Um, oh, whatever, women, what do you think about that? Am I being the fucking caveman there? I'm not advocating that, that, that I'm saying that those guys, what they did was right, but, like, you can't. I, that's like it's like me like I've always said this that's like me walking through Central Park at like three in the morning dressed like Liberace singing I'm in the money I'm in the money I got a lot of fucking cash in my back pocket right and then someone comes up smashes me over the head I get a concussion I got a fucking my cheekbones fucked up you know they take my wallet you know and all that shit is it wrong? Yes. Do you feel bad for me? Yes. But what the fuck was I thinking? You know, why don't you just fucking uh, give yourself a bunch of paper cuts and junk, jump in shark infested water and then fucking go and then it bit my leg off. You're an asshole. That's uh, that's that's my side of it. All right. Oh, geez. What's up, Cleo? How you doing? You know, psyched I was to see you. You know, I was psyched to see you because you were psyched to see me. You're always psyched to see me, aren't you? You know my dog actually misses me? Comes into the bedroom at night and it fucking looks around for me. Then it runs into my little office area looking for me. Right? If I'm not around, who are you going to wrestle with? Let me see if I can get you to moan. Hey, Cleo, let me see if I can get you to howl. You want to go outside? Cleo, this is going to be worth it, people. Just listen. You want to go outside? Cleo. Hey, she's getting psyched. Cleo, you want to go outside? Cleo, I want her to howl. Come on, Cleo. You want to go outside? Cleo, would you fucking do it, please? Cleo, oh, you're fucking burning me right now. Cleo, hey, fuckhead. Cleo, 
Why won't you howl for these people? You want some food? You want to go outside? Cleo, I'll leave one more temp. Ah, Jesus Christ. You know what this is like? The hot chick that'll never fuck you. And she just keeps giving you a glimmer of hope and you keep coming back. You keep coming back. Whatever. I still love you, Cleo. You know, even though you just made me look like a fucking asshole. You really did. It was literally the Bueller. Anybody? Anybody? Cleo. I think my dog is sleeping with its eyes open. Oh, no, she just moved her eyebrows. You know what's weird? When my dog sees a squirrel through a window, it, it cries. <laughs> like it's a long-lost buddy. But if my dog is outside, it will try and rip its fucking head off. So I don't... Does anybody know anything about dogs? What is it crying about? Is it crying like, oh, oh, I want to rip its head off. I wish I could just end that thing's fucking life. Fucking dog. We had company over yesterday. My girlfriend had a friend over, and they were baking a cake out in the kitchen where broads belong. Right where they fucking belong. Yeah, so they're out there making a cake. And my dog, you know, has bonded with me and my girl, Pitbull, you know. So now whenever we have company, she lets out a little growl. Isn't that what you do, Cleo? Whoa, 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 whoa. She does a little bit of that. You know, we've been trying to get her acclimated. To, uh, I keep her on the fucking leash, okay? You understand that, Cleo? You're on the goddamn leash because I'm not fucking getting sued because you're a psycho. Yeah, you're a psycho. All right, all right, get off me. Um, hmm? You can't do that to a little dog, huh? You like that? You hear that sound? You like that? That makes a pit bull happy. Come on, slap me around. I like it. Huh? Like Jake LaMotta? Like Jake fucking LaMotta? Only cuter? Hmm? Get off me. Stop trying to dominate me. I watch the dog whisper. I dominate you. I grab your fucking tail like that. You like that shit? Really? It does nothing for you? You can't hurt a pit bull. Fucking heads are made out of titanium. So anyways, these two broads, they're out there in the kitchen, okay, and they're talking about nothing as usual. Typical women, not a fucking thought in their goddamn heads. Just emptying the fucking shit in their head. Blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up, right? So I bring the dog up because I'm a man, you know. I'm wearing pajama bottoms, no... No shirt and some slippers. That's how I do it. It's my fucking house. It isn't. It's my apartment, and I rent it from another man like a bitch. But what anyway, we'll talk about that later. So anyways, you know, so I bring the dog over. The dog sees the other broad out there. And I go, Cleo, no. And uh, she ends up fucking, uh, you know, put her down on the rug. You know, she lays down on the rug, and I got her on the leash, and everything's fine. So uh, then after a while, you know, it's just, it's comfortable. Sees the, sees the girl's cool, and it's just chilling and everything, and all of a sudden, uh, I go, hey, come on in here, look at this YouTube video. And the dog had its ears back. I was looking to see if its ears came up, if it was, if it was fixating. All that dog whisper shit, and it wasn't. It was just sitting there. Out of nowhere, just rawr, rawr, and fucking lunged at her. Really freaked me out. So my dog is on uh, probation right now. All right, questions. Hey, Bill, uh, would you rather have a dick where your nose is or a dick where it's supposed to be, but it talks? Oh, man, that's a great fucking question. Um, I, I would, I would take, I would have a dick where it's supposed to be, but it talks and, uh, I just put a sock on it. <laughs> what do you mean it talks? Does it, you know, does it say shit independently of what I'm saying or does it just say the same shit that I'm saying like a backup singer? Cause that could be, that could be cool. Had a little bit of a deeper voice. I could kind of get that echo thing going, like on those old Dean Martin records that they tape right down the street at Capitol Records. Um, well, I couldn't have a dick on my fucking nose where my nose is. I mean, that would just be horrific. Dude, your face is what you want to protect. Anything else, you, you know, the face comes first. You can't have a dick on your face. You just can't do it, you know. You couldn't even join the circus because it'd still be considered like, like, uh, um, not crude, uh, Pervert it. Kids couldn't see it. So what the fuck am I going to do with that? You, you know, you can't even go to Times Square because they closed up all those weird... Does Coney Island even exist? There's, there's no way to go with that, okay? But if you had a dick that talked, uh, yeah, I'd just put a piece of tape. I'd have to gag it every morning. Um, but you know what I like about that? I immediately assume that the dick would be trying to sabotage what I'm doing. I view everything as a heckler. Even my own cook. All right, hey. Fucking grapes over hollow. <laughs> that was fucking funny. See, Norn could be followed in a roast. Greg Geraldo. <laughs> There's too much heat for Norton. Fucking Eddie Ifs in the room now. How you doing, man? 
Fucking Jack Ruby has a better television career than you. The fucking horse's head in The Godfather 2 did better in the business. Godfather 1, 2, shut the fuck up. <laughs> One or two gives a fuck. They got the fucking joke, okay? <laughs> fucking Norton doesn't take shit from anybody unless it lands on his chest. <laughs> no one's calling you. <laughs> fucking Keith. What a fucking zero he is. More comics have passed Keith Robinson in this business than the last place runner in the New York Marathon. Okay. Why does everybody groan when you do a Keith Robinson joke? They like Keith? Fuck him. Sell out. <laughs> Fuck Keith. They love him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> our next act come to the stage. I guess you would call him Kathy Griffin without tits. Billy Burr. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Keep it going for Rich Voss, everybody. Come on, everybody. And for those of you who saw Last Comic Standing, how about a round of applause for the official end of his fucking career? Come on, everybody. <laughs> Rich, that was the, the worst fucking show I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe you said yes to that. Fucking Al LaBelle turned down that show. <laughs> Jesus, it's fucking unbelievable. He's been in this business 39 years. He's competing with open micers. You didn't even fucking stand out. You should have looked like Christ. You didn't look like Christ. You didn't even look like a comedian. You look like a fucking landscaper who's just trying the shit out on a whim. But you're dumb. You deserve it. Look at Rich. Rich spent three grand on a watch and eight dollars on his teeth. Look at him. He looks like fucking John Elway. He's a football player from 20 years. These can't all be gems, people. There's a decent line, right? Maybe if you didn't spit on somebody every 20 seconds... You get a fucking deal, man. Look at that thing. That's not a bridge. It's a fucking dam. <laughs> Something. All right, let's move on, because that's dying. All right, Vanessa Hollingshead is here, everybody. Uh, Vanessa, I've seen you for like the last seven years. I got one question asked about your act. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no one cares about your stupid characters. Just talk about your dick and get off the stage. <laughs> Too mean, it's a roast. Fuck all of you. All right, thank you. It's getting worse, people. I'm starting off with the cute ones. All right, I just got back from the uh, Mike Birbiglia's one-man show called An Evening with Todd Barry. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Todd Barry, little advice. Maybe if you brought the energy up just a little bit, you could get a food spot at the cellar. <laughs> Oh, and speaking of the cellar, Manny and SD just wrote a book called How Dare You Work Another Club. <laughs> Keith Robinson wrote the foreword. I'm going to read some of it. No, Matt, I won't be working no other club. <laughs> Bring it up, Modi, boss. Bring it up, Modi. <laughs> Coming up the stairs, boss. Coming up the stairs. <laughs> Unfucking believable. Keith Robinson sold his soul for free nachos and buffalo wings. <laughs> just fucking around. I tease the Comedy Cellar. I love the Comedy Cellar. You know what I love about the Comedy Cellar? I love the wide variety of acts that they have on their weekends. <laughs> on Saturday, we have four wonderful shows. At 7 o'clock, we have Tom Papa, Greg Giraldo, Nick DiPaolo, and Colin Quinn. At 9 o'clock, we have Nick DiPaolo, Colin Quinn, Greg Giraldo, and Tom Papa. At 11 o'clock, we have Nick DiPaolo, Colin Giraldo, fucking Who Gives a Fuck, and Alan Havey. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. I got one question. Who the fuck is Alan Havey? <laughs> Every six weeks I get that. I'd love to give you more spots, but Alan Havey is in town. <laughs> oh, well, shit, let's clear the fucking schedule. <laughs> Alan Havey is in town. Jesus Christ, by any chance did he bring Mark Cohen with him? <laughs> <laughs> it's a roast, man. I'm letting it go. You like it? Beautiful, beautiful. All right, fuck all of you, because this is still, we're at the halfway point. All right, I worked with the Sklar Brothers recently. I got one question for the Sklar Brothers. Do they both have to be up there? Is there any reason for both of them? Can't one of them just recite that awful material? Awful. And God, they're ugly. 
They're the answer to the question, what would happen if Jeff Ross fucked Mel Brooks? <laughs> I was talking about the Sklar Brothers. All right, uh, Tom Papa, I don't know if he's here. Tom Papa has a new show coming out this fall. Evidently, it takes place inside of Jerry Seinfeld's ass. <laughs> Orny Adams lives in the prostate and it's called Who Are These People Love My Ass? <laughs> what are you guys all getting a fucking guest star on it? You fucking sellouts? I make fun of him. He has a deal. Uh, <laughs> where do you go from here? A couple more bridges. Colin Quinn is still here. God bless him. Colin, come on. Round of applause for the one celebrity who showed up here tonight. God bless him. Colin, I just have one question for you. Why are you still fucking here? You're at least twice as old as anybody here. No one cares about your take on the war in Iraq. And even if we did, we couldn't understand what the fuck you're saying, you fucking mushmouth hack. If you're going to keep doing spots, at least take a fucking speech class. Somebody, you got your own show. Why are you still here? What do you think? Are you that tough crowd's like a stepping stone? You're 58 years old. This is it for you. It's not going any higher on the road like Gallagher too, except instead of smashing the watermelons, he's going to eat them. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, which brings me to this tub of shit. Patrice O'Neal. What I've loved about him is he's fat and arrogant. It's the oddest combination I've ever seen in my life. Like, he refuses to do comic view. He actually feels that he's above it. I will not do comic view. Patrice, your whole act is perfect for that show. You do 11 minutes, you pretend to talk about Russia, and then you do 52 minutes of pussy jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't do comic view? I mean, Patrice, you're so calm. You got a deal for your own TV show. You blew all your money on a pinky ring, a used Cadillac, and football jerseys. <laughs> and you won't do comic view? Patrice, you are comic view. <laughs> Why didn't you at least get your fucking teeth fixed? <laughs> Trish, you have the worst teeth in entertainment. None of them match. I worked in a dental office for five years. I've never seen anybody with a molar in the front. <laughs> you have no business having a headshot. Howard Feller called. He wants his old teeth back. <laughs> Look at the space between his front teeth. He looks like a fat 50 cent. Four fifty cent. <laughs> I'm just fucking with them. <laughs> I do. I gotta do a disclaimer. I'm getting the most fucking groans here. And Patrice is fat. Patrice has that awful fat person bad breath where you don't know if it's coming. The smells coming from his mouth or one of the folds in his neck. <laughs> Patrice's breath smells worse than Jim Norton's chest. <laughs> Patrice. I make fun of Patrice only because I'm jealous of his career. Seriously, he's doing great. He just booked the lead in the, to the sequel to Mighty Joe Young. <laughs> Patrice, you really do. You really do look like an out-of-shape gorilla. You look like that gorilla at the zoo that doesn't want to fuck anymore. All right, I was playing with all of you. God bless all of you. I love you, Patrice. i for 10 years. Seriously, man. I do anything for you. Thank you. Billy Burr. Billy. Uh, Billy, no, he, he's not going next. He doesn't just fucking walk in like he's a celebrity and go next. No, let Lingo. No, fuck him. The SC doesn't care if you get back to the club. Calm the fuck down. They're here. Shut up. I can't see you. Fucking a big hand for Billy Burr. Uh, got, what's that? Oh, Billy went up. Look at Billy. Look at Billy. He's shaking. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Manny. I'm sorry, Esty. Sit down. Hey, stupid, sit down. You are done. Just thank God you didn't trash anybody at BBQs or you wouldn't be working this weekend. <laughs> Fucking Billy, look at him—he's he's so fucking happy. Surprised you came up here without your FUBU clothing. 
fucking failed in both fucking. I, was, oh, no, I, I didn't say it. <laughs> oh shit! I saw Johnny Lambert. How you doing, man? When did you get back into comedy? <laughs> Jesus Christ, talk about relics. That fucker looks up to D.F. Swedler. <laughs> to listen on Spotify, click the link below. Let me tell you about my little Vegas trip here. Came in a day early, and uh, Jim Norton is a huge UFC fan, and I didn't even realize that there was a fight this weekend. So, uh, you know, Joe Rogan, a fellow comedian, he actually hooked us up with these awesome tickets. And uh, I went down and I watched the, uh, watched the was it, UFC 32? 132, I'm sorry. With Uriah Faber fighting uh, some guy, Cruz. I don't know the fucking names. There's only so many sports I can pay attention to. But I got to tell you something. Uh, you got to go to one of these UFC things. And just especially if you're actually in the performing arts on any level, you know. And as much as you think it's badass to be in a band or it's badass to be a comedian, or maybe to be a fucking, uh, I don't know, a fucking professional football player. There is nothing more badass than when Bruce Buffer does your goddamn intro, and you come in not wearing a shirt to just fucking throw down with another fucking human being. It's It was just, I never felt like such a bitch in my life. I just remember just going like, I do I really think that I'm some sort of badass doing stand-up comedy? And not to mention, if you're a fan of the UFC, this is another reason why you have to come out and see one of the live events. Is as badass as Bruce Buffer sounds. For those of you who don't watch, uh, he does all the announce, uh, all the uh, intros for the fighters. Um, as badass as that guy sounds on TV, it, there's nothing like seeing that guy live. He is unfucking believable. He was so good. I was sitting there, Doug Benson. He was actually there, not to name drop a bunch of comics, but we just started laughing. The, he was so good, and we just laughing at like the intros, like the average intro that you get at like a college gig. You comedian. He's been on Comedy Central, and David Letterman. His name is Bill Burr, and here he is. That's what you'll get at like a college. Or you go to a comedy club, it's a little more professional. They'll be like, hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Punchline in Atlanta. How's everybody doing tonight? Yay! Oh, come on. You guys can do better than that. It's Friday night. I said, how's everybody? Yeah! That's, that's the best we get. Dude, Bruce Buffer. I, I, I don't even want to try and imitate. I'm going to embarrass myself, but he's just like... He just comes out. He has a sound, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. And everybody's just like, what the f***? You're just fucking looking at the ring. Fighting. And he just fucking re He just goes right through their credits. He's fucking pointing at him in every fucking thing that they've done in his career. He's like enunciating. He's getting his body into it. The fucking fighters are bouncing on either foot. I got amped up. I'm not even fighting. I'm sitting out in the fucking crowd. For half a second, I thought I knew how to fight. It was unbelievable. I thought I had a belt in something. It was fucking... It was the shit. And then, like, every fight I saw was great. The second I walked in, I saw, like... Uh, I think I saw six fights. Five of them either ended in knockout or TKO. And, uh... I'm so bad with the names. What's his face? Uh... Was it Vanderlei Silva? He got knocked out by this dude with red hair in and, and 20, 27 fucking seconds. And after the dude with the red hair knocked him out, or dyed red hair, you know, uh, he's a spy um, in my world. Uh, <laughs> he fucking knocks this guy out. And if you see the look on his face when he was flexing after he did it, it was one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen in my life. Once again, you just look at the guy, and as every guy always thinks, every guy has a, has a, has a nightmare of, could, could I survive in prison? That guy does not have that nightmare. That dude, unrapeable. That's the highest level belt <laughs> that you can get in martial arts. Oh, speaking of which, somebody knocked out somebody. I don't know what the, I can't remember. They started to blend together. And at the end of the fight, after he won, he got his blue belt. 
He said, yeah, I just got my blue belt in whatever discipline. And I was laughing, going like, you know, something like that's legitimately earning a blue belt as opposed to the blue belt that you get as a fucking accountant rolling around on some mat in a goddamn strip mall. This guy fucking just fought on pay-per-view and got a blue belt, not even a black belt. I don't know. It was unbelievable. It was, it was just an amazing thing. And uh, I want to thank Joe Rogan once again for totally hooking, uh, hooking me up. I'll thank him from Jim Norton, uh, Club Soda Kenny, and everybody else who came out. It, just, it was awesome, man. It was awesome. And then seeing Rogan come in, he's so fucking ridiculously good at it. Ask all the questions, you know, you want to you wanna hear the answers to. And it was, uh, it was great. The only other fight I had ever been to, I went to a Miguel Cotto fight at uh, Madison Square Garden. And it was, you know, it was a non-title thing, and I didn't know a lot of the guys underneath and Michael Buffer wasn't doing the announcements so you know they just had one of those old guys ladies and gentlemen welcome to world famous Madison Square Garden back in the day amazing fights used to happen here but tonight you will not see those um a non-titled event it was awesome man it was uh so I highly recommend it if you haven't rent uh if you haven't gotten the pay-per-view definitely check it out even though I kind of ruined what a couple I told you know I guess I gave the results of a few of them. I really am a dope. Well, fuck you. The air conditioning is not on here. So, anyways, how far into this podcast am I? Recently, my girl took me to a uh, street fair, right? They close off the block, right? They close off the block. There's like shawarma. There's like shit made out of buttons, right? People with no teeth are making keychains, you know? It's a typical girlfriend idea. It sucks, and it's going to take all Saturday, right? I literally walked like two, three tables away. There's this lady standing there with this big table and nothing but muffins, right? She's got this big stupid, eh, look at the muffins I made, look in her face. And the second I saw that shit, that part of my brain was just like, dude, what would happen if you just came up and just said, hey, lady, are these your muffins? Oh, yeah? I just started going fucking, bam, 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 bam. Like, how many of these muffins could I mush before anybody did anything? I mean, realistically, I think I could have got the whole table because even if you saw me doing that shit, it would take at least five to six seconds to process. Like, did they say you could do that? Is it, is it like a game? Do you eat the muffin off your fist? That just seems like a waste of pastry. You know, dude, there's no security and shit like that. There's no dude standing there. He's mushing the muffins. Okay, I'll, I'm on it. <laughs> Sir, we're going to have to ask you to leave. They just... So I just started thinking of the horrified, fucked up look in this lady's face as I started slamming these muffins. And out of nowhere, I just started laughing like a maniac. I'm like slumped over this fried dough card, I'm dying. My girl looks at me, and she's like, what the hell are you laughing at? And like an idiot, I actually tried to explain this fucked up thought to her. Like she was gonna get it on some level, right? I'm just sitting there like, I was just thinking, what if I started punching the muffins? You know what I mean? I just started punching him. And she's just looking at me like, why do I go out with you? All right, I'm out of time. You guys were awesome. Thank you so much. Did you guys see the the beatdown at McDonald's where that dude was standing there and these two ladies came into the McDonald's. It's the one right down there on, uh, uh, you get off the West 4th Street, E-Train, right there down in the village. You know, two blocks over, Joe's Pizza. That's a good slice of pizza. All right, right as you come out of there, Spike Lee's probably filming people playing basketball and handball, going, yo, this is New York City. All right? I trashed him on Twitter yesterday. He was talking shit about my Boston Celtics. You know, so I, I said something, but I kept it funny, hoping that he would still put me in one of his movies, you know, and I could either play a, a, a complete nerdy white guy who doesn't understand black people or an over-the-top racist. <laughs> Um, anyways, I give a fuck. Get me in a movie. I'll do it. So anyways, that McDonald's down there. So these two ladies, they walk into the McDonald's, okay, and they try and buy a goddamn 
Big Mac and a Happy Meal, and they, they, they throw a $50 bill on the counter. Right there, major red flag. Who the fuck pays f for McDonald's with a $50 bill? Who even has $50 and is going to go into McDonald's? Nobody. There's not been a $50 bill in McDonald's since they started that fucking place. So these ladies try to pass this 50, and the guy behind the counter, he starts looking at the 50, and he's like, excuse me, ladies, I don't think that this is real. So they go, listen, motherfucker, you better give us a goddamn fish filet and uh, whatever, quarter pound with cheese, and give us our fucking change, or we're going to fuck you up. And he said, um, I don't think so. And then this girl just hauls off and slaps the guy. Slaps him, and then the other one, and then she climbs up over the counter. Now, the other one just starts just really slowly just walking around the counter like, well, I guess we got to fuck this guy up. This is what we do. And the guy backs up into the later area. And I don't know where the fuck he found this goddamn lead pipe. It was like a cart. You know, like a, in the cartoons when Bugs Bunny would just sort of, you know, he'd be standing sideways. You'd have a side view. And he'd have a problem, and he would just turn to, to, to the blind side, and all of a sudden he'd have a giant hammer, and he'd hit Elmer Fudd over the head, and you'd be like, where the fuck did that come from? Was that leaning up against his right rabbit leg, and I didn't see it? How did Elmer Fudd not fucking see it? Huh, with that gigantic head of his, how did he not view that as a threat? This guy did the real-life version of that. He was backing up, backing up, and he was next to some French fries, and next thing you know, he's got this lead pipe. Oh, and he just fucking starts wearing these girls out with it. Bam, bam, bam. I got to give it up to those girls. They took a good three, four each, and then they disappeared <laughs> under the counter. And he just keeps fucking hitting them. Bam, bam, bam. And this lady's going, stop it, stop it, stop it. And he just keeps fucking going like a fucking... Like, this bitch is screaming. It's like a, those little doggy toys. You know those little doggy toys that squeak? That ee -ee? You know, they make those little noises. You know why dogs get so excited? Because it sounds like a fucking animal dying. And it, and, it, and it taps into their wild animal side. So this bitch is thinking she's helping shit. She should have been like, excuse me, is that something you really want to do? Instead, she's going, stop it! Stop it! And this guy's he just fucking, he won't stop hitting him. Will not. Stop fucking hitting them. All right? So, you know how this shit works. Fucking two ladies attack a guy. Doesn't make a difference. They can sit there and slap you around like you're a fucking cartoon. You're supposed to be like, um, they're women. I need to respect them. This guy said, fuck that. Fuck that. And like Bugs Bunny uh, turned to the side and there was this magic lead pipe and he fucking kicked the shit out of both of them. So, of course, he gets arrested for assault, um, and I got to admit, I was totally supporting what he was doing through the first 37 hits. <laughs> it's the last 19 that I'm just like, all right, all right, okay, okay. Neil was saying he actually uh, was like that dude in Drive when he stomped that kid's, that guy's head in in the elevator. He kind of went to that level. But at the end of the day, I'm like, well, that's why you don't go around slapping people in the fucking face. Because they might have gone to magician school and they know how to magically have a fucking goddamn lead pipe out of nowhere. All right, so this guy's going to trial, and I'm thinking there's no fucking way. Then you find out this dude actually has a record. This guy went to jail for manslaughter. All right? And he got out. And there's only two places that you can get a job after you've gone to jail for manslaughter. You can either get into show business... Or you can work at McDonald's. <laughs> All right? You can't get a job at fucking Macy's. There, there is a glass ceiling. When you go to jail for fucking manslaughter, that's it. Unless your dad owns a company, you can get into sales. You can sell somebody a fucking piece of shit car, but you're not selling a Mercedes. You're going to be at uh, Sam's Hot Car Lot down the street. Right? Reservoir Dogs, anybody? That's why right there, okay, before I even continue talking about this story, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is why you don't walk around 
slapping perfect strangers in the face. It's because you don't know their backstory. You don't know what they've done. You don't know what they're capable of doing. This is a guy who already took somebody's life. And you're looking at him like, oh, hey, what's up there, Mick French Fry guy? Take this 50 or I'm going to slap the shit out of you. And you don't realize that this guy has been in fucking prison. All right? He probably knows how to turn that piece of paper with Ulysses S. Grant, turn that into a fucking shank somehow. He figured out how to fucking do it. You know what I mean? So, these two ladies get an unbelievable life lesson in why you can't walk around acting like you're some action hero in real life. So anyway, so it goes to trial, and I can't fucking believe it. I'm like, there's no way this guy's not getting convicted. He's fucking, he's a guy. He beat down two women with a fucking pipe. He went above and beyond with this shit, and he has a record. It's fucking over, right? It's over. He's not rich. You know, it's over. This guy is going to jail. I can't fucking believe it. He got off. The guy got acquitted. So for once on the podcast, I'm actually happy. And I can tell you this. If they convicted him of a lesser charge because he just kept hitting them, (laughs) I wouldn't have been mad because I would have been like, dude, they were down. They were fucking down and they were down and then they were part of the tile and you were still fucking hitting them. Um, We have this clip, by the way. Um... On uh, 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 the MM podcast page has now been turned over. The new fan page is just billbird.com. You just go to my podcast page. Um, and anyways, we'll have the video up there and all that shit. So anyway, sh- um, he got off and they charged the women with shit. And I don't think that they're getting off. They'll probably get lesser because they're because they're women. You know what I mean? And that's just women always get less time, it seems. You know? Because at the end of the day, the judge thinks, well, maybe if I give them a little less time, they'll come over here and blow me under my robe. I don't know what the deal is. Hey, have you guys seen this YouTube video? My name is John Daker. You got to watch this thing. I apologize because it's going to be in your fucking head for the rest of time. I'll, I'll, I'll post the, um, the video um, to uh, my, my Twitter account. He's singing... He's singing Amore, and he can't remember how to sing. Listen. It's Amore. What? Bells will ring, ting-a-ling-ling, ting-a-ling-ling, and the bell ring, Amore. I can't stop watching this guy. This guy, I swear to God, I think it's his first TV gig. Somebody was sick, I think they say at the beginning. So this guy fills in, and if you look at him, he's literally having an outer body experience. So it's so funny to me because I can relate to this person because the first time I did stand-up, I felt like I was watching myself. I fucked everything up. And this guy, just the way he says his name, it's almost just, he says like, my name is John Dacre. (laughs) It's like, it's like he was out. I think that might be my favorite part of the video is the, when this fucking guy just, the way he says his own name. He didn't say, my name's John Daker. He goes, my name's John Daker. I, can't, oh, I did it right the first time, and I just fucked it up. You, you got to hear this. You got to hear this fucking guy. He says he's singing all these Jesus songs. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> That's the funniest shit ever. My name's John Taker. It's like he's watching his life. Like he already died. And then he came back and he just got to Like he first time he ever realized my name my name is John Taker. That's my fucking name and this is my life and I'm on TV and I'm gonna sing this song. This is what I did with my life. You look at the guy, fucking poor bastard. Um. Anyways, 
it's D-A-K-E-R. If, you, if you're just listening now and you want to fucking watch it at work. Um, oh, my God. Listen to him sing Alleluia. Oh, there but for the grace of God. This fucking guy would be the most interesting interview ever. Just like, he's one of the most fascinating people I've ever seen. Like, what the, what is going on in between those fucking ears right now? I, I think if they could, if you could make a show about his fucking thoughts, you know, all these fucking movies. Oh, it's, yeah, you know, they show the movie, but it's done in reverse. And then they try to fucking flip you out. Nothing. Nothing Pink Floyd could ever fucking write can match what's going on in this guy's head. Highly recommend it. All right. Let's read, um, let's read some, a uh, little bit of advertising here. Um, bells will ring, ring a ding a ding, that's a more. Um, where the fuck is the goddamn? My name is John Dacre. All right. Captain America, everybody. Hey, Billy Bruce Banner. I don't imagine you're send, spending your free time reading comic books. Yeah, I, I can't get into them. I really like the way they're drawn, though. Um, and I also, like, the superheroes always have, like, fucking... They have, like, the hottest girlfriends. At least the ones that I read. Spider-Man's girlfriend was fucking ridiculous. Jesus Christ. The fucking titties, ass, and legs. I mean, she was, she was fucking amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful goddamn woman. Um, that's why I don't like the movies. You know what I mean? Because now, nowadays, they, they, they got to make sure they, they can't go too fucking pretty now. Or else all the fatties get fucking upset. Yeah, that's an impossible image. I go to the fucking gym. Do I fucking cry when Brad Pitt takes his shirt off? Maybe I do, but I don't tweet about it. <laughs> all right, I don't imagine you spending your free time reading comic books, Bill, but I thought I'd share some news with you, man. Uh, it was revealed months back uh, the Captain America was actually a Hydra spy all these years. Hydra is basically the Nazis. What? All right. It was assumed that they would write it in that he was actually, he wasn't actually a spy this whole time, but was pretending to be. Well, this month they decided to make it so that Captain America is and has always been a bad guy. The story el elements they are adding are trash, so it's not even a cool twist. Oh, I love. Oh, is there anything better? Is there anything better than the, than the fucking the pissed off comic book reader with the direction they're taking the story? You like that fucking Dolores Claiborne, whatever the fucking name is, uh, Misery, whatever the hell her name was. This isn't how it should end. I, well, what else are they supposed to do? He's been a good guy for a hundred fucking years. And I'm going to tell you right now, you fucking comic. I'm not, I'm, am I even going to read the rest of this? You guys have, I, I, you know, out of respect, I'll read the last few sentences here. He goes, I'm not a staunch Republican. Where the fuck did my screen go? I'm not a staunch Republican or a wild Southerner. I'm just a guy who is tired of this self-hating trend. What's with people hating tradition so much that they can't stand a hero just being a hero? Oh, I see. You went in a different direction. This is good why I read it. Okay. I think you'd like some of the newer comic titles. Pictures and words and some good stories. <laughs> Makes for an easy, stimulating read. Just don't read Captain America. Love you. Love Nia. Congrats on the little lady. Thank you. Um, sir, what you're dealing with here is money. That's why they're doing it. They have exhausted every fucking possible story storyline you know what i mean like you remember the brady bunch when they had to bring in oliver right remember like remember happy days like after a while like ron howard he did he just left it's just like there's nothing left to do with this character i'm out of here and all of a sudden fonzie started wearing suits and he was teaching a mechanic class he became a teacher this fucking hooligan riding a motorcycle next thing you know he's pulling up in a station wagon teaching this fucking guy with blonde hair how to fucking tune a carburetor. He's actually helping them with their problems. All of a sudden, it became like, welcome back, Carter. It's because they, they were out of ideas. The, it had run its course. And I, I hate to tell you this, but Captain America has run its fucking course. 
All right? They're going to get themselves out of this. All right? They'll do the classic thing that, you know, it wasn't actually the real Captain America. It was fucking somebody else. But the thing is, dude, um, you, who you should really blame is, is Al Gore. He's the reason that this is all going down. Because as we all know, Al Gore invented the Internet. He said it himself. He said it himself, and he, he said it again. All right, the man invented the Internet. And the Internet, you know, gave birth to fucking Napster, which gave birth to all of these things where people could watch movies and shit for free right napster obviously was music but the other shit people go on pirate bay they just watch all these movies for free so what happened was that killed the the fucking 30 million to 70 million dollar movies like they just went away so then everything became either super fucking cheap or a hundred million dollar superhero fucking movie where it's like all right we're going to just spend all this money and people are going to go because they're going to want to see special effects in you know at the movie screen that's what happened so and they made nine thousand of these fucking movies and um there's nowhere else to go with them i think they made a couple of captain america movies didn't they i don't fucking know but now what they're going to do is they're going to set this up that now this guy is actually a fucking nazi you know and uh who was doing all this great stuff in america i don't understand he was like saving children while spying on us? I don't know. They're, they're, they're somehow going to try to explain all of that shit. I have no idea. But eventually he's going to fight Batman. All right? We all know that Batman has one professional fight under his belt. And he's 0 for 1. Right? He lost to Superman. So before he gets another shot at the title, I think he has to fight somebody else. Who's he going to fight? You know, it can't be Lex Luthor and, and, and fucking the octopus guy. I mean, those guys, they're played out. All right? They're all punch drunk. Spider-Man's been fucking them up for years. They, they need somebody new. So this is the only way to go. All right? I, I would be surprised if Vince McMahon does not sue them for this storyline because he did this with Hulk Hogan like 50 times. You know? You knew Hulk Hogan was... was you knew when he was the bad guy I loved because he would dye the side of his beard. He would dye that fucking black. And then he would have the fucking blonde mustache. Which, by the way, I thought looked really cool. He had a great fucking Fu Manchu. He still does. Do um, you ever see a guy go bald more gracefully than that? He just kept pushing it back like Richard Rawlings. And every time he did it, it was a little further back. You know? And he started wearing the fucking... The scarves. It always come off. And he, I don't know. Tanned his head up. He looked great. Yeah, it was fucking raining out. This is one thing I've learned. That when you go to a football game and you're dealing with the elements... This is the more of a douchebag you look like, the warmer you're going to be. All right. I saw the rain and I said, fuck this. And we went right to Dick's Sporting Good. And I'm like, I'm buying that fucking I'm going to buy a raincoat with the matching raincoat slacks. I don't give a fuck. I bought a pair of uh, wool socks and I was good to go. So I'm with Verzi and, you know. They only had like two raincoats left, and they were the exact same color. This fucking grape slush puppy purple. So we both have matching extra large fucking jackets. <laughs> we got the jackets and the pants like we're working at a fucking airport. And we're, and we're bringing in the fucking soul plane, right? That was a purple airplane, right? That's what we look like. So we show up to the game, right? Neither one of us is comfortable because neither one of us is a Jets or a Bills fan, so we're in enemy territory. And uh, it's fucking drizzling out. It's fucking cold. So I proceed to put on this Barney the Dinosaur outfit, right? And right off the bat, Verzi starts punking out, going, man, I'm just going to wear the I'm just going to wear the top. I'm just going to wear the top, trying to act like it's not raining out that bad. The reality is, is he didn't want to go through the hazing that he would have to if the two of us walked in with our purple on purple fucking raincoats times two. We would have got a ton of shit, and I was prepared to take it. I had a, I had a whole fucking silly walk I was going to be doing. I, had, I don't give a fuck. So he punked out. So uh, we end up walking in, but my head's cold, right? All I have is a baseball cap on, so I'm like, fuck, I got to buy a hat. Can I buy a Bills? Who gives a fuck? They're in last place. Maybe I'll buy a Bills hat. And then I saw this, this one with a Patriot logo on it. I said, fuck it, I'll get that one. So I put that one on. I'm nice and warm. 
We go to Will Call. We pick up our tickets. We go into that high school football stadium that they have out there that I actually love. Looks like an old school football stadium. You know what I like about that football stadium? That's about the size of a football stadium that holds real fans. You know what I mean? All these these new ones that hold like 100,000 fucking people. That's all the bandwagon shitheads. You know, when you're 0-4, the real fucking fans show up. Or 0-3, right? So we walk into the goddamn stadium. We're loving life, right? I'm already laughing at Verzi because I know damn well what's going to happen. He's going to walk out there. There's going to be some shitty little plastic seat that's going to be covered in fucking water. And the only way he's going to be able to absorb it is through his goddamn jeans and his fucking BBDs. And then he's going to be sitting there with a wrinkled up nutsack that's going to be getting hypothermia by second quarter. Why do I know this? Because I've been there. So we get a couple of beers. We get this fucking beef on a stick or whatever the fuck they call it. We're good to go. We go in there, sit down. He sits basically down in a fucking puddle. He tried to stick a newspaper down, which is uh, very absorbent. And uh, I don't know. We sat there, and I had hope for about eight seconds in that game, and the Jets came down and just fucking – they just kicked the shit out of him. Christ, they kicked the shit out of him. And uh, it was just over. So we, So immediately our solution is just to start drinking the way we drank at the Masters. We're like, fuck it. Let's, let's, let's get going here, right? So – we're making trip after trip, and all of a sudden, I got to take a piss, right? So I go, and I'm standing in line, and all of a sudden, this, this fucking six-foot-five, goofy-looking jackass, one of those guys who's like six-foot-five, but you still think you can take him because he's just covered in baby fat, you know? He's got a couple of whiskers on his chin, and his cheeks are rosier than St. Nick, right? And he's got this jersey on. And this big, stupid, I'm a Buffalo Bills fan with the horns on it and stuff. You know, he's the wacky guy. So I'm not even thinking shit, right? This is Bills Jets. I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm not talking any shit. I'm fine. I forgot I was wearing my Patriots hat. And all of a sudden, this big, goofy jackass starts going, what's with your hat? Were you a Patriots fan? Are you like the Rats? We got a rat over here, the rats. He likes the fucking rats and the shit, right? And I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. He starts giving me shit. I start giving him shit back. And then the weirdest fucking thing happened. I, by the time I get in to the actual men's room, I've talked, I've given these people so much fucking shit that actually there's Bills and Jets fans at a Bills and Jets game. They're playing each other. They stopped giving each other shit, and they teamed up together and started giving me shit, right? And then I just said, I don't know what I was thinking. I felt like I was on stage because it was like a crowd. I wasn't thinking like, hey, you know what, Bill? You really haven't had a fight outside of your family since maybe playing fucking street hockey in the sixth grade. I didn't give a fuck. I'm in a goddamn bathroom waiting to take a piss in a goddamn trough, by the way. And, uh... And then they just started giving, oh, fucking this one dude starts going, Tom Brady sucks dick. He sucks dick. And he's like miming it like ridiculously well. So I'm like, hey, you know, buddy, you do that real well. He goes, I learned it by watching Tom Brady. I'm like, oh, yeah, did you rent that porno, you fucking fag? Gets a little uglier. Gets a little uglier. Then this other dude, what the fuck? did I can't remember what the hell he was saying to me. And I just said, look, I'm sorry you guys have never won a Super Bowl. You know? Then the Jets fan pipes in. I go, do you realize the last time you guys won a Super Bowl, Charlie Chaplin was still alive? Do you understand that? Do you know what cars look like the last time you won, you fucking morons? And then uh, then this other guy goes, dude, we've won three Super Bowls. I'm sorry, right? And then the guy goes, well, you didn't play in the games. I go, neither did you. Then he's just standing there with this dumb look on his face. I go, that's right. Keep staring forward. You got nothing. Forgetting that I don't know how to fight. So all of a sudden, it's my turn to piss. I take my dick out. I'm ready to piss. And one of these fucking pussies pushed me in the back, hoping that I was pissing at the time. Fortunately, I wasn't. So I turn around. I put my dick away because I'm a gentleman. I said, well, you, you, I go, is that how you guys do it out here? Really? I go, which one of you guys push me? Like I'm, gonna fu- like I'm fucking Jackie Chan. And for some reason, none of them said anything. I don't know if it was my purple on purple raincoat. 
Oh, the look of fire in my eye, but I'm a fucking 42-year-old balding redhead talking shit in there, and none of them said anything. So now it's kind of funny to me. I felt like I was in, like, the World Series of Poker, and I went all in, and I, and I didn't have a hand whatsoever. So I don't know who the fuck pushed me, but that's what, I mean, come on. Bitchiest move of the fucking week. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you, how do you push another man when he's got his goddamn dick out trying to piss into a fucking trough? I mean, how do you get lower than that? Do you guys have any ideas? How do you get lower than that? So then after none of them said anything, I go back and I start taking a piss. And then that other dude who was miming somebody sucking a dick unbelievably well, right? <laughs> he's next to me with one of those stupid hats that has the toggles on the side. And he's still trying to give me shit. And I'm going, ah, go fuck yourself. And then he just starts screaming over and over again. Are you looking at my dick? Are you looking at my dick? Like, maniacally, like five times. I just sort of stared at him like, why do you keep going this, this gay angle? Like, why is there always, uh, I don't know. I think he was one of those guys, he was kind of in the closet. And then, uh, so he just goes to football games and he gets really drunk trying to just kill the feelings. I think he liked me, is what I'm saying. So if he's listening to this, I'm sorry uh, I'm, I'm spoken for. You fucking pansy. You fucking believe that? First of all, what's wrong with me? I really replayed all of that in my head because once I got out of there, I was like, I really started thinking, like, what, what did you think you were going to do in there, there, not Clint Eastwood, yet saying things Clint Eastwood would say? What, what the fuck is wrong with you? Do you, like, I don't know if I've said this before in a podcast. A public bathroom is the worst fucking place to ever get into a fight. There is nothing soft. There's, everything is porcelain, pipes, that concrete floor, and then it has a mist of piss and shit. It's just a fucking it. – it's, it's the worst place ever, you know? Not to mention it usually starts evidently when one person has begun the pissing process. <laughs> So, uh, you know, older, a little bit wiser. So then I'm standing in line to go get some more alcohol because God knows that's what you need after an incident like that. And I was just kind of just sitting there thinking like, all right, now how should I have played that? It, it should have ended when the dude with the water buffalo hat started giving me shit. What I should have done was roll with it. I should, you like the Patriots? I should have been like, yeah, hey, you know, you guys scored 30 on us last week, man. You guys look great, man. I, I, I bet the Jets, I mean, I bet against the Jets. I hope you guys, I should have just ended it with that. Ended it, I, I, sh, I should have I extended an olive branch. That's what I should have done. In the future, that's what the fuck I'm going to do. Because uh, that, was a, uh, that was a potentially ugly situation. But fortunately, um, I think the people who were doing it, you know, had jobs and no one wanted to get sued and no one was willing to take it to that level. Uh, and when I say fortunately, I mean for me and my face. <laughs> oh, do you know how bad that would have been to get stomped in that fucking purple on purple raincoat laying there with my dirty fucking Patriots hat? And my team wasn't even playing. I, I would have lost the lawsuit. They would have been like, let me get this straight. You're a Patriots fan. You wore a Patriots hat to a Bills-Jets game, and you somehow managed to get the shit kicked out of you? What the fuck did you say? You know, that's one of the great things about being a guy is you actually have to take responsibility for your, for your actions. See, a woman would be like, there's no excuse. There's no reason. I don't care what happened. You don't hit a girl. Which is true. You don't hit a fucking girl. But there's no learning in that. There's no lesson. You know? Even my best friends would have been like, yeah, those guys are fucking assholes. And the, but, you know, there would have been an awkward pause. And would have been like, dude, what the fuck are you talking shit for by yourself at a game when your team isn't even fucking playing? What's wrong with you? You're 42 years old. Get your shit together. And they would have been right. All right, overrated uh, relationships. Uh, do I really want to read this one with you? Is here. <laughs> no, no, can you me... come near the microphone and be a I friggin' professional in this unprofessional any... show? I know you're just sitting. Why there with no are you furniture. wearing moccasins? <laughs> this is 
They're my slippers. They're moccasins. Yeah, moccasin slippers. Hiya, hiya, hiya. You got a little Indian wrong. blood in you, don't you? I, do, I don't. Yes, really. you do. I have like one. Let me with you. 16. What do you got? Black something. feet in you? You get it? <laughs> <laughs> nothing? I get nothing on that? That was stupid. You know what? What? Ah, go fuck yourself. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> relationships. So, uh, sure, they can be good. But are they ever great? <laughs> Every married guy I know reminisces about his days as a single man. Married guys warn single guys not to get into relationships. They warn guys with girlfriends to never under any circumstances get married. This is all true. When you're single, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Whatever you want without first... Let me get this closer. Without first filtering your decisions through the desires of a chick who probably doesn't even know what she wants most of the time and is motivated by the worldview of sex in the city. Wow, this person sounds like a real prize. Yeah, but this is true, though. This isn't all women. A lot of women are fucking idiots, just like guys. Wouldn't you say most guys are fucking idiots? I would, actually. And aren't most women, aren't most people fucking idiots? Listen, we're all rapable. But when we're talking. <laughs> All I know is that no one is unrapeable. All okay. right, let's continue. Okay, and I am as exotic as a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be an instant classic. Um, there wasn't even tomato in that sandwich, was there? Um, even when the chicks get uh, what they think they want, they, they're they usually still miserable. That's how stupid most of them are. All right, now you're in. Now he's, 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 this, he's in my school. He's in my quad. I like this guy. Uh, you're never going to make them happy, so why even try? Uh, not being constrained by a relationship is one of the greatest things of all time. It's a man's world. Uh, women need more. Women need men more than men need women. Most men can thrive alone. Most women can't. He's young. You can tell he's young. He hasn't. He hasn't. Like women are still looking at him. He's a fucking idiot, is what he is. No, he isn't. He's learning. Mm -hmm. I, I was this guy. Mm -hmm. Then you realize at some point you're old. And women don't care anymore, so you got to grab one and just hang on to them and drag them down with you. <laughs> um, most women can't. Uh, ask any honest bisexual girl, and she'll like you tell you that she wants to end up with a man. Jesus, this guy just keeps – every time I think he's gone as far as he's going to go, he keeps going. I love him. Uh, enjoy being single. Unless you're a total fucking failure of a man, you'll almost always be able to get a girlfriend if you really want one. Realize, yeah, if you're sick, past a certain age, dude, you, there's a certain amount of money you have to be making uh, for that to continue to happen. And this is, there's a fucking sadness to that life that I can't even begin to describe. Uh, realize what a blessing your freedom is and never allow desperation to put you in chains. He's making some good points here. He, he definitely has some issues with women. Some issues but, with women? Uh, he's, but he's, there's a lot of truth in that, Nia. There and, are, and enjoy dying alone, asshole. Hey, hey, hey. Well, listen, well, this is well, basically what you just said was that you're a dumb girl. Why? Because that's what he was attacking. What do you mean? So is, why is, am I, is your world is your world? Oh, we were almost out without an argument. Why? But why am I dumb? Because he's attacking women whose worldview comes from sex in the city. OK, so somehow you got offended by that. First of all, he's not just attacking women whose worldview is sex in the city. He's oh, I think he is. He's attacking all women. Look at read what he said. Again. Oh, I know. He was just he being. He didn't say some women. He, he was just being silly. He was no, just being silly. No. Ah, you're right. So you're right. Fuck that shit. Fuck it. Look, you know. Fuck you. No, his mother never hugged him. He's got issues. He's well, just, that's not our fault. What do you mean? Don't don't drag me into this. I relate to this guy. I'm saying our as women. I'm speaking as women. Well, right why don't you just speak for yourself, you fucking delusional jackass? Who elected you? You did. I'm sitting here, aren't I? Well, you know, I didn't say to represent all women's. I'm not representing all women's, but I think I can say <laughs> with 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 some, some clarity that most smart women who see this would be like, "Oh, fuck yourself, you douche." All right. Well, I'll, also, uh, can I just make a comment about the whole married versus unmarried thing? The grass is always greener on the other side. Single people who are alone look at couples, and I, I, they get a little twinge of like, oh, that's nice. I wish I had somebody to come home to at night that has my back no matter what. That's what you're missing, you short-sighted moron, is that you've got somebody hey, hey. who's there with you, who's going to take Listen. care of you, who's going to love you and, and protect you and have your back. It's not just about like oh, being with someone just Jesus. to be with someone. <laughs> we got it. Listen. How do you, you? Why can't I respond well, to this person well, do you, in the way do you, that I want to? Because you, you're you're being mean. This podcast. I'm being this mean. This podcast. This email is ridiculous. This guy's crying out for help. 
Ugh. Whatever. Fine. Go on. This podcast is not about being mean and taking shots at people who can't defend themselves. <laughs> I thought that's exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Took you long enough to figure that out. Um, all right. No, but there's, there's, there's a great truth in what he's saying here is that a lot of people just jump in a relationship, jump in a relationship, jump in a relationship, and it's like relationships are fucking difficult. Yes. Okay? So you better pick the right person or you're going to be fucking miserable. So you are better off to be single and lonely rather than just being in some shit to just being some shit so you got somebody to fucking make brownies with. <laughs> that's what he was trying to say. Yeah, that's All right? true, but he didn't say that. He ended up saying that most chicks are going to be miserable anyway, and they all have this stupid worldview. So that's why true. Most women are going to be miserable, and they're never going to be fucking happy. And okay? what are you basing this on? You know something? You guys always say a good man is hard to find. That works both fucking ways. I understand well, that. Then that's, this is what, well, then well, this motherfucker hasn't found the one yet. So he's going, he's going, he's dating so a bunch of... So he's lashing out at, ev at, at everybody because he can't seem to figure out how to make a relationship work. And he can't find the value in the relationship, all, so automatically it's not valuable. First of all, the only person lashing out is you right now. Well, you've I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed at this. completely lost your temper. There's a guy here, he, he writes in, he's looking for a little bit of goddamn guidance. No, he he's wants some advice. for your approval, that's what he He is. got it, he's fucking hilarious. Um... <laughs> <laughs> to listen on Spotify, click the link below. Hey, by the way, I was I was just gonna ask you something. Okay. What were we just talking? I have no memory anymore. What were we just talking about? <laughs> you think you were the one smoking pot? I know. Oh, don't even get them going. <laughs> no, you know what? I only got like I only got like ten emails, and I know there's a ton of people who smoke weed who listen to this. So most people followed the rules, mm -hmm. which was you know was basically uh, you know don't take the podcast seriously, don't right. name any names, all of that shit. Yeah. But no, I had a bunch of people. Uh, yeah. They thought I was on some self-righteous thing because I haven't drank since October. Even though I'm a, I'm a self-admitted uh, booze bag, and even though I said on the podcast, I said I there's nothing wrong with smoking weed. I don't give a shit if you smoke more of it. Right. But my point is, stop acting like it's this like uh, what is the fucking word? Harmless. Not harmless. Just like there's no side effects. Like right, the, right, right. Like yeah. there, there's all this. There's like this is the shit that's out there about weed that the, it's it's not addictive. Mm -hmm. I drive better when I'm on it. How is that? I don't know, dude. It's like everything's in focus, man. <laughs> they hate that voice. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> you know, potheads, pot man. It's like when they drive down the street, man, it's just like not only are you focused on the road, you're taking in nature. <laughs> like all that shit and acting like it's the answer to the, all the universe's fucking problems. That shit. That's all I was talking about. I understand that someone... The same way someone can, you know, enjoy getting fucked up, drinking booze, mm -hmm. and not be an alcoholic, have it under control, but every once in a while, you know, they go out and get ripped up on the weekend. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah and it also has to do with your age, too. If you're in your fucking 20s, you're still getting blasted Friday, Saturday night. That's fine, you know, but you just put the kids to bed, and you're hitting a fucking bong every <laughs> night. I mean, come on. You got an issue. I had, a, I had this dude, right? And that's the thing. This is like... Maybe I'm jealous as, as a fucking booze bag here. It's just nobody gives, like, if you're fucking a pothead, people think it's funny. Right. There's just something that's considered funny about it. But, like, you watch, uh, like, Intervention. Mm -hmm. Okay? They have alcoholics. They, they have people on meth, mm. cokeheads, heroin. They got everything. There's not been one fucking pothead. Because they don't do anything exciting when they're high. When you're is that what it is? You don't do anything exciting. You sit around, you watch TV, you giggle, you eat. Right. And that and, that's, that's, and then that's you know it. what happens? You go and to if movies, you're not and if you're not you know? careful, two and a half decades goes by. Right. And you're in your early 40s and you're going still sitting on the couch. Yeah, still watching fucking <laughs> Snagglepuss eating fucking Doritos. That's the thing. Yeah, that was not, a joke. It's not nearly as a Yeah, it's not nearly as Dramatic and exciting no, as someone who's on meth. There's no mothers against weed, man. <laughs> and there's, there's nobody, like when the cops pull you over, there's no weed breathalyzer. You can be fucking baked out of your mind. What can they do to you? They you, don't have any kind of roadside test to see if you're stoned? I remember they, they, they talked about doing something like that. But those, when they have those roadblocks set up at night, none of it's for weed. All it is is for fucking, it's for fucking booze. Right. Look, this is what kills me, okay? I got an email this week, all right? This guy tells me, he goes, you know, first of all, Mian, 
<laughs> you know, you should read. I just do it because there's a noise. I shit laugh out of every him. time at that. I think it's um, funny. This guy goes, you know, you should probably read up a little bit on weed, man, before you go off on it. And he said that I can smoke three and a half grams of weed and be fully functional and drive a car or operate machinery. What is three? I don't know. I don't know. Look. Three and a half grams. I don't, know, I don't know. I don't fucking know. A joint? Yeah, let's just say it is a joint, which okay. I, think, I think it's a little more than that. Okay. All right. Let's just say it is that. Right. You smoke a joint, you're fucking high. You're, you're high. not you're not fully functional. He's confusing his tolerance with being fully functional. Fully functional is getting eight hours sleep, you wake up stone sober. And even if you want to get to the letter of the law, it's like three nights in a row of eight hours sleep, just in case you only got four nights uh, a few nights ago. For you to totally be 100% and you're eating healthy, that's fully functional. All right? Yeah. Smoking three and a half grams of fucking weed, you're not fully functional. Yeah, you you might have an amazing you. tolerance, but you're not, you're not as good as, as the you at 0.0. .0. That's what I'm saying. Or, or like this, this dude who sends me an email and he goes, yeah, people just, you know, they, they, they definitely abuse weed. He goes, but they're not like me where he goes, I just, I just you, know, uh, you know, I pack a bowl every night before I go to bed, take a couple of puffs, and then I go to sleep. This dude does that every fucking night. Now, what is the point of that? If you're just going to smoke and then go to sleep. Now, I might be ignorant, but to point? me, it sounds like he's using it as like this sedative, like this right, sleep aid. Right, like instead aid. of uh, Ambien or something. Or maybe it's just his way to unwind. I don't know. That seemed every night, though. Which is fine. But it goes back to my point where if I had a couple, I'd have to drink probably like, um, like a couple of beers to get what probably feels like, you know, a couple of puffs of weed, right? Yes? No? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. If I was doing that every night, if every night you were laying here in bed and I would go over here, hey, man, just going to have a couple of Budweiser's and I was sitting here with that fucking happy hat with the straws going in my mouth. Yeah. Wouldn't I'd be you... like, why are you doing this every night? Every night. What's 365 fucking days a year. I would say that to you if you were smoking weed every single night, too. Why do you feel the need to smoke weed every single night? Let me ask you this. What if I only, sm in, to argue the pothead side, what if I only had two beers? Versus? If, well, every night. I, well, I didn't drink at all. But on the weekends, I never got shit-faced. Just every night before I went to bed, I drank two beers. I would think that that was weird. You would think it was weird? Yeah. That's, why, yeah. Are you, why are you so uptight, man? <laughs> <laughs> and I think smoking weed is great. I love to smoke weed. It's, it's fun. But I think smoking every single day is a, a little excessive. And I feel like if you talk to anybody who used to smoke that frequently – and who doesn't anymore, I think they will tell you that they probably feel more motivated or less depressed or something. It does have right. effects on Okay. You. That's all. I, I mean, I was definitely – I went over the top as always because right. that always shakes a few people out of the trees. And then they go, let me tell you something. And they, they fire up the emails, which fuels the podcast. Who's kidding who? But, like, I'm, see, that's, that's all I'm saying is that what I – the thing that I can't stand about fucking weed is, <laughs> is that people act like there's no consequences to smoking it. And if anything – it expands, uh, you know, your, your creativity and all that type of shit. I think it's like anything. Maybe initially it does, but after a while, or maybe if you do it within fucking reason, yes. But I've seen, you know, yeah, up well, close and personal with uh, nameless fucking people. I've watched, you know, I told that story of, of what's-his-face, who I'm not going to say who, who fucking hit the dude with the car at work because he thought <laughs> – <laughs> thought he had it in neutral, but he had it in gear, and he started – he hit the guy in the fucking head. Yeah. And, and he's still – yeah, and yeah. still, he's going, dude, the weed isn't the problem. And it's just – and he gets high every fucking day. I remember one time we went on a road trip just to fuck with him, right? We were driving on this road trip, and he, he goes to, you know, to break out his fucking shit, right? And we go, no, 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 dude, you can't. You can't – it's a rental car. You can't smoke. And he goes, all right, we'll pull over, pull over. Like, dude, we're not pulling over. We're not pulling over. And you're not smoking on this trip. Dude, the fucking panic that he went in. He's like, dude, 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 fucking let me out. Let me out then. I'm done. I'm not going on this road trip. He absolutely lost his fucking shit. Like, and it's be like, you know, if somebody said I, I, I can't drink, if I wasn't driving, I couldn't drink in the car. Dude, don't drink and drive. Be like, all right, dude, you know? Yeah, you fucking goddamn Mary. Fine, I won't. But this guy was like, it was like he was having a physical fucking, he was a panic attack. Right. If he couldn't smoke his fucking weed. Now, I'm not saying everybody who smokes weed is like that. But what I'm saying is that shit is never fucking reported. 
the same way when I when I break your ovaries about the whole uh, like the women image on TV, like they always shown you guys as victims or accomplishing stuff, but they never show the gold digging whore. See, I had you right then until I attacked women. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go. Oh, it was going good. All right. Well, thank you for uh, thank you for stopping by the podcast. Oh, no, sure, anytime. Yeah, you can you can get ready when you have to get here. Uh, yeah, but the... I don't want to. Like I said, I don't want to distract you. And plus, you start picking you heard? on me. Have you heard? That's the real reason. <laughs> yeah. Stop acting what I'm like. What I'm doing here is any sort of an art. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, have have fun tonight, okay? Uh, all right. So back to the damp. So all right. So all you, po- uh, not all you, all you potheads. Just the ten that fucking wrote me in, that wrote me in, that wrote into me. Sorry, the electrolytes again. Um, yeah, I was break, breaking. Can, can, can any pothead out there just be fucking honest with that and at least admit that maybe it isn't you? That at least you've had a fucking friend of yours who like discovered weed, liked it, really liked it, and then it just became their motivation when they got up. All right. This is, I mean, it's, it's fucking unreal to me that the third week in the row on the podcast, I have to act like this person, you know, exists to the world. Everybody knows this fucking guy. All right. But he's never talked about, and I want to know why none of these fucking burnouts are brought on to intervention. That's what I want him to see. Just some kid sitting there past, you know, in a fucking weed fog couple of hacky sacks in the background, his dirty surfer shorts, just fucking toasted out of his fucking mind, and that's all he's been doing for five, six critical years in his 20s. Hasn't finished college. Wake and bake. That guy. Come on. Everybody, I'm sick of it. All that horse shit. It comes from the ground, man. It's fucking annoying. It's fucking annoying, but whatever. I guess I'm becoming too prudish on this podcast. This guy writes, hey, Bill, what the fuck happened? You're bashing hot sluts on South Beach last week. You stopped drinking. You're talking shit about pot like you're fucking Alan Thickey. I didn't know. Does he talk shit about him? About pot, I mean. Uh, you, know, you know that life is a drag. For Christ's sake, you grew up in New England. You know what I'm talking about. Nine months of shitty weather. Your boss is a prick. All you have to look forward to is the weekend to let loose and unwind. I, Dude, I totally get that. I totally get that. I work for myself, and I still want to get bombed out of my fucking tree. Uh, he says, quit talking shit about pot, would you? Pussy, drugs, and alcohol are all good things. Take care, pal. Yeah, dude, I totally agree with that shit, but you know what I'm saying. First of all, if I go down to South Beach and all I do is talk about how hot the women are, That will be informative, that will be obvious, and that will be one minute of the podcast. You know, everybody knows they're hot down there. But if I talk to them, if I say that they're whores and they look like a bunch of goddamn prostitutes walking down the street, that gives me like eight minutes of shit to go off on. All right? Jesus Christ, do I have to break down the whole process for you people? You haven't figured out. It's a very, you know, it's not a lot of levels to this podcast. You give me a topic, I fucking go off on it with very little knowledge. It annoys people who are informed on the subject, and then they send me emails in, and then I just yell at them, even if they've proven their point. That's basically it. Let's plow ahead. Oh, by the way, I've really pissed off a lot of potheads, evidently, on my podcast. They think that I I, I am against smoking weed and that I'm trashing that whole fucking lifestyle. Why don't you guys go take another hit off your fucking blunt and fucking relax, all right? Just because I, I trash that guy who was a pot smoker, I wasn't saying that weed was a bad thing. All right? At this point, with those vaporizers that they have, it's probably fucking ten times healthier than sitting around drinking a six-pack. I don't have a fucking problem. I wasn't talking about smoking weed. I I I was making fun of a loser. I was telling that woman that she was dating a fucking loser. All right? As a man, your job is to go out and fucking provide. You know, and when somebody breaks into your house, not to shit yourself and to grab the nearest blunt object and fucking go brave hard on them. That's what you're supposed to do. You know, me, I would shit myself, lock myself in the bathroom and call 911, of course. <laughs> but I can provide, God damn it. That's what I got a fit fucking pit bull for. Um, 
Speaking of that, I watched No Country for Old Men again, man. What a fucking awesome movie that is. That is just an f- absolutely phenomenal fucking movie. It actually made me sad that we were in Final Descent. That's how good that goddamn movie is. Um, but anyway, so I'll just know that, potheads. I'm not making fun. You know, if I make fun of some guy who's a booze bag, booze bag fucking loser who's sitting around drinking beer all day on the couch, that doesn't mean that I don't think that anybody should drink. All right? So fucking relax. Jesus Christ, I thought you got mellow when you smoked weed. Um, anyways, let's plow ahead. Hey, Pothead, can you guys basically just admit that you want weed to be free just so you can just sit around smoking it and not have to worry about anybody hassling you? You know, <laughs> to use a classic hippie word. Why can't you just admit that and stop telling me about, you know, how the fucking Declaration of Independence was written on hemp and all, all these, you know. I mean, Jesus Christ, you can make a potted plant out of a 40, an empty 40 ounce. I'm not going to sit there and act like I, I don't wish that I, I want to drink in public, right? Dude, my brain shut down seven minutes ago. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. I need to start reading again. Advice. Dear Bill, I've got a few shitty things going on in my life right now that I need to vent about. Also, I would like to hear your advice. Okay, you guys don't need to have fucking intros like that. Just ask me the advice, because then I'll read them and sound like a shithead. First things first, I live in South Carolina, and I think you can guess that that pretty much blows. (laughs) (laughs) I'm 22 years old, and I just graduated from college with a degree in psychology. My job outlook is pretty bleak right now, and I just got laid off from my shitty delivery job. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is going on in this country? This dude has a degree in psychology and he's delivering fucking Entenmann's cakes to supermarkets. And he gets laid off. Um, He goes, I must have applied for at least 30 jobs at this point and I've stopped applying for the ones that I'm underqualified for. uh, And I've started, sorry. And I'm still unemployed. I don't understand why the access of entry into the restaurant industry is so fucking high. I can't even get a job serving because they keep telling me we only hire people with two years of experience yeah well it's the law it's the laws of supply and demand you know if the, if the, we weren't in the middle of a recession you could walk in there with the coming out of prison and they'd let you work the goddamn mesquite grill um yeah i worked in a restaurant there's a bunch of fucking drug guys we, it was such a good economy it was like 1987 Wait a second. That was right after Black Monday. I don't know. Maybe it was the South. I have no idea. I worked at this place called the Sable Cafe in Cary, North Carolina, way back in the day. And uh, we used to have this douche who used to he came in. He was on work release. He was in prison, and they would let him out so he could wash dishes and work his way back. Not wash dishes. He actually worked the fucking cooking line. He was right. above me. Right. I was a busboy slash grill chef slash dishwasher. Because the restaurant was slowly going out of business. And as, Slash hottie. As, uh, oh, <laughs> as, as people, as people gradu- gradually quit, they would fucking, uh, they would just give me their jobs and yeah. an extra 50 cents an hour. And I was like, whoa, I'm raking in the dough. Because I sucked at math. I didn't realize that they were paying me 350 an hour and a grill guy $5 an hour. So they went from paying 850 an hour for two guys to paying me $4 an hour for fucking, I'm a dumb fucking moron. So anyways, and then this douche used to come in, and I remember one time I came walking in the back, and I'm doing three fucking jobs. We were slammed, and I said, oh, my God. I go, we're out of glasses. What the fuck? We're out of glasses. And then this guy in work release goes, well, why don't you wash some? Ah, a novel idea. <laughs> That's what he said. Like he was this fucking renaissance man. <laughs> really? Really there, Shawshank? What the fuck are you doing after work? Huh? Fucking carving a goddamn... Hey, watch all the steak knives. Make sure Cunty over here doesn't take them back with your felon beard. <laughs> you this stupid fucking Almond Brothers facial hair. I fucking cunt. And it still bugs me because I didn't say anything to him. Because I got intimidated, even though I thought I could take the guy. But I was like, this guy's been in prison. You know? He's going to beat me up and then rape me. Fuck it. I think I'll wash some glasses. <laughs> so anyways... um, he goes, if I can struggle through four years of school, then I think I can get the hang of slinging tater skins and onion rings in a few weeks. What is, what is there to learn? Uh, oh, this guy's trying to get a cooking job. Well, a cooking dude, what, job or a serving job? 
Well, I thought he meant like being a waiter, but now it sounds like he's yeah. talking about actually cooking. Yeah, dude, you can't learn on the job at a restaurant. No, you oh, yeah. was was that underdone? I'm sorry. They're not coming, really. Uh, he's uh, no, but he's talking about cooking. He's not because I thought he said he was having a hard time getting a job as a server because that you can learn in like two seconds. No, that's but... what that's what he said. But now all of a sudden he's talking about slinging tater skins and onion rings. I think he just means serving it. Slinging doesn't slinging mean? Uh... Yeah, but wasn't didn't he say earlier that oh, he's geez, trying I've been to get on a, a job? For as three a... minutes, you're already disagreeing with me. So thought... fucking... <laughs> didn't it say earlier that he was trying to get a job Shh. serving? What is there to learning? Let me get back to this. What is there to learn in the second year of restaurant experience that you can't get in the first year or even the first six months? This I agree with. How in the hell am I supposed to get a job? I'm also being cut out from financial support of my family who helped put me through school. If I can't start paying bills, then I'm going to have to move back in with my parents in a shitty small town that is about an hour away from the city I live in. Job outlook there is even worse, and I would hate to move away from my friends and girlfriend. Me and my girl don't live together, but she's offered a lot of needed support, and most importantly, she supports me pursuing comedy. It's my dream to become a comedian, and I can only go so far while I live in South Carolina. Um, no, it isn't. That he can only go so far living in South Carolina as yeah, a comedian? Yeah, the fuck? Oh, you become the next goddamn cable guy. Dude, there's people, there's, I guarantee you, in South Carolina, there's a guy there who's the king of South Carolina, and we've never heard of him. Every state but I've been to. there? Yeah, right. and they fucking make six figures a year. I'm not, I am not. understand what he's saying. Obviously, he doesn't want to be the king of South Carolina. He wants to get into movies and TVs, become a nationally headlining act. I understand what you're saying, but I'm just saying you can make fucking money there. There is money to be made with those drug uh, fucking idiots there. All you got to do, just do a Ric Flair impression. That'll be a closing bit. You'll be fine. <laughs> Um, I would, uh, he lives out there. I would like to move to New York City, but won't be able to do that if I'm not able to save up money. And I definitely won't be able to do that anytime soon because I am awaiting a trial for a DUI I got back in January. This story just keeps getting, like, m unraveled yeah. more and more. Every sentence becomes a something else. That's why country songs are so sad. These people live it. Living in South Carolina. I love my girl's vagina, and I can't get a job washing dishes. Did you just rhyme Carolina I got a with DUI, vagina? <laughs> and I don't know why, because the cop was even drunker than me. <laughs> and uh, the song should be called, I Know I'm Not Ric Flair. Because I know I ain't Ric Flair, and I know I don't bleach my hair. But I got a dream, and would you help me? Get your hand off your gun. I'm starting to get scared. That right with hair? All right, go fuck yourselves. Um, anyways, the trial is this September. Oh my God. And if I lose my license, I will only be set further back from my goals. Yeah, you think? I am trying to... <laughs> Not to mention, I'm growing weed in my apartment. It's a one-bedroom with bay windows, and I think my neighbors are starting to catch on. Uh, I am trying to hone my skills Did he here. Did say that? No. Oh. Jesus. Somebody went out late last night. I'm trying I to hone my tired. skills here, but I can't afford uh, to keep driving to open mics that are at, at least an hour away across the state in North Carolina. By the way, I've stopped drinking irresponsibly, and I'm sorry that this email ran a little long. Respectfully, so-and-so. Got to love how the politeness of the I know. South. At least he's uh, respectful. Yeah. He probably has one of those plantation Kentucky Fried Chicken ties on. Holding on to his lapels. That's a... Uh, Four score and seven years old. Yeah, that's how, they, uh, that's how they get you with the politeness down They get there. you with the politeness. And then they, they do. That's the, uh, that's the, you know, as someone who grew up in the South, I know. Yeah, that's, you they know what that's that called? That's Southern called... Southern hospitality. Yeah. It's masking so, so much. Yeah, so you know much. what that is? That's called the old, uh, that's called the old Stonewall Jackson. The old what? The old Stonewall Jackson. You come in, hey, I surely would like to help you. <laughs> Don't you look pretty today? <laughs> Wait, I ain't trying to be disrespectful. <laughs> right? And then you fucking turn the corner. Let me tell you so... something about that boy. <laughs> that boy fuck a rock if he thought a snake was under it. <laughs> <laughs> So what is what is he asking advice He's about? He's asking me how the fuck he gets out of uh, all this bad shit. All right, you live in South Carolina. Let, let's let's recap, shall we? Yeah, lives in South <laughs> just, Carolina. Lives in South Carolina. Can't get a job slinging fucking tater tots. 
to fucking fatties who are wearing overalls and somehow the crack of their ass is still hanging out of it. <laughs> <laughs> he got a DUI. He's yeah. going to have to move back home with his parents an hour away where the job shit is even worse than it is where he is right now. And he got he, – oh, Jesus Christ. And he wants to live his dream. I mean, I, I only that? see one solution here other than hitting the lottery. You got to start dealing weed. I mean, yeah. Right? He's in South Carolina. Can't he grow some tobacco? Yeah. Didn't he say something about being a psychology major or something? Aren't you supposed to do some sort of internship – at a, a place no, he after you do he, school, and he that's doesn't have how you time for that. get he, entry into a job. He doesn't want to do that. This guy wants to be a comedian. So what he, he wants needs, to be a star. Yeah. So, so what he needs, he needs some sort of hustle to get him out of this shit. All right, dude. This I'll, this will make you feel better. Guess what happened to me right before I became a stand-up comedian? I lost my license for drinking and driving. This is what you got to do, dude. You got to uh, you got to get through your DUI. Um, and I don't know what to tell you, man. You got to somehow try and find a fucking job. Ah, fuck. I lived at home with my parents. I had a day job and then I, and I did comedy at night and I saved every fucking dime. Mm -hmm. I drove a piece of shit car and when it died, rather than get a new one, I, I just had him throw a new engine in my old one. So I only went like 1500 in debt rather than 15 grand. That's what I did. So listen. If you want to be a fucking comedian, you want it bad enough, you're going to figure out how to do it. You're in a hell of a situation there. You got to get a fucking job. Dude, I would open, I, take any fucking job you can take, landscaping, anything you can do, um, get through this fucking DUI horseshit, and uh, despite the fact that you work all day, you still got to go out, and you still have to uh, do those open mics. You got to do it. And... Uh, as hard as it's gonna be, it's gonna it's gonna make you tough, and that's what you gotta be to make it in the world. You gotta be tough. You gotta get up. You know what? You've been knocked on your ass. You're flat on the back, flat on your back, and you gotta get up. All right? The ref's over you right now. Six, seven. Most people just lay there. Ah, I'm gonna go fucking lay between my mom's titties and just say I quit in life. You're not gonna do that, are you? You're gonna pick yourself up. <laughs> You should have seen the look she just gave me. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to inspire him. This kid is in a fucking hole. Yeah, but he can get out of it. How yeah, would, he's got to suck it up. How would you get like out you of said. it? Like you said. How would you get out of it? I would do like you said. I'd have to take any job that I could get. But I'm a Sub-text. female, so maybe I could get... No! I was thinking babysitting, you pervert. You'd whore yourself out. No, I wouldn't. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> My name is Nia, boo, 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 boo. And I got some high heels. Do, 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 do. Who wants to no. fucking hit this? I wanna be a comedian. Stand up right now. That was like a new bit. It bombed, and now I'm gonna go to a proven joke that I've told 600 times and make it sound brand new. All right, here we go. Advice, Bill. Uh, I recently got dumped by my girlfriend um, through behaving like an idiot. To be honest, in her shoes, I would have done the same thing, with the difference that I would have given, I would have given me a second chance. For the record, no, I didn't cheat on her. Instead, I found myself getting quite broody. I think that means depressed, uh, with all the heaviness that goes with that. Um, who knew that that can happen to men, too? I certainly didn't. What does broody mean? What does it mean to be brooding? Isn't that what What's-His-Face did in Rumblefish? Matt Dillon? Isn't that how he got all, he got all his, his, uh, his acting work? They used to always say he had the, the brooding good looks. So what happened? You... <laughs> You'd be in the apartment with your girlfriend, she'd be trying to talk to you, and you'd be leaned up against one wall, you know, one foot on the floor, the other one up against the wall. And she'd be like, what do you want for breakfast? And then you just sort of look, you know, you look to the side, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. <laughs> Did you have a cigarette pack rolled up in your t-shirt? What the fuck is broody? I don't know what that is. Anyway, see, uh, she goes, um, he goes, I believe... I'm through that madness now, and yet while I was only with her for about three months, I miss her companionship terribly. I think he means he was depressed. Anyways, he goes, I sent her some flowers to say I was sorry, but she says she doesn't want to see or talk with me, although she says she will contact me in the future when some other, other heavy shit she's going through right now is over. 
Um, I feel I owe the situation one last roll of the dice at the very least. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, you guys need to not be near each other. All right? First of all, if you want her to call you back, don't call her. All right? Because you're going to sound even more brooding as you're standing there crying with a bouquet of flowers or whatever. Whatever the fuck you're going through. And then this whole thing where she says uh, she'll contact you in the future when some heavy shit she's going through right now is over with, you know. I'm thinking of that movie Barfly. You guys both like alcoholics? What is the heavy shit she's got to get through? The fucking 12-pound meat hammer she's going to be riding tonight? I'm not trying to be a dick, but... Um, Look, what you got to do right now, okay, if you were out there brooding and you were all depressed, you're probably not coming across as someone she wants to mate with who's going to bring her some strong offspring, okay, to get all Discovery Channel on you. So what you got to do is you got to show her that you're a man. So what you got to do is just let her go, all right, and start going to the fucking gym, all right, get an eight hours sleep, you start eating right, you start, you make yourself look good, you make improvements in your own life. So the next time she sees you, if you run into her, you look great. All right? What was that fucking Rodney Danger, Dangerfield thing? What was that movie where they were doing the Cyrano de Bergerac shit? Remember that? Chico, tell her you're the man. Remember that? That's what you got to do. Next time she sees you, you're, the, you're fucking confident. Nah, that's bad advice. What, are you going to pretend to be confident? I don't know. I'm just saying, you know what, dude? Focus on yourself. Get your own shit together. You know, and don't wait for her to call you, you know. Start working out, eating right, getting some sleep. Go do some shit you always wanted to fucking do, you know. And go out to the, you know, go out to clubs. Start talking to girls who are quote-unquote way out of your league. See what, see what the fuck happens, you know. But the last thing you want to do right now, I swear to God, is to sit around thinking about that girl or calling her or sending her flowers and a box of chocolates and all that shit because, uh... You know, she needs a break from you, I think. And granted, once again, I give out this advice knowing that I, I didn't really go to college. I did, but it doesn't really count. And I have no background whatsoever, and I don't fucking read. So you're on your own if you take my advice. I take no responsibility for this shit whatsoever, all right? And not to mention, there's a zillion fucking chicks out there. Why don't you go join one of those dating services? That's a great fucking way to get laid, you know? Someone was talking to me about that the other day. You know, there's like two of them. One of them's about really getting into a relationship and the other one's just about fucking. Join the one that's just about fucking and uh, go, buy, go down to BJ's Wholesale and get some condoms and bang away. All right? But the last thing you want to do is to get all fucking depressed about this shit and waste another couple months of your life brooding. All right? Dust yourself off. Get back in the game, all right? All right, next one. Hey, Bill, uh, I got an interesting uh, situation going on. I've been really good friends with this guy, friend. I'll do Oh, can I digress for half a second? Do you know it's the 20th anniversary of uh, Nirvana's Nevermind? And I bought Spin Magazine. They had this giant article, and everybody was talking about it. And... Uh, and for the majority of people were just like, dude, when that album came out, man, I was just like, fuck hair metal. This is something different and it's fucking over. Was I the only guy who heard that album and was just kind of like, eh, hey, you, know, you know, I kind of still like Whitesnake. <laughs> I did. I was too far down the hair metal trail. I didn't realize how good Nirvana was. And I hated Pearl Jam. Fucking hated them. I hated Eddie Vedder's stupid I'm in a trance on purpose face. Even oh, when he sit there and he'd, he'd fucking have his arms up and his wrists were all fucking limp and he was making those faces on fucking purpose. He looked like a like he should have been on wrestling or something. He's crazy any better. Um, I hated that fucking album. I still hate that fucking album. Even flow. Hate it. I like their other stuff. Vitology, I like... When he stopped making the faces. You know what he was like? He was like Mel Gibson in the first Lethal Weapon. 
when he was fucking acting like he was suicidal and it was so awful they had to make him stop. That's what Eddie Vedder was like in the first Pearl Jam. And then, and then they'd go to fucking interview. Do you ever see that interview Kurt Loder did? If somebody can find this fucking video, they interview Eddie Vedder and he's like literally in like the fetal position making this face like he doesn't want to be interviewed. It's like, Eddie, you don't have to do the interview. You could just say, yeah, I'm suffering from exhaustion, and everyone will think you have a Coke problem, but who gives a fuck, right? So I wasn't into any of that shit. I, I didn't get into uh, Nirvana until probably 1993. And by then I noticed everybody was wearing flannel shirts and uh, smashing pumpkins, and all my bands were gone, banished, never to be returned until that that metal show came back triumphantly to bring back my music. But, uh, yeah, I was late. I was definitely late. So I was, I guess, I mean, I guess the article would suck. I'm such a moron. I was upset that no one said that, basically, in the article. Like, why would they say that, Bill? They're trying to commemorate a fucking masterpiece of an album. Why would they have a bunch of people going, you know, I thought it, I didn't think anything about it. I thought Pearl Jam sucked, but I really, I was still listening to, uh, <laughs> whatever the fuck I was listening to. The fuck was I listening to in the early 90s? I actually tried to get into jazz. I was flailing and just completely not progressing in my drumming at all. So I thought if I listened to jazz, I would get better. And I like big band swing and, and you know, I, I, I saw all the great drummers. I used to go to the Regatta Bar in Boston. I saw Tony Williams. I saw Tony Williams in a fucking bar that held like 100 people. Louis Belson, I went up and shook his hand. I'm standing behind his drum kit. It was fucking ridiculous. Roy Haynes. I saw Max Roach. I saw all these guys. Didn't improve my drumming at all. That's what the fuck I was doing. And I was hanging out with my drum teacher who was like 70 years old. Uh, I don't know if I need to add this at this point, but yes, there was no pussy in my life at that point. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I, I kind of missed the beginning of the grunge thing. I'm not a Gen X. I think I'm old enough to be Gen X, but I'm not. I am a hair metal fucking 80s kid. That's who I am. I watched Family Ties, uh, Full Metal Jacket. The Lost Boys. That was my shit. That was when I came up. I can't help it that that's what the music... I thought Cinderella was a good band. What did I know? Just a fucking redhead kid in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, so they were just... Everybody was just going... I just heard it and I stopped in my tracks and I was like, what the fuck is this? It's like, how did how did everybody know that? You know, I remember being annoyed by the uh, that their first video when Kurt goes to take the fucking solo and he pretends like he's tap like doing the tap on solo, like basically making fun of all the bands that I was listening to, and I was kind of like, "Who's this douche?" You know, you call that a fucking solo? Just basically playing the goddamn melody of the song through a fucking distortion pedal. I'm not saying any of these thoughts were right. I think the guy's a fucking genius and the album's fucking unbelievable. But that's where my head was at. That is honestly where my head was at. Like I when Gun, when Axl Rose had his run in backstage with them at whatever award show that was when the uh the bass player and now senator threw it up in the air and it fucking crashed down on his forehead. And I believe Dana Carvey was hosting, going, Did you see what that fucking guy just did? I was rooting for Axl Rose. <laughs> I think the only thing that I did respectively, respectively, as far as my m music listening between 1988 and 1992 was I never bought Guns N' Roses' Use Your Illusion 1 or 2. I hated the fucking band by that point. When they had Dizzy and Lizzie and all these other fucking guys... And they had Matt Sorum, and the whole fucking band was gone. 
and he was running around in goddamn biker shorts, and he had that stupid white fucking windscreen thing. The whole it just it was unfucking believable. It just went right down the shitter. So that's where I was at. I was sitting there going, I can't believe they kicked Steven Adler out. That guy's a phenomenal fucking drummer. Changed the whole sound of the goddamn band. Now Izzy left. That's what I was thinking of. I wasn't... My libido, a mosquito. Look at the windshield. Is that a mosquito? I wasn't listening to any of that. Yeah! I didn't listen to any of it. And then that fucking dude came out. That's when I started feeling old. I think when that when that album came out. And then Smashing Pumpkins came out. And whatever the fuck he was singing about. Cats, Siamese, Twins. The hell was that song? I don't know. Despite all my rage. All that shit. I was trying. I was trying so hard. But by then I was like 25 years old. And I got to tell you, it's fucking over. It's over. Music is for young people. Um, all right. There you go. If you wanted to relive the early 90s through my fucking eyeballs, there it was. Jesus Christ, was that long enough for you? Last night, I was sitting on the couch. Boo -doo 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 -doo, minding my own fucking business. Boo -doo 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 -doo. Um, I was watching Metal Mania on VH1. Metal Mania, Cleo. I think my dog is sleeping with, with its eyes open. Oh, no, she just moved her eyebrows. Dude, where the fuck did you just go? Huh? Cleo, whatever you're thinking about, it's going to be okay. All right? Anyways, you know what's weird? When my dog sees a squirrel through a window, it it cries. <laughs> like like it's a long-lost buddy. But if my dog is outside and there's a squirrel, you know, if there's no window between my dog and the squirrel, it will try and rip its fucking head off. So I don't, does anybody know anything about dogs? What is it crying about? Is it crying like, oh, oh I want to rip its head off. Oh, I wish I could just end that thing's fucking life. You don't make any sense to me. Anyway, so I'm watching fucking Metal Mania. Alliteration. This has got to be a hit show, right? So I'm watching this shit. And uh, at the risk of pissing off a lot of listeners, I think... Most metal slash hair metal, it arguably is the worst fucking music ever made. Worse than disco. I don't know why disco gets such a bad rap. Like, disco is the, is the de default example of bad music the way Hitler is the default example of, of evil. Dude, he's the next Hitler. It's always the next fucking Hitler. Never pull pot, you know, never fucking, I don't know, pick another. I don't even know another one. You know, Ivan the Terrible. Was that a wrestler? <laughs> or was that a comic strip? I don't know. Horrible Hagger. I don't fucking know. Right? See, I don't even I don't even have any other examples. Well, whose fault is that, Bill? There's a library right down the street. Oh, go fuck yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um Everybody always talks about disco and how bad disco was, and there just needed to be a change, man, right? And like then they'll talk about, like, the police and all this new wave shit and the punk scene and all that. But what they, they completely fucking ignore is that right after disco, uh, just immediately the mainstream then went over to, like, this fucking heavy metal music. Like, that was better than disco. I think it's fucking worse. And I, I think all these times where they keep saying that everybody, there was a big change and that this quality music came out, I don't know if that happens. I think it just, you know, you know, Nirvana comes around and then what, four years later, everybody's listening to fucking O-Town or the mainstream is. It's just this long, tragic, just flatline of shit music. I was watching the shit last night, shit that I used to like, and my jaw was on the ground how fucking bad it was. It was horrible. I, I actually, I, it was so bad I was like texting paragraphs to the sensation, Joe DeRosa. Capitol Records, the guy who built Capitol Records, Joe DeRosa. I'll actually, you go, I'll, I'll, I'll get a little intimate here with you. I'll, I'll read you the text message I fucking wrote Joe. 
Oh, Joe, where the hell are we? Where the hell are we? Joe, hair slash heavy metal is the worst music ever made. Disco gets a bad rap. Watching Metal Mania on VH1, Guns N' Roses, Queensryche, Wasp, Quiet Riot, David Lee Roth, solo shit. It's fucking god-awful. Yeah, I saw David Lee Roth on, on his uh, Eat Him and Smile tour. And I saw that video last night. Going crazy from the heat. <laughs> that sounds like a song... Wahlberg's character would have written with John C. Riley in Boogie Nights. Remember that? He will rock you. And he will roll you. Like it was it was that bad. Teenage Frankenstein? I'm a teenage Frankenstein. You're telling me that that song is better than more than a woman? More than a woman, more than a woman to me. You know, I, mean, I, I think arguably it's, I don't know. I can't believe the shit that I used to watch. And, like, I used to listen to this shit around chicks, you know, just hopelessly thinking that this would get me laid like they would think that I was some badass, like, loner. Bang your head. <laughs> I mean... The whole fucking, the fact that I never got laid in high school, it just fuck it went away right in that moment. It was like, this is what I was going to do. I wasn't going to try to make him laugh. I wasn't going to hit on him. I wasn't going to try to jam him. I was just going to play this music around him, and this was going to bring me to the fucking promised land, looking like a fucking teenage Ron Howard. That was my game plan. Is it any wonder I failed? Jesus Christ. And I remember I would be watching it, on a big square TV, um, just watch it. Lay it down, lay it down. This fucking horrific fucking music. And my dad would come in and just have his face would just be all twisted up going, Jesus Christ, what the fuck are you listening to? You like this shit? <laughs> and I thought I was a rebel. I mean, he doesn't understand, man. You know what? He totally understood. He totally understood. My dad called it back in 83. Called it jungle music. Says it's a bunch of shit. <laughs> he told me straight up. He came in, he was like, son, this music you're listening to is fucking horrible. And there was all these shout at the devil. Is anybody really going to sit there and defend that fucking song? Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do 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 do. You couldn't fucking you could fucking a five year old could write that on a xylophone. Shout at the devil. Never knew why we were shouting. You know, Blackie Lawless. Blackie Lawless. That was his show name. And he he took a radial arm saw and he cut the blade in half and put one hat one blade on one of his forearms and one on the other on these leather. Uh, I'm going to do a bunch of dishes in an evil way, gloves. <laughs> and we all thought he was crazy. Dude, can you imagine if he gave you a forearm shiver? It, it was just, and he used to throw fucking raw meat into the crowd. A couple of them did that. That's why that Lady Gaga covering her clam in that fucking pastrami. It's just been done. You know, comes out in that fucking egg from Mork. I don't know. I've seen the nasally horror act my whole fucking life, you know? Those fucking chicks with the big noses, they, they can, you know, that's like white people's answer to the big black girl who can sing in church. We, we, what, what, the, what, the chick we bring to that fight is the, it's the white chick with the big nose. White chicks with big noses can sing. I don't know what it is. Barbara Streisand, it's a riot to sing, right? I don't know. It's, it's like their nose is like, it's like that dome at the top of all those conf, conf, uh, concert halls. There you go, Bill. Try to spit it out, you dumb fuck. But um, I want some emails, people. I want people try to tell me how uh, round and round love will find a way. Just give it time. I mean, tell me. 
the musical validity that that has over like disco that all those people probably at Comiskey Park when they blew up those disco records like fucking five six years later that's what they were listening to nobody's fool nobody's fool nobody's fool I'm no fool that was a hit that was a hit in the 80s <laughs> wow do I owe my dad an apology? I, I just, I was sitting there just one video after a Queensryche. I mean, all this stuff that I thought was just fucking unbelievable. You know what? I'm going to get emails this week. It's like, I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be like, people are either going to be like, yes, absolutely. This is going to be, there's going to be no middle ground. People are going to 100% agree with me or uh, I'm going to get punched in the face by Eddie Trunk. <laughs> I just, I was taken aback. I mean, I hadn't seen those videos in fucking forever. Occasionally I'll go back and I'll look at some old videos, but I mean, a lot of it was like ACDC, like shit that can like, you know, I mean, back in black is timeless. There's some timeless shit in there. You know, I even watched that Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine. I thought, I thought it was horrible. Whoa, whoa, sweet child of mine. And that little fucking shim sham dance he was doing, it just was. Oh, and then the emotion he tried to have in the end. Wow, 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 my eye. Right, and then he kind of closed his eyes like, ah, oh, I really went somewhere. When I, I was just fucking horrible. You know, I, I was right there. I, I, I helped hold it up. Oh, Def Leppard, pour some sugar on me. I hated that when that fucking came out. And all the ladies liked it, and he came out in his acid wash jeans. I actually saw him on that tour. Didn't I? Yeah. Reynolds Coliseum and Tesla opened up. Tesla, which I didn't think they were that bad. They weren't that bad. I don't know. I thought you're supposed to go back and listen to the fucking music of, uh, of your youth, being like, wow, that stuff was, aw that was awesome, man. Remember that? And then, you know, that was the first time I tried blow. You know, reminiscent. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, first time I ever saw cocaine, uh, saw it and saw it being done was uh, at the Providence Civic Center. I saw ACDC on the Who Made Who tour with Loudness, the Japanese heavy metal band that couldn't speak any English yet sang in English. Um, I just can't imagine the disconnect. I can't imagine like memorizing a bunch of Japanese and going and over there and just singing it and then not knowing what the fuck I was saying. Going out there. And everybody going nuts and just being standing there like, I have no idea what I just said. T-shirts are 20 bucks. Did I just say that or did I say, are you ready to rock? I have no fucking idea. Um, anyways, so I saw them. They opened up. And... Uh, Anyways, we were out in the parking lot, and we're drinking beers, thinking we're crazy. Driving, of course, because it's the 80s. This is right around before, right before Mad kicked in, and they used to bring, like, wreckage from a fatal drunk driving accident. Did anybody else's high school do that? They actually brought a car from a fatal drunk driving uh, accident, and they dragged it onto the lawn of our campus. If you want to call it a campus, a little island with a tree. They just left it there, and we all just stared at it, trying to figure out how many people were in the car, how many people died, and then we just walked away like, you know, and you're young. You don't give a fuck. Ten minutes later, you're talking about, dude, I'm getting fucking wrecked tonight. Wrecked. That was the word. I'm getting wrecked. I'm getting destroyed. Hammond, right? So anyways, we're driving down there, beer between your legs as you do. It's the 80s, you know? You fucking lifted weights all that week. Never, n all of it above the waist. Curls, <laughs> fucking benching, shoulders. Nobody did squats in the 80s. Nobody did, right? So you got your fucking tight 501 blues on with your little pencil fucking legs, and then your overdeveloped upper body, your stupid gold chain, and uh, you had a beer between your legs. That's how you did it. So we're fucking going down. They were probably on eight apiece, fucking hammered. 
Uh, I was driving this piece of shit 83 Ford Ranger. I got like five fucking drunk friends in the back, which was still not even grounds for getting pulled over. You could just have people in the back like you were bringing fucking turkeys off to slaughter. Nobody gave a shit, right? So we pull in, and right as I pulled up, and I got a parking spot, there was this kid, he had his door open, and he kind of had like a Sammy Hagar meets John Fogarty haircut, blonde hair. And I remember he fucking did a line right as I was pulling up. And I had fortunately had my window up, and he saw me, and he saw we all had ACDC T-shirts on or whatever, and he just got out of the car and was just like, yeah! <laughs> it's screaming. It's like a haunted house. He came right up to the fucking window. And I was just trying to take it all in, like, okay, he just, how am I supposed to behave around somebody with, with, who's on coke? Does this guy have, like, you know, Hulk strength right now? Is he going to tip over the truck? Um, anyways, that was, the fir that was the first time I saw Blow. I don't even know what the point of all that was. I was just shocked. Look, I know it wasn't all bad, like this, the uh, early Metallica, you know, right through Injustice for All. I know that that stuff was great. But uh, I'll tell you, it is slim fucking pickings, my friends. Slim pickings. Um, uh, I, I don't even I didn't know what to tell you. I mean, I even go back sometimes. I try to listen to Appetite for Destruction. I know that's this, this watershed fucking moment in that music. But some of those fucking songs. They're out to get me. So you can suck me. Take that one to heart. Ugh. Kill yourself. Um, all right. That ought to get me a lot of fucking criticism. The 1980s. The fucking 80s. Did I nail it, though, by the way? Everyone had the 501 blues? Remember that? Buttonfly, dude. Washed them three times and your nuts couldn't breathe. You know? And you wonder why you got all these fucking crazy kids that need to be on drugs now? Hey, what is worse, hair metal or some of that fucking patriotic country music post 9-11? What, what is worse to you? What is more cringeworthy? You know, um, shout at the devil or that, that Toby Keith, Uncle Sam's going to put a boot in your ass. Ugh. Um, oh, my God. Every dime that guy made in that song should have been thrown in his face and then given to the troops or something else. Or just, and then, oh, then, then a partial of it would be to incinerate any record that, that that track was ever recorded. The most pandering horseshit you could ever come out with. I hope I didn't piss you guys off too much by fucking trash and all that metal shit. You know, I have half those t shirts and I went to go see that. I was just embarrassed by some of that shit that I used to listen to. Um. Oh Jesus! Right up until I was like twenty, twenty-one. Fucking brutal. What? 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 What redeemable thing did I have? I did listen to the Beatles, the Doors, the Stones, all that white boy shit. Stevie Ray Vaughan. I did listen to Hendrix. I listened to all the big bands. Swing through my dad. Shit from the fifties. Uh, I had such a weird musical upbringing, anyways, which was actually good because it was kind of all over the map. Um. I started hanging out with Patrice back in the day. Patrice was the one, rest his soul, got me the... Uh, I still remember when he got in that same piece of shit truck that I went to the ACDC concert in. Seven fucking years later, I'm still driving it, right? Making the sacrifices. Remember that? I told you, you don't get some fucking job and go out and buy a, a, a fucking new car. You just change yourself to your cubicle. I always kept my... I put a new engine in the fucking truck. Had somebody slap that in there for twelve hundred bucks, pay that down rather than twelve grand for a new car like it was back then. Um, so, anyways, I still remember um, swinging by, picking Patrice up, and going into Nick's, and he had the cassette tape of "Ready, uh, Ready to Die," and him putting that in, um, telling me that this guy was going to be the next guy. And then through all of that, like he cured me of all the rap that a white kid liked who lived in a cul-de-sac. Um, and he showed me all the, all of that shit. So I had that whole background. All that stuff fucking held up. But the sh fucking metal that I listened to. I even watched, like, Lawrence Welk when I was a kid. 
one of the creepiest shows ever. Even that was fucking thrown in there. And it's funny, like fucking almost 40 years later, I'll be walking down the street and all of a sudden Winchester Cathedral will be going through my head. Winchester Cathedral, bo do 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 do, y'all bringing me down. Am I really gonna sing this? You could have done something. My baby left town. What's what is that, Seth Rogen? Green Lantern? Is that what it is? One of those fringe superheroes. Um, I already don't like. I don't like that movie, and I love Seth Rogen, but I don't like that movie. I don't like. I don't want to watch a bumbling superhero. Like, uh, what is this gun? Huh? Did I just almost shoot my foot off? I want you to be the shit. All right? Why won't Hollywood show me a guy that makes me want to be that guy? Like they used to back in the day. I'm so sick of every... They're even making superheroes like nerdy and unsure of themselves. Spider-Man was never nerdy and unsure of himself. He had a fucking smoking hot... Tits and ass, raven haired, fucking beauty that he was banging every night. He wasn't afraid of shit. They used to pretend to be nerds. That was their alter ego where they sat there, you know, Clark Kent. Ooh, how are you? Like the white guy on all those Def Jam bits. Peter Parker, you know, walking around with his stupid, uh, you know, getting yelled at by Jameson where he could have just shot some fucking cobwebs right into his goddamn pff- mouth. Now they got, they got to make him every man. I'm 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 uh, I'm sick of it. I, I've had enough of this. It's a goddamn disease in this business. All right, and I don't I don't know. It started off great with those Judd Apatow movies. I loved Forty Year Old Virgin. Those were all great. And then Hollywood's just like, oh, let's just do that and only that forever. I'm sick of it. Enough already. I want a superhero who's the shit. I want to see, uh, like, you know, what, what happened to those guys? They just, everybody's a fucking nerd now. You know what? I, I think this is the beginning of the end of the nerd. I think the nerd has has had its run on TV and on cinema. I mean, they have so explored the nerd on that show, The Office, that half the people on there, it, they're playing borderline retarded. You know, there's like two characters on The Office who sit around with their mouths hanging open when they're not even talking. And it's just, it's, I can't, uh, I can't fucking watch it. I'm sick of it. You know, there needs to be more. They got to swing it back to fucking Animal House, Caddyshack. You know, how funny was Chevy Chase and Caddyshack? Guy was the shit. He had $100,000 checks laying around. He's banging all these hot broads and he was still fucking funny. I don't understand what what do they think they like I saw the trailer for is 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 it green green hornet green lantern I don't know what the <laughs> green lantern I, that that sounds really wrong to me now you, if you guys know anything about me I can never get the fucking names right green hornet is that what it is okay now I've gone on on YouTube a long time ago just cuz I was interested in the car I believe it's a Chrysler Imperial and uh he was the shit and Bruce Lee was his sidekick that's how much of the shit that guy was. Bruce Lee was his Robin. All right? And you fast forward it 45 fucking years. Now the uh, the Asian dude is looking at, at Green Lan- Lantern. And, and, and as far as I can tell, Seth Rogen is basically going to be like the white cop on fucking Sanford and Son. What's going off? Uh, how does this gun work? Wow, that was a big explosion. You know, and, and, you know what? He's, he's, like, he's like the... Uh, that, that mousy black girl in uh, um, Police Academy. You know, is he going to have the don't move, dirtbag move at the end of the movie when he finally grows in to being a superhero? Let me guess, he has to save the Asian so you have a little bit of fucking uh, wax on, wax off there. Is that what the fuck's going on? You know what? Fuck that movie. Not fuck Seth Rogen. I love Seth Rogen, but fuck that movie. I'm not going to go see it. I don't want to see, you know... Seth Rogen, he finally, he gets himself in shape. People still call him a fat ass. He isn't. He got himself in shape. He gets to play a superhero. He earned it. And he still has to play this wishy-washy, unsure of himself. You know? Ah, the fuck that movie. Or what I perceived to be old when he got on. He was probably like 34 at the time, which was ancient to me. 
And now at my age, I would love to be I would love to be fucking 34 again. Oh, to be that age. Um, you know, I remember, you know what was great about when I was a fuck when I was 34, I could run like a fucking 7940 when I was 30. When I was 34, it was a very good year. My fucking dog just licked the bottom of my foot. It's a goddamn freak. I didn't have a dog that shit on the floor or needed to go outside. I did what I wanted. I went down water slides when I was 34. What's up, Cleo? How you doing? You know how psyched I was to see you? You know I was psyched to see you? Because you were psyched to see me. You're always psyched to see me, aren't you? You know my dog actually misses me? Comes into the bedroom at night and it fucking looks around for me. Then it runs into my little office area looking for me. Right? If I'm not around, who are you going to wrestle with? Let me see if I can get you to moan. You won't do it. You, you know what you are? You're like that fucking frog in Bugs Bunny. Everybody wants a bug. Then all of a sudden I bring you in somewhere. Hey, Cleo. Let me see if I can get you to howl. You want to go outside? Cleo. This is going to be worth it, people. Just listen. Cleo. You want to go outside? Huh? Cleo. Cleo. Hey. She's getting psyched. Cleo. You want to go outside? Cleo. Cleo. I wanted to howl. Come on. Cleo. You want to go outside? Cleo? Would you fucking do it, please? Cleo. You want to go outside? You want to go outside? Cleo. Oh, you're fucking burning me right now. Cleo. Hey, fuckhead. Cleo. You want to go outside? Cleo. Well, you know what? Go fuck yourself. Jesus Christ, what was that, three minutes? You blew it. Cleo. Why won't you howl for these people? <sighs> and in conclusion, uh, there is no podcast this week. I regret to inform you. Don't come over now. Don't come over now. You want some food? You want to go outside? Cleo. I'm going to give one more temp. Cleo, you want to go outside? Hmm? Cleo. Ah, Jesus Christ. You know what this is like? You know what you mean right now? You know you, the hot chick that will never fuck you? And she just keeps giving you a glimmer of hope and you keep coming back. You keep coming back. Whatever. I still love you, Cleo. You know, even though you just made me look like a fucking asshole. You really did. That was literally the Bueller. Anybody? Anybody? All right. That concludes my statement. That's the statement I'm sticking by. It's all in the police report, as Tiger Woods would say. Okay. The reason <laughs> to listen on Spotify, click the link below. <laughs> the reason that um, the reason that Nia is here is um, why am I here? We're gonna do uh, a game show of sorts uh, right now. Basically, what it was is uh, it's always funny to watch politicians um, when they're running for a certain office try to sort of politi politically uh, correct their way through through a tough question to they answer they, something. They never answer the question tactfully. They never answer the question. They never answer the question truthfully. That's for certain. So. Uh, we were thinking we should do a game show where we get random, really hard questions thrown at us, us being Bill and Graham and myself. And the goal is you have to answer these questions truthfully, 
but without losing any votes. That's the trick. Uh, the second we smell bullshit, you get buzzed by the other players. Uh, and the second you spin it too hard into something else, you get buzzed. But also, if you're too brutally honest, you get buzzed, too. So you, we yeah, understand you the rules. We're basically sitting around going, these fucking politicians, they never answer questions. And then we're like, well, if you actually answered them honestly, you'd lose votes. And then we started talking shit, going, I could fucking do that. So now we're going to see. All right. So we're here's gonna how we're going to do it. Go ahead. Nia's going to ask the question. She's going to pull them randomly out of that. Some of them are easier than others, right? Mm -hmm. We'll go in order. Billy will get asked a question first. While he's, be while he's answering his question, Nia, myself, and you, Greer, will act as the judges. Okay. Uh, when it's my turn, How many points you, Billy, you get? Nia, judge, okay. and Got so it. on. Uh, this feels like when the electricity goes out and you're like, fuck, we got to play a board game here. <laughs> We'll just give we'll give one we'll give board one point for question. Fuck it, and you got like um, seventeen seconds to answer it. All right? Wow! So. No, we're very accurate. We do a lot of research here. Okay. So here we are. This is uh, who wants to be a politician? All right. <laughs> this feels like college radio. <laughs> Fuck that. We did a great job for two hours and forty minutes. This never yeah. some shit. This, this is where the show might guy. jump the shark, but maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> this might be funny. All right. All right, Nia. Let's let's with our host Nia. All right, so the first question. For who? Do, for you, Bill Burr. Okay. Do Jews run the media? <laughs> oh, wow, you hit me fucking hard right off the bat. Well, I would definitely say that uh, there are a lot of Jews in the media, but to suggest that they're all working as one is a little too, uh, I don't know, there, there's a lot of them. Uh, but no, I'd say that they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I didn't say anything any you Semitic. Jumped, you backpedaled at the end. <laughs> yeah. we all, yeah. But there's a bunch of Irish guys who are cops. You know what I'm saying? Everybody picks something that they run. Well, you know what? You should have said that as your answer, and you would have gotten a point. Really? You, you know what? You should stop being so is smug. Is this time up? Shut up. You got to stop being so smug like like you're fucking up by 50 points. <laughs> his, his time's up. Wait a second, up. though. Where is, where is the timer, though? I'm holding it right all here. All right, all right. So timer. you could kind of include it, that last part. question. You got to keep it going. All right, next question. Uh-oh. Who's this one for? for Greer? Greer. Okay. For Greer Barnes. <laughs> Greer Barnes. Greer Barnes trying to get elected. <laughs> Are Asian people rude? Um, I wouldn't say that Asian people are rude. Um, I just... <laughs> you just <laughs> over. No, I'm just saying... You just um, lost Chinatown. <laughs> um, you know, it's just really, uh, honestly hard to understand them at times. At times. And, <laughs> and that explains... And that explains why... That's rude. That's rude, rude, right? rude, They speak loud because there's a lot of them. We, so, yeah, and they're what all talking, what? so this they is have getting to, worse and worse. I don't, because they always go like that when they talk. You know, like, I'm just all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, neither one of us again. All right, Joe, you're the fucking big shot. Let's. It's 17 me. seconds and up. When I went air, that was 17 seconds. Oh, yeah, and it's uh, horrendous. Do you have a buzzer sound over there, Danny, oh. so we don't have to listen to Joe's version of a woman <laughs> coughing? <laughs> just, just, <laughs> oh all right, all right. What do you got for Joe? All right, for Joe DeRosa. Sweatshops, do you care? They're so far away, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they are very far away. Um, I think it is definitely uh, an unjust policy that's going on over there. And uh, I don't think that it should be happening. But then again, uh, we all need sneakers. So, um, <laughs> you know. Dude, you had it right there. You had it. You should have bailed right there. <laughs> where are the places where there are sweatshops? The Philippines? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Taiwan? Oh, I don't know. As long as Foot Locker's full, I'm cool. Oh, I almost had a point. I did blow it. That sucks. Sorry. Here's a good one for you, Bill. Okay, I can do this. Are women funny? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greer, you're up. That was brilliant. All right. You get the point for that, right? That was Greer. Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Mexicans. Mm -hmm. What's the big deal? They were here first, right? Um... I'm going to have to say, no, they weren't here first. They weren't called Mexicans then. Uh, wow. <laughs> there goes Tex-Mex, all that shit's gone. I let them go. <laughs> and, and you can, uh, <laughs> let him go. Go back across the border. Jeez, Greer, what Would are you, you running him? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Danny, you're falling asleep at the wheel. Yeah. How far has he got to go before he gets disqualified? <laughs> all, right. Uh, all right. All right, Joe. Yes. Why do black eyes have to be so loud? I don't know, yeah, but it's... Be asking 
for the black man then. It's it's kind of annoying. I, it's nothing against black guys themselves, but they are loud and they do yell a lot. It's kind of uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, I don't be yelling. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, Phil. Yep. At what age does someone become useless, and what should we do about it? Um, I would say 86 if you can't drive. And, come on, dude. I mean, I, I can't even get halfway through it. Who votes after 86? Just to keep score, no points. Nobody has any points right now. You, 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 you got it. You had half a point. All right, this is the last round here. Oh, Jesus All right, Christ, Christ, man. Do you support the troops? Absolutely. I just don't support the war. Oh, mm. dude, yeah. Perfect. There you go. Okay. No, that was right, perfect. Good. All right. One point for Greer. <laughs> One point for Greer. going to be a black president. Come on, Joe. Okay, step it up. Joe. <laughs> Gay marriage. Yay or nay? Yay. Of yay. course, I Can think it makes him more sense. Can you buzz him just to say yay? <laughs> 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 Fucking tag. <laughs> yay. It was written in the question, though. Huh? It says yay or nay. And so. Joe wrote the fucking questions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Are we still doing this? Let's do one more quick round, one and then we'll go to the, the porn right. stuff. Uh, Bill, didn't we do more with this land than the Indians ever would have? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're getting shit-faced out on the fucking uh, <laughs> reservation, so... I mean, <laughs> what, you guys don't want honesty in your politicians? Okay? I'm Bill Burr. I say how it is. I say how it is. If you, I can't if, believe you, if you can't handle the truth, then I'm not the one that you want to have. I can't believe senator. you led that off with, yeah, absolutely. You <laughs> fucking smug prick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, brilliant. All right. All right. So one more for Greer, one more for me, and okay. we're done. Oh, all right. Uh oh. Sorry. That's okay. I thought we were so you, you, this you one. have to win. All right, Greer. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Ooh. Is it time for a female president? Um, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker gets all the easy <laughs> no, but he's fucking like, he's questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, why not? I mean, You're yeah. You're answering absolutely. honestly, though? Answer, yeah, absolutely. He's answering easily. No, I'm answering honestly. Why well, not? Okay, really I believe him. Seriously. I believe him. Yeah, yeah, he's sincere. Greer, are you currently in a relationship? Yeah. Are you happy? Next See, question. you know you don't want a female president. We can't believe no. this fucking Look, water no. right just, there. just for the dude. <laughs> that relationship dude. has nothing to do with how it feels. No, we're, we're running out of time. Country. We have to get You're to right. bad point. Just for the oh, warmth that he said hoops. honestly with. Okay. All right. So, Joe, you think two guys making out is disgusting, don't you? I absolutely do not. I think it's a beautiful thing, and two men should be able to love each other instead of being... <laughs> Dude, you just lost all the red states. You lost all the fucking red states. Greer Barnes with two points. It's Greer next Barnes president. wins. Oh, all right. I can't get my car back to my girl. I just realized I said I'd be home by like 2.30. So we, we really oh, got to really? wrap this up here. We're going to wrap it up. Let's wrap it up on this one. Oh, God, then we got to do relationships. Let's talk about that. You're not married. You're 40. Three. 43. Not married. Do you want to get married? What's, what's, how did you... I would love to get married, but I just I am fucking terrified of, of, of getting married, and especially in, in this state. It's fucking ridiculous. It's a no fault state. Right. They can, you know, they, if they hang around for 10 years, you got to pay for them for the rest of their fucking Like Kobe has to pay for that woman for the rest of his life. Okay. I know a lot of people are going, oh, well, he has the money. All right, but it's the principle of the thing. You're right. a fucking adult. Get a goddamn job. You're a capable, able body. Get a fucking body. job. And stop writing these fucking independent woman songs. And like, get you, yeah, yeah, we, we can do everything that you can fucking do. And then all of a sudden when it's advantageous to just be like, oh, I'm just a girl, I can't do stuff, that you can fucking get away with that. It's complete fucking bullshit. <laughs> it's complete fucking bullshit. I worked 20 years to get where the fuck I'm at, and I can lose it all if, if, if the person I'm with, which right. I have no control over, just decides, ah, I'm going to bang the guy across the street, and you're going to fucking pay for my life for the rest of my life. Jeez, wow. Go, and it's totally legal. Yeah, what a racket. It's bullshit. So how long have you been with your girlfriend? Uh, eight years. I'm basically married the way I want to be married. I have no intentions of leaving. It's like Carly. I, I, I'm actually trying to think right now. Like I'm like, look, I'm never going to leave her, so I don't have to worry about the, a marriage failing. But there's always there's the, the fly in the ointment if she decides to leave. And it's just like... Right. All of a sudden, oh, I'm in my 50s and I got to sleep on a fucking futon. Yeah. These goddamn fucking women in the crowd, when you bring it up, they go like, that's right. That's right. It's like me bringing up domestic violence. Somebody hits somebody and I go, that's right. That's, yeah, right. that's what you it's, get. It's fucking ridiculous. Oh, God. And they go, oh, well, you shouldn't have married it. They just blame you. It's like, oh, well, you shouldn't have wore that short skirt. What the fuck is wrong with you? 
A, a bad law is a bad law. These divorce laws are fucking ridiculous. Oh my God. They're fucking ridiculous, and the people have to, like, guys have to organize. You got There's got to be some sort of pushback. You went from the rule of thumb to this fucking shit. No fault. You can blow the guy across the street, and I got to pay for your life. Oh my. And I got to move out of this house, you fucking cunt. Are you serious? And all people will hear is, that's hateful towards women. You said cunt. No, that is the definition of a cunt who would do something like that. <laughs> It's fucking ridiculous. It's unbelievable. So now I can't get married because this fucking law won't change. And I'm waiting for someone else to do it because I just like yelling about it. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. I had a buddy of mine. He fucking made it. Made a ton of money. You know, when he was, he was, he was working construction and he started get doing entertainment at night. And he got into the business and his wife's going, why don't you stop fucking around? You need to make more money. It was just a bitch to him the whole time. He ends up fucking making it. Right? They get a divorce. Okay, and she, in the divorce process, I supported him. Yeah. I did all this. I'm yeah. used to a certain lifestyle. Yeah. That's what I love, too. I'm used to a certain lifestyle. Two people are in a relationship that fails. Yeah. And one person gets to continue living as if it didn't fail. While the other person who doesn't get to live the lifestyle has to pay for that fucking lifestyle. Jesus. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Jesus, and no. it's straight across the board. Britney Spears, when she got divorced, divorced from that backup fucking dancer, yeah, she one. built that guy a studio. He still couldn't make a hit. What the fuck more does she have to do for this guy? And then she gives him all this money, sits around. What does he do? Gets becomes a fat fuck, sitting eating goddamn Doritos all day in some three thousand dollar tracksuit that she paid for. It's fucking <laughs> bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> so no, I'm not married. <laughs> There you go. End it on that. It's not going to get better than that. That's fucking perfect. Bill, Burr, thank you so much, man. All right. There you go. Sincerely. Are you going to say keep it crispy? You don't have to. That's how we end the show. I always think it's funny when you say that. What? Keep um, it crispy. I'm on Pete Holmes. You made it weird. Keep it crispy. Keep it crispy, motherfuckers. Yeah! All right. See ya. <laughs> now leaving Nerdist.com. <laughs> I live in the past a lot. I do. Every morning when I take my dog for a walk, I listen to fucking music. And half the time, I'm fan. I'm always fantasizing that's me singing it and playing. Like, do you guys do that shit? Like, you're, uh, like, the, you know, like a utility infielder that can, like, play any position? Like, I can play every instrument when I'm listening to the song. And whoever is the standout in the, that moment of the song, whether it be the singer the or the fucking tambourine player whatever's stealing my focus that's who i am and half the time i'm doing it 30 years ago in my high school auditorium and the whole school is going wow that guy is awesome <laughs> and every once in a while i'll actually step out of the fantasy and go bill you know there's really something fucking wrong with you and then i just laugh you know oh i throw my head back and i cackle and then my dog looks at me like what the fuck is wrong with you and then she takes a shit, and I pick it up. <clears throat> That's my morning. That's how my morning works. Then I come back, and I make myself a little breakfast. Hey, by the way, I was, I was just going to ask you something. Okay. What were we just talking? I have no memory anymore. What were we just talking about? <laughs> you think you were the one smoking pot. I know. Oh, don't even get them going. <laughs> no, you know what? I only got like I only got like 10 emails, and I know there's a ton of people who smoke weed who listen to this. So most people followed the rules. Mm-hmm. Which was, you know, is basically, uh, you know, don't take the podcast seriously. Don't right. name any names, all of that shit. Yeah. But no, I had a bunch of people. Uh, yeah. They thought I was on some self-righteous thing because I haven't drank since October. Even though I'm a, I'm a self-admitted oh. booze bag. And even though I said on the podcast, I said I, there's nothing wrong with smoking weed. I don't give a shit if you smoke more of it. Right. But my point is. Stop acting like it's this, like, uh, what is the fucking word? Harmless. Not harmless, just like there's no side effects. Like right, right, right. Like yeah. there's all this, there's, like this is the shit that's out there about weed, that it's, it's not addictive. Mm -hmm. I drive better when I'm on it. How is that? I don't know, dude. It's like everything's in focus, man. man. They hate that voice. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> You know, potheads, potheads, man. It's like when they drive down the street, man. It's just like not only are you focused on the road, you're taking in nature, <laughs> like all that shit, and act like it's the answer to the, all the universe's fucking problems. That shit. That's all I was talking about. I understand that someone, the same way someone can, you know, enjoy getting fucked up, drinking booze, mm -hmm. 
and not be an alcoholic, have it under control. But every once in a while, you know, they go out and get ripped up on the weekend. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. And it also has to do with your age, too. If you're in your fucking 20s, you're still getting blasted Friday, Saturday night. That's fine. You know, but you just put the kids to bed and you're hitting a fucking bong every <laughs> night. I mean, come on. You got an issue. I had, a, I had this dude, right? And that's the thing. This is like, maybe I'm jealous as, as a fucking booze bag here. <laughs> it's just nobody gives, like, if you're fucking a pothead, people think it's funny. Right. This is just something that's considered funny about it. But, like, you watch, uh, like, Intervention. Mm-hmm. Okay? They have alcoholics. They, they have people on meth, mm. cokeheads, heroin. They got everything. There's not been one fucking pothead. Because they don't do anything exciting when they're high. When you're is a that what it is? You don't do anything exciting. You sit around, you watch TV, you giggle, you eat. Right. And that that's, that's, and, and then that's you it. know what happens? You go and to if movies, you're not and if you're not you know? careful, two and a half decades goes by. Right. And you're in your early 40s <laughs> and you're going still sitting on the couch. Yeah, still watching fucking <laughs> Snagglepuss eating fucking Doritos. That's the thing. Yeah, that was not, a joke. It's not nearly as a Yeah, it's not nearly as dramatic and exciting no, as someone who's on meth. There's no mothers against weed, man. <laughs> and there's, there's nobody, like when the cops pull you over, there's no weed breathalyzer. You can be fucking baked out of your mind. What can they do to you? They don't have any kind of roadside test to see if you're stoned? I remember they, they, they talked about doing something like that. But those, when they have those roadblocks set up at night, none of it's for weed. All it is is for fucking, it's for fucking booze. Right. Look, this is what kills me, okay? I got an email this week, all right? This guy tells me, he goes, you know, first of all, Mian, you know, you should read. I just do it because it annoys me. I laugh out of every him. time at that. I think it's um, funny. This guy goes, you know, you should probably read up a little bit on weed, man, before you go off on it. And he said that I can smoke three and a half grams of weed and be fully functional and drive a car or operate machinery. What is the. I don't know. Look, three and a half grams. I don't, know, half, I don't know. I don't fucking know. A joint. Yeah, let's just say it is a joint, which okay. I think I think it's a little more than that. Okay. All right. Let's just say it is that. Right. You smoke a joint, you're fucking high. You're, you're high. not. You're not fully functional. He's confusing his tolerance with being fully functional. Fully functional is getting eight hours sleep. You wake up stone sober. And even if you want to get to the letter of the law, it's like three nights in a row of eight hours sleep, just in case you only got four nights uh, a few nights ago, for you to totally. Be 100% and you're eating healthy. That's fully functional. All right? Yeah. Smoking three and a half grams of fucking weed, you're not fully functional. Yeah, you you might have an food. amazing tolerance, but you're not, you're not as good as, as the you at 0.0. Zero. Zero. That's what I'm saying. Or, or like this, this dude who sends me an email and he goes, yeah, people just, you know, they, they, they definitely abuse weed. He goes, but they're not like me where he goes, I just, I just you know. Uh, you know, I pack a bowl every night before I go to bed, take a couple of puffs, and then I go to sleep. This dude does that every fucking night. Now, what is the point of that? If you're just going to smoke and then go to sleep. Now, I might be ignorant, but to point? me, it sounds like he's using it as like this sedative, like this right, sleep aid. Right, like instead aid. of uh, Ambien or something. Or maybe it's just his way to unwind. I don't know. That seemed every night, though. Which is fine. But it goes back to my point where if I had a couple, I'd have to drink probably like, um, like a couple of beers. To get what probably feels like, you know, a couple of puffs of weed, right? Yes? No? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. If I was doing that every night, if every night you were laying here in bed and I would go over here, hey, man, just going to have a couple of Budweiser's and I was sitting here with that fucking happy hat with the straws going in my mouth. Yeah. I'd be you... like, why are you doing this every night? Every night. What's 365 fucking days a year. I would say that to you if you were smoking weed every single night, too. Why do you feel the need to smoke weed every single night? Let me ask you this. What if I only, to argue the pothead side, what if I only had two beers? Versus? If, well, every night. I, well, I didn't drink at all. Uh-huh. But On the weekends, I never got shit-faced. Just every night before I went to bed, I drank two beers. I would think that that was weird. You would think it was weird? Yeah. That's, why, yeah. Are you, why are you so uptight, man? <laughs> <laughs> and I think smoking weed is great. I love to smoke weed. It's, it's fun, but... I think smoking every single day is a a little excessive. And I feel like if you talk to anybody who used to smoke that frequently and who doesn't anymore, I think they will tell you that they probably feel more motivated or less depressed or something. It does have effects on it. Okay. That's all. I I mean, I was definitely – I went over the top as always because that always shakes a few people out of the trees. And then they go, let me tell you something. And they they fire up the emails, which fuels the podcast. Who's kidding who? 
But like, I'm, see, that's that's all I'm saying. It's that what I the thing that I can't stand about fucking weed is <laughs> is that people act like there's no consequences to smoking it, and if anything, it expands. Uh, you know, like your creativity and all that type of shit. I think it's like anything. Maybe initially it does, but after a while, or maybe if you do it within fucking reason, yes. But I've seen, you know, yeah, up well, close and personal with and uh, nameless fucking people. I've watched, you know, I told that story of, of what's his face, who I'm not going to say who, who fucking hit the dude with the car at work because he, <laughs> he thought he had it in neutral, but he had it in gear and he started, he hit the guy in the fucking head. Yeah. And, and he's he still, high. yeah, and yeah. still. He's going, dude. The weed isn't the problem, and it's just. And he gets high every fucking day. I remember one time we went on a road trip just to fuck with him, right? We were driving on this road trip, and he he goes to you know, to break out his fucking shit, right? And we go, no, 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 dude, you can't, you can't. It's a rental car, you can't smoke. And he goes, all right, we'll pull over, pull over. We're like, dude, we're not pulling over, we're not pulling over, and you're not smoking on this trip, dude. The fucking panic that he went. He's like, dude, dude, dude. Fucking let me out. Let me out then. I'm done. I'm not going on this road trip. He absolutely lost his fucking shit. Like, and it's be like, you know, if somebody said I, I, I can't drink. If I wasn't driving, I couldn't drink in the car. Dude, don't drink and drive. Be like, all right, dude, you know? Yeah, you fucking goddamn Mary. Fine, I won't. But this guy was like, it was like he was having a physical fucking, he was a panic attack. Right. If he couldn't smoke his fucking weed. Now, I'm not saying everybody who smokes weed is like that. But what I'm saying is that shit is never fucking reported. The same way when I when I break your ovaries about the whole uh, like the women image on TV like they always shown you guys as victims or accomplishing stuff but they never show the gold digging whore. See, I had you right then until I attack women. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go. Oh, it was going good. All right. Well, thank you for uh, thank you for stopping by the podcast. Oh, no, sure, anytime. Yeah, you can you can get ready when you have to get here. Uh, yeah, but the... I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to distract you. And plus, you start you picking heard? on me. Have you heard? That's the real reason. <laughs> Stop yeah. acting what I'm, like what I'm doing here is any sort of an art. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, have, have fun tonight, okay? Uh, all right. So back to the damn. So, all right. So all you, po- uh, not all you, all you potheads, just the 10 that fucking wrote me in, that wrote me in, that wrote into me. Sorry, the electrolytes again. Um... Yeah, I was break, breaking. Okay, can, can, can any pothead out there just be fucking honest with that and at least admit that maybe it isn't you, that at least you've had a fucking friend of yours who, like, discovered weed, liked it, really liked it, and then it just became their motivation when they got up. All right? This is, I mean, it's, it's fucking unreal to me that the third week in the row on the podcast, I have to act like this person, you know exists to the world. Everybody knows this fucking guy. All right? But he's never talked about... And I want to know why none of these fucking burnouts are brought on to intervention. That's what I want him to see. Just some kid sitting there past, you know, in a fucking weed fog, couple of hacky sacks in the background, his dirty surfer shorts... Just fucking toasted out of his fucking mind. And that's all he's been doing for five, six critical years in his 20s. Hasn't finished college. Wake and bake. That guy. Come on. Everybody, I'm sick of it. All that horse shit. It comes from the ground, man. It's fucking annoying. It's fucking annoying. But whatever. I guess I'm becoming too prudish on this podcast. This guy writes, hey, Bill, what the fuck happened? You bashing hot sluts on South Beach last week. You stopped drinking. You're talking shit about pot like you're fucking Alan Thickey. I didn't know. Does he talk shit about him? About pot, I mean. Uh, you know you know that life is a drag. For Christ's sake, you grew up in New England. You know what I'm talking about. Nine months of shitty weather. Your boss is a prick. All you have to look forward to is the weekend to let loose and unwind. I, Dude, I totally get that. I totally get that. I work for myself. And I still want to get bombed out of my fucking tree. Uh, he says, quit talking shit about pot, would you? Pussy, drugs, and alcohol are all good things. Take care, pal. Yeah, dude, I totally agree with that shit, but you know what I'm saying. First of all, if I go down to South Beach and all I do is talk about how hot the women are, that will be informative, that will be obvious, and that will be one minute of the podcast. You know? 
everybody knows they're hot down there. But if I talk to them, if I say that they're whores and they look like a bunch of goddamn prostitutes walking down the street, that gives me like eight minutes of shit to go off on. All right? Jesus Christ, do I have to break down the whole process for you people? You haven't figured out. It's a very, you know, it's not a lot of levels to this podcast. You give me a topic, I fucking go off on it with very little knowledge. It annoys people who are informed on the subject, and then they send me emails in, and then I just yell at them, even if they've proven their point. It's basically it. <clears throat> All right. My expectation for human behavior in a crowd is very, very low. I mean, come on. People are assholes, you know? I've been all over the map politically, but it's why certain ways of looking at shit, like when people talk about guns. Well, let's just make them, let's just make them illegal and then nobody will have them. You know, like that sort of thought process is you're, you're acting as though the world is a utopia and that there's not morons and that there's not people who say, I don't give a fuck what the rules are. You're totally not even taking into consideration sociopaths. Which is why that new fucking thing that Obama signed, that whole defense package where now they can just arrest people without a trial, put you in jail forever. Without a trial because they just think you're a fucking terrorist. You, you can't give people that level of power. Historically, no one has ever handled that level of power well. Anybody here want to go live in China? Oh, we out there practicing your nunchucks, wearing your wooden slippers, and all of a sudden a van pulls up and you disappear and that's it forever? You want to live there? Of course you don't. You want to live here where they can't fucking do it. Well, they can do it now. You know, they just put in a fucking order for a bunch of black vans. That's what I heard. According to holyshit.com, that's what's going down. I don't understand why stuff at that level that affects citizens to that level, why we don't get to vote on it. Do you think it's because we'd say, hey, you know what? Fuck that. Do you understand, like, that is just a jump-off point? Do you think, like, that's just how it's going to stop? Well, as long as you're not a terrorist, then uh, you ain't got a fucking problem. You think it's just going to stop with that? That's not how you take away freedom. You don't just fucking do it all in one fail swoop. It's incremental. Next thing you know, you're in goal line D going, how the fuck did I end up in this situation? You started at the 50. A little push, a little pull, right? Everything was fine. Next thing you know, you're up against the goal line. You think that they're just going to keep it with the terrorist thing? You know, you know, they'll wait for a whole nother generation of babies to be born. And they always grew up with government having that level of power. And then they add something else to it. Then they add something else. Then that's it. You can't have it. Okay. If Tiger Woods can't handle the level of free pussy on a golf tour, how the fuck is our government going to handle a new defense package, which basically gave them a mute button? If you had that power, do you, how long before you just started abusing that if you could just hit mute on anybody who ever disagreed with you and it just and you could have them whisked away <laughs> i mean that is the sociopath's wet dream that's what that is that is a fucking mute button mr stalin don't you think that's it he hit mute you're done you're gone see ya <laughs> i think i think it's it's fucking insane and the only thing that I get out of it is that I feel like I was proven uh, correct, that I don't think it matters at that level whether you vote Democrat or Republican. Obama, the first black president ever, you would think this would be the most liberal politician in, in the history of this country. Because of his background, you would think that he signed off on that shit. All right? I'm telling you. I don't know what happens when you become president, but I think they let you peek just enough behind the curtain. And you, there, there is a fucking agenda that we are moving towards. Cause it does, I don't think it fucking matters. I really don't. Which is why I always vote for the Ralph Nader, Ron Paul, all those guys that all those fucking idiots go, Oh, because you did that, you ruined the election. Really? Did I? I feel like those guys wouldn't have signed shit like that. I feel like their track record shows that they would not sign shit like that. I, I'm, I, I don't know. I have no, I imagine I'm going to get a ton of fucking emails. I remember somebody was yelling at me one time saying that because I voted for Ralph Nader in 2000, that's why George W. Bush won. And they were just going on and on and on about it. And I was like, dude, I live in New York. Al Gore won my state. Okay. Do you understand that? So your whole fucking theory right now is out the window. I voted for Ralph Nader in New York and Al Gore still won the state. So go fuck yourself. What I'm trying to do uh, Mr. fucking red and blue tie here. I'm trying to fucking encourage more people like that to run. You know, uncorruptible. How far can you get if you're uncorruptible? I would say that you can get to the uh, 
What, whatever level politics is, when you decide whether or not they should put a gazebo in the center of town, I think be, once you get beyond that, you got you got to be a little dirty, right? Um, all right, so let's let's get let's get on to our, let's get on to our argument. So right. we're we're flying back from New York City. How amazing was I at town hall? You were amazing, standing yeah. ovation. That's right, you're fucking right, I am. How insecure am I? that I had to make you say that for the sixth time. <laughs> You're insecure, but I love I know. you. <laughs> exactly. All right, so let's plow ahead here. Um, so we're flying back from uh, where we were, Boston at that point. Yeah. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if we'd already watched the YouTube clip or whatever. Rihanna had gone on TV talking to Diane Sawyer, mm-hmm. breaking it down, yep. talking about, um, you know, getting the shit kicked out of her by that dude. With the beaver teeth, right? <laughs> <laughs> he really looks like a bucktooth beaver. He does. He has tie. no business being a pop star. <laughs> um, <laughs> he bit her too, right? He did. Why wouldn't you? You got to utilize your weapons. So we're sitting oh, there, and it's this, real, it's this really sad interview, and she's just like, I just felt silly and stupid no, for, you need to do for your being. Of- so this is what I did. So it started <laughs> off as a joke, and I said, all right, this is my impression because wrong. All right. I'd like to go on record as saying that I feel that this is so wrong, but I always right. laugh at the things you do that are so wrong. All right. Well, this is the deal. I was talking about how they she was just saying that, you know, I found an inappropriate text message and then things escalated and then next thing you know, he caved in my cheek and started biting me and blah 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 blah. And I was just like, "You know what? She left out a lot of the details." And cuz what I've learned with arguing with women is when women argue when you, they're not winning or they're not getting you to admit that you're wrong, that at some point they make this switch in there where they're just like, I'm just going to make this person as mad as I possibly can by using every ounce of information that I know about them. So, so truth? Uh, you know what? That's as good as a yes. Anyway, so this is one of those in-the-moment jokes. I can't even remember what they said. I said, this is my impression of... <laughs> of the conversation before. I can't remember what, how I did it, though. I was like, <laughs> wish she's from Barbados, but for some reason, I started doing this really bad Jamaican accent. <laughs> and I go, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Who, who be sending you the text, man? <laughs> Yo, fuck you, bitch. I ain't got to say nothing. <laughs> Yo, man, who gave you the text message, you fucking buck tooth bee? I can't remember. Somebody talked oh about his teeth. God. And you were laughing your fucking ass off. Yeah. I can never recreate that. That's why I had to tap out. And you were laughing your fucking ass off, and it was totally wrong. Mm-hmm. And, but then, like, halfway through it, I started making my point of how I'm so sick of every time a woman gets the shit kicked out of her. Not every time, but all these women, they always get, they always get to show guys in that bad light of all these guys who beat the shit out of their women. But they never show when women fuck over guys, ever, in those situations, ever. Like... You know, the situations that, that, that I've seen where, you know, a friend of mine, you know, yeah. she slammed the door into him and then just called the cops and said that he hit her right, right. and they, without question, arrest him. Mm-hmm. And then that fucked up his job and now everybody looks at him like he's a wife beater and he never even did it. Right. Yeah. How come Oprah never does shows about that? That was our big argument. And then she somehow, you know me, the way I say shit, somehow it seemed like I was advocating that the guy did nothing wrong. Or and, uh, that, like, just, you know, all women are these horrible, manipulative creatures. Yes. And <laughs> you're not, you're not yeah. horrible, manipulative creatures, but you guys, you definitely manipulate. Can I ask you about the, the Louis stuff recently? Sure. What was your uh, reaction to it? He comes as back, he does what? comedy, and everybody gets pissed off. Well, I don't think it was everybody. It was well, just, a lot of people. Yeah, some people got pissed off, and a lot of people thought, like, you know, he's had enough, let him up off the mat. I always equate it to like, you know, I'd watch a buddy of mine get into a fight. I wanted him to win. But after a while, it was like, all right, all right, it's over. You got him. Like, let him up. I mean, they took everything from him. And like, if he wants to go out and go do stand up, I mean, it's a free country. You don't have to like it. You don't have to go to the, sh- go to the shows or anything like that. But um, I just wish we could get out of this. I wish we could get back to a, I don't know if that period ever existed, but I wish we could get to a period where you could discuss things. And not just 
not just have to pick a well I have people side start yelling at you and then try to destroy your career just because you have a difference of opinion where if you're on the same page going hey you know this behavior is not correct and should be dealt with and then you're disagreeing on type of punishment length of punishment or anything like that and then it just becomes like this thing where, where uh that we live in a world now where you have to be afraid to say that stuff it's you know to people who are allegedly progressive it's like how are you progressive if i have a difference of opinion and so then you're going to try to destroy me is 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 the irony of that i don't have a problem if somebody disagrees with me i would never try to go out you know and and like ruin them to the point that they're out on the street you know um and then i also have like a like a you know there's a lot of shit where it's just like uh, this sounds like a job for the authorities and people who went to law school as opposed to me who's just some people on twitter yeah and, and me like what the fuck do i know about the legal system i don't I, you know i don't know any any uh, of this stuff but like most people i do have an opinion and um you know I, I don't have a problem if somebody disagrees with me i would never go after them like that especially if they haven't done anything other than weigh in on a, on a topic it's bizarre like everybody on on the internet they're just such good people like you know Without having to demonstrate it. That's what I love. Like, there'll be like a hashtag. I saw one. It was just uh, things I don't tolerate. And adults were literally weighing in on this. And then they were just saying all of this obvious applause break shit like racism, bigotry. My favorite one, mean people. It's like, what are you, fucking <laughs> five mean people? And that's just like, like, what did you have to demonstrate? that you don't do that. Now, is there video of you being somewhere with a bunch of white people and someone drops the N-word and then you don't tolerate it? Is there any of that evidence? Or did you just fucking just write a bunch of shit and it becomes like this self-serving fucking thing that's allegedly for the better good of society when it really isn't. It's like all those jerk-offs on Instagram acting like they're trying to inspire you and they're just trying to show you all the cool shit they have and their six-pack abs, you know? I'm so fucking sick of people on Instagram telling me how hard they're working. Yo, we out here grinding, out here trying to get this paper. It's just like, yeah, yeah, everybody is. Oh, do you have to work hard in life? I didn't realize that. It's just like my favorite one. I love the one, too, where you bring all your cars out around the private jet. And it's just like, did you drive all those out there yourself and you just Ubered back to your garage? Did that take all day or did you, <laughs> did you have the gardener drive over the Hummer? I like the... <laughs> The LeBron and Instagram then you have to workouts. stand there and you cannot be looking at the camera. You got to be looking. You got to be looking look off. sideways. Yeah. And you got to have a look on your face. This is like, you know, this is how we do it, man. This is, oh, was that how you do it? I didn't know you could do it like that. I would have done it that way had I known how to do it. How do you do it? Oh, we're working hard. It's just like, it's like none of this means anything. It's just, it's just somebody sh trying to, it's just like, just, just be an arrogant ass. Stop acting like you're trying to fucking help me. The LeBron Instagram workout videos. You knew the old man videos. in me was going to come out at some point in this fucking for podcast. It. The LeBron Instagram workout videos. Like, I can't imagine uh, Bird of Magic doing that 30 years ago, 35 years ago. Well, in defense of him, though, that didn't exist. They would have. They would have been people who did that shit. Bird never would have had it. Bird was like tarring his driveway during the summers. Like, Bird hurt yeah. his back tarring his fucking driveway. I know. Because they gave you that one standard brush. Yeah. I remember that. You want to pay somebody seven dollars an hour to do his driveways, make it like a million dollars. Well, that's a year. yeah, how cheap. Come he on, was. Larry. When they he was in the cheap. Olympic Village, yeah. I ain't paying eight dollars for a beer and his six foot nine self just walked down the street you always, to a bar to go get a beer. <laughs> yeah, and then all like the uh I've seen the new trend is like the like beautiful women that have like millions of Instagram followers just because they post swimsuit, you know, photos and stuff. Like every three weeks or something, you have to post something about the the stress that they went through. Like when oh, they yeah. were like, I've been judged on my appearance so many times. And we're feeling ugly. I was called I, ugly yeah, when I was, was younger. Yeah, welcome to the and, fucking club. Right. And it's like, what your whole business is just that you're hot. I know. Like, I was called ugly and I am ugly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I couldn't even sue them for slander. <laughs> I, was, I was literally you just can't, called you ugly can't this crawl morning. crawl out of that hole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was accurately called ugly. Right. <laughs> Humiliating. I, I was called ugly. My, my comeback was fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Touche. Touche. Show your eyes work. <laughs> you know what's weird? Those Instagram butt models. I follow many. It's weird the guys who like them. Why do you have to click? Just enjoy it. 
Oh, yeah, you that you want of... attention, I guess? No, I don't know. They don't the, know. There's the hope that they're, <laughs> they they're going to pull you out of their depression with their <laughs> sculpted ass. Yeah, they're they're going right. to back it into your life, and the sun's going to start shining on you. It's they're like going to the, scroll through their likes. They're 10,000 yeah, likes. and find that you. That one, yeah, that was a nice guy. He liked me. It's hope. Yeah. It's like the stripper, the guy, the stripper guy was like, she likes me. We go, people go crazy online. Like, any of those pictures, if you start reading the comments, guys will be leaving comments. Like, grown men that are like, oh, oh, I love you. You're such a beautiful spirit. And, oh, it's another great photo, but I really love you, too. I love your personality. We should yeah. meet sometime. They want to be special. But I'm special. It's just, it's, it's mental <laughs> illness. It's I craziness. see through that piece of thong between your butt cheeks to the, to the, you're the soul, the person that you are. That's right. right. I saw it through your anus. <laughs> I saw your soul through your anus. Yes. It's, like a telescope, I looked up through your asshole and saw your heart. Yeah. Saw your soul. Yeah, they say the butthole is the window to the soul, so I saw it. It, it was it's I, beautiful. One thing I will say about butt models they promote each other. They're yeah. so generous. They promote each other. Like, you got to check out my girl Kiki. But you know, no other group does that. You know, that's clicky. You know, there are butt models that yeah, have been, that have been cast away from the other butt models. Like, no, no, I no, think no, that don't. they've always been more like open than titty models. Titty they, models are very uh, because they're not in right now. Right, the titty models. tits are not in. No. Tits were like tits of the seventies, nineties. Yeah. They kind of went with those big balloon tits that right. They used to have with like the, the fucking almost like they had like bloodshot eyes. They were so stretched out. <laughs> it was like three feet in and between they kind of, them. They just jumped the shark. There was like no way to go with this. So then it became about now it's about the ass. Yeah, you know. So they're all supporting each I other. I do like that though. Not not a giant giant, but I do like a nice fat oh, rump. It's the best. Yeah, but the asses have gotten so ridiculous and big. Like now, it's like they're, it's the same thing that happened the with fake with ass. breasts. The fake asses is the best. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever felt one? You can no. tell when you feel oh, a yeah? fake ass. Yeah, you can feel it. It feels. It's a harder. It's soft, but it's almost like remember how Stretch Armstrong used to feel. Oh, like the that gel? toy. Yeah, you can, that's what <laughs> that's it feels so like. Specific. Yes, <laughs> I do. I know that gel. <laughs> wow. No, I just love it. It doesn't move with the legs. <laughs> it just, it just, it's sitting there like a lunchbox, a lunchbox you want to fuck, right? Yeah, right. And it's just, it's just, you know, there was, uh, what the hell was it? I think it was in a gym or something like that. I saw one recently, but I saw one out here. Mm -hmm. It surprised me. There's a lot of them in LA. Yeah, more, yeah. more so, more yeah. so in like, you know, uh, uh, Miami, tech, like Dallas, mm -hmm. Miami, and Orange County is where I see the most, uh, um, extracurricular, uh, so is that what you're Makeup. doing on the road now? Now that you kind of been into every like sports stadium, you've seen all the games. Yeah. Now it's like I need to I need to monitor the fake asses in each city. Yeah, that's what okay. No, I just noticed uh, like uh, when I was in Dallas, it was just every bartender just had these giant and they were like teardrop shaped titties. Mm. I was like, what is in the water out here? And like someone was out there, nah, man, these are like, most of those are fake. They just mm. do so many. They're really good at them. In Dallas. And Dallas, yeah. Wow. And then um, Arizona too. Phoenix women. Huge. Yeah. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. So Orange County was like that was the one where the guys was crazy. Like they had the remember Bruce Jenner? Remember that guy? Sure. Do you remember what happened? I, yeah, I don't know. It disappeared. I haven't seen it from it. He was yeah. good. Well they uh they had like the I lift that shit going on, like the uh <laughs> where, you, where, where everything just looks like uh yeah, you were like in a wind tunnel or something like that. And I remember because my wife watches all those real housewives. Mm -hmm. I used to think that like, okay, they just took an extreme version. This is not an accurate portrayal of it and you go to orange county it's obviously not everybody but it is it's a it's a noticeable enough segment or maybe because i watched the show with her i i i noticed when i walked by but i was playing the uh the improv in irvine you know i was walking between shows i was just walking through the mall or whatever and i just saw, i saw like three or four guys that just had that that bruce jenner fucking yank back kind of <laughs> thing going on there so i don't know i don't know why you would do like i think you no. just you look so much better if you just kind of roll with your genetics. Yeah. yeah, it is what it is. It stays even. Right. You know what I mean? Where it's just kind of like... Uh... No, there's always places on the face you can't do. That's like Jane Fonda looks fucking amazing for yeah, yeah, she does. But then there's always going to be that one spot where you're like, ugh. Like whether it's right around the eyes or the neck. There's always something horrifying that ages exactly like it should. Mm -hmm. So 90% of the face looks good. But then there's that one part where you're like, oh, fuck, that's an old the, lady. The lips are tough. The lips Very always tough. give it away. They lose moisture. Oh, uh -huh. fuck. She's one of the Andrews sisters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that, it's, I mean, it's the same thing when you see guys that get like hair plugs. For every one that goes really well, you see a guy, like I saw a guy walking down the street the other day and he had buzzed his hair. 
but you could tell yeah. the whole oh. front was plugs, and it was. Like, don't you love that? I love a horror show of <laughs> hair plugs. Yeah, I yeah. do. How fucking. old was he? Because it depends. It was. It was real. They were really, really, really fucking bad. They're getting. But now that they vacuum, you first of all you used to get the big smiley face yep. scar. Right. Yep. Now they can just sort of vacuum the shit out and put it in, and then it takes for some people and it doesn't for <laughs> others. But they're trying to say like. Um, uh, someone was telling my podcast because I'm always like threatening to do it as a joke, you know. And um, they said that like that stem cell shit, if you you shoot in the top of your head. So I was joking because I'm going to do this Eastern European tour coming up in January, that I was going to go over there and find some Transylvanian doctor over there to fucking shoot it, and I was going to come back with the redhead version of like Farrah Fawcett hair, and, and, I, and I was never going to address it, just coming back, <laughs> shaking my head before I spoke and everything. Uh, he wasn't that. He wasn't old enough for it to be bad. He probably just didn't want to spend a bunch of money. Yeah. or something. no, it's it's uh, stem cells do it too. They they have those. Uh, they sh they they do those facials where they call vampire facials. I don't know if that's stem cells, but they shoot like your. They do something with your blood, and then they put your blood back in. I think it's uh, a lot of whatever the fuck is in platelets, and then they shoot it into your face. And oh it's, yeah, young people's blood. There's some sort of fetus involved. No, yeah, they just mush a fetus and they melt it down and shoot it in your face. But no, <laughs> they, it's your they, own blood. You know when they make avocado? You know that bowl? They just <laughs> <laughs> put a the fetus in there. <laughs> you got to drink it and shake hands with the devil <laughs> to look six months younger, dude. People are out of their fucking it's crazy. Mice. Do they do it into your face? And they're supposed to be very good for like wrinkles and moisture or whatever but it's, it's obviously well jim painful. i gotta tell you you've kind of been reverse aging man i mean if i look yeah. at some of the pictures of you from back in the day like yeah you were uh hideous yeah you look like <laughs> you look like a beat cop <laughs> <laughs> oh gum, gum shoot jimmy <laughs> then you started doing the pull-ups man like you know a wrinkle on your face yeah my face is held up okay and there's other things that have made my face wrinkle free uh, is that right <laughs> <laughs> yeah caligula was right it works <laughs> and not a drop of booze either no, that, that helps. helps. And not smoking. I think quitting smoking helped a lot too in 2001. Yeah. Oh, I forgot you smoked. I smoked for 17 years. Yeah. And I quit. When you quit, that helps a lot. You see guys that smoke when they're 50, like, ugh. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, the benefit to uh, never being uh, attractive is that when you start to fall apart, it's not like it's a heartbreaker. Yeah. No one, no one says, hey, what happened to Sam? Exactly. That guy fell off. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't matter. That's the thing about all those beautiful people. They, that, that's what, they, like, the ugliest people in the world would say shit like, oh my God, did you, did you see so and so? What the fuck happened to her? It's like the same thing that happened to you. You just, yeah. you just <laughs> fell off a curb. Right. So nobody heard yeah. you hit the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's the better it, it gets you like later later in life is where it starts to reap the rewards. But no matter how mediocre you are, you yeah. or you look, you always feel it. Like I, I look at myself, I'm like, fuck, you put weight back. Like, whatever it is, you still like, you know, it still comes out. Yeah, but you're a psychotic. You eat like a tiny right. little candy bar, and you look at your gut like, oh my god, I'm getting fat again. No, but you know, it's just the way you look at yourself. Hey, he holds himself to a higher standard. I you. don't feel it's good for you. Oh no, I didn't. To, to um, shame him, he is shaming me. I don't like it. I j Jim has had food issues. They are shaming as me. As far back as I have known, and it's so brave the way he judges himself after a Three Musketeer <laughs> mini. <laughs> <laughs> the fun size. It's, it's brave. <laughs> it's about body positivity. Okay. Let, let's actually bring some sort of comedy to this. Okay. <laughs> you got really mad at me last night. Yes. Before we went to bed. I'm not going to say who I was looking at either. All right? <laughs> yeah, better Out of protection. <laughs> this is what happened to me. <laughs> Nia's fucking on her side trying to go to sleep, and I got the laptop, and I start doing the IMDB thing, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking. Huh. Yeah, she doesn't believe this. So I find, I find some stylet, right? And it says that, you know, she did a spread in Playboy. So I'm like, oh, really? Wow, well, I want to see her naked. So I go to click on images. I swear to God, I'm on Google Images. And some, the second I clicked on one of the naked pictures, this other window came up with somebody talking. who I don't remember what they were saying. But you know. immediately assumed that I was watching porn because when you click on a porn, that window that opens up behind Those the window. Those webcams. Those girls on the webcams. They pop up and they're like, hey, daddy. No, they don't. Da, they da, usually da, da. pop up and they go, ah, oh, yeah, fuck it. And you try to sit and they go, is that? first time you hear it, you're like, where's that voice coming from? Has somebody hacked into my computer and they're mocking the porn that I'm watching? And then you do it and it's just, oh, there's some fucking housewife sitting there yeah. with a pickle. Um... <laughs> Couple of kids running around the background. It's a tough economy. God. So she immediately assumed that I was watching porno, and I was like, I wasn't. And I literally backtracked through the fucking thing. I backtraced it, 
and I showed you what I was watching. And, and you I just, called you a fucking scumbag. Fucking scumbag, <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> and then here it is. It's like, you're watching porn, too, if you know that that happens. Well, so? Well, all right, then. But I'm not watching it fucking lying next to you in bed, you dirtbag. Which you were. And well, you if I if, no, if you're going if, to look at naked ladies on a computer next naked to what? me in bed, ladies, <laughs> <laughs> while lying in bed. So whether you're watching porn or not, I still stand by those harsh it's words. Playboy, I threw at you. it's artistic. Oh please! They don't show the clam there. <laughs> 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 they just show a nice little, uh, you know. Yeah, and I heard that nice pop up muff. and that breathy little, oh, my God, this and that. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and I knew what you were doing, and I fucking screamed at you. Do you honestly you deserved think? It. You fucking deserved right, wait a minute, wait a minute. lie next to me and be looking at porno <laughs> while in bed with your future wife, you fucking scumbag. I don't take any of it back. Wait a minute. You're a dirtbag, and you deserve <laughs> To be yelled at. Do you honestly think? In life and on the podcast. You know what's funny is we got such a great mattress here that I think I could actually rub one out without you noticing. That's, that's nice. That's what they that's should nice. do. That's what they should that's do in that commercial. Nice. You know that commercial where they have the wine on one side and the guy's jumping up and down? They should have some guy with his hand inside his I'm fucking sure jam jams, fucking jerking like this already. and looking at the camera, giving the thumbs up. Um, yes, yeah, well. You just, you just see the bedspread fucking. Yeah, yeah, we get it. So yeah, you just so that's what you think I was doing. That's that is what you were doing. Maybe you weren't looking at actual pornography I was, videos. It wasn't pornography. At, it was a nude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was naked pictures of another fucking woman. You got caught, oh, yeah. and I screamed at you, and you fucking deserved it. All right. You called me a lot of harsh words. Well, you deserved it to do it while you're lying in bed next to me. What kind of man are you? <laughs> Gee, take over to that level. <laughs> That might be the quote of the podcast. Oh, I just wanted to look at this naked girl, and then and what happens? I was tempted. You got found out. I was on IMDb in this oh, temptress please. with with her photos. IMDb, and what IMDb had a link to her right. fucking naked videos, and there's right. some other fucking pop ups that come up. You were caught. And here's a move for you guys. And you're trying to make it funny for all the guys listening right now. Oh, here's the move in this moment. Yeah. Hey, if I want to look at a naked broad on my goddamn computer. All right, I'm going to do it. You absolutely can. But well, to do right it then. while you're sharing our fucking would-be marital bed, I'm not going to stand for that. I'm going to call you names. I'm going to shame you. And that's how it is. It's impossible to shame me after my childhood. <laughs> you're shamed. That's why we're talking about it right now. No, I'm not. I was trying to bring up something fucking funny. Mm -hmm. Sacrificing me. Don't anyway, give me that fucking look. Give me a so break. So that's how it is. Yes, I looked at a fucking naked actress. All right? Uh-huh. There you go. And I enjoyed it. <laughs> And I'll do it again. No, you didn't, because I screamed at you, and it well, took that part all I didn't the joy enjoy. away from, <laughs> from you. There was a lot of shame. <laughs> no, I, I was so, like, so, you know what it was? I wasn't prepared, and then that lady's voice, ah, oh, yeah, fuck it, yeah. <laughs> and then you fucking rolled over, and you were just fucking in my grill. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there just stuttering, trying to shut it <laughs> off. I couldn't find the mute button. It's unreal. Yeah, well. You don't do that. That's rude. They, it, I didn't set out to do it. It's the internet. Eventually, you're going to end up at a fucking naked picture. You didn't set out to do it. You lied here with the specific intent of looking at a woman naked no, I didn't. on the internet. Yes, you did. No, you I said, didn't. You said, oh, I want to see those pictures, and you clicked on it. No, that's not what I and did. And what you didn't uh, expect. You start in the middle of story. What you didn't expect uh, was there to be a pop-up to appeal to the kind God, of perverts God, over there that you are. Money. And I come to rat home, you I out. buy stuff, I put food That's in the fridge. That's what happened. I can't look at one fucking broad. Let me tell you, you something. You absolutely can look at you yeah, on the road. I swear to God, I'm going to take one of these pillows and I'm going to put it over your face but until you shut it. to lie next to me in bed and be looking at some naked women and get found out like that, yeah, you're going to get called on it. What do you expect? I'm going to snuggle up tonight. Ooh, let's look at it together. Fuck you. <laughs> Oh, that might have been one of the greatest fuck yous I've ever had. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. That was a thing. Of you guys got to admit, when it comes to fucking just laying somebody out and laughing them. <laughs> All right. Nia, I have to tell you this. What? I didn't go. I didn't open my computer and be like, I'm going to look at this naked girl while you're laying next to me. Mm -hmm. I went on ID IMDB. Mm -hmm. And I'm such a weak pathetic person mm -hmm. that within three you seconds are. i ended up on that but that's not i'm like one of those guys who's fucking did the crime 
This is second degree. This isn't premeditated. I didn't fucking walk in there like, I'm going to look at this girl, okay? okay? I walked in, okay? I saw the gumballs <laughs> sitting there. Stomach was growling. I said, fuck it, I'm grabbing them, and I got caught. So, yes, I did rob the fucking store, but I wasn't sitting at home going, you know what I'm going to do today? All right? This I just throw a naked woman in there, and you have the fucking explanation. Woman that you were looking at, you knew who she was. You knew that she posed naked. You knew, because you know who this person is, all right, without going any further. So for you to sit here and try to act like, oh, my gosh, I was just investigating someone's, like, acting history. Justin Timberlake showed his fucking wiener on the goddamn Internet. You'd look at it. What does that have to do with anything that we're talking about right now? Because you know what? You were right. You up, know what? You, were, you know can what? I finish? You know can what? I finish? Is that you're can I finish? To, bro, you're trying to do can that I classic, finish? you know, sort of. Can I finish? Three, you were right up until three minutes ago. Throwing other subjects in there to try to throw me off base, but you're not going to do that, Playboy, because I'm smarter than you. All right? All right. All right. Let's, not, let's not be quoting that. dialogue from a bad cop show. You're not going to do that, Playboy. Why don't you I put like your, li- your little gumball fucking siren on top of your non existent car? Listen to me. You were right up until three minutes ago. Which, which was now, right. you know what you're doing? Now you're hamming it up. Oh, you're hamming am I it hamming up. It up yeah. in the podcast? You know what? That's Here we so go. different Here we from go. what usually <laughs> happens on the podcast. Right. You should have ended with, fuck you. Can you please do that again? Fuck nah. you. <laughs> <laughs> you. All right, there you go, people. That is the podcast. <laughs> That's the neologue. <laughs> That's the neo All right, listen, I'm sorry that I looked at a uh, talented actress naked. You know, what do you want me to do? Talented actress? Huh? Will you shut up and stop outing the person? <laughs> you already fucking left like 90 clues. What is wrong with you? I didn't. Be mad at me. Don't be mad at her. I'm not mad at her. Okay, well then wrong. quit fucking doing that, all right? See, keep, you're doing it, it again. Keep I'm it at sure. me. This no, is, I'm not. This is no, about I'm not. her. Oh, this is about you. God. This is about you. And you know what? This is what happens. You shit. know what? This This is what happens every night around 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And then she fucking drives me out of the house and I go out and do stand-up. Speaking okay? Of which, are you going out to Yes, I am. And you can watch all your stupid... What was, that? what was that fucking show you were watching? Which it, one? The show about the swimmer who doesn't get anything but swimming. What would Ryan Lochte do? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's, yes. ha- he's hamming it up. He's is hamming. he? Yes. I don't know that he is. He's traveled the fucking world. He's won gold medals. No, Nia, no. Yeah, no. You, th- you, you say like he's traveled the world and met with diplomats. He's traveled the world and jumped from pool to pool. He has met with diplomats. When he won a fucking gold medal, all of a sudden he get the key to the city. This guy's cut ribbons. He, okay, and he shakes yeah, hands. He's, he's and opened he zoos. The- this guy's opened zoos. Okay, you, you're not that d- He's not that dumb. Ugh. Ooh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But uh, it's hot, and that's really all that matters. Okay, Ultimately. and now now do I get upset that I'm sitting on a couch and you're sitting there looking at fucking... Oh, that's what you said the other night. You see this mm-hmm. look on your face, and I'm like, are you not enjoying this show? And you're like, no, I'm looking at those abs. Yeah, and if I was lying next to you looking at naked pictures or whatever of Ryan Lochte, then you would absolutely have something to say about it. So wait a but minute. But that's not what happened. No, no, no. I was watching a show. Well, okay, e. okay. So the bed bedroom is 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 not cool. Yeah, the okay? bedroom is our fucking bedroom. It's where we. I know you what know, you're doing in a bedroom. Our bedroom. It's a Jesus sacred space. Christ. Do you believe this shit, guys? Do it's a this? fucking would, would sacred you space. Okay? That a swell guy Can like me would have, have to swell. put up with this shit. Can we not have the bedroom at least? Okay, not but if but if I did it in the living room, if I did it in the living room, that would have been okay. If I'm not in the bed with you, yeah, you're outside. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no bed in the living room. If I'm in the fucking living room, I can look at a picture of a naked woman on the computer. I, I swear, got no problem. With I it. just want, okay. And then if I hit on the thing, and all of a sudden the girl goes, Ah, yeah, fucking right there. Oh my god, you're not, gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna have a problem with that. Not in the living room, no. But while lying in bed next to me, that's a problem. I can live with that. So we're so we're absolutely. So I apologize. I didn't know that that was the rule. And once again, Nia, I was just looking at a fucking picture. All right, I'm a fucking guy. She's a naked mm-hmm. woman. What am I supposed to do? do? It's you free. It's do? free. One click away. How do I resist? Do? As if you had no choice. I really don't. The way I'm wired, I don't. All right. Oh please, I don't accept that. Oh the fuck way you. I'm you want Nia? What the if there was I'm what? Wired. Please, no. I don't accept really? that. Nia, what if there was a store you could just walk into and it was a bunch of free shoes? Are we in a store right now? Or Wait are we a in minute. the fucking bedroom? It's a fucking metaphor. 
It doesn't matter. We're not talking about metaphors. We're talking about what actually happened. I'm talking about how you're wired versus how I'm wired. Okay. We're you're wired, wired to get you like stuff. You guys, you're into shit. You like hats. You like fucking shoes. If, if a free hat or a free pair hats. of shoes <laughs> was a click away, you'd fucking do that right in front of me in the bed. You would. A free and then hat. I'd hear, and I'd hear somebody, oh, it's a tiny two, it's a two, and a fucking. Free hat is not the same as what you were doing. It's just not. The end. Yeah, and but you started not, to apologize not, not, for it, and now you're trying to backtrack. Because I was trying to fucking apologize, and you keep coming at me like a goddamn meerkat. I don't try to keep coming at you. You keep trying to, like, excuse yourself for what you did, and you know that it's wrong. Listen, you know what? I know you think that you're doing some amazing shit here where you're just not back in doubt. Okay. Oh, First of all, what are you going to do to me, Nene? Huh? What are you going to do? Huh? You're going to body slam me? I'm bigger than you. I already said I'll I have no problem with you. I'll push no you right off this fucking bed. Looking at porn or whatever it is that you do, I have no problem with that. But if you're lying in bed next to me, well, and then I, and I, and I, and I said, and okay, that, and I that's said, a problem. I fucking said, o- I said, okay, and I said, okay. So then we have nothing left to discuss. End of podcast. Why do women always take the ball and go home? <laughs> How old are you? There, I'm on that point. It's over. End, end of game. I won. I'm going home. Huh? All right, whatever. All right, that was the podcast for this fucking. <laughs> Look at me, that self-satisfied laugh. All right, that's the that's the uh, neologue this week. It's you, therapeutic. As you can see, why uh, I don't have her on that much anymore. <laughs> I know I'm never on anymore. It's because you're busy. Yeah, busy doing stuff. What are you doing? <laughs> Not doing shit. Chastising you. All right, see you. Um. All right. So let's let's get let's get on to our let's get on to our argument. So. We're we're flying back from New York City. How amazing was I at Town Hall? You were amazing. Standing yeah. ovation. That's right. You're fucking right I am. How insecure am I that I had to make you say that for the sixth time? <laughs> You're insecure, but I love I know. you. Exactly. All right. So let's <laughs> plow ahead here. Um, so we're flying back from uh, where we were, Boston at that point. Yeah. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if we'd already watched the YouTube clip or whatever. Rihanna had gone on TV Talking to Diane Sawyer, mm-hmm. breaking it down, yep. talking about, um, you know, getting the shit kicked out of her by that dude with the beaver teeth, right? <laughs> <laughs> he really looks like a buck tooth beaver. He does. He has eye. no business being a pop star. <laughs> um, <laughs> he bit her too, right? He did. Why wouldn't you? You got to utilize your weapons. So we're sitting there, and it's this really, it's this really sad interview, and she's just like, I just felt silly and stupid. No, for, you need to do for your being. Of- so this is what I did. So it started <laughs> off as a joke, and I said, All right, this is my impression. <laughs> so wrong. All right. I'd like to go on record as saying that I feel that this is so wrong, but I always All right. laugh at the things you do that are so wrong. All right. Well, this is the deal. I was talking about how they. She was just saying that you know I found an inappropriate text message. And then things escalated, and then next thing you know, he caved in my cheek and started biting me and blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, you know what? She left out a lot of the details. And because what I've learned with arguing with women is when women argue, when they're not winning or they're not getting you to admit that you're wrong, that at some point they make this switch in there where they're just like, I'm just going to make this person as mad as I possibly can by using every ounce of information that I know about them. So, Truth? Uh, you know what? That's as good as a yes. Anyway, so this is one of those in-the-moment jokes. I can't even remember what they said. I said, this is my impression of <laughs> of the conversation before. I can't remember what, how I did it, though. I was like, <laughs> wish you seen from Barbados. But for some reason, I started doing this really bad Jamaican accent. <laughs> and I go, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Who, who be sending you the text, man? Yo, fuck you, bitch. I ain't got to say nothing. <laughs> Yo, man, who gave you the text message, you fucking buck tooth bee? I can't remember what it is. Somehow I talked oh about his my teeth. God. And you were laughing your fucking ass off. Yeah, it was funny. I can never recreate that. That's why I had to tap out. And you were laughing your fucking ass off, and it was totally wrong. Mm-hmm. And But then, like, halfway through it, I started making my point of how I'm so sick of every time a woman gets the shit kicked out of her, not every time, but all these women, they always get they always get to show guys in that bad light of all these guys who beat the shit out of their women. But 
They never show when women fuck over guys, ever, in those situations, ever. Like, you know, the situations that, that, that I've seen where, you know, a friend of mine, you know, she slammed the door into him and then just called the cops and said that he hit her and they, without question, arrest him. And then that fucked up his job and now everybody looks at him like he's a wife beater and he never even did it. How come Oprah never does shows about that? That was our big argument. And then she somehow, you know me, the way I say shit, somehow it seemed like I was advocating that the guy did nothing wrong. Or and, that, like, just, you know, all women are these horrible, manipulative creatures. Yes. And <laughs> you're, not, you're not horrible, manipulative creatures, but you guys, you definitely manipulate. 